Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep mighty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest celebration. Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton. The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autograph photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood. Get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. Dan Marotti here at MWF Studios in downtown Melrose, Massachusetts. The zip code of champions, 02176. As we finish up day three of our in-studio shoots with the berserker, John Nord, we proudly bring to you this all day and night. Marty Gennetti Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty Marathon, as you know, and we're going to be reminding you throughout, we have an ongoing Indiegogo campaign to bring you Season 2 of Marty's series. We're at 94% of the goal as of this recording. We need you to help push it over the top. If we can go past the goal, we can add even more days of tapings with Marty right here in the studio for him to share his no-holds-barred sex, drugs, and rock and roll experiences from the 80s and 90s and even current events with you. You can find the link to the Indiegogo campaign in the premiere chat box on the right side of the screen, in the description box below, and across our social media platform. Send some positive thoughts to Marty down in the Sunshine State. Uh, he recently had an ER visit from his banged-up body. Don't worry, it wasn't COVID or anything like that. But a professional wrestler's life is not an easy life. Uh, the excitement he brought you in his 20s and 30s is catching up with him now. Uh, that's why these talk show platforms are so important, not just for Marty, but for all of the great legends we have come in here. We want to keep them working and we want to keep them out of the ring. A few cheap plugs to get out of the way uh, before we get rolling with the marathon as the fans start to pour in. If you missed our live cyber signings with the Berserker this weekend, uh, we'll have a limited supply of autographed photos available on the event page uh, you can find in the description box below. Each purchase of an autographed photo helps us bring you more great content with more great superstars in studio, including the Berserker for Wrestling Insiders Throwback Thursdays. We are just over seven weeks away until we jump into the DeLorean and go back to the 80s for our live wrestling and legends fan fest extravaganza Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall right here in Melrose, Mass. Last night before WWE Raw, we announced that WWE Hall of Famer Cowboy Bob Orton will be joining fellow WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famer Tito Santana, The Wild Berserker, heel referee turned wrestler turned back ref, Dangerous Danny Davis, and at least, at least one more 80s WWF superstar to be announced this coming Monday night. If the VIP packages keep moving, John Cena Sr. and I are going to bring you even more. 80s legends, that's our commitment to you. Who needs eight 80s 
WWF Legends when you could have nine, when you could have ten or more. This event includes a VIP exclusive Q&A session before the fans enter. It includes an 80s VIP Legends group photo before the fans enter. It includes an autograph and photo session open to all fans before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light the squared circle on fire with the hot night of professional wrestling. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. Get your friends and family together for a professional wrestling celebration decades in the making. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com. Now we look forward to seeing you at the party on April the 16th. Boston's had a few 50-plus degree days lately, but it is still officially winter. It's what motivated Quincy Rustani to sing Baby It's Cold Outside to Deborah McMichael. But no matter where you may be, have the professional wrestling streaming time of your life while helping keep wrestling legends working with early full screen, often ad-free access to wrestling insiders five days a week. 300 plus full length episodes in our archives. Our world renowned Patreon, I'm sorry, our world renowned studio shoot interview DVD library that's been seen by millions of fans online and millions more on the Howard Stern Show. Patreon exclusives and more. Join the Boston Wrestling Patreon family now at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. We have some new uh, watch alongs coming soon on Christmas. Uh, we added one with the Berserker on New Year's. We added one with Demolition Axe. More great exclusive content headed your way. Again, patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Treat yourself to something great from the Boston Wrestling eBay store with merchandise of superstars from every era to add. Something cool to your wrestling man cave, a collection. It's open 24-7. Simply click the link in the description box below, or you can simply go to bostonwrestling.com and hit the button that says store. So with all that out of the way, for the next few hours, kick back, relax, and remember the good old days of professional wrestling with Marty Jannetty as we talk 80s, 90s, and even current events. If you're enjoying tonight's content, the Super Chat button is open for business. Don't forget to tip the bartender so we can bring you more great superstars, more great content like you would any waiter or waitress serving you delicious food at a restaurant. We're serving you delicious wrestling memories in history. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get those YouTube algorithms rocking like Marty. I'll be checking in throughout the marathon. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty, with Marty Jannetty. It is unbelievable now. We're about a third of the way through December. That means our holiday headlocks toy drive, the ninth annual Paul Bearer Endeavor, is, is almost coming to a close this weekend. As you know, tomorrow night, the Warlord is going to be with us in that very chair. Uh, on Saturday, better get a bigger chair. <laughs> <laughs> on Saturday night, we'll have the Native American Tatanka with us. And then on Sunday, we have a what I call a future star, superstar doubleheader. Wheeler Yuta, who's making quite a name for himself in the world of professional wrestling. He's competed here in Boston Wrestling. He was part of the Ring of Honor Pure title tournament recently. He's going to be with us to share the origins of his story in professional wrestling, as well as my longtime close personal friend, a man I spent New Year's, I don't remember, I think New Year's week 2012 with out in Sin City, uh, the new Impact World Champion, Rich Swan. I'm really looking forward to that. He has a hell of a life story to tell. Uh, so we're bringing it to life. We're doing it virtually. We can't have a live wrestling event. Massachusetts won't let us have more than 10 people together. In, indoors. We're lucky we can even put these video shoots together. Um, but we're going to have a lot of fun virtually. Autographs available. If you've missed the signings we've done already with Leo Rush, with Tony, with Marty, with the Nasty Boys, with uh, Savio Vega, the good news is those VIP packages are still available. We held them hostage. They signed the posters and the, whatever photos were left over before they left. So we can still include them in the package. To me, Keeping this man's name alive means so much to me for all he did in my world, for what he's done for everything in Boston wrestling and the MWF. Not when he was just active with us, but when he was working in mortuary science, he was a help to us. When he was managing Undertaker in WWF, he was a help to us. He wasn't getting paid. He did it because he genuinely cared and wanted to see us improve, and he wanted to give back 
to professional wrestling. So that's why every Christmas, no matter how much stress it causes me, which is a lot with everything else and our normal work that we do, I will always try and go above and beyond to honor this guy right here and make him proud by how we do things. And we might not always succeed, but the effort is always 100%. So for more information, head on over to bostonwrestling.com. Join us for these live autograph signings. If you're a wrestling fan, if you're part of the wrestling community, share it with your friends on social media. If there's any toy drive you're going to participate in this year, why not participate in a professional wrestling theme one? There aren't many of them as far as I know. You know, the Salvation Army, they ring the bell in front of Macy's and all the stores. There's a million people that'll donate to that. The wrestling community is a unique community. So let's stick together and make some goodwill happen. Let's update Santa Claus's GPS to find every kid on Santa's list this year. And again, keep this guy's memory alive. All right, Marty, I yak the I'm, 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 I'm just saying, I'm, I'm all good about that, you know, because it's for our boy there, but... Man, that's why we run out of time. <laughs> you, My pitch is too long. 20, min 20 minutes <laughs> intro on that. <laughs> well, we, we keep going over time, and we were like, man, we almost had it, but five minutes over. Good conversation and a good cause. How yeah. about that? And it's almost over, thank God. And All speaking right? of, you know, honoring somebody, I, I said a couple of shows ago that I would, and so I'm going to do that now by wearing one of his. Uh, oh, yes, you did mention that. Yes, he owned, you know, he owned him and Hawk yeah. owned, owned Zubaz. Which what a just, smart business investment that was! Yeah, huh? man, the NFL, the players were wearing the yeah. stuff on the sidelines at one point. And uh, when I, I when I was in middle school, that was everybody wanted the yeah. Zubas, all the different. Colors and there were so and, many spinoffs, and there was uh, sportswear and uh, everywhere, and you know all, all the kind of. But it, they came out with it first, man, and did real good marketing with it. Got it everywhere. I didn't know until much later on that they had any involvement with it. Yeah, I had no idea. I probably would have been even if I knew. You know, as a kid, that Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom, owned part of that. I probably would have been more apt to want. But you know, buy, to, I would have buy more. <laughs> broke my parents' balls for more of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, wrestling fans, you talk about tributes. We did tributes to Kamala and Road Warrior Animal on this show with Marty Janet. Miss you, Joe. Now rest in peace, my brother. I know you're you're here with us. In this episode today, I want to talk about a couple of other great legends. Hey, this might not be vodka. No, I I don't think so. It's Christmas though. This Christmas theme. I wouldn't mind a little if someone wanted to slip it my cup at this point. But, uh, <laughs> Bullet Bob Armstrong. Where's your coffee? <laughs> Bullet Bob Armstrong, a man that meant something to you. I know early on in your career, recently passed yeah, away. All through my Father, career. a road dog, and uh, well, he, um, you know, when I was a little kid, a little, a little ten-year-old MJ watching wrestling, Bob Armstrong was the most flamboyant, charismatic person that got it back in that time. Everybody was headlocked, arm drag, and a punch. You know, that was pretty much maybe a slam if you wanted a big booth. <laughs> but old Bob, man, he was charismatic as hell. He'd get out there and, and just be he, arms and legs are flailing. And, you know, you always try to imitate uh, a little bit or emulate the, the person uh, that, that, you know, that inspired you. You know, and you see some of my comebacks out them legs. Nothing like his, man. He would be high kicking them up, the like chest high, and going all crazy and stuff. And it was just, as a kid, you, like, you got so excited watching it, you know. And he had them big old arms, and, you know, he was so good on the microphone. You know, he, he, he would come up with some good ones. And, um, you know, that was who I kind of like, if I ever were to be a wrestler. As a kid, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm to be him one day. I'm gonna be. Now, which promotion did you get on TV as a kid? As what? What promotion did you get on TV? Uh, because it, it was, was the territory. Georgia day. Championship Wrestling, which was you know based out of yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and, and they uh, would come to Columbus, Georgia on Wednesday nights. Fred Board was the promoter. And, uh, but on Saturdays, they would go to Front Avenue and do the TV taping. And we'd go down there. You would uh, go to the shows yeah, live? Yeah, yeah, the TV tapings my sisters would take me because they oh. knew if I was big into sports and all that, and they loved wrestling. Um, How old were you when you started to go, do you remember? About around eight, eight or nine, somewhere yeah. like that. And, um, you know, I, I, it was so scary as a kid, you know, these big old guys, when they get out in the ring and you can actually run up next to them, and they're all sweaty and big and, you know, different kind of big back then. They were kind of husky big. Uh, you know, now everybody's like bodybuilding. Uh, but as a kid, they look like nowadays. They all most majority looks like professional athletes back then. Yeah. you had some big, rugged, tough, yeah. dangerous-looking men. Yeah. They were, and they were that. They were dangerous from the stories I heard. 
But um, yeah, they uh, it was so fun, and Bob was my favorite. And then uh, you know, I met him a couple of times. I say I met him, you know, as, as a kid, like getting an autograph. And he was just so nice and polite. And you know, he was a fireman up in Marietta. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so everybody gave him respect for that in Georgia. And uh, my family, you know, liked him because of that. And and uh, you know, so it was easy for me to like him a lot. And and like I said, tried to emulated a little bit with some of my style, just to, you know, to how he got hyper and hyped up and, and stuff. And, uh, and then when I first broke in, uh, the business, my first few matches were down in Dothan, uh, Alabama. And um, I forgot whose territory it was running it then, but the, the Armstrongs, like uh, Brad, Brad would, Brad had already moved on up to uh, uh, NWA. He was mm. on NWA TV. Uh, but Scott Armstrong, I think Scott was there, and I don't think uh, Road Dog was there yet. Uh, Steve, I don't Steve, I don't think Steve was either. He was just uh, Scott, but uh, Brad made a couple come, you know, visits, and so I got to know them. You know, that mm -hmm. was, you know, uh, Bob's my hero of wrestling. His sons, and you know, hung out with them, and they partied, and you know, I was young, and so. I saw that, hey, they party in this industry. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> and uh, which my trainer, Jerry Oates, got a little upset about that when he found out. I was like, oh, yeah, man, we sat there and did a couple lines. And then, you know, we got ready for the match. And he got, oh, he got mad because he was straight laced, Jerry was. Isn't it funny? Tony just mentioned them on an episode. Of the Oates Brothers? Yeah, they did. They in they invested their money very wisely in something. I can't think of what a it is. Car, a car, auto thing. Car, a car wash? Was yeah, that what car, it was? Well, car and repair. And, Tony and the, mentioned that in a couple episodes ago. Yeah, Isn't that, that funny you mentioned them? Yeah, yeah. and then, then, he, then he ended up opening his gym, most gym. Uh, it became very popular. It was probably the only gym around back then. Yeah, and they uh, weren't several on every Main Street yeah. like they are nowadays, yeah. And. Um, yeah, see, he, but he was straight laced, and he didn't like me being you know, one of his uh, trainees. In the medicine. Yeah, he, he, he got mad and called and told somebody, you know, what the hell are you doing? You know, you oh, got really? the guys he in the dressing room. Seriously? Wow. Yeah, because he was trying to train me right, and he didn't want, you know, <laughs> here I am down there yeah. doing cocaine in the dressing room. I only had you, three matches at the time. How old would you have been at this point? Uh, how old was I then? Yeah. Probably 23. Oh, young, okay. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I know I was 23. And, um, you know, he, uh, you know, I, and I understand his uh, point of view and perspective of it. He, he's, you know, he's trying to make somebody, and, yeah. he, and he saw the potential. He knew I was going to be, you know, a representative of him. You, you sure. Throughout your entire career, you'll always have a stamp of Jerry Oates yes. on you in some way, shape, or form. I understand that. And, uh, and my boy Eddie Mansfield, he helped uh, on, you know, on and off a lot. And was that before I or actually, after 2020? Uh, it was a little bit before because <laughs> after it was hard to hang out with him. <laughs> but uh, he, he, was, he, had, he, he had good intentions on that. And it had to do with unionization. Yeah, sure that's, did. That's what he went out there for. And the reason I said it like that is the last episode we talked about unionization a lot. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, Jerry. Jerry wanted me to be a good, a good. He knew from from word around town, you know, that I was a little troublemaker, and I, and I mean, mischievous. Were you a troublemaker, or were you just someone that wanted to enjoy yourself? Enjoy yourself, but sometimes. Uh, Worry, but I mean, my college from what coach. I know you, were you ever out to cause trouble no, for never. people? No, I, I don't. Not that I've ever heard. No, and I've heard a lot. <laughs> my coach, uh, Coach Doobie, my college wrestling coach, a um, great guy, and we we reconnected here in the last year or so. We talk a lot, and he still he still to this day helps me through some hard times. I think you were talking to him on the phone the day we had the power. Yeah, rubbish. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep, yeah. and uh, you know he could tell some stories. But you know when I was 19 years old. It, uh, 18 and 19, you know, he he took a chance. Well, I say take a chance. He said it wasn't taking a chance. He, he said, I knew you had the talent. You just needed somebody to, you know, get you, guide guys, you, in the right guide you a little bit. Yeah. And he was perfect for it. Uh, but he, he had, he's got stories he says he still tells today. Like the time uh, we had to wrestle Alabama, University of Alabama. And um, everybody shows up at the bus but me. And then one of the guys said, I think he's in jail. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. Well, what, what happened? 
Uh, he used to, the coach would give us these vitamin packs, and it would do like 10 different, 8 different vitamins, you know, because uh -huh. we, we're training your ass off, and, and in the snow, when it would snow uh, sometimes, uh, he'd have us out there running anyway. I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, he was keeping us with, with our vitamins and minerals and stuff. Um, and a little, there, were little, there were little cellophane packs, like I said, about eight, eight vitamins. Different colors, you have red and yellow and white, black, um, you know, and mostly white, uh, different shapes. But there, the, the state fair was in Columbus, Georgia that weekend. Uh, and I decided to go make a little money because, you know, when you're at college, uh, you can't make much money and didn't have any to start with. So I took the vitamins and went down and selling them as different kinds of drugs <laughs> at the fair. <laughs> it it um, ended up in jail and coach <laughs> went when he heard about it. You know, you, I can only imagine <laughs> what he. It's probably, it probably was hard to get mad. It's like he was selling vitamins and well, you can't arrest him for selling drugs as, as vitamins, you know. But it, that well, what, was yeah. What was the arrestable offense if oh, he was selling I, vitamins? I don't know. I don't know if it was. I don't know. <laughs> I just know I was in jail and we got to meet with Alabama and I'm in here and the old coach pulls up in the team bus, <laughs> for really? the thing, uh, and, and comes out and, and, and gets me or something. That's how I forget how it all happened, but um, yeah, they and they were like, oh, coach, oh, it, it was college, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. But, but it was vitamins. And so Coach has got a lot of stories like that. He <laughs> can tell. We'll have to have him in for an interview with someone. I, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I forgot where we was going with this. Where, did, where the hell did we start we, this we time? We started with Bob Armstrong. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, um, Jerry Oates knew I, you know, I wasn't the most straight-laced guy, but not he wouldn't have had nothing to do with me. And Coach wouldn't either if I was a uh, – you meant no malice to him. Right. I would say, if, you know, if I was an a, a, a angry young man destroying people's lives and everything. No, you were just someone that once you had the opportunity to, you wanted to have a good time. Yeah. yeah. I got bored. You know, I got ADHD. So I can't even be still. And that jump subject so much. Um, I've always had it as a kid. And now I'm drinking coffee and you probably spiked it. Where's my phone? Oh, don't start with that again. You took it again. Did you Every put it back week in he that takes. Bag? No, you, if it's in there, you did it. It was just out here. You gotta remember, first of all, I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. I He's always it. messing with me every week. He hides my phone. That, uh, here it is. Sometime oh. fans, we should we should do a behind the scenes version of what we go through <laughs> in between the commercial breaks. Because sometimes I think we have more laps during the commercial breaks than even we do on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Some things can't discuss on, you got on the that show. Right. You got that right. But uh, Bullet Bob Armstrong, was he someone, yeah, so, so, did he uh, inspire you to get involved in wrestling? Was well, To tell the truth, <clears throat> you know, I wrestled in high school or college. <clears throat> Excuse you me. had an amateur background. Yeah, uh -huh. and uh, we did pretty good. Coach took us from uh, the, the program before he got there, and I went there his first year. He recruited me out. Um, that's what I was saying. He, you know, he took a chance. It, he claims it wasn't a chance. It was. He knew the talent was there, just rough around the edges, and and it needed a little guidance. And he was perfect for that. But he took a team, a program that was 0-10. They'd, they'd only just started the program there, but they didn't win a single match. And his first year there, he, we had six guys qualify for nationals, <laughs> which means you wow. got to place first or second, second in your district. Mm -hmm. and, and we had the southeast of the United States. Um, they uh, and then we went on to. I mean, we got actually ranked as high as number eight in the nation at one point. Oh wow! And that's from a team that was 0-10 the year before that he got there. So you know he was a and and I got a um, he got a letter. He's going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame for wrestling, collegiate wrestling. Oh wow! Yeah, and I I got I'd put that up on Facebook. Um, at this point, I, I'd put that up on Facebook. Uh, Oh, for show wise, in reality, I got to put that up on Facebook. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to. Don't have to. I want to. Because I'm so proud to, to say that I was trained by him. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, Bob, um, oh, was it, so what I'll say is after after my second year, uh, you know, junior college, JUCO, you know, you know two years, um, all, the, all the wrestling programs in the Southeast, I figured I'd go over to Auburn and go to Georgia or. LSU, any of the ones that already knew who I was, 
because I was beating some of their guys, you know. So. Yeah, you, uh, this is probably throwing a shot in the dark, but he was uh, very good from what I remember down in uh, Georgia. In, as an amateur, Patera Ristani in the early 70s. I don't know what year you graduated high school. I don't either, but I'm sure I did. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, really? You wrestled should... Patera Ristani? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, oh, I, oh, no, oh. no, I was just saying I'm, I graduated. <laughs> you remember you graduated, yeah. but that's about it. Now, well. I know that name, but I can't picture him. Oh, you know the name? I know of it. Yeah, but yeah. you didn't work them. Well, no, 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 wrestle them, I guess, is the right word. <laughs> we can never get the word work out of our minds once you're in wrestling. Even in Jeez. an amateur wrestling meet. Did you work him? Sometimes you talk about baseball. Did, did the Red Sox work the Astros in the playoffs? <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, speaking of... That's the, a different Marty. Yeah, that's a party Marty shirt, though, but I did this uh, down in New York, Long Island. That was, I think, the That's one, why the Mets, so don't get mad at me, Boston people. That was the one we I think we had to get you to last minute, last time you were here, when the man yeah. messaged me in the middle, at about 2 o'clock in the morning, trying to figure out Who, how me? to get you to New York. The other Marty, yeah, that was another Marty Gennetti adventure, but he's a lot of fun, folks, and he's a good human being. <laughs> That's right, I forgot he called you in the middle of the night, you said. Facebook. Oh, it was a Facebook? Everybody says I talk to, but that means I text them, yeah. I Facebook them, but they still use the word talk, even though nobody really talks anymore. They, it, but it's good, though, because you can do other things. When you're talking, you can't do other things. Dude, that's why Tony kills me, because when you get you on the phone, no matter what your intention is to get him off in a minute or two, you look at the clock, and it's <laughs> been an hour. Uh, some of my girls... Then the phone starts to... It, the phone actually starts to... gets hot. And heavy. Against, and sweaty. Yeah up against your ear. Then it's been an hour and a half. And he's still talking about complete and utter nonsense that has nothing to do with anything. But you don't want to be rude and hang up on him. He sees these shows, uh, right? No. <laughs> okay. He goes to the library once in a blue moon and watches one of his. But <laughs> Tony, I love you, buddy. Hope don't if slip you ever up do here. see this one. But he, know, he knows his phone calls drive me crazy. But my girls are like that, man. I'll, I'll look like, gosh. I'll, sometimes if I hear the phone ring, What'd you do with it now? Oh, I can actually see it at this point. I'll look, and if I see it, you know somebody I know, I'm like, damn, I got to answer it now because I look. So a lot of times, like I don't feel like talking long, so I'm not gonna look. Then I don't feel guilty, right? Yeah. But then it's like, wait a minute, what if it's important? Oh shit, no, let it no, let it be a telemarketer. Ah, damn, it's damn Demeter. I got to call. I didn't mean that Demeter. I'm just using your name because it was. I just saw it. You must have just called. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, you know. I'm, and I'll like, okay, we'll we'll make this short. It won't be long. I'll go ahead and, and answer. And it never happens. Fuck, an hour later, like you said, the phone is hot up against your face. You gotta put speaker on, then everybody can hear. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, th and it gets so heavy. Well, at least for you, you're getting women calling you. I get Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing better than me. <laughs> Oh, God, these shows, sometimes we have laps in ways we don't even plan on it. Yeah. But, well, now, back to you, you had a successful so, so, amateur so, wrestling background Yeah, so it was time to move college. on out of JUCO, mm -hmm. or junior college. And, um, you know, I asked around to other colleges, you know, hey, I'm available. Um, but they were, drop, they were all like, we'd love to have you. But they were dropping their programs. Because wrestling... Why? Wrestling was drying up? Yeah, well, no, but there, there was a, some ruling came in where they had to add a girl's sport or drop a guy's sport. Oh. And wrestling made the least amount of money, so they dropped oh. that. And so, uh, you know, I had to get a job. <laughs> Again. So that, that's what actually led I had you? a job when I was 14. That's when I started. Well, we remember that. At, at the bowling alley. <laughs> And um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to go there again. No, it's just, Christmas time. But I mean, I had worked all through up till I worked, you know, from 14 to about. I stopped in high school once I started getting into sports. What are you laughing about? I, you don't even want me to say it. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I might not. If your you first, say for you to say that, I might not. Your first wrestling match. <laughs> the first the wrestling. Chattahoochee Street Fight. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the truth on that, right? That I never dragged a body? Marty, you've told me so many different things. That's good. And I don't even want... People have asked me to me do interviews about it. Me and my nephew poured gas on and just burned him up. We didn't bother taking him to the room. I don't... I will never want to talk about that publicly unless I have you with me. You don't want to make me do it. What are you talking about? You well, thought it would be good. To, you thought it would well, be good. No, no, hey, no, no, let's, no, no, no. hey, you committed murder with self-defense. And I say accidental death and, and murder are not the same this. thing. I will say this. Yes, I did want you to tell that story, but there was a reason behind yeah, it. Yeah, because TMZ and everybody else was talking shit. They, how they labeled you is disgusting. Yeah. 
And well, I, I don't want to rehash the whole story. Well, I just wanted to present what happened from the point of view as a 13-year-old kid that was being 14. attacked. 14-year-old kid that was being attacked by a, a sexual predator male adult. That's how it should have been labeled, not I, pro I was, wrestler kills gay man I was, or other shit that I was reading. Oh man, that angered me. And you can say, you know what? Did, did I say let's do an interview? Yes, I did. But I wanted the, it told from that point of view. I'm gonna, I'm gonna and show you. And I hope you. you at least understand that. I, well, I totally do. Okay. All right. A lot of people out there don't. They're like, why would you go on on camera or was the actor was the We're phone? on the phone for that. Yeah. One. Uh, and and it, and admit to somebody dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to admit to someone dying, do it right. I guess it's the moral of the story. But I still I still stand by. There's a difference in accidental death, and um, you know murder. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm trying to find the one that's absolutely the most craziest one, and I think my friend from uh, one of my friends from Germany sent it to me. It's like their ledger or their their uh, National Enquirer type of magazine. Well, we made the Enquirer. I was the, the studio. Yeah, we was, made that, and we. The made... studio was thrilled to see our show name in the Enquirer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, was... Oh, the studio got some calls. They were, <laughs> they were wondering what on earth happened. Were you read? Can you? You can't read. Can oh, you'd you? have to hand it to me. But I. Well, I know that. Read the t the title right there. Mahler, Marty, and Murder Probe. Now that was from Germany. Yeah. Look, where's the, which camera's on? I'll get as close as I can. Go to the one in the middle. Oh, oh shit! shit. Oh, oh no! And that's not even drinking. I'll get it in a second. That's all right. At least it didn't break, or we'd really murder, murder, Mahler, Marty, <laughs> murder case, murder probe. Damn, what all broke? That man, did it break or no? No, this one, this one didn't. The I'm talking about the soda pop. It didn't break now, but it's, it's leaking. Let me get up. So it's leaking. Yep. So it must have broke. No, it's just coming out the top. <clears throat> Set it up, and I'll wipe that up in a second. Sorry, Johnny. Yeah, man, I'll buy you another one. <laughs> you never That's know why he hides the phone from me. <laughs> That's why I hide the phone from him, right? Um. Yeah, but there were some well, bad labels, and there was murder and no, this. And this is, like I said, the, the, the reality of what you explained happened was so different than what those people put out there. And knowing you, just even at that point, just a little bit, it made me sick. Well, they, It was it, wrong, even if I didn't know you. Right. It, it, and I knew the true story, and just those headlines were despicable. Well, you know, everybody's trying to, to, to get viewers, and... and and you know, I mean, if that's like clickbait sort of, but actually, but that wasn't clickbait. But you know, ball or murder, murder or ball or whatever the hell that thing just says. I just remember there was a gay website. Nothing against homosexuality, but there Not was a gay all. website. That, I think the headline was "WWE Wrestler Kills Gay Man." I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Yeah, when they I tried read to blame that. it on that was the reason. Like that had anything was to do with it? You were a kid being attacked. Like, a, a, what were a, you supposed to do? You know, and and uh, just let it happen. I mean, come on. See if you can fix that. Out, yeah. well, I need Howard Miller for that, but that's all right. <laughs> you Look, need what? I need Howard Miller for it. Howard that was here earlier. He was Howard Stern's stunt double in the movie Private Pots. But um, oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Um, yeah, I guess Howard well, wouldn't we'll have done this. We'll get back to that one. Uh, all right, <laughs> back to Bob Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> So Which, I in there is having a blast. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> they laughing up there in the cheap seats. Stop it. <laughs> what'd, um, you say? what'd you say, though? I missed it. So you were, you were kind of a college wrestling free agent. College wrestling yeah. was kind of being done away with because they had to be, have equal opportunity for women's sports, or however it was classified. So it, do you know where That's this, pretty much what it was. Do yeah. you know where it went? What's that? Johnny Soda? Yes, right here. I just want to but wipe up that. But it's not smashed? No, not at all. Oh, just, well, that, all right. No, but a little bit seeped out. All right, that's all right. That's what used to happen. With People me can get pregnant from a little bit of seeping out. That's what used to happen with me and Linda, yeah. But she wanted. Well, I won't even go. I, that's why. That's why Linda's the ex, I guess. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Were, you don't want to say nothing. Your yeah, kids watch it. A little seeping. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you were a free agent in college wrestling. College wrestling was drying up. You needed to get a job. Down south, it was. It wasn't up north and, and everywhere else. Is Just, that what kind of led you to the world of pro wrestling? Yeah, in a sense, because I had to go get a job. And, uh, you know, I hadn't worked a regular job since, uh, I think I stopped at the bowling alley around 16. And um, 
because the more I got into sports, the less I wanted to be, you know, wearing myself out at, at, at work, yeah. get off school and oh, then go yeah, to work. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and then, but I did work for a moving company. It was named Washburn with my brother. My brother, my brother got me on there. So I worked like a summer, I think my sophomore, junior year of high school. And that was it up until 20 years old. You know, I hadn't worked a regular job. And then after wrestling ended for me, it was like, shit, I gotta get a job. And uh, luckily for me, my high school wrestling friend, his name was Perry Pate. He, uh, his dad owned the uh, North American Van Lines branch in Columbus, Georgia, which is another moving company. He'd already had experience with that. So I went to work for him and um, I had learned how to drive a tractor trailer truck. Oh, really? Yeah. And so when they would have like long hauls, well, I say long hauls for, for that company, seven hours, like up to Richmond, Virginia or something like a seven hour, they would have me take the long hauls. Um, and you know, when you, when you load a truck, a trailer up with like 30 and you weigh it, so how you know how to charge, you know, the weigh stations and stuff, 30,000, 40,000 pounds of furniture is a lot. It's like a house yeah. with oh. three or four bedrooms and all kinds of German trunks and all that heavy shit you got to move up and down stairs. And, um, you know, I got, I got to the point where, uh, uh, it, man, I was, this is, what am I going to do the rest of my life? This is it? I mean, I'm going to move furniture. I mean, and, and what I was saying, what I was going to say out of that was, uh, you know, when you, add, you put 30,000, 40,000 pounds of furniture in a tractor trailer, and then you drive seven hours and you get there and you take a nap in the back of the, you know, if you want to save money in the back of the little sleeper, and you get up and unload that same ass shit. <laughs> and then, unless you can pick up another load, which they usually like to do because they don't want to dead head back. You're not making any money totally on that. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And so I mean, most of the time I was dead heading back with that trailer's bouncing because it's light, you know. And, and um, you know, I thought, it's, you know, yeah, this was kind of, I mean, I enjoyed it. I loved the driving. I liked, the, you know, driving a tractor trailer truck. I loved that. But um, it was just the, the hard part. Of, I say the hard part, the, the aggravating part. And I was never malicious, like you said. But I hated it when, when I'd get to the place, and it was especially with the mili military contracts. They, they were a little bossy asses. But it was a contract that all the, you know, from Fort Benning, you know, you piss off one person, you might lose that whole contract for the entire the entire base. So we had to be quiet and just, you know, yes, no. And, you know, we got this, I don't know what he was, a lieutenant or a colonel or something, some high rank. Not Nick Sand is the colonel. No, not him. Right. <laughs> but, uh, no, what was the other one that uh, Fuller did? Well, he was a colonel, wasn't he? Well, oh, he was Colonel Robert Parker in WCW, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, they, uh, they, they, they'd boss you around, like your your furniture mover and your truck driver. They, <clears throat> I want that over there. I'm looking at him like, do you think I'm in the military? You, you talking to me like that? Where you want this shit? <laughs> I'll make sure it goes further away than that. But um, yeah, they did a couple times, and um, the one <laughs> there were two incidents. I'll try to make them fast. Sure. Um, I had my friend Tom Lively. Uh, he, he wanted to learn to drive a truck, and he worked there anyway, moving the furniture. And what would happen when you got thirty thousand pounds of furniture to unload? You buy some dock workers, you know, some uh, unload the trucks and help load. And whatever cost they were, well, me and Tom together, both Tom's a hard worker too. Um, I, I might be a, you know, what y'all think is a, a, a party drunkard, drughead, whatever. But um, it, and you can ask any coach that's ever had me. Always the hardest worker there is, and it's the same way on the job. Uh, I think most people could say that about your body of work in professional wrestling that's on video. Yeah, yeah they don't understand. To be seen all over the world, starting where I started, must have done some kind of hard ass work. But, uh, you know, Tom and I wouldn't even have to go buy anybody at the docks, you know, uh, uh, waiting to, you know, to get whatever. Back then it was like, I think, $10 an hour. Um, and you'd have them for four hours. We'd just keep that money. And you were given, you were allotted that, you know, to spend on help. So we figured we'd keep that and eat good tonight. Yeah. And uh, we, and we would, the two of us would unload faster than three other guys you just hired or even two other guys. So we'd do it ourselves. We had to go to up to Nashville, and from where we was at, that was about five hours, four or five hours, and um, got to this place 
big ass, you know, you know he was a colonel or something, his big ass house, big ass yard. And you you know, you want to back the truck as far as you can and back the track the trailer truck can be a little bit, you know, tricky. You gotta, you know, and I was pretty good at it. I got lucky enough to be good at it. Um, but they had a telephone pole on one side of the little narrow ass driveway and a tree on the other side. And, and the road was narrow, you know, it was a two lane road. I couldn't swing out any kind of way. I tried one, like a little bit and Tom was just like, it's not even close, <laughs> not even close. And I was like, and it had rained, so it was, you know, it was a little damp out. And uh, I thought, well, and it was a freaking haul, man. It was, a, it had to be at least 100 feet, which that's over 30 wow. yards. For y'all that ever ran sprints, 40 yard sprints, you know how far that is to each piece of furniture. <laughs> you got to take it all that far. And then they had two little stairs to you, two little steps and then go in the house and then go back and get a damn dish barrel or, you know, some kind of, it would have taken us two days. So the only thing, you know, I kept looking like, wonder if we could cut through the yard right here and just go <laughs> sideways. Yeah, that's a good old Tom's. That's a good out here's country as hell. They gum good idea, Jeanette, one we do that. And I was like, I don't know if it, if it starts to bog down, let me know. So you know, that's why I don't keep backing up. We'll get back as far as we can. So I'm looking in the mirror and I'm backing up slowly. And, you know, Tom's with the, and I, and I get to a point where it's not back anymore. He goes, give us some gas. And I'm like, give it a little bit of gas. And I could hear this. And he goes, no, give us some more gas. You got to give it gas. You're fine. Come on. So I gave it a little more gas. He goes, and I see dirt shooting up about 20, 30 feet in the air. It covers him. He looks like a, a, a mud monster. <laughs> and I get out in the dam. There's a big ass uh, tie wheels, man. The wheel oh, is, wow. is down to about <laughs> midway in the yard. <laughs> you only see half the wheel off the, uh, the, tra the tractor itself. And the Tom's like, get in there and give us some more. Get your ass shut up. And he'll tell me, he's telling me, go in there and do it some more. And he's rocking back and forth. The band is down that far. So here comes the guy out there, you know, the colonel guy, the little asshole. And he's like, oh my God, what have you done to my lawn? When somebody calls the yard a lawn, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I called Perry. I said, Perry, we got a we got an issue here. He goes, What now? <laughs> I said, um, <laughs> Well, we were back in the truck through the yard, and he and I was waiting for him to start yelling. But it was, you know, on good hard solid surface, not a big deal. But it rained a lot up there, so he was like, still, he wouldn't say anything. He was like, Okay, waiting for the punchline. <laughs> uh, yeah, the truck got stuck in the yard. He goes, What do you mean it got stuck in the yard? It broke down. I said, Well, now the tire kind of spun and dug a hole and it's stuck in the hole. He goes, well, can you, he said the same thing, Tom, can you rock it back and forth? I'm like, I probably could just make the hole bigger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so he goes, I'll send a tow truck. See, he didn't know the seriousness of it. Mm. And so I'll send a tow truck out there. And uh, they, the tow truck come and pulled it out. But when it did, it was, it was making like grooves all the way up to the road. <laughs> so this guy had a nice green lawn. His lawn. And then two damn marks and trails and trailed up to the road. Where, <laughs> and, and probably we could have put a swimming pool in the first one. And then and I, I asked him, I asked the guy, because he was like bitching and complaining. I said, hey, if you'll get out of the way right there real quick, I'm going to try to back it right there. <laughs> he started having another fit. No, don't you come back through this yard. No, don't you come back there. So we had to move the furniture from the damn road. <laughs> step oh o step over them big ass track and <laughs> mud holes we just made. It took us, we start, it, it was a good, it, it would have taken from the back door. I mean, the closest we could have got would have taken four hours. It took us about 12 and wow. we got the lighter pieces of shit. We, we would almost be jogging <laughs> so we could hurry up and get the hell out of there. But after all that shit, it's about 10 o'clock at night. And we still got a six hour, you know, we're going to end up sleeping in the, in the sleeper or get a room. You know, they give you money for a room. But um, the man, the colonel's like, we were getting ready to go. All right, sir, we'll see you. No, 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 no. You guys ain't through. There's nothing else in the truck. What do you mean we're not done? And so uh, he said, uh, Y'all were supposed to, un and he's got the contract, so y'all were supposed to unbox every one of these. Uh, 
like, man, it's 10 o'clock at night. We're going to be seeing your personal items. You're going to do it now. I said, oh, okay, you're still talking to me like that? And he was bossing at me. I was like, hey, here, how's this? Click, click. I took the knife and cut the two pieces of tape in a long way and took the box and turned <laughs> it. <laughs> well, you emptied it up. Yeah. Then. <laughs> and when the next week goes, just get out of here. Don't mess with that one. And so we got to leave. But we all also got cussed out when we got it. When Perry's like, did you dump off his stuff all over the floor? I said, no, I emptied the box. He wanted me to empty the box. <laughs> and it was empty. Yep. Yep. She went everywhere. <laughs> that poor man. But he shouldn't have been yelling at us no. like that. We weren't in the military. Kindness but... doesn't cost 10 cents. <laughs> so after that experience, I thought, and, and then Perry getting mad at us and shit. And Perry's a friend of mine. He's having to yell at me and stuff. And I thought, Man, <laughs> yeah, Jerry Osa's got the gym, so I th I'm thinking maybe, you know, professional wrestling. Let me just go ask Jerry about it, <laughs> yeah. because I know they did a lot of traveling. Well, shit, what am I doing now? You were already doing the traveling yeah, part of it. And yeah, and I got to move furniture and do all that shit on top of the travel. So, you know, I went to him, and he said, yeah, you ought to. You're, you're really good. I've seen you in your sports here in town, and, yeah, you'd be great. You'd be a great one. So he, he trained me up, and... Took off and went and seen Armstrong's. <laughs> this all started with a, a, a tribute to Bob. To Bob it? Armstrong. How the yeah. hell did we get on moving furniture? <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, at what point in your career did you actually get to meet Bullet Bob? Um, in person when when we, um, I mean, like I'd seen him, you know, and, yeah. and you know, got autographs shit when I was a kid. But as far as once getting into business, me and Brad hit it off right away. Mm -hmm. his, his, you know, he passed away yeah, such a young yeah, age, man. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Um, that's why when you said a tribute to Bob, I'm thinking of Brad, too, you know, because Brad was, Brad was the best worker out of the group. You know, his he dad. He was fantastic. Yeah. Th his dad was, uh, you know, best charismatically, you know. That, charismatically? Charismatically. Chris, that's not even a word. Charismatically? You, yeah. That's not a word? Try to spell it. Well, no. <laughs> but so, but, but he had the charisma <laughs> uh, of the group, and, and Brad had the work ethic, or skills. I don't want to say ethic, because Bob works hard, too. Uh, but so, you know, when I saw Bob the first time, I think me and Brad, you know, he introduced me, like, like I didn't know who, who it right, was. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, very nice man, very good guy. And... Uh, you know, Bob Bob partied a little bit, not not crazy like us, but, but he was he was lighthearted with everything. Tony said he was a, a gimmick man. He liked a little bit of the cannabis. Yeah, he a lot of a lot of times he would go do in his later years, he'd go do a, a signings, autograph things, just for the money to go for that because he didn't care about you know needing no money or anything. No vodka in it. <laughs> but uh, where's my phone? Oh, there it is. Uh, that's, uh, in 1987, gosh, dang, man, time is gone. But we, we, we had got fired from WWE, or F, WWF at a the time. A one-day stint. Yeah, yeah. And we had to go, we went down to uh, Birmingham, and uh, they were based out of there, well, before, for, uh, what the hell was it called? Continental Wrestling, I think it was. And the Fuller's owned yep, it. Yep, yep. And um, we, uh, you need some coffee, you're falling asleep. No. Okay. But anyway, um, Bob was there. He was the booker, and you know, got to see him again. And he remembered me, you know, from being Brad's friend, his son's friend. And you know, he come over, and we all hugged. And you know, and we did. What was so cool is we got to work six man tags with him. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he did that on purpose. He was the one that's like, here, I'll let these little whippersnappers yeah. go in there do the work. I'll come clean up, <laughs> which was fine with me. I was. It was just a thrill to get to tag with him, you know, and 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 learned. I mean, I learned how. A lot of stuff from watching him. I mean, because he was getting a little bit older, he could still do a little bit. But as you get older, you start. <laughs> in, in the construction industry, they say, don't strain, call a crane. The same kind of thing. You use the knowledge that you know rather than the physical activity that you used to could do. Um, and, and, you know, I watched him do that. And, and in my later years, you know, I started incorporating what I saw him do. Um, you know, it all comes down to psychology of the crowd, and uh, but I learned so you know so so much from then and and man, I you know I think you can work as hard as you want, you'll improve a little bit on your bike skills, but I, I 
and I truly believe, sorry, I keep picking this paper tooth from mine, um, that you're, that's a, it's a gift, you either got it or you don't. When it comes to speaking on the mic, like mm -hmm. Dusty Rose, like The Rock, Stone Cold, um, you know, Ric Flair, uh, yeah, Bob, uh, Bob was great. Uh, you, it's a gift. Or a gift of gab, if you want to say it that way, but you either got that or you don't. You know, uh, as I said, you can practice in front of a mirror or a camera and watch it back and get more comfortable with it. anything you keep doing, you're usually going to improve a little bit. But these guys never had to practice. <laughs> you know, they just go, like, wham, two minutes, and you're like, where did all that come from? Um, but he, uh, I told you now, Bob was right, he was, he was booking it, and we had not been there that long, uh, maybe a couple months. And um, they, they, they called us, they had to change our name from the Midnight Rockers to the Midnight Rockers or Rollers, you know, because of uh, trademarks or whatever. And uh, I hated that, the Midnight Rockers and Rollers. And, um, Who won the train trademark on Midnight Rockers? AWA, I think. Yeah, that's why when we went to WWE uh, or F at the time, it was just the Rockers. The rockers yeah. yeah. But so uh, Sean was signing, you know, uh, autographs. You know, you know, it was a bunch of kids were standing out there signing, a bunch of people, not just kids. But, you know, Sean, he was just playing. He wasn't being, you know, like he sometimes could be, like arrogant and cocky. But he was just playing because a couple of the guys were out there with us. Uh, I think um, Tracy Smothers was standing out there with us. Oh. You know, and, he and Sean was just trying to cut up and be one of the boys. And this girl had a, like, one of them, not a, it's not a range, that windbreaker. Had a, wind, a white windbreaker, and, and Sean Wright wrote on the back. She thought he was signing his name. He wrote, I'm a whore. And, you know, he was looking at, like, you know, nudging everybody. Look, look what I did. Look what I did. Well, the girl couldn't see it, and she was all happy, and she ran and showed her parents. <laughs> well, and then there's that. Yep, and then next thing we know, the new owners, they just bought out the Fullers, and they didn't know anything about wrestling. They just saw wrestling was doing pretty good. They knew nothing about it. But they called a meeting that night at the show and said, uh, where's Shawn Michaels? He goes, I'm right here. I, I guess he thought he was going to get praised. He stood up and all proud and... And he pulled his jacket out, and I'm like, oh, shit. He goes, did you sign this? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and they said, um, you know, that girl was, I think they said 12 years old or Ooh. two. And um, Sean didn't say anything. They come around to telling him about professionalism or something. He goes, and he snapped on him. He goes, don't you rich people come in here and tell me how to do my job. Wow. You don't know shit about wrestling. You're going to tell me how to do my job? Y'all need to shut the hell up and learn the business first. Well, that night we had a show. <laughs> Bob was a booker and he come pull us over and he said, uh, and, and this is actually in Sean's book. He actually admitted it. He, he screwed up on that one. Usually he puts it on me. But Bob said, um, he said, guys, he goes, I hate it, but... Uh, they want y'all to finish up in a couple of weeks. And Sean's like, fuck that, we quit now. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm like, I'm looking at Bob and you know, he knew it was Sean's the one that did the shit. Right. And then he's now he's, but I stood with Sean, like he wanted to quit, so I quit with him. I didn't want to, but I quit with him because that's what you're supposed to do. Stick together, right or wrong, you know? Um, and, you know, Bob had pulled me aside. He goes, you need to be careful with him. That's all he said. That's all he said. And boy, wasn't he correct. <laughs> and, 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 and the overall picture later down the road, boy, wasn't he correct. And that's all he said. He did not say a bad thing. He just need to watch out for him. Uh, Short, sweet, and to the point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, in, a, a, in a sentence or two, Marty, what is Bob? Shit. Why would you even open right, with yeah. that? They're like that's going to happen. What is the, <laughs> the legacy that Bob Armstrong leaves to this industry as we wrap up this segment? Um, as I, a human being and as a professional. As a human being, just like my coach, the word integrity comes mm -hmm. to mind. Um, loaded with integrity. Uh, good man. Good family guy. Um, I, I think he loved to entertain. In fact, I know he did. And he raised his kids very good. They weren't none of them, you know, in jail and, and you know, like me, in jail and, and, you know, out robbing, raping and pillaging. You know, none of that crap. 
they were all good boys. So that means you was a good father, you know. So, uh, and and then his boys. I mean, the Armstrongs are now like the Mannings. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, there's a there's a, a family album of what they've done for yep. the world of wrestling, and uh, so he contributed probably bigger than most, you know. And, and like I say, he genuinely loved to the people and entertaining them, uh, like most of us do, but some of us more so than others, you know. Uh, but that would be, if that was more than two sentences, that would be uh, that. And, and great entertainer he was. He could talk on the mic, he was built good, he worked hard in the ring, knew what he was doing. Good man. Well, I tip my cap if I had one on. There, you want to borrow mine? You can tip it for me, thank you. Uh, Road Dog was the headliner of our first events back in 2001. Uh, we ran into, he had his personal problems. We had a nice comeback in 2007. Yep. 2010, he ran into some you know, problems. Now he was great. He's good on the mic. He, he had some of his natural like his dad. But I'll tell you this. You want to know why I think Road Dog is so classy? Why is that? He, he really screwed us over not, in two different runs. But out of everyone that ever pulled the no-show game, the holding up game, once he got clean and sober, he was the only one that ever apologized. Oh, really? And I'll never forget that. I have all the respect in the world for Brian. He's a good brother. Um, and again, I hope the Armstrong family is doing well. It's sad. His wife passed away just a couple of maybe yeah. months before. You, yeah. So you know, we, there's been a lot of that going lately. Um, we, we, we actually talked about that. His wife's gone. Uh, you know, It's been a tough year for the Armstrongs, and we send them our best. You know what? I don't know them personally other than Brian, but they're still part of the, the fraternity of what we do, so we send out our best. We like to do our remembrances. Right now, fans, we're going to take a brief time out, check out what's going on with the Paul Bear Cyber Toy Drive. We'll be back with segment two. Stand by. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep mighty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s Live Wrestling Event and Legends Fan Fest Celebration, Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autograph photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood. Get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You gotta see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. At Survivor Series, it was champion versus champion as WWE champion Drew McIntyre battled Universal champion Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman. Get this 11 by 14 poster autographed by all three men. Limited edition number 42 of only 50 with authentication hologram on the back of the poster itself. Comes with a mystery autographed 8 by 10 photo and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. 
All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. Nice tribute to Bob Armstrong. You get to know Marty's life a little bit more at a young age. Yeah, like you need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, along with Bob, and we did a recent tribute to Road Warrior Animal, we lost another uh, member of the fraternity, so to speak, a guy that I think was kind of underrated because of a, maybe oh, a, a bad position he decided to take with WWF. Tracy Smothers passed away recently, had a rough end of life. Um, with a variety of health problems. He yeah, he was, was fighting, I think what he was, was it, some type of a, oh, lymph node cancer yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Which is, it, it seems like rough. a losing battle from what yeah. I hear. Once it gets there, it's, it's quick. I know you had kind of a nice tribute to him on Facebook. Yeah. Any thoughts, memories on the loss of Tracy Smothers to us? Uh, you know, I just feel like that was another one of the good ones that the industry lost. Tracy and I had a lot in common. Um, we used to, um, when we get to the shows, like a lot of the guys go get dressed and kind of get their own, especially the the uh, what what's the name you used to call them? Big, we, they they kind of big league you, uh, which means they don't have nothing to do with the guys. Right. You know, yep, you're yep, the big yep. name and you go you're off to peasant. the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, <laughs> but um, you know, Tracy and I would always like want to help. Um, I'll never forget the one time, it was somewhere, I can't remember where the hell it was, but a small town, I think in Pennsylvania, well, I, I'm not sure where it was. Um, but, uh, you know, we got we didn't know where each other was on the show, and we got hugging, and how you been, and all that. And we were surprised to see him. Yeah. yeah. But both of us, we both didn't know. Just like the last time I saw him, we both didn't know. Um, but, you know, he was. we were looking around, it was like a young crew, you know, so you... If they're only like 21, 22 years old, you know they ain't got that much experience, you right. know. So we, we thought, well, let's take a couple of them to the ring. You know, because he would do that and I would do that separately. You know, he used to do it. I used to do it, take them to the ring and show them a few things. Um, but we did it together on this night because we were both there. And he, I think it was his suggestion. He goes, let's get a few of them, whoever. It was like we would just say, hey, we're going to go to the ring if anybody wants to, you know, come and ask questions or anything to the, to the locker room. And, you know, like about six or seven that day, they're like, we're glad to, you know, and we went out to, you know, like give a seminar kind of thing, yeah. you know. Um, but it wasn't an arrogant or cocky thing. I just hope nobody thinks that. We're like, we were so, hey, man, we've come here, let us teach you shit. It wasn't like that. It was like, you know, anybody wanting to, we're going to go anyway. You're welcome to come out with us. And they did, and then we showed them things, and we had like about, it, it got close enough to where they were let the people in, the, the promoters say, okay, all right, guys, wrap it up. Well, we was out there a good hour, hour and a half, you know, oh, wow. working with them, showing them things. And, you know, you know you did good at the end when they come hug you and thank you. Um, that always, now I'm going to get emotional cry. <laughs> that always gets me. Um, what does now? Well, I just, when, when, when a new, like a new kid, when they get something out of it, you know, and they really feel it. Um, yeah, I love that. I love it. And I love, like, seeing their faces light up when they get something like, oh. Now it makes sense. Yeah. You know, I love that feeling. That's yeah. part of the reason why I cannot wait for us to be able to have our live Boston Wrestling MWF events. Because if you do get healthy enough to actually get in the ring again, that's fantastic. But all the knowledge that you can share with the young roster of great. I mean, I know you you were very impressed by some of the footage you saw on YouTube of some of our live wrestling. But what yeah. you can give, the, I mean, you're talking about raw moldable talent right now. What they can get from learning from true pros. I don't want to get off the topic of Tracy Smothers too much, but I have to segue for a second. Okay. The problem right now that is someone that is runs these live events and works with these, again, the majority are great, good people that just want to get involved with something they love and try and make a career out of it. The problem is it's almost turned into Little League Baseball. Any <laughs> human being that wants to go to a wrestling school can pay a couple hundred bucks and then automatically they're in and then they're quote unquote professional wrestlers they sometimes yeah. go to wrestling schools by people that are, have little experience themselves weekend warriors yeah. i think anyone if they want to become a professional wrestler should go to a facility that is run by someone that had a it doesn't matter whether the top of the card bottom of the card a full time career in professional wrestling not working independent shows, but actually having a career in the industry where it was their full-time living. If they didn't do that, to me, 
They're not a true professional. That's my opinion. I don't know what you think. Yeah, well, other people like it's a side, it's a hobby. <laughs> they have a nine to five job during the week or eight to four, you know, whatever. And then on the weekend, we'll get involved with wrestling. But that's not that's not the true uh, spirit of, of the of the game. It's your life is dedicated. There ain't nothing else. Your whole life is dedicated to it. Um, that's how you get to know the ins and outs and every aspect of it. Uh, I, you know, I don't want anybody to not do, follow their, their passion or their heart. And I, the problem is there's so many of the guys ain't really out there doing it because they love it. They're out there doing it for the money. You know, it's a side job. It's a weekend. And they had three matches on TV maybe uh, as extras. Right. And, and now they're running, they're running a school. And there's no way they even know psychology. So how can you teach what you don't know? And, um, you know, that's, that bothers me because sometimes the kids get trained wrong before they ever get a match. They're already misinformed on what they're supposed to do. They've already been taught bad habits. Um, I'm not going to say a name because I love the brother, but when I went and helped my boy Rod Foyce, uh, would, he had a school that he wanted me to come help out with. Uh, and we named it Body Slam University, same as my one that I had in Houston, was Body Slam University. Mm -hmm. Now somebody down in Miami grabbed that name and, and put a trademark on it so he can't be using it. Oh, really? Yeah. I think he had some. I think Dwayne Johnson had a little bit. It might have been what Branch Off is or something. But anyway, um, you know, I, I went down there, and, and the guy that Rod was one of the guys, he had a couple guys showing. So that way, y'all don't know which one I'm talking about because I know they will see this. One of them was showing bad technique on stuff. You know, I come to observe it first to see what the kids mm -hmm. were used to so I can, you know, come in without making a big wave, but, you know, just blend right in with everything. So, and I'm seeing them, and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, you know like, if they've already been trained that, it's so hard to break a habit, you know, uh, whereas if they... It's almost like learning a language. It's yeah. instilled in their brain. Yep. Yeah, you got you to gotta unload the glass of water, make it empty again to put more in, <laughs> you know. And uh, what the hell did I just say? <laughs> I think I remember that from one of my Zen uh, readings. <laughs> but um, yeah, they, uh, yeah, they're getting taught wrong techniques and certainly not getting taught uh, psychology. If the guy don't even know how you twist the arm and how you should sell it, <laughs> you know, how, you, how the hell are you going to tell them how to get the crowd riled up or to settle down? But um, yeah, it's just... Uh, and, and like I say, I mean, you know, they do that in martial arts now. A guy go gets a black belt, and anybody that's deep into martial arts, except for the Brazilian, a black belt ain't nothing. <laughs> you're not anything until you're about second, third degrees where we really look at, okay, now this person is a martial artist. First degree and second degree. A true martial artist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but guys will go out and get a black belt and open a school. It's <laughs> the same, right. same kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm... I like it because it's giving opportunity to kids that want to want to uh, you know want to want to do it, and they don't have the maybe the, the the funds to go somewhere good like you know a school in Atlanta or Orlando or you know that one of the WWE places are running, uh, you know. So it's good for that, but yeah, you know it's like I say it's a mixed thing. It's like it's good because they're getting opportunity. It's bad because they're getting trained bad, <laughs> wrong. You know, Do so. you agree with that statement, though? If you, for the younger fans that may tune into this, yeah, if you have you. a true passion to enter professional wrestling and you want to get trained to do it, and you want it as your full-time career, is it their best course, Marty, to be trained by someone that was actually a full-time professional yeah, totally. wrestler? Not someone that says, I main evented independent wrestling shows. Someone that did this as their full-time living. It was their life. Because if that's what you want to do, why would you want to be trained by someone that didn't do it? I can't tell you how many times I've seen this over my career. I get 30 plus years. It's actually <laughs> over 35, 36. 36, yeah. So, um, people that have wrestled in front of 200 and 300 people, which is good because it's like, you know, they're getting a feel for yep. it in front of a crowd. But the first time they walk out in front of 20,000, they lock up <laughs> and can't remember a thing. They can't, they're stiff. 
You know, they can't move, you know, and, you, and when you stiffen up and you get nervous, you can't think. Um, you know, I have kids that come to me, you know, at shows and, and like, man, I'm nervous, man. I don't know what to do. Ask me, like, what did you used to do when you get nervous? I said, used to. I get nervous now. And they'll be like, no way. I said, yeah, I, this is what I tell them. And I, I've said this many times. The time to worry is when you don't get nervous. Because nervousness is there to make all your uh, reflexes sharper. Um, instincts are, are, are sharper, you know, because you're, you're, you're red alert. But you don't want to overdo it to where you're scared and nervous because then everything locks up. But nervousness is a friend. Um, it's taking care of you. you don't, get, don't worry about being nervous. Worry about not being nervous. That's when people get hurt. So lackadaisical that they don't care, like, oh, yes, yeah, just another match. And they go out there and break a leg or something because they're not paying attention. So uh, the nervousness part. But, um, yeah, but I guess we were saying, like, the, these teachers, you know, the, that's like Chuck Austin, the guy that got yeah. the broke neck. I mean, he was working, you know, in front of 150 people, and so he was, you know, and he was helping run. His, I don't know what the hell he was helping run. Uh, I mean, what he was teaching, but Couldn't he was helping a at, at yeah. a school. And um, got in front of 16,000 people and then locked up and he got his neck broke. And that cost me a half a million dollars because he thought he was prepared for that. You know, on the, on, during the, during the uh, interview they had with him on, uh, it was either Entertainment Tonight or American Journal, but he was on like three different things. Well, I was too, as the bad guy, you know, that broke his neck. Is that little bitch ass Nancy uh, Glass? Uh, Grace. No, no, that's no, not, Nancy Grace? not her. No, Glass. It might not have been Nancy. Something Glass, but she was in, the head girl for uh, American Journal, which is not around anymore. But um, you know that name sounds familiar, but I can't. Yeah, place she was it. a blonde haired when uh, Nancy this Grace. I would have backhanded her. I can't stand yeah. her. Do what? This is back in the mid '90s. Yeah. Yeah, '94 uh, ish, because we had already gone to court, and that was '94, beginning of '94, but. Um, she she uh, owned the thing. She goes. She kept saying, "Marty, this WWF superstar Marty Jannetty, not only slammed Chuck Austin through the floor, he broke his neck." <laughs> like like that was my intention. Like, <laughs> and then at like the it end, like it was a shoot or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, as she closed the show after showing everything, she says, uh, "And Marty Jannetty, the guy that slammed Chuck to the floor, no longer works for the WWF." But I did, and to me that was that was uh, defamation, or all, all kinds of character, all, all, yeah. all kinds of stuff that I call a lawyer. Nobody wants to mess with the media, <laughs> you know. And at least Trump will go ahead and call them fake media, you, you know. You but, had fake news in the the '90s. Yeah, it's always, no. it's always. You know, I'll, I'll tell you this one thing that I really didn't know Tracy Smothers, but one thing that impressed me about him is when ECW first started to come to this area. They ran in uh, Wonderland, Greyhound Park, and Revere, where you're staying. Greyhound Park. Greyhound Park. And it's a matter of fact. Park. Say Park and Marty and car. I went with. They straight Boston. <laughs> I went with Marty in the car to Wonderland, Greyhound Park. There you go. <laughs> and true. the funny thing is, year, a couple yeah. of years after ECW closed, that's where we had our first live event in that same venue. But anyway. Oh, you did? Yeah, was it wicked? It was wicked. Wicked, Good, wicked, cool. Yeah, um, and you know they had they were nice enough to invite us because I worked with Tony Rumble at that point, and they invited the guys down. And Tracy was in the ring before the show with a lot of the young ECW talent, the guys that would do the ring yeah. and things like that. And again, I really didn't know him, but it impressed me. I don't know if it was part of his job or he just did it because he wanted. No, he to. did it because he wanted to. But he was really giving of his time trying to teach wisdom, wisdom and expertise to these young ECW talents. And that's really my lasting memory of Tracy. What about you? You know him personally. Did you ever travel with him? Or uh, did you we, ever... We, we partied a lot. You know, and sometimes Tra Tracy gets stuck with the stigma of being a... A medicine man? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, again, with Tracy and I, we probably had about the same amount of years, you know, so, you know, we kind of gelled with that. You know, we had the same amount of experience. And, we're learning the together in the age, younger yeah. years. And you know, when you're young and you take some, uh, not, not the cocaine now, we'll leave that part out for, for now. 
but at a younger age when you start taking a, a pain pill so that you can perform again the next night because you, you got a little bit more than a bump or a bruise because those are like you know that's part of it. You, you, if you don't get bumped or bruised, you didn't do that. You didn't have a good match. <laughs> um, but um, when you get like a, a serious one where you're going to be gimping a little bit, and I give you an example, uh, I had to wrestle. Um, I think it was San Francisco at the Cow Palace. It doesn't really matter where it was. It was Bam Bam Bigelow. Um, you know, God rest his soul. I love him too, man. Love miss him. I remember I had to babysit his son one weekend. Oh yeah, you told me. That. I yeah. told you that story. Yeah. yeah. I like Bam Bam. Yeah, a good guy, super good guy. Well, you know what, what they call it, the leg scissors or head scissors, where you go running, you, nobody does that shit anymore, but you go running and you wrap the legs and you take them over, up, up, up around yeah. the... Yeah, you did that to Bam Bam? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And well, you she, sold it? Uh, I, I sold it. Because <laughs> 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 uh, he was four, right, right at 400 pounds, 375 yeah. pounds, and when I twisted the rolling, Twist him, you know, for him to flip over. God, right across the ankles, and you know, I, I was like, oh, like it was burning. When you crack something, when you crack a bone, it's a burn. It's like a fire, and you feel it racing coming up your leg or wherever you break up your arm or whatever. I felt it, but I didn't realize it at that point. That's what a broken bone will feel like. And and actually, it was uh, just a small one that got cracked uh, because you actually broke a bone. Yeah, from that. And um, went to, there was a doctor, it must have been somewhere near L.A. because Dr. Unger was the team doctor, you know, unofficially. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, there's some stories there with him and, no, I'll be quiet. <laughs> I get myself into that. We'll save that for the chronological order. Yeah, well, he had a pretty wife, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. No, uh, Dr. Unger. Uh, not me. I mean, not, yeah, but not me, you know, dabbling around in there. But, You're showing how. Oh, no, I didn't. I don't do that. I mean, I, there's plenty of stuff without messing with married people or even dating. You know, that's not right. You're messing with there's the heart. There's plenty of fish in the water. And you did a lot of fishing. Yeah, <laughs> with an empty hook. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyway, Dr. Unger, I think maybe we were in San Fran and we flew in the next morning. He had me come down and do x rays. And he'd come out and said, I can't believe you're walking around. And, and you know, it's impossible. This is impossible. I'm like what? He goes, you've got a broken bone down there in your ankle. I said, well, it hurts pretty bad. I don't know why you think it's impossible. It hurts. And he gave me a couple of Vicodin, I think it was. But, That's it? Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. Now, I mean, this is like way back when I was younger. I, I you know, back then I hadn't started dabbling with them, you know, or I had to take six, seven, eight at a time. Um, but I, man, it kills the pain off and, and you... For, for me, I can't speak for everybody. And again, remember now, this was all new to me. Well, yeah. I went to the ring that night, and I, I forgot who I had to wrestle. But we had a great match. You, you know, Kurt even, Hennig, Kurt so Hennig. You broke a bone in your foot, and you didn't even have a night off. No, I, wow. I, I didn't want a night off. What I a professional. That, well, it wasn't even that. I wanted that money, and plus what girls were in that town. Yeah, there you go. You had to keep up with the social life, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I, Vince actually made me take time off once. Really? Yeah. Uh, Justin Bradshaw uh, or J J O B. John Layfield. Yeah. J B L. But he Mary went to just something. Justin, Justin Bradshaw. Justin Hawk Bradshaw. Yeah. Uh, oh my God! When he came in, he had Dutch Bantel as his manager. Pretty Dutch, yeah. Yeah, and and two good friends. Boy, yeah, I love him to death, both of them. Uh, but oh my God, was he stiff and rugged to talk about Justin? Or, late, or what's he go? What's his real name? John. John. Um, right, he he picked me up and slammed in my arm. When I landed, it was back here. There's no way you can land there with your <laughs> arm behind your head. And, and then I was like, God, oh, and I felt that burning. And then I got up, and here comes that Larry. <laughs> it was laid in too. So I'm like, this. Yes, I don't know which one to hold. <laughs> and uh, it tore the rotator in the shoulder. Oh, you know, wow. when I landed like that. But uh, and I couldn't get my arm up past right here, and uh, and it was painful, you know, when I would. If it was okay, just hanging, but yeah, trying to raise it in yeah. pain, and uh, you know, I went for about a week. But the matches, the quality of the matches weren't the same, you know, because I couldn't, you know, one arm a great match. And Vince came up to me somewhere I don't remember where it was, uh, but he came up and he goes, "I understand you're hurt." And I'm like, well, not bad. He goes, I saw you in the ring tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He does not do. So I can't remember if he called me MJ or, or Janetti. What are you saying? Janetti, I'm used to. Um, it, we would rather you take some time off and heal than gut these out. And I'm like, no, 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 I got, you know, I'm fine, I'm fine. He goes, we'll still pay you. Don't worry about the pay. We'll keep paying you. But we need, he goes, Crantage, your 75% is better than most 100. What a nice compliment. Yeah, I mean, it coming from him. Yeah. You know, and so that's what a lot of people don't understand. Vince, he does, he, he is a good man. He's just in a bad position. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's hard to own a, a, a billion dollar uh, company and not talk. piss somebody off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he told me, you know, we, we'd rather have you 100%. It'll take time off. We're going to keep paying you. And it wasn't full amount, you know, but it was still a good paycheck. Um, and I was sitting at home still missing it. I didn't want to be How home. How long were you out for? Not that long, maybe oh. 10 days. Oh, okay. So it wasn't no. terribly long. No. Uh, and, and, and I didn't, you know, the first couple of days, I'm like, off the road, okay. But third day, I'm like, man, <laughs> back to the road. Come on, shit, hurry. Heal. That's the problem with coronavirus right now. So many of the guys, they go stir crazy because they're so used to be on the move. You know? Man, you're going to start another war. Don't get me talking about that coronavirus. All right, all right we won't go to the No, because it's... Talk about maybe... If I were to say it was a, the second wave is bullshit, people would get mad at me, but it's the truth. All right, well... Hopefully. You know what is... What Knock we, on what wood, we we're talk not going to have anything like that happen in round two. What did we say earlier? We were talking about it. Ain't it, ain't it kind of uh, amazing that... Um, that um, it, it just cranked back up for round two, right? It flew a cold season. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, anything the CDC doesn't understand. I don't care if y'all come after me. Come on, what are you going to do? I'll put Swaggy on you. Uh, and Waggy, he's got an accomplice now. But, um, you know, it's... it's, it's now nah, I won't get into the political side of it. Well, let's talk about, back to Tracy Smothers. Yes. Do you think he made a mistake? taking the offer with WWF to become Freddie Joe Floyd? A lot of people do. I mean, I never, I think I was gone then. I'm not no, sure. No, you were still there. I was there? In 96, yep. It must have been a mistake then. <laughs> 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 oh, I know why I didn't pay, I didn't notice too much. I was embarrassed about my own, if it was 96. You were doing the tag. The new rockers. Al. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, I loved can't it. wait to get to that time period in our interviews. <laughs> okay, I, I was just going to tell something. But, uh, yeah, Al Snow, I love him to death. He's another one that loves helping. You know how you say he's Oh, we've had so Al at live. Al did seminars with us when he was in charge of WWE development, when he did it for TNA. He's been here in the studio. He's worked at live events. There's a story about me and Al's book. Is that right? Yeah. They spelled my name wrong. He's got a book? He's got a book. When did that come out? Summer of 19? Damn, I, I've been drunk that long. <laughs> It's, fun. I, it's I gotta than get the, that. It's kind of like a story, of, a book of funny stories, as opposed to an well, that would be Al. You know Al. You know his crazy. That's kind of what of mine is too. It's, it's rather than being like straight chronological, which you kind of want it that way. Yeah. A little bit, but man, it was so hard because I, I read. You, you can probably tell from this show. I like to go all over the deep place. into them stories. See, you, <laughs> one one word can trigger me into like, oh yeah, let me tell you about this. Are you familiar with Al's story about the horse? Not that I know of. I'm going to send you a link to that one tonight, too. You're oh. going to have some laughs on your cell phone when you go back to the hotel. Okay. <laughs> You're going to get links galore. You won't even be able to sleep. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, Freddie Joe Floyd, kind of a name that was a rib on well, the Briscoes. And oh, really? I know I've seen a lot of people comment, and, and, and you know, like after he died, you know, on, on my site where I you know, did a tribute. A lot of people were saying that was the death of him. That was where it's, it's, they really did him wrong, giving him that gimmick. I don't even know what the gimmick was. I remember the name of it, you know, you know and I never... Well, that's a combination of the two Briscoe brothers' real names, Jerry and Jack. Okay. And, and but what was the character? What did he do? He was just, he was a job, almost like an S.D. Jones type. He was a jobber that had just a little bit of a name value to him. Oh, glorified. They, remember they brought okay. in Bill Irwin as the goon. Um, Tom Brandy as Salvatore that. Sincere, uh, Alex the Pug Perto. They brought in Barry Wendham and ignored that he was Barry Wendham and they called him the Stalker with face paint. Yeah, so they were that. just uh, where it was a time when they needed What did they have Spivey do? He had a little Who? black Danny Spivey. Waylon Mercy. Yeah, that was but that it. was actually going to get a big push, but his body was just done. 
It was, yeah, he was broken up, man. Yeah. But those promos he did, I mean, that was Bray Wyatt in 1995. Yeah. That was Bray Wyatt in 1995. That might be where he got some of his info. That's how you do. You watch others yeah. and take it and you mold it around and adjust a little bit and tinker with it, put your own flavor in it, then it's yours. I remember we were at a TV tape and they did in, it, it was at the, not at the Worcester Centrum in Mass, but the Worcester Memorial Wait a Auditorium. Minute. See, you just triggered something. What? Worcester, I love all my mass people. Worcester back then was the nastiest place. And the reason I say that, Sean and I had a two hour signing. I've told people this before, two hour signing. In Worcester Mass now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, at some mall or something though. And it was a line, you know, it was so many people and it was, for some reason, it was a lot of more girls. And so you were, you know, we were putting arm around us, we we're putting arm around them and, and you know, for hours, couple, couple hours, arms around, they hugging you and taking pictures. And I had a white shirt on. And at the end of that two hours, it looked like I'd been doing a motor mechanic. I had dirt. Really? And dirt. <laughs> yes. And Sean was like, no, you want to know why? I said, yeah, because we've been hugging him. He goes, no, look at that girl over there. There was some girl that she had a white jacket on. And she had some coloring or something in her hair. And it had gotten all over the back of her jacket. <laughs> She's walking around like, like that. And, and But they were just... I know it's not that way now, and that was just a bad day, but gosh, dang, they were, and, and, and some of them smelled so bad, you would hold your nose, you're trying to smile, right? It must be tough doing personal appearances, <laughs> dealing with filthy people. It was only in Worcester. <laughs> Every other personal appearance, they've been clean. No, and not all of them, but most but of them. Worcester was bad. Worcester, you, there wasn't a clean person there, they wouldn't have stayed there. <laughs> now, if I would, you know what, I'm not going to name the city that I would have guessed. I guess it would have been you. the armpit of Massachusetts. Springfield? Or as Annie, well, you might have took the words right out of my mouth. As <laughs> Annie calls it, Massachusetts, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, but anyway, at that TV taping in Worcester, oh my, the, he was, that was a character that was over with those fans, and it was still relatively hey, sorry new. sorry about that, Springfield. And they, and they just, they couldn't do much with it because Spivey was really physically done. Yeah, it's a his shame. body I was think broke that up, had, I thought that had a lot of potential. Yeah, the character was good, and he played, you know, yeah. so, you could give one person a character, like the Rockers. I mean, that didn't, we kind of did it when it first started down in, uh, it was, you know, to be, it was a takeoff of the Rock and Roll Express, but I didn't know that. I just thought it was a, a pretty snazzy little little thing, and they called us Uptown Boys. But they didn't know how to explain it, but they wanted us to be very rockerish, uh, rock, rock star, you know, uh, gimmick. And the guy that I was tagging with, I won't say his name because I don't want to, you know, any ill will feelings, but Tommy Lane would, um, he would, he would, uh, he, he was a country guy, you know, country, uh, Dalton, Georgia boy. Good guy. I mean, Tommy good, Lane? Yeah. Doesn't ring but he went as Tommy Rogers, not the Tommy Rogers oh. we know. Oh, oh, he, a different, not the Tommy Rogers that passed away. No, not different, him. Yeah, not not him. the Fantastics Tommy no. Rogers. Oh, okay, a different one. Okay. Yeah, they didn't even get him to change his name right, you know, <laughs> Tommy Lane. Uh, they gave him Tommy Rogers, like, there's already a Tommy Rogers, what the hell? Uh, I guess, they, they, he was already named before I got there. Um, but he was a very country kind of guy, and, you know, the whole rock and roll, yada, 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 wearing all the, you know, the, the fringes and stuff hanging. Here he comes out, scruff beard, and just looked like a country guy. And you just could never really adapt to being that rock and roll type thing. For whatever reason, maybe he didn't like it. I think he was upset because him and Dusty Wolf, a real good hey, he did one of the doinks, and he also wrestled. Uh, oh, he was a, an, an, one of those kind of featured enhancement talents yeah. for forever. He was a great yeah. worker, yeah. So he could use him forever, and uh, good guy too, man. We got some, <laughs> me and him had some good stories, but um, yeah, he would probably be best telling it. But but he, um, Tommy Rogers just couldn't ever get to that rock and roll type of thing. Some people can't. Uh, but what, that's what, what I, I guess what it was meant to be said. I said all that to say that Mercy thing fit Danny. Danny was able to, to portray it out there to the people in such a way that it was like believable. Whereas you might have given that same gimmick. So you think the gimmick's good. It's the person and the gimmick co combination that makes it work. And the next person might have been horrible with it. You know, it, it took uh, Tatanka like a year to get the the Indian thing down, Chief Strongbow. Really? Yeah, well, yeah, Strongbow worked with him every night. He'd come say, you'll add this, take that out. Don't do this, don't do that. 
And then, and then uh, Chris took, uh, Tatanka took it from there and did, did real good with it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, that's like Warrior before they cut him loose on the people. He did house shows only, no TV oh, yeah, tapings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a year to get that character down. And once he did, though, boy, did yeah, he it took off. <laughs> he was a very smart guy, man, very smart. With uh, Tracy's mothers, though, I think it was tough oh, yeah. for anyone to use him with any credibility where they saw him basically as a 1996, almost S.D. Jones-esque type character in WWE. He had to run an ECW as a part of the FBI tag team, which him, Tommy Rich, and little Guido all played Italians. About them, yeah. that, was, that was fun, but it was, you know, undercard tag team comedy for the most part. Well, you do get put in a box when you, you do know. the same kind, when yep. you change characters and it's still in the mid card to yep. lower, you get labeled. You know? That's like a comedian actor all the time. They didn't want to go do a serious uh, drama thing. Right. You, you know, it You're typecast. Yeah. Be like Jim Carrey trying to do Hamlet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, any fun memories of Tracy on the road with him? Yeah, but I can't tell those here. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, it was just, you know, the wild women parties and stuff. Um, I will say, uh, back in the crazy days, you know, we, we certainly wouldn't do it anymore, but no. him, him and I had a habit. And we actually learned it from Bill Dundee. Um, when, when somebody, like, you know, there's people that show up. I've mentioned that in shows before. You know, if you like the powder stuff, they come give you the, the shake, you know, and they throw that vial, you know, it's their gram, or it might be three grams, which, you know, eight ball, three, three and point whatever. A three, uh, an eight ball vial or a one gram vial, but it's in a handshake. You don't see it at the airport, and you know when you get that handshake, but make sure you don't drop it, especially if there's a policeman around. But, uh, it's like what Glantz does. What's that? It's like what Glantz does. Glantz. Glantz. Which one's that? You remember Glantz? I remember the name. Goliath. Oh, yeah. Plants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's missing an action. Again? Well, maybe it was the corona. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes they show up at, at the places they know you're going to be. They hey, hey, you, gimmick, you, yeah. take a, you take the top off a pill bottle, and the guys will reach in and grab one or two. You know, you got to pick it out the little. And Bill Dundee, the first time we were all together, Bill Dundee and Tracy and I and Bill Dundee, he took the, the guy's got the little pill bottle, he goes, mate, let me try something. And he just turns up, he don't got no idea what's in there. I mean, it could be quaaludes, and it could be speed, oh my God. and it could be downers, the uppers. Whole not, not the whole bottle, oh, but, but he just few? turned it up, about 10, 12 of them went in there. And we looked at each other and like, hmm. <laughs> we did it too. Then the whole bottle, we gave the guy the bottle back, and he looked in there and didn't say, he didn't see anything, he goes, well, all right, I brought it for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear the story Percy told me, and I, I was in hysterics, about Terry Gordy on the plane, and he was sitting next to an old lady that was trying to organize her pills. And he said, well, you know, they became friendly, and she gave him some of the different pills. And <laughs> Terry Gordy passed out on the plane. And apparently he said to Percy as they were as he was on a stretcher leaving the plane, I think it was the blue one, Percy. <laughs> <laughs> so he probably got some damn play loops, man. Or, or, or. Well this was from no, this was from a little old lady that was you know, she probably had one of those Sunday, Monday, Tuesday little pill gimmicks. Right, yeah. And Gordy just saw took pills them and figured, <laughs> well you know what, something's gotta be good in there with all of them. Yeah, I'll find it. And I, I don't know I have no idea what it was that he took, but I just remember Percy saying as they were wheeling him off the plane. He said, Percy, it was the blue one. <laughs> well, anyway, as we wrap up this wild episode, any, any final thoughts, memories on Tracy's legacy as a, as a person, as a pro? Tracy was one of the best-hearted people I'd ever met, cared really? about everybody, loved everybody. Much like myself, I said we had so much in common. When I saw how much he cared about teaching the young guys, you know, um, when I broke in, Jerry Oates always told me, Go, don't be afraid to ask the veterans for help because it, it, it'll be flattering to them. It'll make them feel good that you care enough to ask them. Um, and, and so I did. I was you know, still shy and stuff, but you know, I would go say, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? Why this or why that? Or what do you think about this? You know, whatever. And um, you know, some of them, most of them appreciate that you ask. Uh, some of them, if they saw that you were getting good fast, 
they said, you're worried about their job. <laughs> you're like, no, I'm not going to tell you what I know. <laughs> no, you ain't taking my spot. You know, which that's something we never cared about. If you could take my spot, you you belong there. You know, that's the way I would look at it. And I think Tracy looked at it too. You know, if you want to make the industry, you, you know, if you're better than me, hey, I'm not going to hold you down, but <laughs> I'm not telling you what you need to know. But, uh, you know, Tracy was like that, good-hearted, good soul. I don't know anybody except this one girlfriend that was pissed at him and talked a whole bunch of shit to me about it over back in MySpace days. And, I mean, I had to block her or whatever it was, defriend. I don't even know what the hell he called it back in MySpace. Um, but she just talked him down, and I, you know, I tried to, one or two comments to her, just through messaging. Um, that, no, he's not that way. It's just, and, oh boy, she wanted to put him in jail and do this, and he's a sorry oh, wow. ass motherfucker and all that. But I kept standing up for him. Good feel. She got, the word got back to him because, and we bonded more. He came up because I heard my bitch, ex bitch was saying stuff to you, and I saw one of the things she said, you stood up for me. And she goes, that's the way it was supposed to be at old school. We stood up for each other. And, you know, he hugged me. He said, thank you so much for doing that. And, uh, you know, but it came now. I wasn't doing it for the thank you. It came natural. That's, that's my boy, and that's one of the boys. And I don't know this bitch from the bitch of the, the night before. Right. I didn't mean to say bitch, but I did. And, and um, you know, talking all that shit to who knows I'm a friend of his, right, and talking all that shit about him to me. Um, and I tried to, you know, squash it, you know, just at least let her know, take it somewhere else. Don't bring her here. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I never got ugly with her. I just I got rid of, you know, away with it. Go on. But, uh, yeah, he was, other than her, I never heard anybody that met Tracy said a bad word about him. Tony. Fact, <laughs> huh? Tony. Yeah. Tony buried him in that tribute to him when he came well, Oh, what happened? I, he, I guess he felt uh, Tracy was a little on the racist side. Come on, Tony, stop that race stuff. Everybody loves you and, and, and people. You know, that we in the wrestling world, I, I'm going to see if I can think of anybody I know that was racist in the wrestling world. Um, nope. Can't think of anybody that was a racist because you learn to love everybody if you didn't do that already. Uh, when, you, when you're giving your body to each other, to, here, I'm up in the air, upside yep. down, I'm trusting you. <laughs> you know, if, if I don't like, if the person don't like you or just like, fuck you, they can just let go right here, you know, and you're going to land on your head. We're giving each other our bodies. You learn to love that person, and, and, but, but you really should come in loving everybody anyway. Uh, you know, maybe it's different for me because, you know, I grew up with different races uh, as a kid. Um, but, you know, I just, so for me to say you should love everybody, not you know, judge by their skin color or where they live as far as rich or poor, because I got, I got that shit real bad. Um, you know, especially when I went to a rich high school, you know, and I was a poor kid and wearing some, three, three clothes, three sets of clothes I could wear for a week. I mean, I had to alternate Monday. Oh, wow. Uh, Tuesday I had something, then Wednesday it's back to the first set, Thursday maybe a third, and then Friday back to the first or second set. That's all I had, and after about a month everybody recognizes that, you know, and, and they started, you know, they always would mess with me. My first you know, sophomore and freshman year, but, but then I started getting pretty good in sports and it, all that changed. And, uh, but uh, that kind of prepared me for the world of pro wrestling. Uh, unlike some people, like Sean couldn't handle it at first because he come in so young. Um, it came from a background of you know having having you know stuff. Mm -hmm. Hell, he was 20 years old. He had 300 ZX, you know, brand new. Oh wow! Yeah, and, and you know he didn't buy it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but uh, just saying, you know, uh, you, you uh, I forgot what I was saying. But other other than um, you know. It, it, it just, it really kind of bothers you a bit. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to say, uh, was watching all those same kids at my high school, and I'm not knocking any single one of y'all, I'm just saying in general, because I love all my people there. I, I didn't back my freshman and sophomore year. I think I fought more than anybody in the school. Um, they, uh, they, all of a sudden, I'm the, the, the poor kid that don't belong at Hardaway High School. You know, it's not hard. One guy said Hildebrand, whatever his damn name, something Hildebrand. Well, he's just not Hardaway material. 
Doesn't matter how good he's, he's doing in sports. He's not Hardaway material. Man, I wanted to rip his head off. Um, <laughs> who wants to be Hardaway material? You know, materialistic motherfuckers wearing eyeside shirts and khaki pants and penny loafers with a penny in it. <laughs> you know, gosh, damn, I want to be a part of that. But, um, you know, they, so, by, this, by my junior year, I, everybody loved me. Everybody wanted to go hang out with me. You know, our crew, you know, Watford and McGee and, and Tim Dobbs and all my boys, Tom Lively. Tom, the one that she tore the, tore the yard, you know, ah, come on back, you got it, dead gum, chicken shit, bring it on back, uh, him. But um, <coughs> we, uh, everybody, we were all good in sports, too. Everybody loved us, but they were probably not as bad off as I was as, as far as being raised. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, so I was a poor outcast. And uh, because of desegregation, too, I lived one block over from where I should have went to Kendrick was more of my people's uh, financial status. It wasn't, you know, the, the desegregation zoning had me taking a bus to the school, rich kids. And uh, they, uh, you know, they made fun of me and shit. And they, and, and, but I saw how they changed when I started winning stuff in football and wrestling like and track. Yeah. You know, all, all the sports, you know, doing good and I'm in the papers for them and all that stuff. Um, and you know, everybody wants to hang out with me. And I'm sitting there remembering this is the same people laughing at my clothes yeah. last year, you know. And, and so I learned to handle the bullshit. Prepared me for pro wrestling because that pro wrestling, nobody knows me or, is, you know, how he says it. You can't see me. Um, you, you'll just know what you see on TV. That's why a lot of times... More times than not, and a lot more than not, people are shocked when they meet me because they hear about all these stories on the internet. And then they meet me and they're like, wow, you're nothing like what everybody says. I mean, you're the nicest guy. You're, you're friendly, you take your time and talk to each one of them, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Then they get to know me, but just seeing me on TV and reading what you read on the internet, you don't know me. And, um, but, but you're gonna cheer for me and yell for me and, and you know, um, first, I, 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 so many times I've heard people talking shit about me on the internet and then I run across that person and, and, and talking shit about me at the arena or something. I walk, how y'all doing? Like, oh my God, it's Marty Janae, hey man. Oh, I love you. I just heard him talking shit about me, right? It's funny how they do. Even on the internet, they'll be talking on a, on a thread, they'll be talking shit going on and on and, and I'll like chime in one time. What? You know who it is, right? Danny? Oh man. Donald Trump, you can't call me while I'm at work, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> I probably should get it, huh? Y'all want to talk to Donald? Well, we're just about done wrapping up this show. Here, let me turn the ringer off. All right. Wait a minute. Don't call back here no more. We don't want none. Don't come around here no more. <laughs> no, you told them. That, that's it? That's all you called to say nothing. I'm glad that. We had a nice tribute to Tracy after what we had on with Tony. But so, so anyway, to finish that up, oh, okay. I learned from high school how to handle the uh, everybody loves you type of thing. You just got to take it with a grain of salt. You don't, you don't, you don't fall for the hype. <laughs> Where will you ever find a greater variety of human being than in what we do in wrestling? That's it. You know? Uh, I noticed that from the get-go. All right. Marty, another interesting episode. We remembered Tracy Smothers, Bob Armstrong, and a whole lot of other things we didn't expect. But that's just <laughs> part of the charm of the show. For the future Hall of Famer, Mr. Marty Gennetti, I'm Dan Moratti. You know Open. I'm a Hall of Famer now. Which Hall of Fame are you in? A bunch of them. One in Texas, one in West Virginia. <laughs> State Hall of Fames, I guess you'd call them. What about the Idaho Hall of Fame? Have you made that one yet? Idaho, you know, the, you know, you heard what that girl did was Miss, Miss uh, uh, Universe or Miss... America and, and Miss America pageant and they asked her what her talent was and she's Idaho <laughs> <laughs> and there she you was from it. Idaho and Idaho. there you have it wrestling fans again don't forget the ninth annual Paul Bear holiday headlocks toy drive head on over to bostonwrestling.com you and yours enjoy the it, holiday season I, I, I'm, I did I might as well tell you I had yeah. sex with her did you Miss Idaho Miss yeah. Idaho yeah and, and did she fit the description well, she was, yeah, pretty much because at yeah. first, during the beginning of, of, you know, she was a very positive person. You know, she kept going, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. 
And then, you know, a little deeper into it, she says, oh, God, a very religious person. Really? Oh, religious God, woman. oh, God. But then at the end, she faked orgasm because she got, started going, oh, Marty, oh, Marty. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Did she get the Vanna White treatment? You got to stop bringing that up. I got a call from her agent. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we won't go there, I guess. He already did. All right. But did Miss Idaho have any special skills? Oh, well, I'm not going in the ass eating Annie again. No. You got to leave did, that lady alone. Did Miss Idaho have her skill? I, I, from what I remember, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Annie. If she only knew the fans are requesting her. To come to the studio to tell her ass eating we should, tales. We should bring a mannequin and sit <laughs> right here. Funny, though? I, and we're getting ready to go, and it is Christmas time after all. But can you imagine the rat interview we could have? <laughs> we have like that panel that Phil Donahue had during the sex scandal. Imagine if we had all the rats from the different cities come and tell their stories. I think that would be the greatest interview It ever. would be pretty good, but you, you ain't got enough room in the studio. <laughs> well, we'd have to be selective, unlike them. Yeah, All right. the <laughs> <laughs> Until we speak again, folks, be healthy, stay well. All that jazz. Merry Christmas. Good night. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans, hope you're enjoying this all day, all night. Marty Jannetty Wrestling Insiders, Potty with Marty Marathon. Please like, share, and subscribe. Get the word out on social media so the millions of fans that don't know we exist will find out we exist and can join the fun. That way we can keep more wrestling legends coming into the studio, thus more wrestling history documented, thus more wrestling legends working. See how it works? It's simple. As noted, we're 94% of the way to gold to, on our Marty Jannetty and Diogo campaign to get him back to Boston to kick off season two of Marty's No Holds Barred. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll look at the 80s, 90s, and current events. We miss our friend. Check out the link in the premiere box, the description box below, and across our social media platforms. Every single dollar counts. If you missed the Berserkers live episode Sunday and Monday, we have a few autographed 8 by 10 and 11 by 14 posters remaining that will help get us the big man from Fridley, Minnesota back in this studio. Visit the link in the description box below to check out those photos. As noted, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now to Boston Wrestling Sports. Back to the 80s live MWF wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose, Massachusetts. We've already announced seven of the promised eight VIP WWF 80s legends, including WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champion Zack and Smash Demolition, uh, and you never know the, with the potential of the mass superstar and repo man creeping around. WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton. The Wild Berserker. Evil referee turned wrestler turned back referee dangerous Danny Davis with the eighth VIP superstar announced Monday night before WWE Raw. As John Cena Sr. and I have promised, if you guys get those VIP packages and tickets ASAP, we're going to bring you a ninth featured superstar if we can 
sell out of them soon? What about a 10th featured superstar or more? We want to give you the best experience and value for your time and money in professional wrestling. Let's face it, WWE is not bringing WrestleMania to Boston. It's too cold. It's too risky for bad weather. So this April, we're bringing a slice of WrestleMania history to you. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com. Now get your VIPs in tickets to a wrestling celebration. Decades in the making. Let your friends know. Let your family know. Let's blow the roof off of Memorial Hall. With that said, I've taken up enough of your time. Back to Marty. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. Marty Gennetti here. Marty, pleasure to have you back as we continue to plow through your career in the World Wrestling Federation. Thank you, Dan Marotti. Uh, let me just uh, remind the people, still doing tribute to Road Warrior Animal. They, you know, own the Z Zuaz Company and, uh, you know, just for still for them. Yeah, I think these are Atlanta Falcons that he gave me because he knew, he knew as, as you can see, the Atlanta Falcons guy. Yeah. See, and when I first saw them, I thought they were Legion of Doom pants because they wore the red and black. They, they did, did, didn't they? You yeah. smartened me up that it was for the Falcons. Yeah. So, I mean, well, like, maybe, you know what? It could be unisex colors. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, could and be. Then, and you kind of got Buffalo Bills style colored hat. Yeah, or the Florida Gators because I'm a big fan of them. And so... You know, they're, they're, you know, in college, I got the trio. It's Atlanta, uh, or Georgia Bulldogs. We'll go over to Alabama, Alabama Crimson Tide, and then it's a triangle there, the trio triangle. Roll Tide. And Florida Gators, yeah. Roll they, Tide. They That's were, what he always they, used they, to say. They, oh, yeah. Roll He's right tide. down there in Mobile, yeah. <laughs> Him and those bad big chin. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alabama should win it this year if they play all the games. Wait, wait, what's the date right now? January 14th. Oh, never mind, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Again, fans, as we've noted, we do have to pre-tape many episodes at a time because it's the only uh, financially feasible way to do it. Plus, Marty had a, a series of meetings down in Georgia, so he's only with us for two days instead of three. So we really had to cram, to cram it, it together. But, yep. with Marty, we started last week uh, discussing the great year that was 1989. I consider it to be kind of the last great year of WWF before it kind of dipped a little bit in 1990 after WrestleMania 6 when Hogan left and Warrior had the title, but we'll get was there. Was that 1990 or 91? That was 90 when 90. Warrior won the title. We're going to get there eventually, but I thought 1989, you know, if you look at the roster around Survivor Series time, which it's going to take several episodes to get to, but that's, I think, one of the greatest rosters in wrestling history WWF had at that time around Survivor Series. Yeah, I think I mean, so. I mean, it was just, forget, you, you could have gone to a, a, forget about a D team, you could have gone to an E team. There was so much talent. Yeah, I and mean, they almost did go to, like you said, the D team. Because we were running three shows tonight, yeah, ABC, there were D ABC. Teams, and, and it wasn't every weekend, but some weekends, if they could get those high school or college fundraisers, they'd do four shots at well, night. Well, it, they, yeah. Um, Think about this though, the A team, B team, C team. So you got three shows a night, and especially around the holidays, uh, they would do double shots all three. So you you had six shows. They were getting paid for, you know. Oh, we were getting paid too, but they were getting paid more. The company was doing very well, as we mentioned, as we wrapped up 1988. Things were so hot that Christmas week. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was double shots every night from Christmas through New Year's. Yep. Yeah. So good chance for the guys to make money and more of a chance for the fans to get the live WWF experience. Yeah, and, and more opportunity for WWE to make money. <laughs> all right, let's talk about... The yeah, cut that out. You would be in all kinds of what trouble. What was that now? Oh, you didn't hear it. Hopefully didn't you didn't hear it. hear it at home. All right, well. All right. Houston, it wasn't bad, though. Houston, Texas, 1989. It was the home of the first Royal Rumble on pay-per-view, at the very least. Fans might remember that Royal Rumble 1988... Uh, to combat the NWA's pay-per-view offering, the first Royal Rumble was actually a free special on the USA Network. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, you're well, see, so you're learning something too, brother. The human encyclopedia, wrestling encyclopedia well, right I there. Well, I do have notes, but you know what? This type of stuff I do remember off the top of my head. The Rumble 89, um, you participated in the match itself, but what probably the greatest opening to a Rumble match that I can remember. 91. 1989. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm talking Express. about the opening of the Rumble match itself. One, number one and number two. Oh, okay. Axe and Smash. What a great way to open the Rumble. Yeah. What a unique and creative way to do it. You know what I mean? Was that your first? That was the introduction to them. No, they they were tag team champions at this point. In '89. Yeah. 
But they actually, they, you know, when you draw the balls to get your number, Axe drew one, oh, smashed okay. through yeah, two. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, I got you. I'm sorry, I was lost. Yeah. And for two minutes, they actually they went, went out and fought with yeah. each other. And as a kid, I, remember I that thought now. that was the coolest thing. I was thinking you meant like they had a match, you know, to open the show. No, 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 you no, know, no. And, and they were, I think they were champs, right? They come out and, and did that. That yeah. was in the middle of their historic run until WWE had New Day breaking. Yeah. Hot open. I mean, what a great way to. I don't think they've done that since. Have tag team partners open the Rumble fighting each other. That was pretty It good. was really cool. Then they went at it for two minutes, punching the shit out of each other. And then they had Andre come out. Oh, is that right? And they went to town. Because <laughs> you know how tight Andre was with Bill, Axe. Yeah. They were good friends. But any memories of 1989 in the Royal Rumble? You were one of the 30 participants. Well, you see, Sean and I were still buddies in 89, so we wouldn't have messed with each other. Um, I think there was a, a spot during that match. It might have been that one. That was 89. It might have been 90 rubble. But one of them, and I think, was Owen Hart in that one? Or not yet? He was still around in 89 as Blue Blazer, so it could have been that one. Uh, I just remember uh, doing a move that I'd never done. I didn't, I didn't seen nobody do it before, but I used to do it as a kid where it was hanging by my feet from a rope. So, you know, how, how you had to go out and touch the floor. Uh, I was, I, it could have been Owen. could have been somebody else, but... So yeah, throw me over. He goes, it's not time. I said, I'm not going out. And he goes, well, how, what are you going to do? I said, just throw me over. I'll do, I'll. But what I did was hook my, my feet, pull them back, and hook the top rope. And I was hanging there by my feet on the top rope. Um, you could see it in, in, in whichever it was. It might have been 90. I don't know. It could have been 89. You know, one thing the fans have requested we do, and we'll, have, I put my foot we'll down? have to That's, get to it at just, some point after we go through your career, but they'd like to do actual, they call them watch-alongs. We're on the big screen TV. We watch an old classic pay-per-view, and you share thoughts, memories, and so on. Oh, that'd be it. fun. But it would be a lot of fun. We'll get there at some point, folks. Don't worry. But in the 89 Rumble, you lasted about eight minutes. You guys double-dropped. That's it. it. Yep. You double drop kicked out Law Ron Bass out of the ring, and you yourself were eliminated <laughs> by an adversary at that point, Tully Blanchard. Yeah, the Brain Busters. Yeah, we had some good matches with them, though. That was a hell of a way to kick off 89. That was your big house show program. Oh, it the probably was in the 90 with them, because that, that's right, that was the beginning of the year of 89. We yeah. hadn't been there that long yet. About six months in yeah. at that point, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a different one that I was talking about, hanging from the from the... You were there a little longer? Yeah, I think it was the next year that we did. Well, now you're going to make, sure. make me want to go on WWE Network and see which one it was. Hey, I'm probably going to do it myself. Ah. <laughs> it was also the be well, not the beginning, but it Wait was... Wait a minute. Oh. Come on, bro. Don't start with the phone again. Dude, where's my phone? I know I just had it right here. I have no clue. You keep losing that thing. Oh, there it is. You know, you the great thing is I could always just call you. Yeah, really we, we, we never think of that. You know, we, never, <laughs> we never think of that. It was also another chapter in what was, my God, a year-plus build to get to Hogan and Savage at WrestleMania V. One of the great feuds of the 80s, one of the great feuds, I think, in WWF history. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. It was a real good one, actually. They yeah. also did the unique, the pose down between Rick Rude and the Ultimate Warrior, yeah. which was maybe the best usage of Ultimate Warrior at that point. Did I ever tell you about the, you know how Rick used to yeah it was it was good and you know a lot of times you spring a story out of me you know, like triggers the story but, yeah uh, you know Rick Rude how he how he did his hips wiggle yeah. and then he, every girl wanted to kiss him or whatever <clears throat> uh, I may have already told y'all but if I did here it is again but uh, they had planted you know, they always had the girl that's already a planned girl usually I guess <laughs> because well <I'm, laughs> some people might not go with the skit but. Um, the one girl this particular day, somebody, wasn't me, I'll just say that, won't say who, um, had messed with the girl a little bit <laughs> before she went and sat out in the audience and Rick had her come to the ring and give him a kiss. We were all like, oh, no. A oh. little, little fellatio. Yeah, we got to tell Rick about this. No, maybe we better not tell him. <laughs> Did he ever find out? I think he did, and he he's just like he didn't believe it, or he, what what could he do? It was too late. <laughs> Who just, was the uh, the? Mm -mm, he ain't pulling that one out of me. Oh, might have been a tag team partner, but I had oh, really? I had several of those. You did you did have several tag team partners. A couple of them were named Sean. But hopefully her heart wasn't broken. 
mm. after that happened. <laughs> and she got the Rick Rude kiss. That's a great know. looking. It's a great uh, looking background over there, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also on the card, you had Rock and Robin retain the women's championship over Judy Martin. Certainly, Judy. Uh, wouldn't Those be... were two good workers, hard. Yes. Hard. Let me ask you. I was going to ask, was it? Well, you ask me. And then y'all, y'all texting in right. and you know, asking questions. You answer this. Who do you think was the raw bone toughest girl to, in the business ever? Starting back then, because those those ladies from back then were tough asses. They still they are now. They're just more athletic now. From uh, what I'm told, Judy was a pretty tough woman. Yes, yeah, she was, and. Uh, I, imagine. I think she's a cop now or something like that. Damn. I've met her at the Cauliflower Alley Club. Nice lady. M Mula was pretty tough to look at. Mae Young was a tough woman. To look at. I mean, look at the bump she was taking when she, <laughs> when she was in her 70s and 80s. Yeah, she took a, a damn thing through a table. The Dudley boys yeah. off the spitter. <laughs> and she told them to lay it in. But you know who, yeah. Heard that. Who, let me ask you, who do you think is the toughest? I think Sherry Martell. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I heard Sherry was quite the scrapper, too. That I've seen her to... do shit that Moolah and, <clears throat> and all the rest wouldn't even try. <laughs> the table ain't so bad. You lay there and you take a, a splash, you know. But when you dive over the top rope to a floor, back then they, they didn't have the matting. So it's, it's this right here. Concrete. <laughs> we were in the back a good 50 feet away, you know, watching through the curtain. And heard that. Oh, we're like, oh my God, oh, she's never going to get up. We, what do we do? Do we, do we run out there and help her? You know, because you see him when your friends hurt. <coughs> I think it was Candy Devine she was wrestling. And uh, This is Sherry you're talking about? Yeah, Sherry, Sherry dove over the top, didn't touch the rope or nothing, and went straight down and plat on the concrete floor, and we thought she was dead. And Candy went over and looked down, and she grabbed Candy by the rope, pulled her out, and they were going at it. She didn't hurt her a bit. I mean, that's a that's a tough ass girl, man. You know who else was tough? Oh. Luna Vachon. Oh yeah. yeah. She used to beat I've guys up crazies. in clubs. I, do you remember Oscar from Men on a Mission, the rapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She beat the shit out of him in an elevator once. <laughs> yeah. Well, she she would beat guys up. We'd go out to the clubs, a little you know, smaller clubs. I remember this particular little place in Buffalo, New York. <clears throat> and and it was you know like a shotgun narrow ass you know walkway uh, straight thing, uh, and and everybody you know she had to shave head so everybody knew you know they knew I was with the uh, smoking guns Billy and Bart guns um, they uh, we all were together and you know she had a great body you know she just had the shaved head she <laughs> was a, a female road warrior. And, uh, but a face guy, right? <laughs> but she was the guys who would always try to flirt around with her, and she, oh, really? you know, she had that scratchy yeah. voice. Eh, hey, you're not tough enough for me, kid. Hey. And you know, if they would play back, like, shit, I can take anything you give. She'd grab them by the nipples and twist the shit out of them. She did that to you? No, no, no. Who did <laughs> she do? No, it I would have cried. You know, one of the guys in the club tell. Oh, her, just someone trying to come on to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's like, yeah, you're not tough enough for me, kid. And, you know, one of them is smarted back and said, shit, I can take anything you can dish out. She grabbed him by the nipple and twisted so hard. He was like this, and then she punched him. And almost his, his eyes were rolled. And she goes, you sure you want some more? You, know, you can take anything. And he was like this. <laughs> and beat the shit out of the guy. <laughs> oh, Luna. Tough woman. But I tell you this, I had a chance to meet her at the Cauliflower Alley Club. Luna? She, she was public in her battles that she was bipolar. But on her good side... Very nice lady. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sweetheart. But, and you know what? As a compliment to her, even though it doesn't sound like it, truly one of the boys. Look at the family that she came Oh, from. exactly, yeah. Yeah. Not only, you know, Paul the Butcher and the Mad Dog, but the aunt that passed away, Vivian Vachon, was uh, one of the top female stars before she passed away in a car crash. So that, that, that was quite the wrestling family, especially yeah. up in Canada. Yeah. I, Paul is still in Vermont, I think, the Butcher. But he's he's aging. I don't know. What, which one's that? Paul the Butcher Vachon. Did he? Which one it was in AWA for a while? One of the Vachons, and then that. They, they both were at different points. Mad Dog was the bigger star, though. Yeah, it wasn't Mad Dog. It was I guess it was Paul. But um, and we had to work with him a little bit, and it was so much fun. And to talk about the experience, they they you know, we we learned from them. Uh, you know, and even though they had a different style, you know, they were more the rugged, knock 'em, rock 'em, sock 'em robots. But psychology doesn't 
matter. I mean, you still work in the crowd, no matter what you're doing in the ring. Like Jake Roberts is so good with psychology. I mean, he, he can just do two moves <laughs> and, and, and the place goes crazy. You know, uh, kick the guy in the gut and then hook him, do that thing, and then bam, and they're happy. And he did nothing but walk and talk the rest of the match. So all he needed to do, yep. that, that's a smart, smart, smart worker. Um, yep. I lost my train of thought for a second. He oh, was, you know what? I wanted to put over, we work a lot with the great folks at ECW Press, the book publishing company. They have a tremendous biography on Mad Dog Vachon, if you're into that era of professional wrestling. Mad Dog Vachon was kind of before my time. He was pretty much wrapping up his career when I started to watch wrestling as a little guy. But I learned so much, and it's such a great book. It's available now. I'm sure you can check it out on Amazon, as well as ecwpress.com. They're great people. They release some great wrestling books. Who knows? Maybe they'll be the publisher that releases your book. No, Have you ever talked to ECW know. Press? No, I didn't know. Um, no. Who's, who's in charge? Um, in ECW it Press. It would be the point man, I think, would be Michael Holmes. I'll give you his contact, though. He would be a great person to reach out to because yeah. they release a lot of wrestling books. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm kind of set on that. I just got to finish the, the end. Um, so you're almost done with it. Yeah. You, now you just got to get it published. Yeah. All right. Well, no, I still got a little bit more to add. Cause oh. <coughs> I'm going to make sure that what happened in 2020 gets in that book, you know, that made worldwide news. Well, if you need someone to write the forward to the book, <coughs> if your coach doesn't want to do it from wrestling, you got me. Okay. All right. Um, do, let me ask you this, though. You ask me a question, I'll ask you a question. All right. We talked about, again, Rock and Robin retained the title over Judy Martin. The women really weren't featured much at that period of time in WWF. What did you see in the <coughs> difference back then to the <coughs> difference to now between the presentation of the women in the 80s compared to what you see now in 2021 in WWE? Back then, I think they were a novelty to see a, you know, a woman in a wrestling match. Like the midgets almost. Yeah, like that kind of thing. Um, now it's, it's preferred. Let's see Sasha Banks or, you know, let's see some of the pretty girls that can actually, they wrestle as good as the guys now and better than some of the guys. Um, it's just um, back then it was, a, you know, it's, it was a, a, a gift to get to have that. Now it's, a, you know, you better have the girls on there. It's expected. Back then it was a surprise. Oh, Judy now Martin it's almost a, a quarter to a third of the show at some point. Yeah. You know, I, th I, th I think the now, women are overdone in 2021, but that's just me. I thought by now they would have the whole girls would have their own division, sort of like the Glow or the Wow or something. WWWE. Yeah. Women, World Wrestling Entertainment. I think, you know what? I, I, I'll let me tell you this. I know as a fact there is a... A percentage of fans that don't want to see the women's wrestling. I know friends of they mine. They used to be the guys because it would be embarrassed. They're like, oh, no, because you well, I, miss a clothesline because like, you, you swung it way up here. I and, have friends. And then you have to duck to get under it. <laughs> I have friends from when I was a kid that used to, during the 80s boom, that have no interest in seeing them. And I have friends from high school from the Attitude Era that have no interest well, you, in seeing well, them. They, you I know, think WWE missed the boat. They get great advertising on Fox now during the NFL football right. games and the playoffs. And you know what really drove me mad when SmackDown first moved to Fox? You have Joe Buck putting SmackDown over. How credible of an announcer is Joe Buck yeah. to sports fans? And who does WWE have as their four featured stars in the ad package? Roman, that's a given. Right. Kofi, he's one of the great athletes in company history and he was the champion. Right. You kind of had to. And then the other two were Sasha and Bailey, and I just, I couldn't believe my eyes <laughs> that if out of the four talents they could pick from that brand to represent during an NFL football game, free advertising for their show, that's who they, I, 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 I was bewildered, well, is a good word. Looks like it. My God. <laughs> <But> it, <laughs> it shows you, and I have nothing against women's wrestling. I like good women's wrestling. I just think. In 2015, it, the hashtag Give Divas a Chance got hot on Twitter. Uh, they didn't say, they said Give Divas a Chance, don't give Divas a third of the show. <laughs> and, and look at it, the ratings decline. More than 50% of that fan base from 2015. I don't, I don't know if that's from the girls, though. It's, well, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. Many reasons. Yeah. But I, they've done nothing to help. 
Mm. There's not one business. I don't know about that. I can't. They always wins, you know, especially when they can actually do shit. And they can, uh, man, they're putting together matches that, you know, generally at the beginning of the whole thing, I would fast forward through that. <laughs> they go ahead. But now I'm watching them because, man, they're putting false finishes and the psychology is there. I guess because they got the training thing down in yeah. Orlando now. I think if they just had six to eight really solid bodies, it would be a good thing. Yeah. If what they have now, it's just, I think Asuka works like one of the boys. She's really good. And other than that, there's a lot of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Charlotte's gone right now because she has the, the leakage oh, yeah. issue. <laughs> the leakage. <laughs> we, we're back on that again, huh? <laughs> well, not that kind of leakage. But Charlotte's having some leakage taken care of. She's an exceptional athlete. I'll give her that. She but, is that, yeah. I mean, uh, I think Alexa Bliss has great charisma. Uh, Nikki Cross kind of reminds me of Kevin Sullivan, the way she works sometimes. Yeah. But other than that, I oh, mean, God. is there really anyone you <laughs> want to stop and watch and see? Maybe you look at it different as, as a, a true veteran of the sport. Than I do, but I just I don't enjoy it. You know, you know, like with Sasha Banks, I want to you know would say eye candy, but when I'm looking at the girls in the industry, I don't look at them the same way like that. I'm looking at them as fellow work, you know, working, yeah. and uh, you know, and I, I critique the hell out of what they do because there's times I'll try to find, like you were saying, that, you know, the people want to get rid of the girls, so I'd watch and find the bad things, and you know, like okay, you see, they're still doing that. Like some of the girls would do the big kick, you know, round kick and the girl would drop down or, or, or leap up and duck under it and sometimes they didn't get under it and sometimes the kick would be in the stomach stood up and, and you know, stuff like that. You would say, no, y'all just ain't ready yet. I look for critiquing now and I can't find nothing. Really? Like, yeah, they didn't get so good. Well, everybody has a different opinion. Yeah. I guess mine is, is the minority, but it just... Well, I mean, you know the reason the girls are, is, the division is growing because now... I, I, let me see a, a way of saying this that's not real offensive. There were some pretty girls in, in the back, but most of them were like Moolah. And, yeah. you and know, they were rough Donna to look Kristen at. Ella. Nobody wanted to see that. <laughs> yeah, and they kind of were, you know, a little bit heavier. And, you know, in the one piece. It <laughs> the just, original Dawn Marie. <laughs> they looked like they were in granny bathing suits in the outfits that exactly. they wore. Exactly. Nobody yeah. wanted to see that. And, I don't and, think and, they were getting too excited about Judy Mott. Well, I'm not, that's a friend, so I can't say nothing. But... But you know, the girls started once. You know, one was shot. You know, Sunny started to, to change. You know, yeah, as, as, and it as, wasn't for the better. Yeah, and and then uh, you know, then you had Trish Stratus that you know elevated a little bit more as far as the, and she could work. She was pretty she, good. Yeah, she was. She and really improved over the years. But she got so much why, better as what, time went on. That's where I respect the most. I have the hard a lot works. of respect for her. Yeah, putting in the hard work to get better. I just for the fans that love it, I'd love to, for them to be able to have their own women's wrestling show, and for those that just want to see some hotter hitting simulated violence, the <laughs> men. That's why I want to, I don't want to see Bailey trying to imitate uh, Macho Man or Sasha trying to do her Eddie Guerrero moves. It's like, it's like cosplay. Hey, I, what's, what's the dude's name? Did I cut you off? No. You sure? Yep. Okay, good. Um, it's your show anyway. But. Uh -oh. I'm, sometimes I, I recognize the voice, I'm like, oh, it's mine. <laughs> once in a while, um, but uh, uh, what's his name? He goes, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, oh, Otis. Oh, Otis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, I, he's funny. But the, you uh, like Otis. Yeah, but oh. I, but I wonder how much of the oh yeah that reminds people of Macho Man. Oh yeah, you know, his is a different. Let me. I'm gonna oh, guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thirty years. The the future, I, I'm gonna tell you. In thirty years, the future of WWE. I don't think the legend, the legends marketing department will be developing Otis T-shirts though, like they have <laughs> for Randy Savage right about yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. That's if Otis I... has, a, if Otis is still collecting a payday by the end of 2021, <laughs> the poor bastard. Nothing that he's done anything wrong. No, he he's hasn't. just the type. For a while, they were shoving him down everybody's throat every week. He had to have a who was the, the who, Yeah, who was the girl he was going Mandy after? Mandy Rose. Yeah. Mandy Rose, this beautiful blonde, was drooling all over him like he was Rick Rude. And it got to the point... And sexual innuendos were always involved in the little skits. Yeah. You know, and, that, and it's some... It, obviously, it must have shown in some kind of a rating or because they've... Otis has really died off over the past couple of months. And yeah, I don't well, think anyone yeah, don't really know cares. 
Thank you. He even broke up with his partner, and instead of having a feud with Tucker, they put the partner over on Raw, and they kept Otis on SmackDown. His girlfriend he was with, they sent her to Raw, then they had a draft, and she went back to Raw. So Otis is in no man's land. Hmm. He's got no woman, no friends, <laughs> and he lost his money in the bank briefcase and his money in the bank lunchbox. You know one of the funniest things for me, entertaining yourself. Well, I mean, in in, in wrestling today, is the, the twenty four hour. Uh, uh, oh, you like that? Yeah, because you can just oh, be out in the my. parking lot and get rolled up. My, one, you two, really, three. You really enjoy that? Yeah, I do. I think it's a disgrace. I think that's part of the reason why people don't watch it. Anymore. It might be, but it entertains me. You think it's fun? I do just because of the weird, because you, you, it comes out, it, they catch you off. You're not expecting somebody to get rolled up. You know, you're, you're thinking, okay, what's going to happen here? Okay, uh, uh, Brock Lesnar's going to come out and slam the shit out of him, or this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Or, but it's all the job guys that, yeah. is, that are involved with it. <laughs> well, I guess. It's just funny, though. Do I sound like the old, you know, you know, do I sound uh, like the old miserable old timer because I don't like it? How can you not know that? What do you mean? That you sound like that. But I mean, no. Do I sound like that because I hate it? No. Everybody's got their own opinions. All right. All right. But I just uh, wish Gronk, you know, Gronk was champion for a minute, twenty-four-seven champion. Brock Lesnar? No, Gronk. Gronkowski. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. That, that that was a great skit. That that, <laughs> that that did a lot of business for them. That sold a lot of merchandise. That uh, that. I never saw. I didn't get to see ratings. how it happened. I just saw him bragging stupid. with the belt. Ridiculous. What did they do? Then they had to have him drop it. They did it on the lawn at his house. Because <laughs> he went back into... <laughs> yeah, they re showed that. Yeah. He was going to work a match at um, right here in Boston at SummerSlam. He, they were going to kind of build it around him. But once he came out of retirement to play for the Buccaneers, he obviously... they didn't. Right. The NFL didn't want him to do it. So they, I don't even remember who it was. Maybe it was our truth. But someone went to his house in, down near Foxborough where the Patriots Might have been truth. He had it for and a they, they did a roll up. Somehow the referee made it to Gronk's house too, and they did the roll up. <laughs> One, two, three, new he champion. Brought the ref I him. just, I. So the ref lived next door. <laughs> it, that's the type of stuff. It makes me sick yeah. because I think it's turning off fans to the greatest form of sport, action, and entertainment in the world when it's done right. I think that's doing it completely wrong. Because I you, think it insults everybody's intelligence. You know what I thought was horrible? What did you know? They turned me off to it. And I love Shane McMahon to death. You know, I love him to death. But. Oh, the uh, the underground? Yeah, man, damn. <laughs> you probably liked it. I gave it a chance for a couple of weeks. I did, too. I was like, okay, but, it, 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 it Again, n no one of great importance was involved in it. Yeah. It was just a bunch of mostly random NXT guys. You had Ziggler and a couple of others. But yeah, well, mostly people you've never seen before. So in these supposed shoot fights that lasted about 15 seconds, then just, you know, this, this, this unsanctioned, these unsanctioned brawls, then as soon as something happened, Shane McMahon, oh, whoa, no, he's had enough, he's had enough, he's done, no, 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 no. Yeah. All right, who's next, who's next? It was, and then at the beginning of every one of them, Shane McMahon would open the door to this disco music and they had smoke coming out of the door. And <laughs> I don't understand what was going on in Raw Underground. I, I understand they were trying to do something new to try and boost dying ratings, but at least it seems like it's over with. So Sometimes I, I think it was horrible. Vince, I guess, I don't know who gets Terrible. the final say now. It might be Stephanie, it might be Triple H, or it might be the both of them. You know, Bruce, Vince, is, Bruce is the uh, Oh, EP. he's back in there. Yeah, I heard that. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know For that. both shows. Oh, it, they, shit. It, in the beginning, well, when they went with that format, it was Heyman was in Jaja Raw. And Bischoff was in charge of SmackDown. Bischoff didn't like the uh, the scheduling, so he was replaced by Bruce. And then Heyman, I, they decided to just use him as a talent. So now right. Bruce is the EP of both shows. That's pretty good, though. Bruce good is for good. Bruce. Yeah. And you know what got Bruce hot again? And, and and I think the world of Bruce. He's involved in our toy drive every year. I don't know if you know this, but I actually opened a few of his live. Um, podcast shows that he'd do in front of an audience um, out in Boston, and then he did one for Royal Rumble weekend and such. So I think the world of Bruce, but Bruce was kind of dead to the wrestling world until he started to do that weekly podcast, something to wrestle with, and now he's one of the hottest names in the industry. Yeah. That's what I want our talk shows to do for the, the boys. To get, get them there. more bookings, to get them more work, maybe capture the attention of uh, 
WWE or the other mainstream promotions. And I mean, I don't know how many of those podcasts you listen to, if anything, but it's not like they were being politically correct or anything. They would tell them the stories of the right. way you tell them. And look at where <laughs> Bruce lines were. up. <laughs> so my, as much as I wouldn't want to see you have to leave us, I'd love for enough people to hear about, oh, my, what's going on with Marty's talk show on Thursday nights? They tune in and then all of a sudden, hey, you know what? Maybe it would be better to get him off the air and let's... Let's send him down to NXT to train the boys or something like that. Oh, you never know. You know I mean, I things mean? like that happen, yeah. I don't want to lose you, though. Don't think that. No, I, I love not. having you. I can do both. I can do, you got to work the contracts. You, what really surprised me, even though it's kind of toned down a bit now, but even though Bruce has that high-ranking position in WWE, they still let him do that podcast. That's what I'm saying. You, you, it's all in the contract you, yeah. you agree to. Well, he negotiate. worked out a great deal for himself. Just the merchandise that he was selling. No, he's a good talent, man. I, I, I don't know. I mean, he made it work. How the hell could you make brother love work? Right? <laughs> you know? Right? You had to be good to make that work. Just like, well, it never really got that far. But remember the goobly gobbler or whatever? Oh, gobbly glucka, <laughs> yeah. What did that last? A handful of TV tapings? I, I, that I guess it was just so. That, oh. You talk about embarrassing shit. We all would, we, you know, nobody knew what was that big egg for what was it, Thanksgiving or some Survivor shit? Survivor Series 90. Uh, yeah. The same night Undertaker debuted, Gobbly Gooker debuted. Yeah, well, none of us knew, you know, it was we'll kept. Get there in, in time they didn't too, want, but it was you ridiculous. know, the dirt sheets to, to put it out. Before. Now, hell, they do it themselves. To tell you, I had, a, you know, one of my last appearances at, at uh, WWE. It was supposed to be a surprise thing where I just showed up. Well, hell, they had it in the teaser sheet the day of. I'm like, what the fuck? You're already telling them what's happening tonight? Where's the surprise? We're supposed to come out of the damn back and surprise everybody. And, you know, with Sean and I. The was, out of the surprise is gone. Yeah, I mean, damn, come on, man. And there aren't many surprises left. You know what I mean? There aren't many more rabbits they can pull out of the hat as far as when you get a Goldberg type return or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the vets they have are either under contract. What happened or, there? He came back for a minute. Who's that now? Goldberg. His deal is two matches a year. Oh, is that? That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good deal. <laughs> that's when you know you're doing it right. Yep. Two matches a year, and good for him. Yeah, good, good for, him. for him. Oh, I like Goldberg, man. I I think I met him once back in '90. It was WCW time, eight, and he seemed like a pleasant man. He, he was, you know, he was. Uh, when he was doing that stint where he's 150 and 0 and, and doing yeah. that, he was getting over huge, you know. Um, him and Kurt Hennig were riding together a lot. And um, he came up to me, we was at the gym somewhere, and he came up and, he, and shook my hand. Really? Uh, yeah, he's a big old boy, you know. He yeah. came over my little scrawny ass and shook my hand. He goes, pleasure, pleasure meeting you. He goes, uh, I'd love to ride with you sometime. You're welcome to ride with us. And uh, man, oh, wow. I'd love to sit and pick your brain, man. I, you, I, need, to, I need somebody like you to guide me on. He was 150 0 and he's already up there. But he was, you know, respectful enough to do that and still wanting to learn. Whereas most guys, what do I need him for now? I'm 150, no, and I'm at the top. You know, I mean, what, what do I need to learn anything for? Not him. You he know, got he was, so much so quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Imagine too, too if, much he, too soon imagine if he was a little more seasoned when he got that push. You know what I mean? I don't know. It might have been no? different. He might have, because he was very um, anti-click. And he didn't like what he saw as it, as it, as it kept going. Because, you know, WCW had all the clicks. Oh, yeah. You know, they had the Ke many, you many were clicks. Kevin Sullivan's click, or you were Kevin Nash's click, or Dusty Rhodes' click, or oh, yeah. Ric Flair, yeah. or Bischoff. Hogan. Uh, <laughs> Hogan, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, and if you was a lone rider, you wasn't one of those. Then you was a lone rider on the outside. You wanted to be in the click because, you know, the strength and numbers type thing. But... I certainly want to do an episode on your, it wasn't exactly a long stint in WCW, but it was an interesting period in your career. Oh, do you think you, that man. all of the different cliques were trying to maybe suck Goldberg in? I know he's made kind of vague remarks about Hall and Nash trying to feed him information, good, bad, or otherwise. Yeah, you, I, don't, I can't answer that because I don't know. You weren't um, around it enough? Well, I, was around, I was around, but I don't know if they were trying to get him in. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Uh, Cause he kind of would, he's one. If he didn't like something, he'd let you know. Uh, he he didn't sugarcoat it. Uh, Barry Hart was we had to wrestle him one time. You know they're both Jewish, right? <laughs> you know, oh Hart. yeah, yeah. And uh, Barry thought he went up. He had to work with Goldberg, and he thought it'd be a good spot for in the match. He goes, "I'm gonna grab the mic." This is Barry telling him, "I'm gonna grab the mic, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna." Um, 
I'm gonna smart off and something, and then and then I'm gonna call you a stupid Jew, you know. And then you know he's Jewish, so that's that was his angle out of it. Was it's a Jew calling a guy? You're a Jew. He had a little glance. In it. Yeah, and it, but Goldberg wouldn't do it. He goes no, because and, and he goes, why don't you want to do that spot? It'd be a pop, you know, because I'm calling you a Jew and I'm obviously a Jew. He goes because I am a Jewish. I am Jew. Well, that's the whole point. I mean, to, I don't know what Goldberg just didn't, he didn't like that or, or something. But but point being, he just let you know, I mean, because you know, I am Jew. And that's it. You're like, okay, <laughs> you know, end the story. You so know. instead, I imagine it just turned into a quick, quick squash. On that one? Yeah. Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, back to Royal Rumble 1989, it was the farewell. Oh, yeah, is that where we started? That's where we started. Uh, what day was that? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. I, so I'm going to get the date wrong. I, I, no, it was no, January 1989, and it wow. was the farewell of one of your buddies. Uh, in a battle for the crown, Haku defeated Harley Race. Which was, one left? Harley. Oh, yeah, that's right. If he defeated He was him. in rough shape at that point. Was he? He just came back from that surgery that he had the year before in his... When his intestines, I believe, they yeah, all matched like that, up yeah. in a match with Hulk Hogan before you even came into the company. Was Harley hurting on the way out? It's, you could certainly look at it. He know, looked kind of frail. I never got to see him. Hold, the only time I'd get to see him during that, because he would, he would always, he was pretty much always on the A team. He made sure of that. You know, I'd be on the B and M once in a while on the A, but when I was on the A, he was off or wouldn't be there. So the only time I really got to see him was at TV tapings, you know, because everybody's there. And of course, you don't know, say, hey, but I never really saw him towards the end because we just didn't you know, cross paths. Um, but I know he had that surgery, yeah. so testing or something, like yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah. And he came back off, well, at that point, you didn't get paid if you didn't work. He came back pretty quick. He was back for Survivor Series, and, and then by Royal Rumble, they put poor Holly out to pasture. Well, he, um, he had several things happen. I don't know now if the boat crash was during that era, you know, where he he. Um, I think the boat crash was in the 90s. Oh, it was I don't a little think that later. Happened yet? Was oh, okay. That? It was later then. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I was, you know, he he didn't get hurt that bad. I mean, other people did, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, he had he was driving the boat so fast. It the woman's it, legs it? almost went into her chest. Damn. Damn. Holly was known for his his speed whether it be behind the wheel of a car or even a boat. <clears throat> I tell you what, man, Harley used to get me with it. You said Holly. I thought you was talking about Bob Holly because you said. He sat right in that chair. Holly. Who? Holly. Holly. Bob. Harley. <laughs> I li I'd love, Bob is another one I want to have with Bob us. Holly. Yeah. Oh, he's a good guy. We tagged together for a while, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and he, he came in a Sparky T plug. <laughs> Thurman Sparky plug. Remember that? Yeah. Oh. Hell, I was tagging with him. I had to remember it. I was like, what, what the Bob, fuck? Bob, though, is we. I like Bob an awful lot. And his wife is a really nice lady, too, that he wound up marrying later in life. Good guy. Yeah. And he's very blunt and very honest. I yeah. think he'd make for a good interview. He's another one we'd like to try out in the hot seat. If you fans head on over to patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling, you get early ad free access to all of these crazy, great talk shows. The DVD Studio Shoot Interview Library is heard on Howard Stern, and you keep the legends working. I'd love to have Bob in, even for a little mini series, because he is, as noted, a very blunt, honest individual. Yeah, and did but you. But I like him a lot. Look, look, look at the camera. Did you snort a, did you snort a tarantula? What? Turn, turn, look at the camera. Oh, that's one of your, one of your mustache hairs. It's coming out of your nose. It looks like you snorted a tarantula. I have a, 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 a hair that looks like a tarantula coming tarantula out of my tarantula leg coming out of the, yeah. Well, did I adjust? Yes. It's gone now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't look like I have a spider coming out of my no, nose. No, spider, a tarantula. It was hairy. Right. <laughs> it was leg shooting out of your nose. I want to <laughs> ask the SDB. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, boy, again, Holly Race, one of the all-time greats of the sport. He came to WWF much later in his active wrestling career. <clears throat> the, the WWF fans of the 80s, I don't think, saw the best Holly Race. No, I mean, well, his style was, you know, he stayed methodical, slow and methodical. It's methodical. still believable, though. That was the thing. He was carrying the believable into the unbelievable. When I say unbelievable, I don't mean like, now we, uh, it ain't real. It's just, um, you know, the characters. You had characters, and he was still the old school Harley Race, you know, raw bone, tough guy that you don't want to mess with. 
and we're having like you know undertakers and and you know uh, birdmen and and, and <laughs> <laughs> birdmen. You know, Coco. I love Coco. I'd like to. Coco's another one I'd like to have in stories. Oh, he'd be a good one, man. Because he, man, we got me and him alone got a, a book of stories. <laughs> really? Yeah. Boy. Oh, you used to travel with Coco. Yeah, we well we partied together a lot. Oh. We didn't travel that so much, but, you know, what about a handful of times. What about Frankie? Frankie used to get Coco used to <laughs> enjoy a lot of things because of Frankie. <laughs> Girls love to see the bird. Really? So he kept it in the in the room, the hotel room. Really? Yeah. So there was some action going on with Frankie <laughs> in the room. It was way back now. Coco's a different man. Those pets, I tell you, during the WWE times. You know, the first time, like when when Sean and I first started there, I may have told y'all this before, but we walked in the dressing room our first day, right? And it was full, so we couldn't stay. We had to get dressed outside in the little breezeway thing. <clears throat> but we looked around. We already seen four or five giants go by, right? It scared me. I was like, Sean, we don't belong here. <laughs> let's go. Said, no, let's give it a try. You know, because you know, John Studd and Bundy and Hogan and One Man Gang, all these monsters walked by. They're our little six foot, well, about 5'11". He's six foot, we're 220 pounds. And these monsters walking by, like, what are, what are we doing here? What's wrong, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> you know? Then we go in the dressing room, and it was like a zoo. There was, <laughs> there was a damn, Jake kept the snake cause he, so he'd keep water in the shower. You know, running water on. Oh, you stuff. always kept the snake in the shower. And not always, but a lot. Most of the you know, time, kept yeah. Him. And then the, did he, would, would he keep it cool? Frank, or? Frankie was. Yeah, I guess you know, keep him in there, cool him off with water because they love the boas, like love water, I guess. And um, you know, the Frankie would be on the perch. And they, who had the iguana? It was steamboat. Steamboat had like a drag, a little mini dragon, dragon in the cage. And and, and what was so funny was um, Frankie would be looking at the snake. And the snake would be looking at the dragon. The dragon is looking at the bulldog. The bulldog's looking at them all. Like, and they didn't like each other. <laughs> Even the animals had heat back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. What animal got the most abuse, would you say? Uh, probably I've heard the snake. The poor snake in the bag yeah, would he, get the shit knocked out of him. Uh, uh, Fido, not Fido. What was the bulldog's name? The Matilda. First one? Matilda got abused. What did you come up with, Fido? <laughs> you, you, not me. <laughs> but, um,. The snake and, and, and you know, I, I didn't, hate saying. Didn't they shoot the snake up with gas? With gas, like inside with steroids? of steroids? No. Not that I know of. I didn't hear about that one. Well, Matilda? Was it Matilda that got the gas? Well, what, I think it was Damien that they gave the steroids. They, I don't know. I don't want to get to say the because it's animal abuse. I don't want to say the wrong person. Well, I'm going to tell you some animal abuse. Right. <laughs> what do we got? Who got it worse? Matilda. Matilda, Matilda. Matilda got her share. And How they, did you abuse a pit bull, though? I'd be afraid. Because of. Owen would go put Tabasco sauce on popcorn and then go feed it to Matilda. <laughs> Matilda would eat it and then... <laughs> oh, my God. She threw up one time and go into the ring, but that was because Davy Boy put, a, put some Jack Daniels, like, come here. <laughs> How would they... Well, did they, and they had to transport Matilda on the planes and like a pet carrier? I think, I think so underneath, and same thing with Jake Snake. I guess all the animals had to go like that underneath. Did you know Matilda's actually buried not too far from here? Mm, I didn't know that. Um, I guess when, they, got, when, when we, they were either done or got tired of her. They, she got sick or old or something, and they had to replace her. Well, I didn't know there were two Matildas, but whoever the last Matilda was wound up with the Ultimate Warriors limo driver. The last one? Yeah, and it's very obviously it passed away. If Matilda was still alive 32 years later, that would be a hell of a life for a dog. But yeah. I'm gonna, Matilda is buried somewhere near here from the Ultimate Warriors Boston limo driver. Oh, real? I wonder how that happened. They just got sick of her. I don't know if it was a he or a her or... A, <coughs> the Damien, the reason Damien would get abused, because you wasn't going to abuse him if he was out of the bag. Right. <laughs> when he was in that green duffel bag, army bag, Davy boy, I mean, Davy was always cutting up with the animals. Uh, he would uh, he would go pick the bag up. This one time that I'm thinking of, uh, Jake had to wrestle Andre the Giant. You know, Davy's, fuck this snake, get him out of the fucking dressing room, he's taking up too much. And he'd throw it up in the air about you know, six, seven feet, <laughs> plap. I said, get this fucking snake out of here. Throw him up again, plap. <laughs> Three or four times, and we're all going like, ah, damn, man. The snake's going, and, and when he went to the ring, and, and, and 
Andre was like in the ropes or something, or it was just there. He let the snake out. That come right out, <laughs> bit the shit out of Andre right in the chest, <laughs> right in the chest. You know, Andre's so big, and, 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 and didn't, he didn't he didn't even sell it. You know, he come back to the dressing room, and and Andre, would you just catch that joke I told yesterday? No, I'm what are you laughing? Th this story oh. to me is hilarious. With I can picture Davy Boy hurling the snake straight up there, pop, yeah. <laughs> pop. <laughs> well, you go kill him. Well, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And the poor snake is in the bag. It has no idea. They don't want to be. They don't want to be in the dressing room. To start with. <laughs> I can get better pay back where I came from. But, oh my uh, but, God! But, and, uh, then, and just imagine how it wanted to get out of that bag, and uh, then by the time it opened, boy, well, he comes right, pow, right in the chest. <laughs> now Andre comes back to the dressing room, and he's got a little bitty stream, of, like a little, uh, not stream, but you know, a little bit of blood that ran down right here. And we all look, and we're like, Andre, look. He looks down, he sees the blood. And then, and then you look up, and it's the tooth. <laughs> the tooth broke off, and it's just. They go, ho ho ho! Snake must have been mad, and he just picks it out. <laughs> well, I think most people would have been a little bit more fearful seeing the snake come at them. Yeah, Andre. I, I guess he had to be Andre's size for yeah, it not to bother you. Yeah. So that was the big angle that I think we talked about it maybe in the '88 episode. But for Jake and Andre to set that angle up on Saturday night's main event, it was that Andre had the you know, the heart attack because of the snake, and Bobby Heenan was trying to, banging him in the heart, trying to b bring him back to life. But in real life, Andre was well, indifferent. You know, Virgil, no, he, did, he wasn't scared. Virgil was, was afraid of the snake. And, that, you, know, you know, Virgil was, it was, people would get tired of him a lot of times, you yes. know, because he was right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. I love my boy Virgil well, death, but oh gosh, man, when he gets to talking. Oh. Marty, we got to make some money, Marty. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Oh, I mean, some real money. <laughs> like, what you want to do, <laughs> man? Fuck that. These car shows, man. All you got to do is call ahead of time and get a space by the door where they're coming in. Marty, we got to make some money, man. <laughs> All right. Now I see him 15, 20 minutes later. Marty. We gotta make some money, man. Like you, like, come on, man. <laughs> just get a tape recorder and just push play. <laughs> you won't have to say it again. Just loop it through. But um, they would always, you know, uh, when they wanted him out of his dressing room, they'd go get the snake. <laughs> uh, Virgil, look, he'd take how you bust his ass. He'd run in the door, couldn't get out fast enough. In the locker room, was yeah. the snake always kept in the bag, or would uh, they sometimes run it was? Somehow? Sometimes he would have in the shower. Really? That's why you, when you knew Jake was on the card, you ease back to the shower and look around the corner. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, some of the guys would go in there and shower with him, but that thing would raise up when he raised up. He'd be up this high. I don't know if y'all can see the floor. Even in the bag? Yeah, no, no. This is when he was out. Oh. And, and, and when you're taking a shower, here I go breaking shit. I don't know if I'm in the frame. Am I in the frame? When you're, when you're standing in, in the shower with a snake and his head's right up here at his yeah, hip I, level, I, <laughs> he's like, no. slowly back away. <laughs> don't make no sudden movements. Yeah. Well, were there any other guys that didn't like having Damien around, or was Virgil? Oh, there was a few guys scared of snakes. I can't remember. Uh, Did it bother you at all? Any of the animals? No, I used to go play with him. Uh, he had. Remember when he had the uh, cobra? Yeah. I used to go mess with him. I used to mess with him. But Damien, I'd go in there and hold him and cut up with him. I say cut up with him. You know, you know, talk to him and rub him. And, but you'd uh, pet Damien? Huh? You'd pet him? Yeah. I'd, well, you, and then you had those hotel. Times yeah. So you and Damien kind of had a, a friendship, a kinship almost. Yeah, he, he yeah. was loosening somebody up for me. <laughs> <laughs> but over uh, that, that cobra, you know, I never knew, like, however high they raise up, that's as far as they can strike. Because oh, really? they can't launch forward. Uh, not the, the kind of cobras that Jake had. I don't know about them wild ones. To me, it looks like when they rear back, they shoot forward, you know, like eight feet or something, six feet. But the ones he had, the little ones, they raise up, and, they, and I, you know, Jake showed me, like, you just right outside their range, and they'll, they'll go at you, but they'll come short. Oh. So I, he shouldn't have told me that, showed me that, because I would always 
fuck with him and wiggle the fingers over here and he'd look over here and I'd smack him and he'd turn over here and, and it was true, he just sat out, just outside that range. I was glad it, he didn't ever fool me to do like he did with uh, uh, Randy Savage, remember? He got him well, in what the, are the, one of the most memorable angles in the had in the arm? He had him in yeah, the arm. The arm yeah. That was, oh, when we get to 91, that was a great feud we can talk about. But how did Jake like interacting with the Snakes? Did he did like it, not like it, indifferent towards it? I was sort of indifferent towards yeah. it. That was his job. He didn't have you know? fear of snakes. If he had a fear of snakes, that wouldn't have been. No. no. That would have been kind of a tough position no, I to think be he was in, protective but... of, of uh, Damien because. Oh, really? Well, like, he'd get pissed off when, when, when we'd go to the, through the airports. And sometimes, uh, you know, that big. He had him in a duffel, green duffel bag, but when he had travel, he put him in a, in a, a trunk. Oh. Like an army trunk thing, uh, you know. And. Um, Everybody, if they saw Jake in that trunk, and I think, I don't know if he had the name on it, Damien or Live Snake or something, <laughs> they'd always want to, they'd run from underneath where, you know, they're packing the, uh, uh, the, the, the plane, and they'd come running up and see Jake, and then ask Jake, could he come out there and let him see the snake, and he didn't want to do that shit. No, we're tired, we're on the road 30 days, I'm not going to the luggage, you know, loading and, and take the snake out. And think about the travel that you guys all had to endure, but to have to have a pet, yeah. Well, with it was you. bad enough having being a champion because... Yeah, but everyone wanted a picture with your belt every yeah, time. Yeah, and you had to go through security, you know, the, the, the x-ray machines. That belt goes through and there's a big piece of metal in your luggage. You've got to open it and show it. And then when you do, they're all, oh, hey. And then it, everybody around sees you shaking hands with the security people and, and some person you know, knows who you are say it and everybody hears it and you're surrounded. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta sign autographs for a half hour and you try, you're about five minutes before missing the plane. Right. The, Did you ever see over the years, maybe even... But, but let me say this oh, real quick. Sure. Like uh, with Damien, the snake, uh, there was one place, I don't remember where, the guys would be able to tell you, but... They had opened, <laughs> we're sitting, you know, the big windows that you can see out to the plane and you can see the whole airport runway out there and everything. We're looking and we're seeing all these people that, that work, the handlers down, the luggage uh, guys, all sprinting backwards and running. <laughs> and there's a snake out there on this thing just slithering around because they had opened it, somebody had opened it because Jake wouldn't go do it, so they were going to look at him anyway. And he got all the way out, and he's, they had to get Jake to go get him to put him back in the thing. They had to get Jake off the plane? No, no, we weren't on the plane oh, yet. On it yet. Yeah, we were just uh, getting ready to so board the plane. So they were loading the plane, and they opened up Damien? Yeah, they wanted to see Damien, and then Damien said, what? <laughs> and he got out there. It was just slithering, big old slithers all over. The, it was, probably was hot. I mean, yeah. it probably was like, yeah, damn, <laughs> what the hell have y'all done to me? How what, was it one snake, or were they replaced well, after a certain that amount of time? One, well, there was one. We went up north, somewhere in Canada, I, I guess. I mean, I, you know, wherever it was was snow. It was ice. It was mm -hmm. cold, and uh, they didn't have the. They're supposed to have heating underneath, so they <laughs> they did. They forgot, and when they went, to, Jake went to take Damien out the bag. It was just coiled up hard. It was just a big <laughs> like a marbled snake come out. So. <laughs> So, so, yeah. so they needed a replacement at that point. Yeah, they point, had to I replace guess. that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it was the animals. I don't remember who was here that told us the story that they would shoot the snake up with gas. I don't know. Because obviously heard that you one. put a needle through the bag. Or, it's you easy, know, you know what I mean? I can't imagine going what, through a snake's skin a, like they wouldn't hurt him, you know, wouldn't mess him oh, up. Oh, I'm sure him. it would hurt him, but I mean, well, I heard it was be biting done. through that bag. <laughs> I don't want to say who the, I think the culprit was, because if I'm wrong, oh, it's one I of the bulldogs, without a doubt. That was definitely one of them. <laughs> but you never heard about the, the snake getting a little uh, gassed up? No. No, I never heard of that one. No. But did you ever hear about the snake, go, other than the Andre one, the snake going wild when it came out of the bag? Because it was abused for so long? Mm -mm, just no. that one time. <laughs> he was throwing it up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Any other situation with the pets, that, uh, situations that went wrong? I, how did Frankie always stay so tame and not fly off through the arena? I always wondered that as a kid, why he always stayed on the perch. He was up there above them all just looking at all the bullshit. <laughs> No, but I mean... That's why he kept eyeballing the snake, though, because that snake, I guess he knew could rise up there. <laughs> he didn't care about the bulldog and, and, the, and the lizard or iguana or whatever that thing was. <laughs> but he kept an eye on the, on the damn snake. 
He didn't like the snake. The snake didn't like the lizard. The lizard didn't like the bulldog. And the bulldog didn't like none of them. <laughs> I wonder what the pets thought of the travel schedule. I don't know what I mean, they bad enough thought. for the boys, but imagine being under the plane. Kind of wondering what the hell's going on. What did I do? What a crazy <laughs> life. You talk about circus animals. There you go. Yeah. At least the circus used to stay in town for a few days. You know, when we wrestled in Vegas one time, uh, they were doing a, Andre was the splash of snake, and it got out to the, what's the group called? PETA? Yeah. Peter yeah, Heads Peter, or yeah. PETA or something. Um, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. There it is. And uh, they showed up in Vegas because they had heard in the, the shows up uh, leading up to their thing that the, the storyline was Andre was splashing snakes, killing snakes in the bag. Well, he would throw the bag down and he would splash the Earthquake did that. It was the earthquake? Yeah, John Tenta. Okay. Damn. He, he killed Damien. That's what led to the, the other, the new, the cobra. Oh, is that what it was? Uh, what was oh, Lucifer. Okay. Was, I think Lucifer was the name of the new snake. Could be. But Earthquake supposedly killed Damien. And I remember watching it on TV as a kid. I was in shock. I couldn't <laughs> believe that Earthquake sat on the snake. He did the big earthquake splash with that big ass, and then Jake looked in the bag and, oh, stick a fork in Damien, literally. Well, and, and so we have an Earthquake. I swear you're a human wrestling encyclopedia. Because I was there for all this stuff, and I can't remember it like that. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, Earthquake, I was going to say uh, Andre again, Earthquake splashed the bag there. And all them Peter people were running, you saw it, you saw it, you saw it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were going crazy about it, and they were going to, you know, file whatever, you know, they do, file suit or whatever. Vince, Vince was there, and he's like, hold on, and here's your snake, here, you take his, you look and see if he's dead. They're like, no, no. And he goes, no, go ahead, go ahead, and he insisted, and they had to check it. And one guy looks and then he, he turns it upwards and it's all paper. It's all, it was just paper stuff. And you know what? What a smart way to do it. Yeah. Bring the dead snake to every town. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it was, it was a, a Hollywood-like stunt the way it was done. But it was, it was believable. I, I thought it was crazy, though, as a kid. I couldn't believe yeah, that just, they, they ended poor Damien like that. But yeah. um, I didn't know there was heat between the pets. I had never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> None of them liked TV. Those TV tapings must have been awfully interesting. I don't know where they all shit at. I mean, you know, they got it when well, Damien was shit in the shower, and luckily you could just turn the water on it and let it run down the drain. Yeah, but, wash it away. You know, but the what rest about of Matilda? them. Matilda? She shouldn't piss wherever she wanted. And, you know, I you mean, had a chance to get away when you see her squat. Like, oh, you get out of the way. Because if she pees, it runs all over the, like that soda did you threw in the floor. Oh, my. Really? You so remember? All over the, you no, threw, no, no. what's his name? John Cena Sr.'s Fabo pot. Yeah, you threw but his Fabo. The pets would literally just piss and shit in the middle of the locker room? Well, they don't, they don't know about toilet training. You know, well, they, they got to shit. They, they shit. But, I mean, would Matilda ever give them a signal, I need to go outside for a walk? Or? I don't know. That part, I don't know. I just know when <laughs> we saw her squat, you got away in case it was, if it was poo-poo, it was going to stay right there. I've been saying shit all this time. I just changed it to poo poo. Uh, when she would squat, you know, one or the other was coming. You know, with the dog, you know, a male dog, you, the legs are going to go up for the warning. But when a female dog squats for either, you don't know. You might be getting puddles. And if it's a little bit uneven and you're standing there, <laughs> you got to change your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, did you ever think when you broke into professional wrestling, you'd be sharing a locker room with. <laughs> Animals. It really was the World Wildlife Federation. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, you know, I never even thought about it. I never really paid attention until that first day when we walked in there. First of all, we just got spoofed, spooked, you know, seeing all these giants walking around. Then we go into the damn petting zoo. <laughs> all right. They have fireworks and, you know, the pyros and all that. Bah, 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 bah. Was, was like, what oh, the, the fuck is that? The fireworks <laughs> must have scared the shit out yeah, of Yeah, we didn't have that in AWA. Yeah, so right? We got all the damn, sound like C4 explosives going off. We're like, what the, what? And you, and you go out in the arena because they say they're, they're testing and all. You go out there and there's guys repelling down from the ceiling. It's just like, what the <laughs> fuck have we got ourselves into? <laughs> uh, let me ask you this one. January 22nd, a uh, nondescript house show in Omaha, Nebraska. You work the Brain Busters underneath Hulk Hogan and the Big Boss Man. The reason I mentioned that date in particular, it was a Sunday matinee. It was Super Bowl Sunday. How would the superstars oh, I remember that. of the World Wrestling Federation spend Super Bowl Sunday? And uh, there was a hotel there that was in real Omaha. Cool. Yeah, we actually saw two Super Bowls in a row at the same hotel. Really? Yeah, it was a bar, and they had um, 
you know, a bunch of TVs around, and we went up there and, and, and had to watch the Super Bowl. I think the, we watched uh, Cincinnati. It was Cincinnati and San Francisco. Yeah, we in watched them, yep. and then in '90 it was or '91. It was it that same damn. We were in Omaha again, and and so we went to that same bar, watched the. Two, it was two Super Bowls in like within three years, two years, which we you know we just thought that was wild. I was like, man, look, we watched two Super Bowls here. Would the, the did the boys get together and have a party, or did people go their separate ways? Or? As, as far as during the game? Yeah, I mean, did the guys kind of get together as a group and watch it, or? You know, you went with your boys, you yeah. know, um, in, in, in certain sections, and all the you know, girls and the fans that were there would, same thing, it was a pretty big space, and, um, you know, the same thing, they would go over to sit by the guys that they liked the most, you know. Uh, in, uh, but I, I love my sports so much. I had oh, to put I, it, yeah. I had to push pause on the girls, you know, because I wanted to see the, the game. The pause button, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, they go with sit in the bag with Damien. But um, <laughs> did the, over here, the course year career, did they ever have any kind of Super Bowl festivity for the guys? Uh, no, or was it just do one. your own thing? Or do your own thing. Do your I guess. own thing. The next night, January the 23rd, is one that should, in your mind, maybe be a little bit more memorable. What was uh, the date? January the 23rd, 1989. It was a Monday night. Long before Monday Night Raw came to be, you had those MSG house shows, and you had what is considered a tag team classic with Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, the Brain Busters. I think they taped that, didn't they? Absolutely. Yeah, All the MSG shows were Yeah, taped. that was, uh, that was uh, a very interesting thing. Um, I say interesting... Um, we learned so much from Tully and Arm, and uh, you, you know that was—I I don't know if that was the two out of three fall one. You no, know, it wasn't. It was nope. just the one. Bobby Heenan, we got involved with it, and they re re sent him back to the back or something. But I, I just remember, hell, we went. Shit, how long did we go around the loop with him? At least three months, maybe the longer. The feud kicked off on television in December of '88, and you were working the loop with them through WrestleMania. So you probably so worked four, them four, close to a hundred times. Oh yeah, and and what was crazy is we would, you know, it's what you do. You tinker with the match. You're like, what? This didn't really go like as well as we thought. So you take that out and replace it, or just take it out and you add something somewhere else. You know, it's it's a, it's like, you know, like a tinker toy. You're building, you know, you're building something there, and if this don't fit here. We'll just take it out and just build over this way and try this and try that. And after you know a couple of weeks, you got it down pretty good. But with Italian and they, which this was another reason we learned so much. Some of the guys like to try to get a routine match. Uh, you know, like they, they, okay, we'll take this round the loop, um, and they kind of stagnate, and you get real comfortable. Uh, Nick Bockwinkel taught us that, uh, this thing. He goes, you know, guys, you're getting too comfortable with each other. Because like when you would take the arm, you already know the routine, right? What you're going to be doing. I shouldn't be telling all this out, but um, yeah, everybody knows anyway. But uh, you know, you would you would so ho humbly, you know, like oh, okay, twist, all right, twist my back, and the expressions are gone, and 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 the, even the intensity, and 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 you know, we're snapping into a move. You know, you, you're you're like okay, your arm, you're going to twist behind, or I go behind, and whatever. Um, you know, and, and and Nick, that helped a lot. Nick pointing that out. Even though you ribbed the hell out of him. Well, he ribbed the hell back. He, he glued my damn windshield wiper stuck to the windshield. I don't know how you do that because nothing it, sticks to rubber or like that. Was it Marvy? It was Marvy. <laughs> don't mess with the big buck. <laughs> and he took some super glue shit and, and uh, squirted oh, he it in. back. Yeah, he All got right. well. Me, he got me because of the shit on his picture. I guess <laughs> that I didn't that do. You didn't even do. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, he uh, he glued my locks. So next day, I'm going to the city, the town. We had to wrestle, and I, I can't get my key in there. And, and you know, Kurt told me he goes, Nick said he got your back. And then I thought about it, like, ah, oh, that's what the fuck. I said, yeah, well, my my locks were lock, my car locks were something. He goes, he probably <laughs> Kurt probably did it and was blaming <laughs> it on me. But um, yeah, uh, um, he said Nick told him he goes. Nick told me he had to take the dog for a walk over in your neighborhood. <laughs> Did you live close by? Uh, I don't even know where Nick lived. I never oh, went no. to his house. So <laughs> I don't know why he knew where I lived either. <laughs> Kurt, knew, <laughs> Kurt knew where I lived. <laughs> Kurt probably gave him your address. Yeah, no, Kurt probably did it and blamed Kurt, him. Maybe that was it, too. <laughs> but did Nick ever take uh, the responsibility for the rib, or was that mm -hmm. just secondhand mm -hmm. through Kurt? 
second hand through Kurt. So it could have been a Kurt rib. I swear I say, yeah, okay, yeah. we called it a double double. <laughs> you know, you double back. Uh, like what? I told you with the locks, you lock somebody, in, but you lock yourself. But you know the combination, you can get yours off later. As we tape this episode, uh, we just premiered on uh, our online series the episode where you discussed the Bushwhackers as well as Nick Blockwinkle as a WWF road agent and in the AWA. And you told the story about the ribs with the locks and the glasses. Yeah, oh, I saw that. that all, we, yeah, you were watching it live, I think, with us on the premiere. Yeah. Talking with all our great friends like Slick Rick B up in his new home in Maine, Maria Davis, Tina, all of the great Kevins, Ken, Larson, Vaughn, Will Cortez, who am I forgetting? All of our great fans that join us. Lisa's one of the newbies if she's here tonight. If you guys are enjoying... Mr. Thompson? Yeah. That's a friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. well, you know what? She's enjoying it, too. Chat away with us in the premiere if you're watching Thursday night at 10. The Super Chat button. Click it. Don't forget to tip the bartender for all of this great entertainment. But I ask you this, Marty. Yeah. What I thought was really cool about this, and I, I don't think I saw the match until decades later, this MSG match, it was ranked in Pro Wrestling Illustrated as one of the top 50 matches of the decade. And this, you know, most of the matches that were in there were from pay-per-views and things like that. For, you, for that to be taken from a house show oh, and right, put yeah. on the list of the top 50 matches of the decade, yeah. that's quite a compliment. Yeah, I mean, that's what I say. I mean, we, what I was going to say a while ago about, you know, the routine and getting used to it and being lackadaisical, you know, with, with your moves. Uh, is that a word, lackadaisical? Yeah, lackadaisical. How, how you spell Lacka, it? Lackada lackadaisical. Am I saying it right, prodigy? <laughs> lackadaisical. No. Lackadaisical. I'm still not. It's been a long day. How do you do it again? Well, he definitely can't spell it. Lack. A. Daisical. Lackadaisical. Lackadaisical. Lack <laughs> See, the thing is, people probably think I'm stupid right now. They have no idea how late I was here last night prepping for this, then getting our good friend Mr. Genetti in the comfort of his hotel, then to go home and write out weeks and Did weeks and weeks. Did I tell you about the front desk girl, Maria? No, yeah. Oh, no, I, I met her. She's a pretty oh, girl. Yeah. Pretty, pretty. Well, like I said, you could almost turn 20, it's still 2020 as we're recording this. You, I think it would be an interesting reality show. Because, like, if you're going around, like, the Target or the supermarket, you see a girl, so, oh, she's a pretty-looking woman, but she's got the gimmick yeah, over her face. I saw her without Almost it. Almost so like I a mean... reveal. Oh, you saw her without it. Oh, all right, all right. Well, I, how did you see her without the Well, I don't else? remember what it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, um, yeah. oh, we're looking for your money. No. Remember? <laughs> well, you know what? She's an even Dan, better... Dan lost a $100 bill somehow. A $100. Unless it's in the back seat of that car. I don't know how that happened. Why don't you call him? I did. Hey, oh. And he forgot to look this morning. Oh, but after work, he's going to look. So <sighs> whoever, whatever wrestling god is playing the rib on me, please, I could use it. But um, <laughs> did, as we wrap up just on this one particular match, did you, did you bring up the intensity because it was MSG? Well, no, no that was something. No, we, we tried to give her all anywhere we mm. were. Um, they taught us how to how to take a match, how to uh, form a match, uh, how to structure a match. Where, you know, you start off a good little wrestling, you know, thing, and you're getting a little tighter and tighter, and and if and you're up in the intensity as you go to where you finally are about 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 about, about and you end up with a four way square off, and and you're mad as hell, and it you know brings up like you want to beat your shit out of it, and it brings it up to to that level. Now they can go take over with some heat, stop you and and get the heat and then you, you know, work into the comebacks and the tags and all that. But you, you don't just go straight to heat. You know, you, you work up a little at a time. We learned that, we learned that from them. And, and the, like the other thing I still didn't say was about the uh, lackadaisical. Still wrong. <laughs> he got it. Lackadaisical um, um, way that you would, would have a match with that your routine, you're used to it. Uh, we change it up. They all are until they always wanted to change it. You know, add a little something. Even if you just add a little something or take a little something out, it, it keeps you sharp because you got to remember where that add on or that subtract is. And uh, and then sometimes we change a, a few things in a match. You know, so you had to stay sharp and, and you you know intense the whole way rather than the lackadaisical. We can you spell it? 
Not out loud. I was just yes or no. <laughs> after, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> after, uh, after. <laughs> well, I just tell you what a great run. There you, uh, you at home, can you spell lackadaisical? If you can, put it in the premiere as we watch this Thursday night at 10 o'clock. I want to see if anyone can butcher it worse than I did. Because <laughs> like I said, if you know the, how the past couple of weeks have been, we're in the middle of a Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks toy drive as we tape this. I'm exhausted, but lackadaisical. <laughs> Did I get it right that time by Sounded, accident? Uh, I know what you meant if it was wrong. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> it was, it was, I'm being lackadaisical at this point. But I, I, one of the top 50 matches of the 80s, a, a tip of the cap to you, Mr. Gennetti. No, a tip of the honor and totally. The They're the ones that made that happen. Yeah. I remember you lit up the Boston Garden when you guys worked here in March of Everywhere we, we went, you know, it was, it was uh, the Spectrum in Philly, uh, Cow Palace out, in, which I don't think is there no more. Um, no, that still exists. It's still there? Yeah, I don't think anyone it's uses it. It's not the dirt it. floors like it used to be. I'd never been. Uh, that, was, that was a part of the um, iconic thing. Where they had them, you know, because it was cow, where they did, yeah. did cow shows or whatever. They kept the floor dirt. Um, it would have been a good show for the pets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matilda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're scratching and digging. And, uh, Swaggy would have liked it because he could have yeah. a, a large litter box for him. But uh, yeah, that was uh, all over the country. L.A. Arena, uh, you know, all the biggest arenas that we went to. For, uh, the free, what was it? The Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the biggest. Well, oh, that must have been nice for Sean, the yeah. San Antonio guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, he had a, a, a wrestling city. I mean, San Antonio loves their wrestling. All of Texas does, really. Did we on and Telly were new? Did how did they adjust to WWF? Did they fit in right away? Was it a little yeah, hesitation like, coming from the competition? No, because you know what they knew so many of the guys. They they'd worked with them before and they were well respected. You mm. know. And, oh, definitely. And, and you know they weren't uh, excuse my language, but they weren't fuck ups. You know. Yeah. So everybody respected them right away. Um, how did you and Sean get along with them? Great. Right. Absolutely yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, uh, we just learned so much. I, I can never thank them enough for how much we learned from them. Do you, I don't know if it was, maybe I think it maybe was this MSG match. Didn't Arn Anderson suffer some kind of an injury? Yeah, damn it. What happened with that? I jumped on his, uh, from the back to do the, the roll through. I don't know if it's what the name for it is, but you jump on the back, not where you're face fucking him and you go back, not that that flip, but where you jump him from behind. Like your crotch would be in the back of his head? Yeah, the and your legs roll. are over. Victory roll. Victory roll, that's yeah. it. And you, you know, you, you roll through their legs and roll them up and you got a pinning thing. Well, according to Arn, um, I didn't tuck his head and so he went straight, piles drove himself. I've done that move a thousand times. I don't know that you tuck the guy's head because he's got to take his own bump. He's got to go and curl under and roll yeah. forward. But, you know, maybe Arn never took him for or something, <laughs> or maybe he just didn't want to say, I messed up. But in his, it's in his book. That's what hurt my feelings. Cause, oh, really? Yeah, he says, yeah, Marty kind of messed my neck up. Damn, the first book I'm in, and it's got to be about messing the neck up. I had for, one of the first Foreshadowing what books, would yeah. happen with Chuck Austin. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, Arn, Arn was great, but he, you know, I'm not supposed to push it. I've never pushed nobody's head down. It's like, damn, they can't control their body for the roll. Right. But um, and and but what what happened when we did that and Sean had did something with Tully, we're like we cleared the ring, you know, and you get that pop from the crowd because you're standing all fired up by yourself. You just and they they were like Tully was like, come get us, come get us, come out here and get us, you know, because you wanted to keep the crowd up. If you obviously if you let the action stop. They're going to come down. He wanted to keep it up. And so he, and Sean slid out to him. So I'm like, I slid over to, uh, to Arn, who's walking real slow, and he's holding. And I walk behind him, and, and I grab him, and he goes, Nick. And I'm like, okay. And I punch him in the neck, and he goes, Nick. And I'm hitting him. He goes, no, you fucking broke my neck. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but, uh, and he tells it that way too. I, was, I already had my damn neck, jam my neck. Now he's punching me in it. But that's why, because he was saying neck, he meant no. Yeah, no right, I'm right. my hurt my neck. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, punch him in the back of the neck. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Arn. <laughs> and what about Tully? He was kind of off-putting to a lot of people. But you guys yeah. got along with him, okay? Yeah, he was a little arrogant and, and, and stuff. And and you know, we we I liked him beyond it. Uh, but I, I thought sometimes he was a little too cocky and arrogant. And, 
You know, sometimes when we were drinking and hanging around, he'd get a little out of pocket, you know, so. Uh, what do you mean by that? You know, he'd get a little too, uh, too much to want to handle, to put up with, you know, and, and so. Uh, would you hang with the Brain Busters or no? Yeah. Oh, you would? Yeah. Yeah. Um, love them to death, you know. Oh. Well, a great series of matches to kick off 1989. Right now, fans, I'm hearing that music in the background. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more Wrestling Insiders. Party with Marty in just a moment. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Insiders. Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Mighty Rockin' each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty. But, but, our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. At WrestleMania 37, she proved she is the EST, defeating Sasha Banks to become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autograph print, personally signed by Bianca Belair, one of only 50 made, direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Bianca Belair collectible for your wrestling collection now. Wrestling fans, what a great look at a great year, 1989, and we just broke through January, Marty. Think about the, the, the depth and the superstars and the legends and the memories we're going to have to talk about. There's a lot. All right, wrestling fans, we're going to be back next Thursday night as we continue our look. You know, in 1989 was my biggest, well, 1990 was. Uh, money year, biggest money, because it, it was the first 90, yeah, 89 was the biggest, because in 88 we came in Halfway. right, yeah, but three quarters away, right at WrestleMania or something, yeah, we right before, because we didn't make it, because we weren't there long enough, we right. just come in, and so that was like an eight, nine month, it was a good year, we made a lot of money, but nine, uh, 89 was the first full year we got, and uh, it was pretty good, and I think 90 actually topped it. Really? Yeah. Maybe because of merchandise? Because uh, the house is I think we did more we're shows. Than 90. Um, not, well, 90, 91, they started uh, fizzling a little bit. No, 90 was, there was a big drop. It, was it? it popped back up when Hogan came back. But well, it might have been though, towards the end of the year, was when we were doing those week long double shots every maybe, night of the week. Maybe. You know, so you got like six extra shows in. And we did them during the year, too. But it, it come the holidays, we were yeah. definitely getting a bunch of them. So that could have contributed. Um, but we, we made we made good. It was our or mine. Sean's done way better since. But uh, <laughs> think about what he's making now. My God. Well, you know, it's if like we being made, grandfathered into the mob. Yeah. Uh, you know what we made then? Like if it was a little over two two hundred thousand. Um, now just a, a difference in money would that would be a I don't know like three hundred fifty oh thousand or something. No, more than that. But you know. The contracts they give out now are, are so much, but I don't know. I've not signed to, uh, the last one I signed. I didn't get to fulfill. But, no, that will, <laughs> yeah. We'll get to that point. Mm -hmm. All right, wrestling fans, we'll be back next Thursday night. We kick off the look at February of '89. What a month it was! Uh, a follow-up to the year earlier in February of '88 on NBC. 33 million people watched Hogan and Andre. A year later on NBC, it was Hogan and Savage against the Twin. Towers, you talk about magic. We're going to talk about it next Thursday night. For my partner in crime, Monty Gennetti, I'm Dan Marotti, folks. We'll see you next Thursday night. Be well, stay healthy. 
wrestling fans. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s Live Wrestling Event and Legends Fan Fest Celebration, Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autograph photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood, get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com on our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11 by 14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with certificate of authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout-out as our thanks to you. Get this ultra-rare autographed Fiend and Alexa Bliss poster now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti along with Marty Gennetti. Marty, it is getting cold here in Boston in the middle of January. Yeah, what's going on with that? Well, it's called winter. It's, uh, it's, that's <laughs> what it is. See, down south, we don't have to worry about that till almost February. Hey, it gets chilly, but I mean, it, it, it don't get cold, cold like this. Now, down in Georgia, where you live, what is, how cold does it get in the wintertime? It gets down in the lower 30s and upper 20s. For a high? I mean, <laughs> no, not for a high, <laughs> nothing for the low. Uh, it, I mean, it does. You have your day or two or so to dip under 20. You know, and, and, and really? Fail. For so a we, high temperature? No, <laughs> why you keep going to the high temperature? No, that's the lows. Oh, okay. We get 30, 30 to 40 during in the days well, the during day, the deep winter. It can get that cold? <laughs> no, you Well, no, because I used to have a place down in uh, Florida, near, not too far from Gainesville. Uh, and most, you know, it, it would be rare for it not to at least hit 60. I know you're further north than that. Yeah. Yeah, down mid mid uh, central Florida area, you know, don't get under 60, you, 70, you or can, 50. You hit the 40. I mean, and not, and the highs, the lows, they can get down close to freezing. You were in, but I mean, for the highs where you are, it's in the 40s sometimes in the winter? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, I, did, I would have guessed warmer than that. No, not but for, that's, no, it's I mean, not, you know, there's days. You don't have the <clears> snow, <throat> that's for sure. The who? The snow. No, once in a while we'll catch something. Now, up in Columbus, where I'm at, and occasionally we'll get it. Uh, there was Snow? A, yeah. Really? Yeah. It ain't like up here. It. it ain't like six feet of it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, right? But we'll, you know, we'll get snow a couple, three, four, or five inches. And then once in a while we get the big one. We get a couple feet. You know, everybody snow? goes, the whole damn place shuts down. Nobody knows how to drive it that down oh, south. Oh, yeah. We had four inches, believe it or not, the day before Halloween. Is that right? And then it pretty much melts it the next day. That's crazy yeah. how this year's weather. October and November in Massachusetts is always crazy. You can go from one day where it's near freezing and then it's 80 the next. It's nuts, but welcome to Boston. And welcome to Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. If you're new to our show, I'm Dan Marotti. This is the future Hall of Famer. MJ Mr. in the house. In the house. We have our chat going right wait now. A minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're going to start the show off like that. What do you mean? Dude, where's my phone? Oh, here we go again. Did you check your sock? <laughs> no. That's my wallet. I found my wallet. You found your wallet? Well, that's my Oh, wallet. you hid it behind the belt. You know what? Maybe you should just keep it there. <laughs> yeah, Could right. you think yeah. of that? Then you'll never lose it. All right. Because you'll always be a champion to us. <laughs> okay, there we go. We are continuing to plow through Marty's time in the World Wrestling Federation we in 1989. It. It's uh, taken 20 from years. From a man that's known his plowing over the years, believe me. There's many arena rats in, around the country. They can attest to his plowing. Arena rats. Yeah. Look, I think this is from Dunkin'. I shouldn't be giving free plugs, right? No. Dunkin' Donuts. And they put the price tag right there where everybody can see how cheap you are. How much was it? It says a dollar, eat in, dollar 37. Oh, a it's number 137. No, never mind. It's the, it's the number sign, number 137. Oh, that was probably the order number. Four creams, four sugars. I'm on a diet, though. I didn't really have that many creams and sugars. It was three. 
<laughs> it must have been four. You really loaded up on the creams and the sugars. Well, bro. I didn't know how big the coffee was going to be. I thought it was going to be one of them buckets. And I've told you, I've never had a cup. Of coffee? Ever. Try this. No. It might be spiked. You know what it was? I, <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I think I tried the ice cream and it sucked. And it just, I said, I never want to have it, the drink. Let's see if we can name that tune. Mm -hmm. I like pleasure spiked with pain. And music is my aeroplane. Who sang it? We have the live premiere going at 10 o'clock on Thursday night. Fans, if you have any idea what that song I is I guarantee you somebody's going to know it before Googling it. <laughs> now, you know, you think maybe we should do a giveaway? What do you want to give away? How about an autographed picture? Of who? You. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know what? We're not even... Why do you never give none of you? That lady's going to buy one. Who, Linda? The one that owns your son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's biologically, he's not my son, but I love him in my heart like he's my yeah, own. Yeah, I think brother. he loves you back, too. He, I we, saw we him were actually, one day. We were texting uh, while you guys went on your little oh, field yeah, trip. What, what did he have to say? No, he just said, tell Marty hi. How's it going? How's the show? Devon Brent, brother, the junior ambassador of Boston Wrestling. He's ready to meet you. He's ready for you to come down. I tell you, you want to hear an undercover story we had to do? Undercover? Yeah. Undercover. Well, you know who Leo Rush is. He's the recent NXT Cruiserweight Champion that right. WWE released, and he had his war with Mark Henry that's joined our Did family. Did you say of Mark? Mark, yeah. Our family of talk shows. But um, he really wanted to meet him, you know, especially a guy recent from WWE TV. Yeah. So he came in on a Wednesday, and now that they have cyber school, he's at home every day. Oh, yeah. yeah. How's that going? He hates it. Really? I feel bad for the poor kid. But anyway, we picked up Leah with the airport, and I said, you know what? She's at work. Hopefully, she never sees this, but she, she was at work. So we brought Leo over to the house, and the kid came out, and he got a picture with him, and he was thrilled to have a WWE superstar come to his house oh, and get his picture wild. with him. Because when it was funny, do you know um, the Viking Raiders of WWE? Viking Raiders, yeah. Hanson I think, and... Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know they them, were but... They were the War Raiders. They were... What the hell was their name? What, what was their name? Where were they at before? The Viking Raiders. What were they before the Viking Raiders? The War Raiders? We got two encyclopedias in here. Hans oh, that's right. I forgot Matt Daddy knows them. Hanson and Roe. Well, anyway, Hanson, who's Ivar now in WWE, he used to help me babysit the oldest, his older brother when he was a kid. And he was kind of, the youngest one was jealous that a WWE guy used to come to his house before he was born to help babysit his brother. So now he can say he had a WWE guy at his house too. That was so pretty there you cool, go. Man. It is for a little kid. He's been around giants, midgets. He's got <laughs> to meet the stars. The boogeyman called him for Christmas. He's had an interesting little life. The kid. Yes, I like can't it. wait until he has the freedom to come and join us at his own will. But that's a different story for a different time. As we continue to look at one of my favorite years in professional wrestling history, 1989. We're going to party like it's 19. 89. Remember, <laughs> you're going to have to write down what that song is, because I'm not going to remember. It was Red Hot Chili Peppers. We're doing a contest. Oh, sorry, did I just ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> that one he just sang was Prince. <laughs> but it wasn't 89, it was 99. <laughs> you know what I'm... Uh, Why, what do we got? What do we got? We, we I'm confuserated. What? I'm confuserated. You're confuserated. Well, you know what? If anyone guesses it before what? Marty just gave the answer, <laughs> we'll give you an autographed picture and I'll mail it to you personally. <laughs> All right. Now but I need help right here. <clears throat> this is, as far as I got? knew, was Alabama. Yeah. Uh, and, and their emblem in it's Atlanta. Very, Atlanta, very Atlanta, close. Atlanta very Braves. Similar. This is definitely the Braves because it's got the National yeah. Baseball League, the Major League thing. And there was supposed to be a little swish of a difference. There's the only thing between Alabama's A. And these, I don't. Do you see any difference? I don't have my glasses on, but do when see I looked any, at it earlier, there's not much of a difference. I don't think there is. So, so I'm wondering, is this a an Does Atlanta? Does the A stand for Annie? Oh, that would be A E A. Yeah, is anonymous. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Annie, we hope you're doing well wherever you may be. Wrestling fans, we ask you, where were you February the third, nineteen eighty nine? I was Almost somewhere turning, turning. I don't know what. I'm going to tell you where you were. Where was I? Almost a year to wait the a day. Oh, what are we wait. doing? What are we dedicating? 
Hawk and Animal, the Legion of Doom, yep, the Zubas, Zubas, baby. Zubas. Joe Laranitis, rest in peace, our friend. And even Mike, even though it's been 17, 18 years Has now. Has it been that long? 2003. Holy shit. You know what? I didn't know him as well as I did Joe, but I liked him an awful lot, too. Oh, he was great. Stand-up guy. He helped. We did a fundraiser. I don't know if you were familiar with it, but Bushwhacker Butch got a bad staph infection and almost died. I heard, I heard Luke about it. Went to his home. He didn't hear from him, so Luke went to his home, and he found him in bed covered in piss and shit. And we did a, a live event fundraiser for him to try and raise some money. And you know what he did with the money we raised? What he did? You talk about, you know, you hear stories about guys throwing things and money going to waste. He bought a computer, and he was actually able to do But this was Bush or Luke? Luke. Uh, okay. No, I'm sorry, Butch. But he actually bought a computer, and he got a job at home doing custom service work over the phone. Now, can you imagine? I don't know what it was for, but just say, you know, he's working for Samsung, and you have an issue with your television, and you call, and it's and fucking... Going, Yay, Bush, mate! Bushwhacker Bush 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 that TV against the wall. ...is taking your call. I just thought that was great. I'm glad he put the money to good use. Jim Neidhart fucked us so bad on that event. I hate to say it because he's dead. Yeah. But fuck Jim Neidhart. You want to know how pissed I got, Marty? I'm scared to now. <laughs> Can I tell my story? Yeah, go ahead. I'm it's, scared. It, it fits the time frame. This, now, okay. this is December of 2001. It's only our second live event we ever ran because Ed Cohen stopped using me in July of 01 with the WWF stuff. So December of 01 now, we're doing this event for Butch. She's in bad shape. A lot of the boy, the Hawk helped out big time with the, an animal, donating pictures and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, Luke it sent Bushwhacker stuff along. WWE, we actually had to go to Titan Towers. They found these beautiful framed old school posters in some warehouse of the Bushwhackers. It was an interesting experience touring Titan Towers the morning of the event we had. But anyway... Neidhart contacted us, not vice versa. He contacted us about wanting to come to the event. But there was some, uh, the flight was insane. It was like 1500 bucks to fly him in from Calgary. And he offered to come in oh, for nothing. Sorry, I can imagine, yeah. So I said, you know what? I said, I appreciate it. I said, it's awfully nice of you, but I just, I can't afford 1500 bucks. He said, well, what if you do this? You tried to get him down to 1400 no, he was going to come in. For, he just wanted oh, the yes. airfare. He just wanted to be flown in and put in a hotel. He was going to do it for nothing, for free. Yeah. Well, there's, there's more to the story. So yeah, I, said, no, I, can, I can already imagine. <laughs> I said, we can't afford 1500 bucks. It would take away from the fundraiser. You know what I mean? We were trying to help Butch live. Um, and so he comes back with, well, you know what? If you send me $500, oh, boy. I'll <laughs> use my frequent flyer miles. I want to see... A friend of mine for Christmas. Oh, uh, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know in the story. You made me spit my going. damn paper tooth out. <laughs> well, what happened was, I guess the friend. You say what happened? The what? quote unquote friend in Annie in New Jersey. <laughs> she hey, decided hey. to go to visit her family for Christmas. So all of a sudden, Jim Neidhart fell off the map. After sending him the $500. Yeah, you ain't going to find him unless you find out where he went to party. <laughs> so I, let me tell you how angry I was. I still held out hope that there was goodness in Jim Neidhart's There heart. is goodness in heart, but that other stuff speaks louder. <sighs> it was December 28th. It was a couple of days after Christmas. Like I said, the morning of the event, we had to drive to Titan Towers in Stanford. They emailed me at the, in the evening on the 27th. It was so late they couldn't even FedEx it overnight to get us these posters. We had to go and physically pick them up at Titan Towers. So imagine the day of this big event, we had to, at 6 in the morning, drive to Stamford. We got there so early, Kevin Kelly wasn't even in the office yet. So we had to wait. The driver got pissed. You know how the entrance is at Titan Towers, right? Yep. Yes, so he backed up. He waited for someone to drive in that had the security card, and he followed them into the Titan Tower parking lot as the gimmick was coming down. <laughs> so we went and parked, and guess what we were greeted by at the door? You can't imagine how many security guards. <laughs> After we explained why we were there, they finally let us in. Very nice to us. Yeah. Well, Kevin finally got to the office. We, exp you know, hi, how you doing, blah, 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 blah. I said, what would you do in a situation with Nyhad? He said... 
<laughs> it ain't happening. <laughs> it ain't happening. So I'm like, fuck. I still held out hope there was goodness in that man's heart, but... There is. I mean, you, you got to understand, unless you've ever been caught in what we call the grip, it's got you. In other words, it's got you. You're not you. You know what? Let, to be fair, let me finish the story. Okay. And then sorry, since, oh, you, since you know Jim, yep. to, be, to be fair, you tell us the Jim Neidhart you know. Because okay. I think it, two sides to every story, right? right? Yeah, you know him from one, one meeting him once. I know him from knowing him for five years. So the fucking guy... He knows shows the event. And I'm, I'm, this is our second live event. It's still kind of, for me to be responsible for everything and everyone, it's still a new thing to me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it was actually Road Dog, of all people, <laughs> that was trying to calm me down about it. He said, brother, he said, Jim Neidhart's fucked. <laughs> he said, you know, you can't blame yourself. You know what? He said, the fans, they're either going to understand or they're not going to understand. He went. Road Dog went out there and he Algo really. would not understand. <laughs> he tried to help the cause a great deal, but um, WWE, if you just saw the beautiful, in addition to those bushwhack of frame twenty-four by thirty-six frame posters, they gave us this. It was a banner used at the No Mercy pay-per-view, and it was signed by like fifty stars. I, whoever the hell won that? That. That's got to be worth thousands and thousands of dollars. We did it as a, a yep. raffle that night at the event to help raise money for Butch. But anyway, so after the event, obviously, I emailed Jim to see what happened. And that's what he said. His friend decided to go away, and uh, he couldn't make it. So I'm like, well, what difference did your friend make in you coming to the event or not? So he was an asshole about it. So you know what I did? How was the asshole? He, he raised up. They was like, basically, go fuck yourself. So, you know what my response was? No, what was your response? I went to updatebostonwrestling.com. And you didn't dog him. And I said, if you'd like to ask Jim Neidhart why he didn't come to the event, I posted his phone number on the front page. Oh, man, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Mm. And let me tell you, I can't get too mad at you for Jim that. Jim was not happy with Dan Marotti when I did that. I can't, I can't get too mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Um, he stole. I did it. I did it. I did, he didn't mean to. I did it for. Uh, uh, I did that to Pat Tanaka one time. What do you mean you did maybe it to twice. Pat Tanaka? Put his phone number on the internet. <laughs> oh, you did it as a rib. No, he got I got mad at him because oh. he, he had done something that <laughs> kind of cost me a body part. Oh, what? And, and, well, not lost it. I still got all my limbs. But what all happened? Why did you and, have heat with Pat Tanaka? Well, I didn't have heat, but I, when I was living over in England in Liverpool, yeah. well, I wasn't living there. I was there. Well, I, was, I was living there. It was like three or four months. Um, touring with Brian Dixon. Uh, great, man. I loved it. I forgot what the name of his organization. It came to that the end of the tour. Yeah. <clears throat> it, came, it came to the end of the tour. And he, he wanted to keep me on. He goes, can you stay another, you know, month or two? Wow. And, and man, this was, was, I was 42, 40 years old, something like that. And, oh, was it, or was it 50? Talking around the year. What year is this? 2021. <laughs> so we're still in 1989. Uh, we're still in 1989. <laughs> Damn. We got a long way to go to catch up. But, um, You're going to have to move so was, here. Forget was, yeah, about Brian Dixon. It was right when Yokozuna died because he was that on That was tour. October of 2000. 2000, then. Because um, he was on the other tour with Scott Conway's tour. Oh, you, that's right. He was in England yes. when he died. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> yes, because we, we were on the other tour uh, with, with Brian Dixon. And, and you know what? Oh, you go ahead. I don't want to interrupt. No, go ahead. No, that's funny because that was a month before I started working with Ed Cohen in WWF. Because my the first time I did anything with them was Survivor Series of 2000. Yoko died the night of, I think it was called No Mercy. The whatever the October 2000 pay per view was, Junior got the big I'm push. I'm surprised you don't know. <laughs> Junior got the big push and was working with Austin in this main event, and um, Yoko died. Yeah, and, with, and, and, and you and, talk of oh my God. You know we got the call. We you know we, we that was one of the biggest nights of Junior's life. Yo, uh, Junior is um. Rikishi. Right. Well, some people might not know him. As yeah, and you know what that really made me piss me off a little bit? Why? Um, <clears throat> well, because, you know, he died there. You know, he he was having problems with his weight. And oh, it was, yeah. it was straining on his heart. And, um, you know, it just became too much for him. Uh, you know, his heart gave up. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the best way you would say that. I don't, you know, know the proper way to say that. But uh, 
they, uh, the, you know, the dirt sheets, when I say dirt sheets, I don't mean wrestling dirt sheets. There's damn sure a lot of those. But um, the, like the, the, the Inquirer and, and you know, the bullshit the sheets. The Observer, the torch. Yeah, you know, Alien, got my damn dog yeah. pregnant type of uh, places, or uh, 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 shit sheets. They, you know, the, it was like a next, the next day we're over there. And they are big on their magazines over in England. There's racks of them. There's 30 or 40 of them. National Enquirers and Globe and all the stupid shit. And, you know, there, there's pictures of Yoko sitting sitting there, and, you know, big ass memories, his outfit, he had the red, you know, bottoms. And, um, and it, it was different titles for each one of them. One of them said, uh, Pro Wrestler Dies Eating 600 Boiled Eggs. Oh, please. Yeah, another one was Tarantula Scares. Him. That was probably coming out I of your heard, nose. You know, that's funny. I heard that story somewhere. Yeah, well, Tarantula Scared him to death. He had a heart attack because he saw a spider. But how the hell would anyone know that, that unless yeah, they were in the room with him? Because yeah. I think he was in his hotel when he passed. Yeah, he was. He yeah. didn't come down. The way they found out was, you know, come down for the for the, show, the vans to take you to the town. And, you know, he was usually, when he went his first ones down, he... The way Virgil was always, you know, this, oh. is gonna, this is going to be a shocker. Oh. Virgil was always late. <laughs> and Virgil even was there. And they were like, will somebody go up and get him? They went and knocked on one. his door. I shouldn't say that. Though. Do what? <laughs> I was going to say the wrong one passed. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, Virgil's all right. No, right? you know he's not. <laughs> Pain in the ass. <laughs> he's still all right, though. Well, I'm glad you like him. Yeah, he's my brother. I remember but, um, Tony Atlas gave him my phone number, and I wanted to slip Tony's plug. <laughs> Good job, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> That's hear, a real scene. You want to hear a fucking great story now? Do you know what? We're having fun. We're getting off script already. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, Virgil kind of ties into 1989. He was around. We did, you know what WrestleCon is? WrestleMania weekend, the big fan fest? You're asking me that. Do you know? But, I mean, are you familiar yes. with it that it exists? I've been okay. at it. <laughs> uh, we had, <laughs> we went years. down to the one in New York. The last one they had, the weekend of WrestleMania 35. We were with Tony, um, Dutch Mantel, and Jerry Briscoe. Jerry Briscoe was great because he was there on Vince's dime. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but anyway, Tony said, oh, Virgil's, oh, Dan. <laughs> Virgil, looking for, Virgil looking to sign at the show. I figure maybe you can get him some room at your table. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to sell my own shit. You think I want to put up with fucking him? <laughs> he, Virgil called me, I don't know how many times, and I didn't answer. I didn't want to deal with Dan, him. Dan, I gotta make some money, man. I didn't want to. I gotta make some money. <laughs> so we, so fuck it. I don't, I don't know what. I don't know if we went out to eat or if we went to get. I, I remember we had Dutch Mantel and we had the little Dutch boy Wes Simcoe, who you haven't met yet, but he's a little fella from Holland. He was there helping. A Dutch Harlem boy? No, Holland. Harlan. Holland, huh? Like Amsterdam. Oh, oh, Holland. Holland. Man, you gonna have to work on that Boston accent. So we, that so it's wicked. So we get back to the hotel, and guess who's in the lobby of the hotel no, he waiting ain't. for us? <laughs> no, he ain't. Fucking Virgil. <laughs> I said I am not dealing with this fucking guy. I'm in no mood. I told you I was having a CIPS attack. I'll show you the the pictures on my phone. This leg that was like they this. They have an arthritis one now. Compared Look. to this one. I was in so much pain, and I had an even bigger pain in the ass waiting for me in the hotel lobby. I said, "This yeah, because Virgil does have a big one." I said, "There's got to be a side entrance to this place." <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so we circled the hotel, and this is we're at a, a, a Hilton Garden Inn somewhere uh, in Newark, New Jersey, with D Dutch Mantel is in worse shape than me. I don't know if you've seen him. He broke his leg during Who his does? run with Swagger, yeah. Oh, his, shit. His, uh, it's awful. His That's leg, why he disappeared, because he was there for a minute. Yeah, his leg is almost, it almost I hate to say it, it almost looks like a candy cane. So he, he's in a lot of pain, the poor guy. Oh, and I man. think the Sorry, world, I'm not, I'm not shooting on Dutch. Yeah, I, I think love Dutch, Dutch is man. great. Dutch was actually going to be with us, but he had a, uh, a health spell, and he had to cancel the appearance. But hopefully we'll have him sooner than later, because Dutch is a great guy. Yeah, so we came up with this plot. The driver dropped us off at the side door, and me, the little Dutch boy from Holland, and Dutch Mantel, who's physically in worse shape than me, snuck in through the side door while Virgil was waiting at the front door to try and get booked at our table. 
Well, I thought when we made it back to you the You weren't room, gonna get away from that, brother. I can tell well. you right now. <laughs> then we show up at the Hilton in Times Square Who was already for the there. event that he's already fucking there waiting for me. I this guy was like AIDS. I couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> it was like the S T D that wouldn't quit. He said, Oh, brother, hey, you know, like he was my friend. Well, yeah, he was and, that and, weekend. And you know what? It was at the point where I was in so much pain. I lose the, I let me be cordial to people, especially people that have been in the business and done more than me. I have so much respect for them, but he was just such a pain in the ass. I said, I, I, I literally said, Jerry Briscoe's coming from WWE. I have no room for you. You're going to have to talk to the people that run the convention. And then he vanished. I will tell you all a quick Virgil story that I've probably told on here before. Virgil, I don't Virgil, remember Virgil stories. Virgil, Virgil, and if you got the little kitties right now, eat the covered ears, <laughs> or tell them to leave the room real quick. <laughs> but oh, oh, Virgil was known to have a was known to hell. We, we wouldn't take a shower when he was taking a shower, so he turned around real quick to like get water in the front. That sling around and hit you. Like, man, hey man, you know the, the showers are the circular that go around. We had twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> um, you know, if he turned around real fast. Phew. Now imagine what Lanny Poffo could do if he was as endowed as Virgil. Well, for white boy, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, uh, now you made me forget what I was going to say about Virgil. I mean, he had, it wasn't a matter of having a filter. A filter means you know better, but hey, I'm going to say what I feel. Virgil's just different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I love Virgil. If you hear this, I love you, Deb Virg. But, um, he, uh, we're on the airplane, and Virgil would, you know how he is, it, no matter what subject it is, I, hey, we got to get some money, buddy, we got to get some money, <laughs> or would you, like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, get the table, give me the table, I'm here. He gets stuck on something, and he's stuck on something, and on this, on this particular, what I'm talking about, we was on a plane, you know, flight going somewhere, and it was some pretty stewardess, and, you know, this one was real sad, she was depressed, and, and you know, almost crying, but you know, she's doing her the job. The stewardess was almost crying. Yeah, yeah, she was doing something wrong with her. She was oh. upset about something. Well, almost like the knew, John you know. Candy at Fridays that waited <laughs> on us last time. Oh, kind of oh, sad man. looking. Yeah, she was a sweetheart though. She was. I'm sure. I'm sure. Let's go see her tonight. It closes at nine. Ten, you said. No, nine. Boston. Boston shuts down. It's so scary. It's Wait awful. When? When is it's it? Awful. When is it? What's the date right now? The twenty. The day we're taping this? Right now, yeah. November 21st. No, I mean, did it show? This show is January 21st. Oh, so Biden's president. This probably, COVID's gone now. Sleepy woke up. <laughs> yeah, by January, who knows what the restrictions are going to be. Yeah. But as of right now, it's horrible if you're a night, well, I'm a night person, so it sucks. It, you know, as of the date we're taping this, COVID's running rampant up here. In, in it's like the, Hulkamania. Yeah, man. It's running still wild. People, still, yeah. Still people wearing plastic on their feet in the gym. I went to the gym this morning, I told you. Were there more people doing that again? No, nah, but I oh. thought I'd just throw that in. But, uh, <laughs> but um, oh man, it's horrible. You can't, they're closing the restaurant. You said 10. No, you have to be in, in by, nine. by 9 okay. and out by 9.30, quote unquote. Can you imagine if a girl told you that on sex? No. It's been a lot here. <laughs> but, um. I'd be lucky with Linda to get that much time. But Man, we got kids watching. I hope the kids oh, yeah, I told y'all to, to come from, and this wasn't why. Yvonne Brent, go to bed. <laughs> but what, what, what I was going to say was, uh, you know, Virgil's on the plane, and the girl, you know, is coming down with a cart to serve the beverages and whatever. And Virgil sees, she, you know, she's, she's sad. Yeah, and we all noticed because she was real pretty. You know, so everybody always feels sorry for the pretty girl. Nobody cares about the big... The, the unhappy, uh, ugly one. Yeah. AEA. -A -A. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Keith Frank of the Hilton of Boston. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, Virgil, what's the matter? And she's like, oh, nothing. Go, no, what's the matter? Something wrong. Uh, my boyfriend. And he go, and I mean, this is out loud. Everybody around within four rows of seats can hear. You know, because Virgil's loud. He don't talk quietly. He ain't got a big dick like me, does he? He got a little bit old dick. He can't please you. And we're all like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we didn't want to know Virgil. Like, he couldn't believe he would say that out to all these people that are not with us. 
there were passengers on the plane. <laughs> and I'm looking back at Virgil like. And this is during your WWF days? Or yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was. And how did this unhappy stewardess react to Virgil's it, it made her stop his, crying because she was a shock. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was Virgil's intention. You know, there's a he, method to his madness. <laughs> he well, really, he was that massive that he was renowned for his girth. Pretty much, I really. Mean, you know, it, that you, was the one talent that he had. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's my boy. I, I can't say no. Oh, I didn't know oh, your yes. buddy was with him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he's got quite the personality. You know, but you got to blame nature. You know, he was born that way. Yeah. You know, he can't help it. That he don't think like the rest of us. Didn't he become? You I don't heard, think like the rest of us. That's for sure. I certainly don't. Didn't he become like a gym teacher or something at one point? I wouldn't doubt it. Let me tell you another thing about Virgil. You could always tell when he was in the gym, you know, because everywhere we go, we go to a gym. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you work out, you, you pace yourself like you, you want to take a yeah, whatever amount of break, 30, 45, a minute, minute. You don't want to go more than a minute and a half between sets. You know, you want to keep it going. We would always hear this beep, beep. And you would always look, we'd look at each other like Virgil's in here. He would take a stopwatch. I've never seen anybody else do this. And I've been in the gym since I was 14. Um, he would take a stopwatch to the gym. When he'd do his set, he would set up and he'd push it. And he had it set for when it was one minute, it beep. That mean do the next set. <laughs> he'd, 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 you know, you get, a, you get a clock in your head after so many repetitions of doing something. But he would... I mean, now he's dedicated. You see, he's built like hell. You know, he's dedicated. He's still in good shape. Yeah. For I'm not quite sure how old he is, but yeah, but uh, he was the only person to stop watch this in between sets. So beat one. It's been one minute. <clears throat> but, uh, I feel for Ted DiBiase with that man chasing him around the country, trying you, to latch on try to, to every you, personal appearance he gets. You, you, you know, <laughs> there was a picture somewhere. I wish we had it. We could. I'll send it to you maybe when you edit this mm -hmm. and do all this this stuff. You can put it up right here. Virgil was somewhere. It had to be <laughs> uh -huh. Texas because he's out in the parking lot. The, the the building, the Coliseum is right here. He's out in the parking lot oh. with a table and a little banner right in the front. And it says, uh, what did it say, Virgil? Bodyguard for Ted B DiBiase, and he's got the name DiBiase spelled wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so he's showing up at probably what a WWE show to try I don't know and what the show was, it, but, and but, but it was the thing. Wrong. People, you could see a couple people walking by. They were looking at him like, "What the fuck is this? What's, what's this?" About? And in the background, as if that wasn't bad, there's a tumbleweed. <laughs> it's just like blowing by. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, it was like, the, oh, man. And, and, and for him, that wouldn't even embarrass him. He has no shame. You know, another thing he did at signings, I witnessed this, and I told him, <laughs> first, well, don't come over here, man. Don't come sit next to me next, after that. <clears throat> He'd be real friendly when, when you get bored at the, like the conventions and it's slowing down. He'd walk out there in, in the traffic, you know, where the people are walking by. And they would say, when they recognized him, Virgil. He like he walked right up to him and with his pictures. Oh, what's your name? Oh, my name's Mark. And they're they're feeling like he's you know, like, you know, to Mark and hand it to him. They oh thank you. He goes twenty dollars. They're like oh oh I thought <laughs> I thought you was giving it. I can't resell it. You got your name on it. You see me put your name on it. <laughs> so, so a lot of times they would pay the twenty or whatever it was he was charging. <laughs> he reminds me of those people that you see in Times Square in New York City. They oh, come the, up to the, you with the, like the, a CD. The naked cowboy and like, oh, or whatever. No. They're like, oh, here, yeah, brother, check out my CD. You know, it's got some great tunes. Oh, all right, thank you. Yeah, five bucks. <laughs> it's like, I don't want it. But no, five dollars. Yeah. It's just what Virgil's like with eight by ten stills. Yeah. No one wants them. <laughs> but it's almost like being Me too on Twitter. Hashtag Me Too with yeah. Virgil eight by ten. You know, Everyone, she... Sheik was still the best at it, though. What do you mean? Oh, it, it, it hustling off his, his pictures. I told you. I, I, I don't ever. Re I have never known of him to do it quite like that. Who? Sheik. What's that? What I told you before? Yeah. Well, no. What you just said about Virgil. 
Oh, Virgil, yeah, that, I, I was there watching him do that. No, but like, I've never seen, I've never known Man, some Sheik people almost, that. Call, no, 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 oh. Sheik had a better one. Uh, let's hear this one now. He, he didn't rip nobody off, though. <laughs> he just hustled. Yeah, well, same, <laughs> yeah. He would pull a picture of him and Stone Austin, uh, Stone Austin, they started calling him Stone Austin, so Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? They're a picture of them together, 8 by 10 It's got the WWE logo on it, but it's a bootleg picture. Yeah, well, and it says two, two, uh, the uh, best two uh, world champions, both were, you know, whatever it said there, world champions. And he, she goes, ah, you cannot believe it, it's the last picture, two greatest, uh, fuck the Hulk Hogan, these are the two best world champions ever, last picture, last picture, I let this one go, $25, last picture of the two greatest, fuck the Hulk Hogan, the best, people would come up there real quick to get the last one, as soon as they walk off, we reach on their table, and they had another one, last picture, <laughs> <laughs> That I admire more than the Virgil style, because Virgil's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. I could, I'm sure he has some great stories to tell. I would never want him in that seat. Am <laughs> yeah. I wrong? Yeah. No, that would be entertainment for the people. But not <laughs> that, for me. They would be going like, not for is me. this for real? <laughs> not for me. And I'm the one that would have to deal with them from beginning to end. You got to take the pain with the glory, bro. Do you think it would be worth it to have Virgil? I think the people would be entertained. Isn't that what we're here for? Because It'll be a different type of entertainment with the, all because y'all won't believe it. <laughs> y'all be like with all this. of his lies. It'll yeah. make everybody feel better about their own life. <laughs> all right, wrestling fans. As usual, we go off topic. Why don't yeah, we? What was the topic? Uh, 1989. What but Virgil it? was around in 1989. There, so you came me. in with DBI. Yeah, but there. right now, if wrestling fans are going to take a brief time out, we come back, we'll get to the main point of contention as we roll into February 1989, one hell of a year in the World Wrestling Federation. Stand by. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. At Night of Champions 2020, Tribal Chief Roman Reigns successfully defended the WWE Universal Championship against his cousin, Jey Uso, in a must-see battle. Here is your chance to own a piece of Roman Reigns moments before battle on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. It's number 19 of only 50 made. Includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo in an on-air shout-out on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep Wrestling Legends working. Get this ultra-rare Roman Reigns autograph poster now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. I, I I don't know who I'm with right now. Are you Wim? No, MJ up in the house. Who's Wim? Well, you know Wim. You know the one we've dined with before? W-I-M? W-I-M-B. Wim. Wim. No. No, he's still trying to find it. Drawing blanks. Maybe a glance. Shooting blanks. Glance has probably been shooting blanks. Did y'all know. notice I had I had to change I had to it's not COVID. It's not COVID. No. Well what is it then? You got moccasin breath. I got what? Moccasin breath. Moccasin breath. Yeah. How does one get moccasin breath? I don't know. Do you eat a moccasin? I certainly did not. I haven't eaten all day. The day of the tapings is You fans, need to start eating because you get weird at the end of the day. 
Tony says that to me every time. He said, well, you Cobbs, need to eat. Cobbs make the brain happy because he knows <laughs> I never eat the day of a taping or an event until the show is over because I'm tense because I want everything to go right and I don't relent until I'm satisfied with the ending, which yeah. leads to many miserable days, but I have a nice <laughs> meal at the end of the day. We're, oh, you're in trouble. Uh, but what'd you do with my phone? Where's my phone? Oh, here, is it with the belt? Oh yeah, we left it there. That's it its official home. Okay. And I'm gonna take my phone out. Hey, we, we messed up. Well, how did we mess up? Matt, Daddy caught it. Look, we, we earlier we were confuserated by the fact that the emblems are the same, but this is Alabama. And this you pointed is, that out already. Yeah, but yeah. we we said is they're the same. But look, if you look on this one, there's a swoosh on top of the A. See how that? It's a little different. Yeah. So that's how, because this, this one's got a logo trademark thing, and this one's got a, a Major League Baseball trademark. And it doesn't stand for any. <laughs> yeah, it don't stand for AEA. All right. All right, wrestling fans, February the 3rd, 1989, almost one year from one of the biggest days in the history of professional wrestling. On February 5th, 1988, 30, more, no, more thank you. no, 33 million people tuned in to see Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant on NBC a year later, not quite the rating. It did a, a 15 share in 1989. It did almost a, tw I'm sorry, in 1988, it did about a 15 rating wise. In 1989, it fell to an 11. Damn. Still many, many, many. Did you put some shit over there? No. Everything smells. I don't know what you have there in your arms. No, it's a, it's a tangerine or something. Tan whatever it is. All right. But every, my hands, Oh, well, I can't explain. Oh, it. man, I forgot. Do I want to know? Probably not. No. They shouldn't know. All right. Well, but when I was wiping earlier, you got that cheap-ass toilet paper there. My fingers went through. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. Remember well, old Bushwhacker Luke, I told you. He yes, just, he would have been standing there. Yeah, he, the, he, he would be in the, in, in the stall right before his mask and his opponent, if he went in to take a shit, he better wipe his, he'll wash his hands before he goes to the ring. <laughs> I've never seen nobody else do that. That's an interesting one. Well, on February the 3rd, 1989, what do we got here in the notes here, fans? Just about a, an 11 and a half rating, uh, which was almost considered... Who did? A WWE. Okay. A decline on NBC, even though it was well over 10 million people that tuned in to watch Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage take on Akeem and Big Boss Man, the Twin Towers... On NBC's Friday night, the main event, uh, it set up the big Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage match for WrestleMania V. When Macho Man accidentally took a spill on Miss Elizabeth, the Hulkster, the hero that he was, scooped up Elizabeth and took her to the locker room, while the WWF World Champion Randy Savage went to war with Hakeem in The Boss Man. They had some bad days of our lives type skits in the background <laughs> where... Hulk Hogan started talking Connie to give him a countdown, even though they were already live on NBC at that point. You, uh, do you, have, you worked the Brain Busters in a dark match that night in Milwaukee. What kind and of match? A dark match. Dark. Dark. A dark match. Any memories of the big night of the main event as Hogan and Savage was set up for WrestleMania V? Is that the one where they almost got in a fight in the dressing room afterwards? For real? Um, it looked pretty serious. <laughs> well, I'm talking, this is 1989 when they worked, Hog when they worked Boss Man and Akeem. Hogan scooped up Elizabeth and took her to medical people in the back. Oh, okay. No, and no, then no. after the match. There was another time he scooped her, and Macho Man thought he scooped her too close. And, you know, you know now, I, I'd seen that? a feat of uh, strength I'd never seen before. What was that? Uh, and, and so this this might have been a little further down when when Hulk, when I say further down the the, the line and storylines, but it, but it could originate. Well, this from right is there. February of '89 in a climax yeah, but, that WrestleMania know, you, five you, in April. When you party and do a whole lot of drugs, <laughs> well, used tell to. us what happened then. No, but so um, on so this Macho particular, thought at one point Hogan scooped Elizabeth. Uh, this is when they were wrestling each other. And, yeah, and and. Um, they had a, it was a pretty good storyline, pretty Great good angle line. because they were remember they were the two American heroes or they were the you know, mega whatever. Powers. Mega, that's it, mega powers, and then they turn or whatever caused yep. the turn. Was that what? That was the night of the that turn. That was what in caused Milwaukee. it. Yep. Okay, well this was a, not even a TV show. Uh, I'm, <laughs> what I mean is it wasn't taped. It, it yep. was a, yeah, a TV taping, and uh, a TV show. But um, uh, Randy come back to the 
the Hulk come back to the dressing room first. After the match, I didn't even see it. They have always have closed circuit, so the guys can watch the match. Not always, but a lot of times, uh, you can watch the match without doing this through the yeah, curtains yeah, and the people are seeing you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, and and I, I didn't get to see it, but I, I seen. Uh, shit, I gotta remember who came in first the dressing room, and um, I think Randy came in first. And he sat somewhere across from, you know, me and him were buddies by then, you know, were kind of good you friends. You guys were buddies. Yeah. And he sat across. Well, I was buddies with Hulk, too, but, but I, I'm close with Randy. I never got, Hulk, Hulk is just a sort of, you can't get next to him. And that's fine. I don't want to get next to him, you know, but you just don't get that inner the Hulk. Uh, except unless you're Knobs. <laughs> I don't know how Knobs did it, but uh, I got an idea, though. But, <laughs> but, uh. Randy sat over there and uh, on the dressing room, and then Hulk comes in, and he comes through. And, and you know, Hulk, Hulk didn't. Hulk's a nice guy, no matter what you think of him. He's a nice guy, and um, he don't get mad unless he has to, <laughs> which is Randy too. But uh, but he comes in the dressing room. The showers are right here where Virgil would spin around and hit you with his, you know. But but the showers are right here. Right next to where I'm at, that's just the gat. I'm sitting there, and Hulk comes up, and he, the door, the carpet was kind of crinkled. It was one of them steel doors. So, I mean, it wasn't like a wooden door. That, you know, steel door, the nuts, the, the, you know, you got to use one of them Ch Chicago Fumatics to make sure the damn thing's in there tight enough that when people open and slam, it don't come out. Well, the carpet was crunched up. Hulk goes to open it. And it caught on the carpet. It only opened like two or three inches. And he was so mad, he was like, <clears throat> and he yanked it out of the fucking, the hinges. <laughs> the steel screws out of the steel, you know, wall thing. Wow. And threw it across the room. And he looked at uh, uh, Randy, he goes, come here. <laughs> and, and we all in the dressing room were like this. And Randy was looking at me, he goes, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay, <laughs> and they walked in there, and you know I'm sitting right there. You're not wanting to see two of your buddies getting into it. And they're screaming back and forth. But I would say this, even though Hulk pulled off that feat of strength, you yanked the fucking steel door off a metal door out of the fucking engine, out of the you know the, the railing, whatever that shit's called, and just tossed it. And one, <clears throat> and tossed it over and just said, "Come here." <laughs> <laughs> that, that has got to be the most scariest thing to say, okay, <laughs> to, but Randy went there and then, you know, was screaming back and forth and, you know, I just got, I had to peek, took a little peek and Randy's up in his face with his finger, like, you know, brother, let me tell you what you did, kind, kind of thing. And it, 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 and it got over without any fisticuffs. What was the issue? But, it well, was he, all about. He felt he picked up Elizabeth and during the match when they did a spot on the outside. I guess uh, Hulk either picked her up and set her behind him, which I would imagine that would make sense in the storyline because you know they're fussing, they're out there, you know, going ahead. Meaning uh, uh, Macho and, and Elizabeth, he's right in her face, yelling at her. He comes from behind and sets her behind him. Mm -hmm. Or, and this one wouldn't make sense as a big time baby face, he grabbed her and put her, but he picked her up, basically he picked her up and set her out of the way, he, for whatever reason. But Randy felt he got too up in here, you know, that he, you know, copped the feel of all fucking things with 20,000 people watching. I don't remember if it was a TV taping, I don't think it was, but uh, closed circuit, you know, but, but and so, um, Hulk's version, because you know he talked to me and he was saying that after that, he was Randy was laying them in like the punches. He was laying them in, and Hulk stayed professional on it, didn't retaliate in, in the ring. That's why when he came out the ring, <laughs> you know, um, so, and that's one that you you know you'd have to want to break up because it's two of your friends. But they might squash you. You get in the middle, pow, 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 pow. Man, I'm dead. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, man, that was. Uh, and it goes back to what we spoke on in, in a couple episodes ago. 
you know, Randy, I think that was us. I've done so many interviews lately. Um, I don't know who I told what <laughs> at this point. Yeah, but uh, they're pretty almost pretty factual. Um, but 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 um, yeah. I mean, look, man, if we're working the show together, and I love Randy now. I don't know the word. I'm not taking a side, but I don't think Hulk grabbed her to fill her titties during a match in front of twenty thousand people. But. Um, did Randy have a great jealousy over Elizabeth? Well, you know, Jimmy Hart, who I love to death, he told in an interview once, and I hate the word shoot, you know that, at least for me. Yeah. And you know why. We, we, we yep. talked to yep. Can you still hear me? I patted my chest, and that means I patted the microphone. Um, in a shoot interview, it's actually a WWE video oh, okay. of, of thing that, mm -hmm. that they put out on Macho Man. Mm hmm. Um, and that was a great one, man. I like that one. I like all of them that they put out, but you know that one in particular because that's a buddy. You know, we we were close, we got close. Um, but Jimmy Hart and I believe him. I don't know it to be true, but I don't think Jimmy would bullshit this. You know Jimmy Hart. Oh yeah, mouth to south. Yeah, but he has said that, you know, because Elizabeth was on the road all the time with him. You know, you got to worry about what's going on while you're on the road. She's right here with you. But he kept her away from the boys, and like Lex Luger said one time, I don't blame him. <laughs> you gonna put a piece of meat in front of a piranha? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the boys, some of the boys are that way, you know. But um, so we, I did, or some of us felt, because we know how the boys are. There's some of them see no limits. Like, look, there's a thousand girls tonight, and that's just tonight, and it's Tuesday. That's just tonight. Do you have to go over one of our wives or girlfriends, uh, or go you know go after? Do you have to do that? Uh, you know what the fuck? Come on, man. Were people generally respectful of Elizabeth? Oh yeah. yeah there's been some stories that have been spread over the years by different WWF peers of yours that Randy would go as far as to lock her in closets. Did you ever see anything crazy like that? I heard that like uh, last that? night in my interview that I oh. told you I did. Uh, yep. uh, his name's Eric. He, 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 he said that. He, I guess that was a pretty popular story. I don't know. I, you mean that the buildings? Yeah. He might have asked her, you know, here's how stories get misconstrued. Is that a word? Yes. Hey, Matt, can you spell misconstrued? <laughs> you get is that the right word for what I'm saying? Okay, misconstrued. He might have said go in the closet to change clothes because there's not an extra dressing room for... Right, the, right. There was In a lot of venues, they didn't have a separate right. locker room for one woman. Right, so he might have said go in there to change. I'll stand right here so nobody comes in. And then that got misconstrued. I'm going to spell it. M-I-S-C-O-N. Maybe embellished? Is that a better way to put it? Embellished. Exaggerated? Embellished? Well, I like misconstrued. Better. All right. Let me go with that one. All right. Okay. Uh, misconstrued as he's being jealous, locking her in the, cl in the closet. I, I don't see him doing that. I do understand this a little bit, uh, what Jimmy Hart said, that he was gone for seven days. And just supposedly, I'm telling you what Jimmy Hart said. All you got to do is rent that video. If you have that video, go look at it. Um, Elizabeth told him, I can't take it no more. When he's gone for seven days, he goes and buys 21 TV dinners. <laughs> and that's what I eat. I can't leave the house. <laughs> he's bought everything I need to eat. And I'm in the house, so I'm home. I'm warm. I'm safe. I want to believe Jimmy on that because I don't think Jimmy would lie like that. With the house locked, from what I was told. Oh, really? He would lock the house so she couldn't get out. Almost like she was trapped. That's that's in tra that's slayer. What do they call that? Uh, in in trapping. I, I don't in trap know. Or sl uh, what's it called, Matt? Imprisonment, false imprisonment, or some shit. Impri yeah, almost, almost yeah. yeah. If he was literally locking her in the home so she couldn't get out, what if there was a fire or something? Or she did the toilet fl uh, wouldn't flush. She had to shit. Well, I mean, she, at least she had a lot of the TV dinners, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which would, you know, be right at home. There's more shit. But, um, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, Randy might have been extreme like that. But 
And I told Eric just last night, um, you know, the wolf, my, my, my wisdom cat, said, like, if you got a diamond sitting right here, you want to close that hand. Because if you leave it open, anybody can come by and steal it. And it seems like that's sort of like maybe that's what he was with Elizabeth. He loved her so much he knew he had that diamond, and he wasn't giving nobody a chance to get it closed up around her. Do you think maybe his obsession with protecting her or keeping her away from people led her to leaving him? Well, um, well hold on loosely, but don't... It's another song I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not going to finish it. We're going to leave the song far along. Oh, the red, we already said Red Hot yeah. Chili Peppers. But uh, hold on loosely, don't let go. If you squeeze too tightly, you're going to lose control. It, it's sort of the thing. It's, it's about... Y'all guess that one. <clears throat> Don't tell them it was 38 special. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's, it's a, and I don't know what you asked, but please re-ask it. But it it's, Do you it's, think that his uh, obsession with keeping her from other people? I didn't mean to ask it now, but, uh, but go ahead. Oh, do you think his obsession with keeping her from other people led to her leaving him eventually? Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah, because you squeeze too tightly, you're going to lose control. And that means they're gone. <laughs> I you think that may happen with Lanny when he was servicing himself? You'd have to ask him. <laughs> he never. He never. Do you think A E A ever? He never climaxed prematurely. Why would you want to know something like that? <laughs> Did you ever witness it? I don't know if I've asked you. What? Lanny. I watch him prematurely ejaculate. No, I mean, did you ever see him service himself? I told you that. And we said it on this episode. I don't remember. No, not on. We didn't. Well, we y'all probably missed the episode. So you know, for the, those of y'all that missed it, Lanny was known to have a thingling. Palatio. Yeah, that was long enough that he could. <laughs> he could <laughs> stick it. He could stick at least the tip in his mouth. That's what he did. This it was just the tip. <clears throat> but um, just, that was, oh, that's right. Yeah, you did mention yeah, that. Yeah, because he did. Yeah, he gets. <clears> somebody tip called though. him out like, "Hey, can you still put your, you know, like you." And, and, and me and Sean had to like stretch to do yeah, it. Yeah, me, me and Sean were saying because we everybody had heard the rumor. Me and Sean were like, "Why would you ever leave the house and go to clubs if you can do that?" I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to, even if I had the ability. Yeah, it um, doesn't strike me as uh, well. How everybody's did you, and different. How did you I guess. find out you could do that? I know. I mean, <laughs> at what point did you say, "Hmm, maybe I could"? To keep the kids' maybe. ears covered. <laughs> but well, so, so Lanny, we were in the dressing room, and it was in Houston, Texas. And and if not, you always want to tell the place because you. That's yeah, it adds to the ambiance of the story. Yeah, you can't spell ambiance. Yes, you can. I know that word was right, and it spell it. A m b, i a n c e. Was that right, Matt, Daddy? <laughs> He'll spell check later. Matt, Daddy is like Did instead you? of fact check is at debates. We have spell checkers. Spell checker. <laughs> So but in Houston, tell us about Houston. Cracking his back, somebody asked me, sorry, cracking his back. <laughs> I don't know, it's been a while. Crack, 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 <laughs> stretch. They were like, it's not it's a gymnastics a meet. <laughs> crack, crack, kicks, high kicks, like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then he takes his thing and he winds yeah, it and he stretches it out. And the more he keeps circling, it gets longer. And he goes, ready? <clears throat> and he did it real fast. He lasted like a... a, a third of a se uh, second, fraction of a second. And you know, the tip probably went in. But we all went crazy, like, ah, shit, ah, we didn't want, ah, damn. He and Hogan, walk Hogan comes walking in, all the guys are on the floor, like ready to puke, <laughs> or, or just, ah, because ah, we didn't think he would really do yeah. it. We thought it was just a show. And Hogan was like, what's going on, brothers? And <laughs> we're like, Lanny just put his dick in his mouth. <laughs> he goes like this. <laughs> And I'm trying to help him. <laughs> <laughs> Hogan put him over on Saturday night's main event on NBC. I guess As that's, we'll what, talk he, about later I guess that's what he meant by that. <laughs> and I'm trying to help him. He Hogan, was just he threw his hands in the air. Himself. <laughs> he you think Randy might have been a little bit concerned about that? You know what Randy would do? They they both knew how to squeeze a buffalo nickel to the, to the Indian was riding that buffalo. Until the, yeah. <laughs> Until the end of the war with yeah. the Indians, yeah. They, they said the copper wire was invented by Randy and Lanny. <laughs> Both had one end and they stretched it, pulled it so far from each other. Copper wire was invented. But um, <clears throat> they, Randy would get rooms, you know, he, he would get rooms. Lanny would sleep in the, in the in, and I love you, Lanny. I just tell him, you know, stuff we know. I love Lanny. Uh, 
I uh, like Lanny too. Yeah, he's a good brother. He's a good brother. Um, but he was sleeping a lot of your Dave's saving money. He's we tried to save lobby? money. Yeah, in the, in the couches and shit. <laughs> You know, like you're waiting for somebody and you start slowly easing, like you just get it slow, and then you eventually you're, you're laid off flat. When he, and the people watching, they don't notice because you're going so you slow. You do it slow, yeah, you, you <laughs> ease into it. Yeah. He, it was, he came up for us one time and um, he did a, we did a TV shoot for uh, one of the NBC sports stations. And we went to Kowloon afterwards, our favorite restaurant. Yeah, that's right up the street. And when the bill came, Lanny almost left skid marks on the floor of Kowloon as he ran to the bathroom when the bill came. So, <laughs> uh, uh, dining, uh, dining it was almost dash. like, what's that cartoon? The road runner where the legs start moving. <laughs> and Lanny went to the, I don't know what he did. He may have serviced, I don't know. But he was gone for quite a while as the bill was figured out. Matt Daddy showed Matt we Daddy, got Matt Daddy, baby. What's that, the second time you've 20. been out? I can't see what that but that's means. That's the one. Oh, that's the first. Yeah, for that, segment two, right? So y'all know what's going on. We have to time these out for the commercials. We do. We yeah. And and Matt Daddy brings out and lets us know. Okay, there's 20 girls here out front right now. So you got to kind of get it close because you go ahead and, and you don't want to lose your your posse. Walter Hillside. Can I, can, well, you never even met. How do you spell posse? P O S S E. I'm glad you didn't put a U in it. Walter, <laughs> yeah. Walter Hillside has been missing since the start of Corona. Who? Well, you know, you never met Big Walter. Was he Glantz, Goliath, as you called him, is he kind of comes and goes. We don't know where Glantz is. Uh, Wim, he's still come trying to goes. find it. He wants to know where it go? is. What's that? How do you come as you go? I have no idea. You, you have to ask it. Lanny, I guess. I don't know. But thank <laughs> God we have the prodigy, my partner in crime on the TV reviews, Matt Degnan here, oh, yeah, so yeah. we can bring these great episodes to life. But Marty, any memories of the big NBC main event program? A bunch of them. Now, what do you got? Which one you want? All of them. Now, we got 20 minutes. <laughs> um, the, the, the main one everybody knows is the two out of three fall. With uh, You're talking about that show, right? Saturday you guys night main were, event. No, no, no. You got this is the main event, the one that was on Friday night at eight o'clock. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry about that. You worked at the Brain I was on the cover. Of, remember match. back in the days of VHS? Yeah. You know the, those tape things yep. that you go to blockbusters and get. Um, that was actually on the cover of one of those for uh, uh, main event. Oh, really? Yeah. And and you know. When you're born poor, you make do with anything. You come up with all kinds of, don't throw that away. I can make something out of it. And um, <laughs> it, it was so many times that I can show you. I'll, I'll put it, I'll send them to you and you, you can put them up there or not. But the only times I was making covers of magazines every damn time, and it goes back to GAT. I got a hole in my damn tights right here, or I had tape around my shoe because it was falling apart. And I, you know, I was, I was like, Ninja rigging it, you know. I, w I was fixing it with, without spending money, you know. It's just some tape, a dollar a roll versus new shoes, two hundred dollars. Right. Tape. <laughs> but uh, they always made the damn magazine covers. The only times I got on the covers, there's always something wrong. There's a hole in my knee. There's a hole. There's the tape around the shoe, or my hair does like what it does. It's shooting up in the air like a waterfall, backwards, cow licked. <laughs> Cows would get sick of licking me. Well, it's, you still got them off, so that's a good thing. You saw what John looked like the last time he wrestled. No, he I would, did. I missed that one. When him and Triple H wrestled oh, the uh, Undertaker thing. and Kane in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I heard he it was a good match, like a, though. He looked kind of like it. No. A, what? I heard it. Was, I didn't see it. It was a, a, a disaster isn't even the word to describe. Are you sure? All. I heard it. Well, see, that's what John looked kind of like a Q-tip. <laughs> he does have, like me, he's got an oblong, a weird-ass head. You know, well, some no, people just, got the perfect... There was nothing there. It was just a little... It was like the top of a Q-tip. I ain't never seen the top of a Q-tip. You, you, you know, the, the, you clean your ears with. I know what a Q-tip is. Well, that's kind of like what Sean looked like without the hair. <laughs> no one was expecting it. Hey, let me throw a curveball. You know, <laughs> hey, Matt Daddy would know, for the curveball, you grip it this way, right? Yeah, well... And you turn it under, this. <clears throat> Glantz was and if you a, don't write, <laughs> Glantz was a star pitcher too. He was the Pedro Martinez. Oh, now I know who you're talking about. Goliath. Yes, yeah, yeah a little man. Yes. Little Glantz, yeah. A star pitcher. I don't know where the hell he is, but 
We you miss, we he miss you, Glotz. Miss you, brother. We need you, Glotz. Yeah, he, he was, shit, he ain't been around for two months. He showed up one day, the day the power went out, and then he vanished again. Where's Glotz my, is an interesting character. Yeah, he's funny. I, well, like, I like Glotz. I like him, too. I think he's great. He's a creative guy, and then he just vanishes. But Glotz, if you can hear us, brother, we're sending out the life preserver. There you go. But uh, where the hell did we leave off? I don't know, but I got to run to Flomax. All right, one more before we go. Burry. WWE <laughs> decided the, to go the youth movement, try and replace Gorilla Monsoon with Tony Schiavone in the commentary booth. Your thoughts on Tony Schiavone's I, very short run in WWF? Yeah, I like I like Tony. Um, you better know, we than don't, Gorilla? Huh? You thought he was better than Gorilla? Oh no, no, Gorilla fit for that time frame and that setting. You know, you couldn't have beat that. And and Bobby Heenan and him, that's one of them chemistry things. You can't teach that. It's either there or that. Now those two, just like uh, Jesse Ventura and Vince, had great chemistry. Gate 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 chemistry. Gate. That's my Grant. cat. Yeah, but uh, Gate is Gator Wolf. It's short for Gator Wolf. That's yeah. that's the wolf. Yeah. That's the wisdom king. All right. Well, that's good. Well, for y'all know it, that's my cat. One of my cats is the wisdom king. Did you enga engage with Tony at all? Did you think he Tony just Atlas? was? Tony Atlas? No, it's Shivani. Not Did much. You? No, we do, hey, how you doing? And, you know, respect Did you think he was a good fit coming from the NWA to WWF? Because I, as a fan, at that point, as a kid, I didn't like him compared to Vince and Gorilla. <laughs> oh, I, I kind of missed out on that because I was. I you used didn't hear him, yeah, right. You no, I used to party a lot. We got a yeah. break. I got to run. All right, wrestling fans. Wait, well, wait, uh, damn, right, right. that was a, a abrupt cut. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you said you got to go. You got to go. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's twenty girls like an hour ago. Got to go. All right. Well, I'll wrap it up then. I guess Marty. Has no, to, we're coming back. No, this is the, we're wrapping it up, baby. Or cut right real quick. I'll be right back. All right, wrestling fans. Well, you heard it from Marty himself. When you got to go, you got to go. Flow if, Max. If you are watching live, or hopefully you're commenting in the little chat. The super chat button is open for business. Send us a tip. Don't forget to tip the bartender for the great wrestling entertainment we're providing you. The Patreon is very important, fans. Patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Uh, you get early ad-free access to all of our in-studio shoot interviews every week. You get access to the studio shoot interview DVD library that's been heard around the world. Some even on the Howard Stern Show. Uh, Plus, hopefully this, you're helping hopefully this ain't recording over the show. Legends working. <laughs> In addition to that, almost all of the great merchandise we have here is available on eBay. Uh, you can click the link in the description box below or... Visit bostonwrestling.com and hit the store button. We also have that great t-shirt bundle going on where you get, for the price of a WWE shop t-shirt, you get a shirt, you get a free WWE cup, you get a mystery autograph photo, and you get an on-air shout-out thank you from the Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. One hell of a deal for my partner in crime right now that hopefully shut off his microphone before he reached the men's room. I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next Thursday night for Wrestling Inside is Party with Marty. And don't forget, tomorrow night after SmackDown, it's a fabulous Friday with John Cena Sr., 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Good night. Wrestling fans, we warned you this day would come, unfortunately. We're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside is Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., but... We're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you, without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling, and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon, but we see all the great merchandise on that set. 
Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty, but, but our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. At WrestleMania 37, she defeated Asuka to become the new Raw Women's Champion. And here is your chance to own a piece of Rhea Ripley on this beautiful limited edition. Autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. Number 50 of only 50 made includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo and an on-air thank you on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Rhea Ripley autograph poster now. If you've been watching today's marathon since the beginning, folks, give yourself a Barry Horowitz-like pat on the back. We're having a great time, as always. Once we hit the goal on Marty's Indiegogo campaign, he's going to be rocking his way back from Florida to Boston for Season 2 of Wrestling Insider's Party with Marty. You can find the Indiegogo link in the Premier Chat box, in the description box below, and across our social media platforms. Don't forget, folks, we are now less than seven weeks away from our Back to the 80s live wrestling and Legends Fan Fest Extravaganza Saturday, April the 16th at Memorial Hall right here in Melrose, Mass. Celebrate the glory days of the WWF with WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, the Wild Berserker, Evil Referee Turn Wrestler, Dangerous Danny Davis, with our eighth VIP guest announced Monday night during Raw. As noted, uh, if the VIP packages keep moving, if they sell out, John Cena Sr. and I are going to bring you even more 80s legends. That is our commitment to you. This event includes a VIP exclusive Q&A session before the fans enter. It includes an 80s VIP Legends group photo before the fans enter. It includes an autograph and photo session open to every fan before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the squared circle like you haven't seen in some time, folks. It's going to be a hot night of professional wrestling. With that said, folks, let's get back to Marty. Leave your thoughts in the premiere chat or in the comment section below. Don't forget to tip the bartender graciously, respectfully, for using or by using the world-famous Super Chat button. Whether you have $1, $1,000, please, doesn't cost a penny to like, share, and subscribe as the marathon continues. We can't produce these shows without you. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Inside. It's Dan Marotti along with the mystery man, Marty Janetti. You look like, you almost look like you're on the lam from the police or something, Marty. I, I'm embarrassed. Are you wanted from anyone? Yes. We don't get any more Chattahoochee yes, going on, do we? No, no it's none of that. It's the young ladies, look, man. Sometimes you can't get to all of them in one night. The Bozaks. I feel bad boy. for roosters. Oh. Let me let me get this out. Oh, roosters. No, not not Terry. Roosters. Mm, I lost my tooth. All right. Well, you're I got, really excited then. Uh, you, you know, because you can't service everybody in one night if you got a big coop. <laughs> Annie never had that problem. She'd have. Well. <clears throat> <laughs> she was a regular for the hammered one. He, oh, she loved it. He bragged about it. She was was the only person that could come close to putting a smile on Greg Valentine's face with her ass-eating skill. Ass-eating? Yeah. What do you think they do? They look for hair around it? I, I don't know oh, the Oh, put the kids. Do this to the kids. I don't know if she kind of rolled Greg in a ball with the, the legs up. It went in that way, or if she turned the hammer over on his stomach and Greg just kind of relaxed and, one, one and time, she went to town. It reminded me of something, I don't know why, because it wasn't even related. Was Ass close. eating? Yeah. No, not, no, not that. No, not that. But one of my partners, tag team partners, yeah. hold on, let me put my tooth He was eating? Mm -mm. She bragged about that. It was, yeah, she liked it. No, she used to say, Sean and Marty, no. baby. Yeah, Sean. <laughs> Sean enjoyed the ass eating. Well, yeah, yeah. MJ in the house didn't get no ass eating. I don't like no little <laughs> snail on my asshole. I'm sorry, kids. Now, I wonder why she'd brag about eating both of your asses if it was only Sean. She never, she never got that tongue. That would be close. 
She never came that close. <laughs> and she would brag that, you know, to, to her credit, she, she said... Not about me, she didn't. I'm not like those other whores, baby. You sound when more Vince like her than she does. When Vince comes to town, he'd buy me a drink, baby. Leave Ann alone. Well, that's what she said. She meant well. Was she, was she classy because... She wouldn't spread her legs for the boys. What Just about Big Bird? Well, apparently she has a little Gennady. <laughs> Why would Big you tell the world Gennady. that? I'm already struggling. You know there's you over 300. You probably have a seven-foot-tall son. 300 <laughs> with a nose that's a bit longer than she's tall. <laughs> oh, shit, she just heard that. I didn't mean that, sweetie. You got a nice nose. There is, there's no way if you did a lot of cocaine, she went, she, any getting missed. <laughs> she came to one of the uh, live events. I don't know how the conversation came to be, but she lifted her shirt up, showed the scar from her C-section, and Annie went, that's cause of Marty, baby! <laughs> oh, that wasn't from the baby, because, you know, well, back well, then I've shriveled up as I got older. What? Back, I've, I've shriveled up since I've gotten older. No, she had a scar I'm from I'm trying to tell you why. Oh, all, right, all right, all right. Because when, back then I had a pretty big one. And when I stuck it in, it busted out her stomach. I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh, that's and, me. And, and Gina? <laughs> big, big Bird? Big Bird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the scar's from. It ain't from no baby. It was from the... the, the, the no, you ain't never going to catch my kids from walking out the side door. Well, I, Annie was adamant that it was because of you, baby. I bet if you put it in front of me, I'd call that a lie. <laughs> well, I took, like we said in one of our previous episodes, I think an arena rat interview would be tremendous. Because I tell you this, you know what? Let's be honest. It Why? Is, it's, well, we're, we're, well, we're always honest, but... You know, it is kind of insulting to call them ring rats and whatnot, but... You they, do. You're finally catching it. But they chose to do it. You know what I mean? They want... They that love, don't make them bad people. No, they like it doesn't make them a bad... Like our good friend, the Hall of Fame... I'm Famer, about to piss every girl off out there. Like our good friend, the Hall of Famer, Mark Dustin chance. says. He's on the Boston Wrestling Board of Hope. Directors. Hope. The Hall of Famer, Mark Dustin. He said Hope. some of... Mark Dustin. He said a lot of the nicest people he knows are whores, so... I... <laughs> Is that male or female or both? Female. Maybe male. I'll have to ask Mark. One of the, the most perfect, I saw a picture of this one time. Yeah. And I thought it was so, I'm about to piss a lot of my girls off. Big, and in, big. In, a, in a way, that's good. <laughs> I don't need that <laughs> many. keep them away from you. Look, man, 30 or 40 is good enough. I don't <laughs> need all that. But um, I saw a picture one time. Me and Andrew, uh, remember Andrew Dice Clay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were together. We were sitting there. Famous Somebody's Canadian for people. Yeah. Oh, know. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, v uh, very good. Back in the, what was it, 90s, 80s? Oh, in the late 80s and early 90s, that guy was one of the most popular entertainers in the world. And he was raw. He was like us. So yeah, he was like just, us. <laughs> and uh, we saw a picture. We were hanging out up in uh, Long Island somewhere. Uh, Wanta, which I always call Wantagu. But we're sitting, uh, we're sitting up there, and, and um, somebody gave us a picture of... It was a girl on her knees in the kitchen. She had a frying pan in one head and a hand and a whisk broom in the other and a dick in her mouth. And we, we looked at him like, that's the most perfect picture. <laughs> <laughs> Cooks, cleans, and the other thing. Not trying to be vice president. <laughs> no. It was Old shit. Not Can gambling. we cut that part out? Because I'll have machine guns over here. If, if it ain't for real, what, I'll be hallucinating. Wait a minute. Was it Kamala? It's not Kamala, it's Kamala. Kamala? Yeah, like a common person. I don't think anyone really says it correct. No, she but don't. don't. She fucked her name up a couple of times. You're trying to say that Kamala serviced Kamala. Andrew Dice Clay? With no, I, no I, I, I misspoke if I said oh, that. Oh, no. Well, I, I don't, didn't I don't even see where you got that from. So it was just a random woman that was doing, that had the pan. There was a picture bro. we were showing. Woman. It was a woman. But not Fry an egg, whisk broom that you gonna scrub the floor with, dick in your mouth. Not per camel. Perfect. Why you stick on that? Well, you brought her up in the middle of the conversation. I thought maybe oh, it was her. I must have fucked up. Oh. <laughs> so she didn't fillet Andrew Dice Clay as far no, as you know. I didn't say that. All right. She might have. She might have. I don't know. Do you know who actually opened for Andrew Dice Clay? Uh -uh. Oscar. 
Oscar, the rapper? Men on a Mission. Oh, for real? I love uh, Oscar. I don't know if you're familiar with his story of how he got hired by WWF. Oh, uh, you think you told me about the he, guy? He was in Vegas right. playing yeah. slots, and they were getting ready for WrestleMania 9. And Vince, Mr. Perfect, Macho Man, he saw them going through the casino. And you know what? Give the guy credit for having balls. He went up to having them. Having what? Balls. What? Balls. He went up to them and said, let me, you know, like this, let me, he goes, I want to do a rap for you. He did, and he's, he's incredible. Right off the top of the dome, yeah. Right off the top of the head. He did this 30-second rap about Macho Man. He was good was like blown that. away. He said, call my office Monday morning as the elevator door was closing. Stamford, Connecticut. <laughs> and then on Monday, he actually called, and he got the job. Hey, I'm going to tell Isn't you. Isn't that an interesting and he, But the thing, he was opening for Andrew Dice Clay. When he was I didn't in know Vegas. That. Yep. I didn't know yep. that. True Me story. and Oscar are boys, you know. And we Oscar's talk every... a good guy. He, I, I don't know if you know this. He, him, Dr. David Reese is the president Dr. of this. Who? Dr. David Reese. What does he do? He's the psychiatrist we have told you about. Oh, for the CTE. The renowned psychiatrist. Okay. He works with a CTE. When you say renowned, what does that mean? Very well known. He works with a lot of major Re, league sports so re franchises. So renown, which is like a pronoun and noun. Yeah. But renowned. Renowned. Renown. Okay. Can you spell it? No. Oscar is our vice president, so he's still rapping away. Oh, he's, he is still. He's vice he is the vice president. I, I saw I, him at WrestleCon a couple years ago. His wife is a sweet lady. Oh, Dreamy Mimi he, is yeah, a nice, sweetheart. nice, nice. What a wonderful human being she is. They're good people. But yeah. Oscar, I mean, you know, maybe we'll get to this point when we talk about the 90s WWF runs you had. What year are we but in now? He, we're in 89 still. Still. But the way he was violated and humiliated as a Who? human being, Oscar, just very, very sad. With, on, I don't know if you, I don't think you were booked on the event where they paddled him when he was on his birthday in Orlando, Florida. What are you talking about, bro? About a dozen you, of the don't breathe no more air. About a dozen leave of, that for the rest of about us. About a dozen of the boys on his birthday, they said, "Hey, oh no, we're having a meeting. Come on in." They took him. It's awful. They took him and threw him down on a table. They so where'd pulled, you where'd you hear this? From him. They pulled his pants oh, down. Okay. And they started. They said, "How old are you this year?" He had a thirty-two. And they whipped his ass thirty-two times with a paddle, like he was a little baby. And then he actually went to. What was talent relations at the time, J.J. Dillon, who said, well, I guess it's a good thing you didn't turn 60. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I, you know I got to go Tony Ellis on that. What do you I mean? I don't believe that story. You don't believe it? You don't think he was paddled? Well, I also, and this was before. Then you can't be a man. But, well, if you have a dozen guys holding you down. It don't matter. You get up and get as many as you can. What's the matter? You get up, it ain't nothing matter. You get up and get as many as you can. If you have 12, got Kevin Nash you gonna get five, you well, I know me, I'm going to get four or five or six of them. Well, Maybe seven. And one leans in late, you might get eight. Brother, look at the condition you're in, and look at the shape Oscar's in. And I love Oscar, but look at the shape Oscar's in. I just don't believe it. All right, well. It could be true, but I doubt it. We to like what Tony said about Barb, like, I don't believe that. We'll have to find evidence. I know some of the culprits that were on that line. But not to ruin the story. So what happened, though? He got, no, they just, they paddled him. Another time, he, the, the Stein is, I don't man. know if you were there for it, the Stein is taped him to a urinal and urinated on Oscar. No, that, no. There was no urination. I wasn't there, so I can't, I, can't, I would like to say no, Actually, but I wasn't there, there, so I you don't know. There. No, not in front of that. I wouldn't well, let that happen. Well, you were happen. in the company. Right, they I wouldn't, took duct I wouldn't tape. have let that. And the Steiners were my boys. They took duct tape and, and they taped him to theirs. a urinal, and then they used him as the... When did you put tape around your wrist? The right, the left Me? one. There, look at the left one. Do you know when we wear tape around our wrist, yeah. you got to yank it off, and yeah. it takes all the hair? Look yeah. at, look at oh, your left. Oh, it would kill me, right? The, the under, underside. What do you mean? The yeah. wrist. Unless it's lighting. Do this. Don't do it Trumpish. Do it, do it. No, the other way. See right there, all that missing hair? You wax. That's Mother Nature, brother. It, it just ended up like that? Yeah. See, look. This, if you this, was a girl, would you get yourself no waxed? If you, was, if you no. was if you was a girl, would you do like the Kardashians and put it in there? And, and then you were like, wait a minute, give me a clip back, though. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, oh I'm sorry, kids. Oh, shit. The World Wrestling Federation in 1989 was an interesting place. We mentioned, funny enough, J.J. Dillon moments ago. In 1989, J. You know, when I got fired, it was 13,000 times. Um, J.J. was in the room. Yeah. And and I might have told this, but I'm telling it again. <clears throat> you know, Vince brought me in because Sean had told some bullshit. I'm, now I'm going to shortcut where I'm trying to sugarcoat shit. I'm going to go raw right now. We're going Sean raw. had bullshit about the Royal Rumble and said that Marty was so fucked up. Uh, he, I couldn't, I had to lead him by well, the goddamn. This guy is 93. 91. Three. Was it three? When you worked them in a the single? Royal Rumble. Yeah, when you worked them as a single? Yeah, it was after you right. That was 93 it was, yeah, 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 in Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, encyclopedia. Uh -huh. But, um. I think it's the story, not the year that matters. But so, but you know, Sean went to Vince and said, Marty, I had to lead him by the nose. And all it was was they interjected Sherry and it, and it changed up the rhythm of the match. And uh, I think we talked about this earlier. No. Too. Oh, then it was uh, Eric last night because uh, we talked about this. But um, Sean went to Vince because Vince was there. Very, he called us aside. We come back from the, the match. He called us over side. And, you know, he always did. He, he's like, oh, guys, you guys, you guys stole the show. <clears throat> and, um, and we were expecting something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't our best match. It wasn't the one we had done before. I think, you know, to be honest, I think people were expecting Why a would classic you be honest and now? they didn't get it. You know, Does let me, let me tell y'all something. Now, now, let, me, let me say this real quick. When you lead into something like, I'm going to be honest, that's saying you've been lying like a motherfucker. <laughs> no, you want to know, when I say it, I come from the point of view as, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Does that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense. Because I think, honestly, and I know me, as a wrestling fan in 1993, I was psyched to see that match. Yeah. And it wasn't a bad match. No, it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't what we could do. Was it a classic? Was hmm. it the best Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty match that there could have been? I don't think it was as good as the house show match you had at the Boston Garden the month before. Yeah. So and, I mean, and it wasn't, but because they interjected Sherry, you get a rhythm down. You get, yeah. you, you get, uh, and and they stood through Sherry and said, at this spot do this, at that spot do that, and it finished do this and right. Why did the fuck did we go around for three months, or no, it wasn't three months, three weeks, getting this match down so the day of the show you change it, and then get upset? It wasn't what I heard. I heard y'all had bomb blastic, bombastic. He's, hey, Madhead, bombastic. That's a word. Yeah, it's a word. Bob, Can you spell it? When Bob Hawley was put in the new Midnight Express in 1998, he was bombastic Bob. <laughs> he was. True story. I believe it. <laughs> I love Bob, man, but Bob was different. So we'll get to, to 93, which was a very another interesting time period. But Let's finish up. Oh, all right, go ahead. Go, oh, all right. So J.J. Dillon comes in from the NWA. He was the manager of the Four Horsemen, the NWA World Champion, Ric Flair. All of a sudden, J.J. comes to the WWF not to be an on-screen personality, but to work uh, as one of Vince McMahon's henchmen, so to speak, in the office. Uh, the the modern-day version of what would be talent relations. What did you think of J.J. coming in to work as office personnel? Did he interact with you guys? Oh, I'm what? sorry, what? Was he on the road just to TV tapings? Look, see that, see the Ferris wheel right there? Yeah. Because I lived in Vegas for a minute. It wasn't see that? there then. Or oh, when I lived there, it was. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, you must have lived there recently. Yeah, recent. Yeah, you recent, yeah. I just moved back Vegas? like yeah, about a year ago. Oh, I actually that? moved there to be a part of a, a wrestling organization that never happened. That never happened. Yeah. There you go. Okay. But see that, that wheel? Yeah. People used to, and that was, I lived, this is, I'm sorry y'all can't see this. You it's live there? I can put a picture up. You live that close to the strip? Uh, I was in Henderson, which is like five, oh, yeah, ten yeah, minutes. Yeah. yeah. And and but you could see if you're on a hill, you see this very sight. I love that. And that city. wheel right there was right by Fremont. Fremont was the place to go. Hey, for y'all to go to Vegas. Fremont Street Experience yes. in yes. Old Vegas. Yes. Isn't that fun? How you know? I've been a million times. Every I go to the Cauliflower Alley oh, Club. And every you year. act like you ain't got no money. Um, I don't. But <laughs> I find a way. Oh no, last. I, other than Florida, I think Las Vegas is the only place I could live in other than here. I love Las Vegas. Oh, uh, but see, you're a partier because here's, here's the way it is in Vegas, living there. Like if you're single and you're and not. And I am. And you're not. Even in, though I'm a little. 
I'm getting up there. As far as what? Age. Man, wait till you, you know, turn. You know, isn't it funny? You're 40. I combined you're age. Young as hell. You and I are, have a combined 100. age of 100. Can you believe that? Isn't that something? <laughs> and friend. I bet you this, a lot of people, if we went on the street and asked them, who do you think is older, him or him? I bet you at least half would say me. Because you don't paint your damn hair. You think I need to gimmick it? And you had a transfer leg hanging out earlier. You think I need to gimmick it? What's wrong with it? Well, I'll tell you this. It I, ain't you fooling nobody. I, I, it's available. Look, I ain't got a right I, arm, but here's one I can snatch on. But no, I want to be real. I, I just hope, go without a right arm. I hope Baby <laughs> Marathi isn't watching this. But Who? Baby Marathi. Who? The little one. Who? The junior ambassador, the one that Mr. PlayStation. Hey, I know what you're talking about. This, I, I can see how many times I can get you I've to repeat. I've been seeing someone three. a little bit, but I, I, I don't know. Linda doesn't need to know that. You know what I mean? Who's that? Linda is the one that wouldn't let you him. You said Linda. Linda. Yeah, there you go. She wouldn't let him come in and take the picture that day when he was here. We took. I thought we did up front. No, you didn't get to meet him. Remember, I had to go outside with his birthday gifts. Thank you, Matt Guitar Murphy. Um, yeah, but there's 20, there's, we're down to 10 Oh, but girls. anyway. Yeah, okay. To back, this individual kind of wants Just me to... Just say the name. You made me uh, say no, everything. No, 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 no. He I, makes me say every name that I don't... Just look. because here's the thing. With the kid involved... Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, even yeah, know yeah, if yeah, he's yeah, going to yeah, see yeah. it, but, but they, like, right. they like the beard. They want me to grow a full beard in, but I, I, I've never really had it, so I don't know. Doesn't mean he's got to be white. Yeah, Grow a beard. just for men, baby. So I, you know what? Next show, I'm gonna go the Kevin Nash route. I'll, I'm gonna go from all gray. <laughs> you got a kick out of that one. I'm gonna what mash it, myself up. What do they call it? A Bigfoot? He's got a, like a, a Slim Jim product out. Some Kevin sketch. Nash? No, no Bigfoot. Remember the big ass. Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah, but he's got a like a, a, a Slim Jim product or beef jerky. It's a beef jerky product, and they always show them, like, don't, don't fuck with. I, I don't know that one. I'm not a beef jerky guy, I guess. I've seen you jerk your beef. No, that'd be lame. I was, I was, I was in the distance, you know, because I ain't supposed to I've see that. I've never had beef jerky, as a matter of fact, much like a cup of coffee. I don't know what it tastes like. I've never had it. That's why you fall asleep a lot. Maybe that's it. But, but this individual says, oh, you the... It's so sexy if you grow in the full beard, and it's like, oh. oh. Where do you guys stop shaving? Because I see the shave marks. Right yeah, now. so I'm, that's what I mean. They want me to do, give the whole thing, but you think I need to gimmick it up, give it the Kevin Nash. Man, you look like Father Time. I'm, I, I look more than my age is the problem. Yeah, you're only 40. Yeah, and I move even worse. That's what I mean. You got, you, two, you got a year or two on me, and you, you move, and your ankle needs to be reconstructed. And you still move around better than me. No, I don't know about it. I will. <laughs> I'm getting surgery soon. Time y'all see this, I'll be being a cast. That's right, baby. Soon enough, he's going to be flying off the top rope again. But they used to do a thing All over right, here on the Vegas to, yeah. thing where you get that wheel. See that wheel? Yeah. And they thought it was funny, like, when you're on the wheel and spin around. When you get on top, you throw your drink and let it rain down. Oh, on the, the window people. opens on it? On that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I've never been on that. I tell you this, that's kind of a fun area, too. Have you been, was it, it's kind of new, but was that area right around the Ferris wheel open when you were living there? That little plaza oh, they oh. developed? It's a really nice walkway. Open. Oh, when, when were you there last? Last year. Oh, you, I, I haven't been there in two years, but when I was there, yeah. Oh, it was a really cool little area they developed. Yeah. You kind of have to walk a little bit to get into it. But once you're in there, I think there's, what's it called? That southern, not southern, that western burger chain is there. Um, in and out, is that what it is? Well, there's Almost a lot like of the in and out. The there's a lot oh, of in they're and delicious. That's the first place I ever had one was right near the Ferris wheel. Oh, real? Yeah, man, it's, it is it's cool. It's, but here was the thing. Now, Henderson, right. so this picture. So people were throwing drinks out the window. Yeah. Um, Henderson, from this picture, We'd be back this way. You'd be behind us. Okay, east kind of. And, and and here was the thing. This is why I loved living there. If you don't feel good today, don't open the front door. <laughs> because when you do feel good and you want to party, open the front door. Here's the party. Just come out the door and join us. That shit right there. And and for a partier, it's Disney World for adults. Yeah. 
<laughs> Everything's open late. All you got to do is flow, Max. You got to take a break? Yep. All right, wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we'll actually talk about the subject of this show. <laughs> what more, was it? More of the World Wrestling Federation in 1989. Stand by. For, for another year. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest celebration. Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton. The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autographed photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood. Get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. The Undisputed Era kicked ass and took no prisoners in WWE NXT. Now you can own this limited edition collector's autographed art print personally signed by Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Also signed by the original artist, Rob Schamberger, one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your collection now. Hi, wrestling fans. Welcome back to Floor Max Hit. You cut off at three. Because 2 1, you say silently. It, you, you didn't have enough time to do that. I didn't have enough time? Man's messing up our show. Well, wrestling fans, I do a countdown before you guys see what we do. I go, and five, four, three. And then he goes, Ladies go. Ladies and gentlemen, da 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 So one, two, so and one. So two and one, have always, I was taught, are always silent. You know what else is silent? Well, I mean, I, no, I don't. What? It smells bad, though. Huh? What you just did. What I just yeah, did? Yeah, where's my mask? I don't know. I don't know. They call it silent, but deadly. I haven't been silent since I came out of the womb. You know, when I was born, I smacked the doctor, took a cab to the, uh, the club, and been partying ever since. I wouldn't be surprised if that Why was a true you? story. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> it's I true. wouldn't be surprised if it was a true story. It was almost. Ah, you know what? Annie said she came close to her first ass when she came out of the womb, but that's that's. A... She probably came out of that ass. <laughs> she came out of an ass. Yeah. yeah. All right, wrestling fans, back to the topic at hand. What yeah, you, what is the topic? What did you think of J.J. Dillon coming in instead of a talent as kind of office personnel to be a, a, a liaison to the talent, so to speak? Do you use that word, liaison? Liaison. Liaison, yeah. How do you spell it? <laughs> I always, golden rule, don't say words you can't spell. All right. <laughs> but what, uh, what, you, what, what I thought think? about it yeah. was, was I like J.J., he had but a JJ run. was an office boy. He was a kiss ass. 80, oh shit, he's he was, hearing this. He was there from what, eighty nine to ninety six. He had a good run. JJ took shortcuts. No, what do you mean? I ain't gonna tell you that. <laughs> what do you mean? You got to explain. Can I take this off? Yeah. When you turn your head that way, because you got moccasin breath. I don't know what moccasin, moccasin breath, breath even is, but you know what a moccasin is. I know what. A, yeah, they go on your feet. Huh? Don't they go on your feet? Oh, you talking about the shoes? No, I mean the snake. A snake? Yeah. I didn't even know what moccasin was a snake. Well, there's a water moccasin. Oh, you know what? I've heard of that. You're right. <laughs> You've heard I of didn't, it. I, I, I didn't put... Who's that, Annie? No, it's probably down. So where's my... Dude, where's my Isn't phone? Isn't it in the bell? No. I hear it. It can't be... T it can't be too far away. Is it in your sock? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you should put it. him in his socks. Who do you got? Which boy? Oh, it's Pat Rose. Pat Rose. One of the boys. Oh, oh. Pat. Morning. What are you doing, Morning. man? Hey, man, you're on national TV right now. Live? Yeah, yeah, because we were doing, what were we doing? We're wrestling inside his potty with Marty. Yeah, we're doing a, a podcast show. 
like the one we did with you um, there. Say hello. This is Dan Masters, but Dan's Variety, friend. But close. I, know, I know, but I was, and you don't let me cut up. Oh, oh, oh. Um, we were Dan Marotti messed it up, but say hello. Hey, Pat, how you doing, brother? I hope you're well wherever you are. <laughs> he said, Dan. No, you don't remember Pat Rose? Yeah. Well, I said hello. Yeah, but well, you said Dan, Dan Masters. For y'all don't know, Pat Rose, one of the best wrestlers. Hey, where did we start, man? Georgia Championship, what was that back then? Georgia Championship with Gordon Soley. Yes. I love that guy. You know, we all, yeah, man. We were talking about him earlier, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool, man. Well, listen, I'll let you go call me tomorrow. Okay, I got you tomorrow. Hey, we was talking about Donald Trump, man, because he called earlier. We did an well, episode a few few ago, and people don't like him no more. I don't understand it. Fuck, I love him. Hey, hey don't give up yet, bro. Don't give up yet. <laughs> don't shit. Uh, you know, if he don't, Fuck shit. It was always 2024. I hear that, brother. <laughs> yeah. All right, man, do your thing. Tell your boy I said hello. All right, love you too, man. Bye-bye. All right, bye. You never know who to expect. We have Pat Rose tonight. We had Pat Tanaka back on SummerSlam Sunday. Donald Trump called like about five episodes ago during, during, or during, right during. Well, he knows you. What did you say? Did you was right there? You is down. You are down in Georgia. He probably needs your input on what's going on in the state. (laughs) Now, what what are you doing now? I'm gonna start in trouble. Keep We're, talking. Don't, right. don't don't get don't give him dead air. J.J. Dillon. What did you think you said he took shortcuts? I love him. What, to what death. does that mean? He, wh- he how do you what? take a shortcut? Um, uh, the best way I can explain is ask Sean. <laughs> and what I mean by that, from what I heard, um, did Sean fillet J.J.? So you ain't gonna get me in that trap. Well, I'm trying <laughs> to figure out what you mean by shortcuts. You already know. I know, honestly, yeah, I don't. They don't know that you know, but I know that you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I, JJ was involved in this. Anybody that's an agent, <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I, I, I think of one that's not. What's that now? Think of name one that's not. Gorilla. Think of really? one that's not. Stronglow. No, okay, you got one. Right. <laughs> Steel? Oh, George? Yeah. Got two. Keep going. Briscoe? I've, I've heard stories I don't know. One of them. Well, Which one died? Jerry, Jack died. Jerry was the agent. Right. Why do you think he was the agent? <laughs> so that's the shortcut route, apparently. <laughs> So, so you, but in his actual job performance, Which outside one? of his other performance, J.J., <laughs> what did you think of having I him? Liked J.J. Um, yeah. I like J.J. I really liked him. I think he liked me. Not like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think he liked me. Well, maybe me. you never know. But Well, if it, that's okay. I don't mind. You weren't Sean. Uh, uh, you, well, they happy? Then let me the go. <laughs> now nah, don't you touch it. <laughs> you know, like that. Yeah. Well, but was J.J. good in his role in working with the talent? I thought so. Yeah. What, what would someone like J.J. Dillon do in talent relations? Would he talk contracts with you? If you ran into trouble, would he it was be the one that book, issued uh, fines? You know what, honestly, honestly, it was like he was the, uh, they call it bumper. When it was going to be some bad news, go to J.J. So it was like what Jim Ross turned into later I on. I guess, yeah. yeah. But he was the forerunner to talent relations. Was he good in relating with the talent? Some of them. But some of them didn't like him a lot. Because who, who are you calling now? I was going to put one of my agents. One of your agents. All right. Let's, this should be good. I'm going to put it right here so it can be heard. That's my call. Hello. Hey, stop being a hoe. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't help it. You're not here. Look, man, we went on live. This ain't live. Is this live? Uh, well, we're live to tape. That's for sure. We're live taping this. And, I, and we're up here in Boston, and they don't put up with no shit up here. You know Mark, uh, what's his name, Wahlberg? Yes. She has his own chain of hamburger 
restaurants. Yeah. yeah. He's an actor too. He's, how, he's, much he's, go, how much how much Owens? How much how much J.J. Dillon? He multitasks. How, how much how much going up uh, going on in Chicago right now? How much what? Hoeing. Um, nothing. Not you. Other outside of you. I don't know. There's nothing happening in Chicago. It's Every, dead. It's like Boston is locked down. We can't even go to breakfast at 9 p.m. Dungeon. <laughs> well, she's she's a freaky. What was you gonna wear? Uh, there's a dungeon in Wisconsin in uh, Milwaukee. <laughs> I've always told you something's wrong with you. And what was you gonna do in the dungeon once you got there? Well, it depends who I'm playing with. Hey, well, if you were in town, I'd go with you. We could have some fun. We could do that. We do that over the phone daily, nightly. Uh, my, this is, this is, this is <laughs> insane, uh, Molly. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it off. Uh, with another work friend comes, we do some pet play. He'd rock me on my leash. He'd pet me. Uh, with, with my other friend comes, so if like a How many times you got? How many times? Let me ask you something real quick. Because we got to go. We got to get well, back yes, on point. We do. Um, how many times you had up in you lately? You've been laid twice. In, in, in how long a period? Van. Huh? In my, in my friend's van. In your friend's van lately? You, you're old enough, twice, you don't need to I do guess. that no more. I'll get yeah, Dan to on. send you some money to get a room. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go finish the show. I'll call you we'll later. I'll call you later. Yeah, I miss you. You better, huh? I, I, I will. I, I. That was Demeter. That was what? Demeter. The meter? Well, Demeter, D E T. Oh, Demeter. Is that her name or? Her name? Yeah, it's like a Greek goddess or oh. some shit. Well, she enjoys her dungeons and. <laughs> she's, she's different. Even in her her two times, she's been more active than old Amorati lately. But anyway, so JJ, how did you like interacting with I him? I loved him. Man. Was he someone? Would you like negotiate a contract with him more? Would you discuss finances with JJ? Would First he all, be that type of guy? Macho Man taught me one thing about this business, and it's actually true in life. D T A. What is it? Don't trust anybody. Yep. And so you have Unless to. Unless it's me and you. Sometimes I look at you sideways, and I know you look. You cut your eyes at me. What you know? What I'm not even going to say what I told you earlier, but hopefully you took yeah, that as a compliment. Yeah. What did you tell me? Well, remember that issue that we kind of ran into yesterday? I said if it was someone other than like you or Tony Atlas, oh, I would have thought yeah, I yeah, was yeah. being worked. Yeah, yeah. And well, I, I mean that sincerely. You're a good human being. Bob Holly once used the N-word. Well, <laughs> yeah, nice. He, and he doesn't say many nice things. You know Bob. Sometimes I like to fuck with him. You know Bob. <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> you know Bob. He doesn't say many nice things. But back yeah, but he don't say many mean things. Yes, he will. <laughs> oh, oh, I, he's a very, I love Bob, though. He's a very honest he's human like, being. He's like, well, he ain't gotten smart enough. And let me tell you what, the only time I got mad, and Bob, you listening to you, you can't deny this. All right, let's hear this now. I threw up a damn idea. We were riding with smoking guns. Mm -hmm. We're all baby faces. They would get uh, personal appearances. We're all riding together, so me and Bob would go with them to, like, to malls and shit, and there'd be lines. And we go with them and, and, and sit there and wait, you know. And if somebody recognized us, we'd sign and shit. Because WWE, at the time, WWF, yeah. yep. got a, a letter like, these guys, the Marty and, and Bob, great. They wouldn't even sign. They didn't even make no money off this. They were just there, and they signed. They were, they were better than the guys that we paid. And um, I, th I, got a, I got an idea out of it. Once they showed that, um, I thought, maybe let's do this. Here's a storyline. We're at a mall or wherever. They're signing, and we jump them. Like, we close line up. They're, they're sitting there signing all nice and prissy and all that shit. And we come out like, <laughs> and knock that shit out of them, put the boost to them in front of them all, and, them all people, but we, they don't know. 
So you're going to get real reaction. Yeah. You know, and and they loved it. I, I presented it to, to Bob and, and the guns. But I said, but the events, when you take an idea to events, he, he's not trying to shoot it down. He's looking for the problems that might come out. And you got to cover those. So if he can find a problem ahead of time. You have to have a solution. Yeah. And so once you go in front and, and throw so, an idea to, to Vince, and he goes, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if the first time you go, uh, it's over. Gone. Because shit happens that you don't expect. Right. If you can prepare for the ones you know, what's going to happen to the ones you don't know when you get stuck on one you do know? And so told them, I've not got the finish to this yet. And everybody was crazy about it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, I love you, man, but God damn it. He went and fucked it up. How did he fuck it up? He went and told Vince at a TV taping, hey, you know, I wasn't there at the meeting. He pitched it. Pitched it. I told you. them, don't, not yet, not yet, I not yet. You. It's not ready. And he went in there, did it anyway. He rushed it. You know what, Bob? I'm going to go ahead and tell stories. Because I love you. If you want to come try to fight me, I will fight. <laughs> Because Bob, you know, he's got a little attitude and a little toughness. To it. He sure does. I, yeah. But like I said, I have all the respect in the world for Bob. I do too. I, I love the brother. Man. All right. But uh, again, I will fight if that's what you want. Do your best. But um, he went to Vince. I got an idea. 20,000 girls. Mad Daddy's behind the camera. Maddie Daddy. All right. Back to Matty Ice. But so um, he went and pitched the idea to Vince. Vince asked one question. <laughs> he was stuck. He didn't have an answer. Damn it. And he told us that night when we were driving to the next town. He I went and pitched the idea to Vince, and he didn't really like it. And I was like, how did he not like it, and why did you pitch it to him? I told you not to do that goddamn shit. You were the veteran of the crew. And, and well, you know, it ain't matter about the veteran, it's about the ideas, who, who makes sense. Right. And he said, well, I told him what you said, and then he asked me something, and I didn't know. And I was like, what the fuck did I tell you? Don't say nothing because he'll ask questions, and the first time you can't answer, get out, get out the door. So Bob, Bob, simple ass, fucked that one up. I tried to help Bob another time, too. I love him to death. Whether you believe it or not, Bob, I don't give a shit. But I do love you to death. But, but goddamn. He's a friend to us. He, when we split off, he was like, man, I want to do something. And I said, right now you got a good chance. Because it was Bob, Spark, Plug, Holly. He was, because he, he really did race cars. And at the time, Jerry Nadeau, was racing, had a race car, NASCAR, for WCW, right? They That's had that, right, yeah, they had the racing Yeah, car. 29 yep. car. Here's another legit driver, Bob was. I mean, he was in the Winston, he was in the Bush League, I think they called it. It was one up, because you have to win so many things to move up. Um, so I was like, That's a perk, because Brett come out and dogged it. Like, we're not like other places that have race car drivers. We're about wrestling. And I said, there's your opening right there, brother. Go out there and challenge Brett. Say, hey, look, I'm a racer. I race cars. You're talking shit about us. Why don't you have a match with me? You know what, Bob's? I mean, is that, that custom made? Yeah. Bob told me, he looked at me, he goes, Brett's not the champion no more, though. You're a mid-card tag team, <laughs> and you got a chance to wrestle with Brett, who was a champion, and you don't want to do that storyline. It's fitting. He's docking race car drivers. You're a race car driver, and you don't want to mess with that because he's not the champ. He ain't the champ. Who you? <laughs> You're on a mid-card tag team, bruh. Fucking, you're not even that good. I don't care if he gets mad at me or not. He wasn't that good. You know what he did? He hurt people. I would see, I'd be on an apron and watch him drop kick people, and their heads would dead whiplash. Bam, bam, bam. 
And I'll say, Bob, what the fuck, brother? You're killing them. Well, they shouldn't be in wrestling then. No, you shouldn't be. You can't control yourself. It's easy to he look was good too stiff when you in hurt your people. Opinion? Do what? He was too stiff? In, in my opinion? opinion? Yeah. No, in the opinion of the guys that got whiplash. You know, you drop kick, and you're, their head don't like, need to go like that. And I, as, as I said, I love you, Bob, but fuck. He was a little stiff. Well, sure, a lot. Speaking of stiff, we had J.J. Dillon and his uh, role taking shortcuts How did in you 1989. Get that out of stiff? <laughs> uh, well, uh, but, but I mean, are those types of relations what moved him up the ladder in the company, in your opinion? Who? J.J. Dillon? I think J.J. was at the top of the ladder. <laughs> we just all didn't know how he got there. <laughs> Were you surprised to see J.J. come in and put in that role where he was a renowned manager in WCW, uh, NWA? Yeah, before Horseman, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, big time. I, you know, as a young kid, I had the, no the, idea that J.J. Dillon went to work behind the scenes at WWF. Yeah, nobody did. Yeah. Um, I, was I cannot, there a reason why he did that that you know of, or...? He was a kiss ass. Did he just want to be off the road? Or was it, how often was he on I the road? I can only speak for one I know, because yeah. you, you're taking me into a place I don't know. Um, I'll answer this. I, I love J.J., I still do. I think the world of him. But I also saw what, it, what he was. Um, I mean, I, I was raised like that. I saw what people really were. But I still loved him, and mm -hmm. I still could be with him. Eric. Still, what are you doing? No, it's just... Organize it. You straighten the papers. Yeah. So, <laughs> what was it? You said you can only say what you you can only say what, what you I saw. Know what what did me. you see? I was just kiss ass. That's how he maintained that position for seven years. Yeah, I don't know for how long it was. I just yeah, know. he was there from eighty nine to ninety six. Yeah, and I never put a calendar to it. Like, hey, hey, he started today. Click. He ended today. Click. Let me count them days. I never did that. Here's the thing you noticed though. What I did. No, not you. But he left in 1996. Who? J.J. He was in the office. Yep. He had the position he held. He knew the status of everybody's contracts. What year did all the guys stack on from WWF to WCW? He wasn't gone by 98, and I'll tell you why. No, he left in 96. Oh, you didn't? WWF. Oh, WWF. And then okay. he went back to I WCW. I thought you meant WCW. He went to WCW in 96 with the knowledge of all the WWF contracts, not only when they expired, but he knew what the guys were making. He knew what WCW could entice them with to make an offer with, and right. then look, Hall left, Nash left, X-Pac left. Because you couldn't PBS power play. Left. You What's couldn't say, look, I'm making this right here. You gotta top that. Because they found out, no, you ain't making that. Right, <laughs> right. But, so um, he was very smart in his political I mean, but, maneuvering. Look, man, I got nothing. Okay, I, I've said this before. I'll say it one more time. All right. I got nothing against the people that suck dick. I, I my, myself wouldn't do it because my heart wouldn't be into it and I wouldn't be no good at it. it so why bother sincere. doing it? Yeah. You know, I mean, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it good. And my heart's not into sucking the dick. Well, that was always Annie's philosophy. Her heart was in it. No, she was in it. She was, uh, <laughs> no, her tongue was. <laughs> She had a passion for what she did. And some of the guys were glad. <laughs> <laughs> they sure were. But, um, well, so J.J. Dillon had a, a, an interesting run. You got along well enough with him. Let me tell you what happened. All right, let's hear it. J.J. in charge of WCW. I got yeah, you in. Remember when I told you, we, we talked about this in an episode previously, which was your, I didn't see them all. But I had got a shoulder uh, torn with uh, Justin Bradshaw. From John Layfield, yeah. Justin Hart Gave me Bradshaw. a slam. Yep. And, and this arm, I hit the floor, and it was like this, and it just <laughs> it ripped the damn rotator cuff. And um, I was like this for so long, and Vince wanted me to take time off, which I didn't want to. I was okay, keep going, but... Um, JJ, when I got to WCW, it, it had gotten better. And he got hurt again, working with Conan. I love Conan. Conan showed up at the arena that night. It was in Miami. Mm -hmm. He lived there at the time. I don't know where he's at now. I ain't seen him in so long. But Conan, he comes in. He saw me. We were boys. He was like, he was like two hours late. I mean, the show had already started. 
And he goes, Marty, you know what I'm doing? I'm like, yeah, you mean you were working? He goes, oh, fucking thank God. He goes, I got to go back home and get my boots. <laughs> was this a TV tape or yes, a house yes, show? Yes, TV tape. It's on TV. I got the match. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but he um, was, you know, back then we all were, you know, partaking in the powder, messing, whatever. And um, man, he showed up in bad shape. He forgot his wrestling boots. He had to go back to his, he had to go, go get them. And he lived in Miami? Yeah. Yeah. Or close enough right there in that area. Um, but we was wrestling in Miami, a TV taping too. That's why I can show you the match. Oh, he was out of it. So I'm trying to get over. I'm trying to make me good, right? But I see a friend like bad shape, so I'm, I'll do whatever necessary to get get the attention off him. Now, were you gimmicked up or just him? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I was good. I was doing good at that good, time. Good, good for you. Yeah, and um, I told him about the shoulder. I'm like, no, no, no. This gets back to JJ Dillon. But um, I told him, hey, brother, brother, don't, whatever you do, just shoulder, leave it alone, leave it alone, because the torn rotator hadn't healed all the way up. Which, without surgeries and a torn cartilage, ain't going to heal. It's not going to heal, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, got in a match, and we did a couple things, and he was so slow, so sloppy, Cause, you know, because he was, you know, he was. High. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, or coming down from, or whatever. <laughs> And he did like the, what would we call that, with the, 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 the cold, cold leap, and you, you leap forward, and you, you, you go over, you rip your shoulder oh, out. Oh, he did that to you? Yes, oh, and, and, God. and he, didn't, he didn't go, he didn't do the flip, so it was halfway there. You could see it on TV, you know, I'm like, ah, ah, damn, shit. Uh, I ain't got no more use for it. And and after the show, you know, he apologized. Did I fuck up? Did I fuck up? Like, nah, you're nah, you're right. But uh, I told JJ, look, I, I don't want to take no time off. But and I was about have, I was going to have a match with Kurt Hennig, oh, which really? would have been great. That would have been really cool. Oh my God, we we had a good one. Didn't get to do it because ripped my shoulder up. And JJ called me. He goes, We want you to go get surgery. I'm like, no, 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 because everybody that was, when Bischoff was in charge of Ted Turner's pocketbook. Right. Um, and they'll see your money and give you this, give you that. And they had the injured reserve like all sports do. And you know, the wrestlers take advantage. They oh, sure. Torn fingernail. I need a yeah, few I weeks need off. Four weeks <laughs> off. Yeah. And but you get paid, you yep. know, during it. It wasn't and, like the 80s. And so. Eric Bischoff or somebody had enough. Maybe Ted, you know, Ted didn't know what the fuck was going on. I mean, what's her name? Jane Fonda was getting fucked by Eric. Shit. All right, cut. Let's cut. Wait, by Eric Bischoff? No, I got to go to the bathroom. Cut. All right, wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief timeout. When we come back, we're going to... You gonna can't let me tell that story. With body. All right, wrestling fans, as we continue through 1989, J.J. Dillon apparently was... Uh, uh, found unique ways to climb the corporate ladder at Titan Towers, which wasn't even built yet. Let me ask you this one as we wrap up the show. I'm scared Mark. of this one. Oh, it's a wrap up? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm told by. No, I hurry because I got something. What do you got? No, go ahead. Oh, well, no, what do you got? No, what do you got? I don't know. I heard something about Jane Fonda. From what I understood, she's a. Pe no, go ahead. No, no, I want to hear it. Piece of shit. She what? Piece of shit. Jane Fonda? Yes. Was she involved with any wrestlers? I don't know about that, but I know this. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. Oh, come on. Just the, cameras the everywhere. Statute Look, one, of, two, the statute three, of limitations four, is over. Five. WCW yeah. closed in At 2001. At that part, the statute, we ain't worried about lawsuits. We were worried about the boys come up when you sleep. Go. <laughs> Missy Hyatt even told the story about what happened you know, with Mrs. her breasts. You know, Missy's got huge titties. Well, they had the poster of her breasts in the office, remember? That's why she sued them. Just her breasts? I guess it was at a pay-per-view. Her top fell off. On purpose? And they took a screenshot. Yeah, accidentally. Look, look. Uh, look, my fucking titties fell out. God, I got to rip my shirt. And in WCW headquarters, there was a poster of her breasts about the size 
of the Las Vegas mural. Oh, the strip right here. <laughs> Y'all should see this, man. It's huge. And it looks it's, it's beautiful. We'll have to get a shot of it. And it, uh, it reminds me of being there. It should nice. be back here. It's almost like we're on a hotel balcony or something. You know what I mean? And we're just talking and enjoying the Las Vegas ambiance. There but was were, Jane Fonda, you, as far as you, uh, did you ever hear stories of Jane being involved with wrestlers? Did I ever tell you about the time Bill Eady, because you said he, you, you're upstanding? You know? Yes. He had to uh, uh, bail me out of Austria, not Australia, Austria. Why? Because the promoter kind of cheated me and, and accidentally fell off the balcony at the hotel. And, and Bill, um, the thing I thought the most of was the Pit Bulls. It was a tag team back then. The ECW team? Yes. Yep, yeah, yeah. Gary Wolf and. Um, yes. I the think they're both name? gone, brother. They are? No. I think Gary Wolf is still alive. Real? The bald headed one, I think, has passed or away. I can't think of his name. Oh, well, them, well you... with them and, and uh, oh, shoot, uh, uh, gosh, they're public enemy. Remember them, oh, Mike? Mike? Very and well. Rocco. Uh, I told you, Johnny Grunge. When I worked for um, Boston Bad Boy Tony Rumble CWA, he said I look like Joey Styles every time he saw me. <laughs> you talk like him sometimes too. Like who? Grunge? Mm -mm. Styles. Joey Styles? Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't think I get that excited. But so, what? It, so Bill Eady bailed you. What, what do you mean? He bailed. Well, well, did so you what get arrested? Had, what had happened was. Um, the promoter tried to rip me off, and I, I was in a bad place at the time. Dark, dark. Uh, and he was ripping me off, obviously, and, and was going to try to rip me off my money. And that's all we live for, you know, was to please the people, but pay us. And uh, he was going to try to rip me off because I had a reputation of, you know, being a bad boy, tore up hotel rooms. Now, Did you tear, you tear up, up a hotel room? Nope. Oh, okay. No, if I tore it up, I wouldn't have pushed him. I didn't push him off the balcony. But what happened was he got up in my face, and I shoved him back like that. And he went back in his the heel. I, I can recreate it. The heel, when he got pushed and caught, and he stumbled back in, in the little balcony, second balcony of the arena. It was at the arena, just this high. And this is, this is going to fall under the category of, like, God damn, how many people did you make disappear? Um, <laughs> he fell over the, he fell. Over the balcony? Yeah. Down so the what? crowd was coming into the arena. How high? And here's a body, plap. How high? Oh, I don't know, about 30 feet. So that 40. was, was that it for the man? Well, I don't know. And you I don't, don't want to know, but I will say this. So what happened with Bill? Bill Eady? Yeah. How did he, he save you? He, well, here was the thing. When that happened... Within 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and, and what it was, he was trying to rip me off. He goes, you tore the hotel room. He was trying to take $1,000 off my pay. You didn't destroy the room? Though. Nope. All right. Nope. And it was Do reputation. You know? He was thinking he was getting away with something. Like, Do you, you know always who did? fuck up. And, and I didn't fuck up. And I could prove it. Um, How can you prove it? Go, well, with that, at that time, oh. we'll go back over there. Show me the fucked up shit. Because I didn't do that. Um, and they ended up, when they called the hotel, like, what was the damage? Oh, he didn't pay for uh, Coca-Cola, which was $3. That was the damage? Yeah. Okay. So I can see you being hot. Yeah. And I got, yeah, I got a little pissed, and I shoved him. But I wasn't trying to shove him over. It was accidentally. Yeah. Thing. And, and he fell in front of the people, and then there, it was Austria. The police got me, took me to the station, and... I got pictures, man. We partied together. We had a good time. Hold on, let me eat some What paper. year was this, would you say? Uh, 95-ish. No, I'd go with 95. Weren't, weren't you in WWF, though, or was it during one of your No, I was in between. It was before the New Rockers, um, which when was 96. When you were gone for a little bit. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yep. You came back in late 95. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in between It's a that. good thing I remember your career as good as you. Yeah, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you got to remember, when you have 5,000 matches and 16,000 girls in 400,000 cities. In 80 different you countries. You ain't going to remember every one. <laughs> in 18 different countries, yeah. 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 But so um, with that, the Australian, uh, Austrian, it's Austria, not, uh, it's where um, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is from. Yeah. Yeah. So and Gross, it was in the place where he's from. So the police came to the hotel. Yeah, and got me and took me in. 
and they were saying they were all fans. I got pictures, man. With where, the police? Yes. I got pictures where they were such big fans. We were cutting up. I'd put them inside the jail cell and take pictures of them like, like oh, no, holding the bar shit like all that and cuffed up. And, like I arrested them. And, and, but it was they were a big like, deal for you to be at their police station. Uh, yeah, for them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't for me, but um, <laughs> but you know they told me, Marty, we gotta get you out of here. Yeah, and I'm like, well, yeah, I don't mind that. No, we we still the had police? a long tour to go. The police said this. Yes. Okay. We gotta get you out of here because if he doesn't make it, you know, so me he was in the, the hospital. Well, we're, I, at that point, yeah. As far as you knew, he was in the hospital. Uh, I, he, no, as far as I knew, he fell off the balcony. That's all you know. Yeah. Okay. And they said, if you don't make it, you're gonna get it charged be with yeah. And it, in 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 different and it's like this in different countries. They, they said that uh, you know it's gonna be months before you even see a lawyer. Wow. Yeah. So they were trying to help me get the fuck, and they did help me get the fuck out of there. How was Bill Eady involved? Okay. So back to the, the bulldog, the, the bulldogs, pit and, bulls. And, and 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 pit bulls. I'm sorry. And um, uh, 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 Bill. No, 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 no. Um, gosh, damn, Public Enemy. Oh, pub that's right, were, Public Enemy. They yeah. too, because the police showed up in the front of the hotel. The, the the train station was right across. They showed up, and <laughs> those guys, um, they come up to my room. They're like, "You can't go out the front." I'm like, "Why? The police are down there. They're looking for you. You're not gonna get away. You got to They tied bed sheets together, a bunch of them. And threw them over the back balcony of the room, what which was on, on the third on the third floor. And so I had to get in and, and ease. They eased me down, and I'm easing down. <laughs> and then I ran to the, the train station. I called my brother. Told him what's up. Like, what do I do? What do I do? How did you call your brother? Oh, from the phone. And again, no cell phones. From a payphone. How did you do an international call from a payphone? Yeah, because you can do that. You, it's it just like, must have cost a lot. I'm sure at yeah. that point I didn't care about that, and I'm sure my brother didn't. Yeah, <laughs> you should maybe collect. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever it was, you know, because you do the uh, back then with the pay phones on the wall, because uh, this was '95-ish or whatever it was, and and yeah, you you like you got to put the country code, and then you type type it in, and you do collect, which costs a lot. Oh sure, yeah, internationally, yeah. yeah. And you got my brother, he was used to shit. He goes, yeah, goddamn, yes. Because you got to say, do you accept the call? Right, right. And he's like, <laughs> he knew something was wrong because he knew us over, you know, doing a foreign tour. And he's like, goddamn, yes. Because I can hear him talking. He can hear, but I told him what happened. He was telling me, to, you know, scoot down in the corner, don't, don't. And, you know, he, he, he was pretty wise. You know, he was in the Marines as a sniper and pretty, pretty up this there. This is Gino? Yeah, my brother, yeah. And he was telling me I was doing all that, but Bill Eady, now back to Bill Eady, I'm hiding, I'm waiting for the train that I might, and they got police at every... So you're it, trying to get on the train in Austria to get out of the country? Get the fuck out, go what back to the airport. What country were you trying to go to? I was trying to get out of Austria. I Anywhere. didn't care. Anywhere yeah, but yeah. Austria. But to the airport so I could just fly my ass home, and, and I'm sitting there, and, and they're walking by, I'm, I'm on the phone like this. You know, pay phone. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm, I'm sitting there like that, and they they walking by and shit. And I'm telling, I'm on the phone with my brother. Like they're walking by. <laughs> he goes, just be quiet. Don't say nothing. <laughs> if they don't see you, just let them keep going. And but they close off like Grand Central Station. If you ever been there, yeah. Oh, you yeah, being yeah, a yeah. Boston boy, um, they they got all these. You know, you go up here to this train, that train, yeah. this train. There it's was police at every fucking exit, and I'm really? like, I can't sneak by. <laughs> really? I can't sneak by. They're fucking blocking the exits. But Bill Eady came through. The hotel was right there, right next to the place. I seen Bill going through, and I'm, I'm looking at it like a hero. Oh, thank God, there's Bill. And he's walking by like, Psst. He looks at me, and he goes, he was like this. In fact, I, I got to get out of here. He goes, no, you can't leave. He says, you got to come back, pay the damage, you know, that they were trying to charge me. He goes, because they won't let us go to the next town. They won't let the bus go without the boys. And if you can ask Bill that, you know Bill real well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll tell you firsthand. 
The, and he said, you got to, you have to turn yourself in. And so I didn't want to, but Bill was the wise one, you know, on that tour. Yep. And, and he is, he's a very wise man. Yep. He's a very trustworthy man. Yes. A good human being. Yes. Especially in this industry. Yeah. I think the world. He don't even that need man. the money. He loves the industry. Yep. You know. He's done well for himself, and he's a smart man. Yep. Smart. Smart. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I went ahead. And boy, it was a lot of stuff that went on. Uh, it's surprising. I never heard anything about this. Ask, ask Bill about that part, because he don't, he don't know. So, the... Bill, you said he was your savior, but he convinced you to go back and turn yourself in? Because they, I was holding up the bus. They were going to the next place. But, so but they you... would not let them go until what, they got me. What happened? So what happened at that point? I, turn... I went back to the hotel, which is right across, basically across the street. From the train station? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, so they, they cuffed me and they took me downtown. That's where I was telling you about the pictures, how yeah, the place. Yeah, right, right, right. And, they, you know, they were big friends. I say friends, but fans. Fans of the business. Yes, and they were like, we got to get you out of here. We got to get you out of here. Because they speak German, I think, or they got a different yeah. language there. And so they um, they took me to to the um, train, sta train station that went to a plane station to the, tr the, the airport? you take off of and they weren't with me because I couldn't speak the language you know they they you know of course speak the language they got me out of there the bottom line is they got me the hell out of there so Bill Eady convinced you to go to the police station to turn yourself he in. said we can't we can't leave until you go up there and these police officers helped g escort you to the airport yes and they took me to the, 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 the to the police station and I the, had to go through the right, police so you went station. to the police station first yep and then after turning yourself in, these officers escorted you to the airport? Uh, one did, yeah. Because good, good because all of them were all happy. We, I get pictures of them handcuffed, you know, I did it, billy club and all that shit. Yeah. And behind, the, you know, the cage or, you know, the jail thing. But, you know, when it came down to it, they sent one guy to go with me. It was one dude, you know, because he could speak the language. Sure. And they were getting me out of there. Get, yeah. get him out, get him out. Because they said it would be a while. So yeah. they were trying to help you. Yeah, of course, yep. So they escorted you to the airport and you flew home to the United States from Austria? Yep. And nothing else happened? Mm -hmm. Or what else happened? A couple months later. How much we got? 20? 20. A couple months later, I'm sitting in my uh, living room and the promoter girl is a lady. Uh, she called me and she goes, Marty, she goes, Steve Kern can, can confirm this story. He was there too? No, he was part of her. Um, she tried to rip him off. She was... Man, well, Steve of, Kern was on the tour. Mm -mm. How did she try to rip Steve well, Kern off? Because he was with her on another tour. Oh, okay. And Different they became time. friends. Mm -hmm. And she tried to get all his jewelry from his wife and shit, saying how she could... I, I don't remember the exact story. I don't want to get it wrong. But she, you know, she was trying to rip him off. She was... But she liked me, and yeah, I liked her. Uh, she talked to Gino. My, my brother's a no-nonsense kind of person. He catches somebody bullshitting. That was his job in the Marines. Um, so, so anyway. So you came home. I'm you sitting, got home from I'm, Austria. I'm and you get a I'm phone sitting, call from, look the, here. from I, the promoter's wife or girlfriend. What was she? No, let, let me tell you. Okay. All right, so this, there's a window behind me. I'm in my TV room. And I'm sitting there by myself, relaxing, having a good time <laughs> by myself. I ain't got to answer nobody's damn question. I can just, I'm, letting, I'm sitting there. And I hear my doggies bark. They didn't bark unless something was up. And I look behind me and they're barking at the fence. I had a, like a six foot privacy fence thing. And they're barking at one area. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with them? Fuck, I'm back to the TV. Yeah, I've seen a red dot going across, and right where my, you could see a shadow of, of my head, you know, the, the the figure, the head, and you seen a red dot you go back and it blank out at, at at the shadow part, but back and forth. And it took me a second, and I was like, "Fuck!" Oh, and then let me back it up. She called me, the what? The promoter, the lady. I, I wish I could remember her name, but actually I'm glad I can't because. 
she might still be in power. Um, she called me, she said, Marty, be careful. That person that fell off the balcony, um, high power, me meaning high up in, in wherever, and they're coming to look for you, they're coming to get you. In the United States? Yes. How would they do that? Right. I mean, you're talking about in an in a legal fashion. <laughs> Is that how you took it? They don't do it legally, bro. <laughs> so they were sending people the. Uh, Why well, you acting naive, man? You're I'm a, just trying to get the story straight. You're Italian boy. You know how the shit works. Well, you're 100. percent Well, I don't. Well, you know what? I'm gonna zip my. Yeah, you know one. how the shit works. <laughs> so they they had Austrian people here in the United States that were coming to. So what do you, you said you saw a red light pointed at you. Yeah, you know, gun? like the, the guns yeah, yeah, that got yeah. the, the, the laser, whatever the yeah. fuck it is. I'm sitting there. She called me and said, Marty, be careful. They're coming. Because it was a high up guy. And um, I didn't think nothing of it. I was sitting there. At that time, I didn't have uh, Swaggy or Waggy or, you know, you know my, but I had Jeebo, my doggy. And we were sitting there watching TV. Seen that red dot go across the wall, and it did like this. It started zooming in right where my shadow of my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was right there. I'm like, God damn, and I lay down on the couch real quick. And nothing happened but the dogs next door. Everybody went crazy, all the dogs, and they disappeared. So nothing happened as far as that. But they sent somebody to get me. How? I don't know how. I don't, I don't know what oh, you mean. Was that the only instance, or were there others? Yeah, it was over after that, nothing. So at one point, potentially, someone was around your home with a, a gun, ready to take you out, yep, but your back. dogs maybe scared them away, or? I don't know, the dogs didn't start barking until after, actually. When I seen the dot going back and forth, and then slowing down right here, in the, like my head's right here, the dot just doing this, and then so there were no fires. zooming in. I was like, God damn, it took what? me a So there were no fires shot? No. Huh. What, what's you must a, have been scared out of your come mind. From? That, that one came from up there. That's all right. We can we can fix it after the episode. Um, who's that? Alexa Bliss. Uh, yeah. Is that Alexa who? Bliss and Nikki Cross, folks. You can get this on eBay. It's a tremendous autograph collectible. It was set to be on sale at the SummerSlam store. That didn't happen as as Matt didn't <laughs> get the uh, the shot of it. But that's all right. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go run in the bathroom. All right. Well, right now we're gonna take a brief timeout. We'll be back to wrap up the show. Don't tell them what happened afterwards. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns, and a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and Superstar Experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You gotta see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Arguably the greatest professional wrestler of all time. Get this limited edition collector's autograph print personally signed by two-time WWE Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair inscribed 16 times for each of his recognized world championship reigns. One of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE. Also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Ric Flair collectible for your wrestling collection now. All right, fans, as we welcome you back, I'm still trying to get to the bottom of this. As far as you know, was Jane Fonda interacting with any of the wrestlers? As far as I know? Yeah. I mean, I had to see it to know it. Did you hear any secondhand well, stories of, course. of Jane? <laughs> yeah. who, who did you hear was I with Jane? I repeat hearsay. Are you sure? Yeah, why do why you think Trump didn't get reelected? Oh, wait, what year is this? 2021. No, that we just show it. That we had 2021. Month? Yep, Royal Rumble weekend. That's the 20th? Uh, 20, I think it's the weekend. Where are we? The 28th? January 28th, I believe, is today's date. AEA dated you for a while. What's that? 
Hey, I want oh, you. Oh, hey. <laughs> but no, I, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. Jane, like, we're going to get a million questions. Was Jane Fonda intimate with any of the WCW superstars? We're going to get to the bottom of it and ask the catfish. I'm not going to say nothing else. But you do have the knowledge. I was, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm I don't know if that's knowledge, but I was there. Oh, this is an interesting one, folks. Yeah, Jane yeah, Fonda. It. She really was a WCW fan. No wonder why Ted kept it around for so long. Well, I was going to say, she was with him. Were they dating or married? They were married. For how many years? Long enough. Yeah, how much money did he have? A lot of money. Who do you think is more famous, her or him? Her. Think so? I think if you ask the average person on the street, they We're do. We're asking y'all. I didn't average, mean the average person. Who is more famous, Jane Fonda or Ted Turner? Does she have does she have um, Fonda uh, uh, TV or whatever it's called? Term. She doesn't have networks Fonda. named TBS after her. No. Broadcast, TNT, yeah. TBS, yeah. But he's he's really out of you the got to know as as like if was. you're watching the show, what channel is this? A TBS. You got to know that that's Turner. Turner With her, all you go and get is like which dick did she suck this week? So she was filleting. I did I say that? She was filleting the WCW superstars. I don't like her, and I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because fuck the bitch. She what? Fuck the bitch. Why don't you like her? Because she fucking, the guys in Vietnam, she went oh, over there, yeah, and yeah, she spit yeah, and yeah, called yeah. them pieces of shit. They kept her fucking ass alive. Fuck you, Jane. Here's my dick. Let your mother choke on it. Well, who did she choke on? I ain't going to tell you All that right. either. All right. Well, one more before we go, Marty. February the 15th, 1989. Hold on, man. I'm pissed off right now. All I right. Pull her hair out and put it on her fucking bald pussy. And it's an old one. It might, might not have wrinkles. It's a wrinkly one. How you know? I, I don't know. I wasn't in WCW. I am really worked up right now. Well, what Tony's going to get mad at me again. Come on, bruh. God damn. Tony? Yeah, he's always mad at me. Who's Tony? Atlas. Oh, I, I don't know if he's a Jane Fonda fan or not. Doesn't matter. Did Jane Fonda fillet Tony? Oh, no, Tony was, wouldn't do that. He was married at the time when he was there. And one thing I'll say I about cheated. Tony, he'll be walked on, but he will not cheat on his wife. He'll only let how, long he, how long have they been together? 30 years, and she Holy found him living in a shit, park homeless. That's a good ass 30 years. Nobody does that no more. Isn't it sad? Yeah, well, yeah, it's very and sad. And you know what? As much as he loves these footwalkers and whatnot, <laughs> his wife had a stroke in June of 2019. She's been hospitalized ever since. He still has the women walk on him like he normally would. But he's, other than that, he continues to be a faithful human being. That's a good brother. And I'll tell you this. What are you going she to is me? much older than him. Much older than him. You know what I mean? So I give him credit, but... So it, it certainly wasn't Jane Fonda with Tony Atlas, but hmm. yeah. Is there anyone you could think I of? I feel bad right now for, for Tony. That's got a hard thing to go through. Well, and not only that, you know what sucks? What? Lost her. She worked as a seamstress, mm -hmm. so she lost her. They lost her income. From that, they take her entire social security check outside of forty dollars to keep her in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Then coronavirus hits. Tony loses all of his wrestling bookings. He loses all of his personal appearances. You know what Tony Atlas has right now? This studio and his drawings to try and survive. And so, you know, he's old enough to collect Social Security, but, I mean, that's tough to try and run a house when you were used to an income, her Social Security, her income, his Social Security, his job as a personal trainer that he's lost, plus all of his income from his wrestling bookings. He's fucked the poor guy. And that's why, as much as he drives me crazy, no, not, Tony. he drives there. me crazy sometimes no, we got with it, his bro. calls and him showing up out of the blue hours early, but my heart bleeds for the man. I care about him so much, but he drives me nuts. You must have people like that in this business. The more you love somebody, the more they can damage you. He doesn't damage me. He's just, he's a lot to handle sometimes. Did you hurt me, though? Yeah. I do. I, if, I, let me tell you, and I hate to, he will go out of his way to say how much I've helped him on these shows. And I don't do it 
for fame and glory. He I do did. it because I want him to have a, you know a normal regular life that he that deserves. That ain't true, man. You want the fame? No, I don't. And the glory? No, I don't. They do. Let me tell you. No, I don't. You want to know why? Why? Because when someone finds out you're that good of a soul to one, others come out of the woodwork. See, you're still for doing it for a reason. It's supposed to be because that's how I am, not because I'm expecting something. I don't expect anything, Dak. What I'm saying is. Once, especially in an industry like this, yeah. once someone finds out you're a good soul and you'll give, they come out of the woodwork. You know what I mean? I don't need more. If you'll more give, of, of course they do. I had the sheik. <laughs> but you I can't babysat the sheik. on your deposit. I, that one I did. Tony is a different story, but I care about the man. I want him to do well up in Maine, and he knows that. I've gone above. I'll t you know what? That's not it a says story. It's a good hearted dude, man. Who? Tony. He is. Such a good he doesn't deserve what he's had to deal with. Yeah, yeah, he was almost like Goldberg. We said too much too soon. That was the title of his book, as a matter of fact. He was a young phenom. You know, Tony was like Mr. USA eight, seven play or something. He was way up there. Yeah. It's way not a, there. It wasn't a gimmick. Way it was a shoot. There. Yes. It was a bad brother, man. I bet Jane would have gone after him when he was younger, but Who? she wasn't around the wrestlers. Jane Fonda. That's Tony. You talking about damn Ted Turner? No, but you, I mean you, maybe you, she, you, if, if she you was you around. You know what I heard about? And I, the kids, the kids. Cover the kids' ears now. This is adult talk. This is what I heard. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends that actually did get with her, um, he said down there looked like somebody took a hatchet to a tomato. <laughs> really? I told you more than I should have. So a friend of yours enjoyed Jane. I don't know if he enjoyed it after that. You well, look down there and see that goddamn shit. Like, he had man, I, ain't, I don't need no salad. He had anticipation of enjoying Jane. It was embarrassing. Now, it was who, like who I, was it? I pushed was all it? them young, good-looking good girls away and so I could be with this one. And but you, gotta, you, gotta, 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 you gotta say that is probably as, as gross as it was. That's that's a fed, that's a that's a name to have under the belt, Jane Fonda, or even at an advanced age. I I take it as a negative. You put your dick in that. During the the time of WCW. Go to a mud puddle and just stick it. <laughs> she was probably stick it. She was probably in her late fifties, early sixties. She wasn't. It's not like the 2021 Jane Fonda. How do you know? Well, I would think she's aged a little bit in twenty something years. If she, it got looked, out, she got all that money, plastic look, surgery, well, I, plastic. If whatever. it looked like a hatchet hit a tomato back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they do in Hollywood now? What do they do? The people come in there, and the only reason I know this is it's not from one of the Kardashians, but it might have been. Um, they go in to get their... Vajayjays. Yeah, you say you know, it. The Vajayjays work on Fixed. Because it, it hangs like, you know, a chandelier. It slopes it's, a little bit. It's hanging out. No, yeah. sometimes you got them loose lips. Boom. You take a picture, like a naked picture, and you're like, what's that? What's that rope hanging down? That's not rope. <laughs> little, little sagging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. but, they, but they can clip it. They do surgery now. Plastic surgery on your face. Plastic surgery on your in your place. <laughs> so who was the gardener to the, who took the hatchet to the tomato? Why you keep trying me? I, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you I that. don't know who it is. You're not going to. <laughs> I would have said it at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more before we go. Uh, February 15th, 1989, after a WWF television taping, the boys gather to enjoy themselves in Birmingham for a night of fun. Uh, two men got into an altercation with a woman. Haku got involved and bit off the man's nose, which led to <laughs> legal problems galore. Were I heard you, about that. You I weren't at that one. I wasn't at that one. How dangerous of a man was Haku to bite off someone's nose? Oh, if he bit it, he could have chopped it off. Um, but I did hear that story. But I was there for a story in, in East St. Louis, which is right with across Haku? the bridge from St. Louis. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and we was with the seamstresses. We call them seamstresses. Oh, I know the seamstresses, yeah. We've heard a lot of stories about them over the years. For real? Oh, Still. yeah. They, pot, you, they weren't just pottying with Marty. <laughs> no, they did once or twice, and they regretted it because they, 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 the next day they walked 
very <laughs> wide. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you looking for, Marty? Something to put in my teeth. I need a oh, paper right. tooth. Well, any, what, the, as, we, on, as yeah. we wrap up this show. Now, wait. Let me get this. You want a piece of paper? Let me give you. You know what? Hold on. Take one of these ones. We already used this. It's already what? With Haku. What, I got what I happened in, teeth. What happened in St. Louis with Haku? We walked in to play East St. Louis. Yeah. Walked in. It was the Flats. It was a big ass club, you know, city. And we just wouldn't get a 12 pack and go home, you know. Uh, next you were going to get a 12 pack at a bar? Yep. And, and, and it was a biker bar. And we walked in. They there. would sell that though with a bar yep. or 12 pack? Yep, yep. Huh. Yep. Man, okay. everything, everything ain't like uh, Georgia or where we at right now. Massachusetts. Yeah, well, she's all pretty lenient. No. We try. That girl from the front desk? You like her. I think I'm going to go ahead and go to Uno's. Oh, that was a, that was a plug. Cafe, baby. But, I, you know, she said come over. Well, you now, should go you, there. Would you tell her what happened with Jane Fonda? Well, just what had happened was me and uh, Haku went in this place, and Samoans don't like to be called the N-word. I've heard that. No, well, nobody would. Nobody. No, does. no. Obviously, no one wants to hear it. But even Samoans, they yeah, because they're darker skin. Yeah, and it's hair. an insult to them too. And we were in there, and they were. It was like a bunch of bikers, and we were just getting beer to go, and they were calling. You know, we, we had the blonde hair. You know, I hate to say this, Julie was her name. <laughs> yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. Stop messing with her. I'm not messing with her. I'm just, I know who you're talking about. All right. But um, they kept saying that N-word, N-word, that N-word, N-word, that N-word. And I'm sitting there going, oh, fuck. Because I know how cool. They had no idea what I, they were getting themselves into. But here's into. what I was thinking. I was like, he'll get a few of them. <laughs> and I'll get a couple more. But it's a lot of them. <laughs> and they, one come up and boom, put his hand on his shoulder and goes, did you hear what I said, nigger? Oh, God. Haku did like this. <laughs> and all them boys down the aisle over there, it was like watching a cartoon. Paper, you know how the paper slides down the wall? <laughs> and he was just kicking. He didn't even use his hands that I saw. He was that quick. And, and, uh, and I was like, because I was scared to death. We had to fight our way out. Was it just you and him? Yep. And the girl and, and oh, Julie. Oh, Julie, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and, and all of them <laughs> were laying on the floor. Uh, 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 Haku picked up the 12, it was a 12 pack. He picked it up and he goes, let's go, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that the, the, that's an interesting story in and of itself. Did that lead to the legal problems, like when he bit off the man's nose? Was I that, heard about that, but I wasn't there. So you know, yeah. if I if I say anything, I'm talking out my ass. But I mean, when the night when you had the problem in East St. Louis, were there any problems after the fact with that, or was that just over with? It was pretty much over. He took care of business. Yep, and yep. He got his 12 back, and he was done. Bike, bikers are, are badass white boys. Your white boys are pussy asses. That's why they, nobody stands up when the goddamn boy. I'm about to go off right now. Uh -oh. When the Democrats can fucking you know, they'll, they'll fucking write all over the goddamn place and it's okay, but you got that the fucking light foot ninja ass motherfucker in Chicago and the bitch ass motherfuckers in Seattle and Oregon. Like it's okay, it's okay, it's peaceful. You're robbing the goddamn places. But the goddamn motherfuckers get together from the Republican side and you spread her, super spread her. I mean, eat my dick. Fuck. Right. I, you know, but anyway. I wonder what Jane Fonda thinks about it. <laughs> I think Jane would like you, man. You do? I don't think I'd take the hatchet to the tomato, though. It's way. <laughs> I'm, I'm so. It's been a while, but it hasn't been that long. <laughs> what you gonna do with it? Huh? What you gonna do with Nothing. it? Nothing. You gonna go home with and put Jane? Your hand... I, I really don't have much interest in Jane. Okay, but you gonna go home and put your hand around it tonight? Before Jane, yes. Well, when you call me at four in the morning, I know what the hell I, you I, call it. I, I won't be. But <laughs> that's a different story for a different time. But it was Haku, obviously, with the story you told, as dangerous as everyone used to say? Was he one of the More tough? More so. Can you think of anyone in this industry 
if they were provoked, they could be more dangerous than Haku. Do you think Haku could have taken Andre? Do you think Haku could have taken Holly? <laughs> wow. I love Bobby. I love Bobby. I'm just trying to think of some of the... the nobody. Other, I'll go ahead and nobody. answer. You keep picking an answer. To a real well, question. How about someone like a shamrock? Shit. <laughs> really? I like Ken. Yeah? Nah, 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 nah. Look, this man was, he was He's the of a Shaw. different category. He, he, was, he took care of the, the um, Shaw, I guess, the, the, the king of Japan. He was, his job was to make sure nobody gets close. And he could do it without you ever knowing. He'd do it like this. And snap your neck. <laughs> nobody saw nothing. Why'd he fall to the ground? <laughs> so even his fellow Samoans wouldn't have a chance. One time, Sean and I was in, uh, we had a match with some arrogant motherfucker. Um, I'm a dickhead, man. I, I try to Blanchard? like everybody. But you know, sometimes I got to go ahead and say, fuck you, dick face. And this guy was a dick face. Now, who is this? I don't know. His name was Extra. Oh, and this was an enhancement he, talent? Yes. Okay. And he was like, because I, I was joking around with him because he was wrapping his fingers with a little tape on each finger. I'm like, why are you doing that, brother? He goes, it shows I'm not an idiot. It shows I know what I'm doing. It shows that when you beat somebody, you mean some." And he goes, I'm going to tell you like I told war, uh, a barbarian. If you give me a, a stiff one, I'm going to give you a receipt. I wanted to tear that motherfucker's head off right there, right then. But so he went and had, we had our little match. I did, you know, we did good. Um, Sean, no, I hate to say it, but nobody liked Sean back then. But uh, we, we did all right. But he had a match the next TV, next hour, he had a match with the Barbarians, and that's what he was saying about, I told Barbarian, if you stiff me, you will get a receipt. You, you told Barb that? <laughs> yeah, why don't you just say, please cut my throat? <laughs> <laughs> and after the match, the same. Whoa. And I got nothing against. I don't even know what the fuck it is. But you know what? I'm old school. Gay people. Uh, that it was the mean terminology we, you grew up with. Right. And it doesn't mean we don't love y'all. It just means. Just understand that you ain't me, and 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 I ain't you. Because so you can say call me straight, that don't offend me. I call you a. All of a sudden, I'm bad. So Man, what happened in this match with Bob Aaron? What shit. happened to the guy? Oh, um, what were we at? Which story? This you had this cocky enhancement talent that told you if you were stiff with them. Okay, and here's what happened. What happened with Bob? They Garrett? went and did their match, mm -hmm. and they he'd come back in the dress room after the match, and the bad boy. It was like the you know, I, I just style. It lets me know that I ain't a punk. I ain't. He comes in there. He, he grabs a chair. He throws a couple of them. The enhancement the guy. Yes. Okay. And he's going crazy, and we're all like, God damn. And well, I, you know, I spoke up because I'd worked with him earlier. Yeah. I was like, "What's up, bro?" He goes, "Fuck, goddamn barbarian! That motherfucker stiffed me. I'm gonna beat his ass. Fuck you, fuck." And Barb, the door opened, and Barb and Warlord came through, and the guy goes, "Oh, hey, Barb. Hey, <laughs> you mother." Fucker. <laughs> Do you remember the Talk guys? all that goddamn shit when then Barb walks in. Hey, brother. Hey, thank you. Do you remember his but, name? But, but let me finish. Oh, okay. No, of course not. But um, at the end of the show, we showered up. We showered yep. up. Yeah, we're last semi main and main event. So, you know, dressing room. And I remember going to Barb and I was like, Barb, what's it like to be the baddest ass in the industry? And he goes, ho, 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 Marty. I'm okay. Haku, now nah, he bad. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, if a bad boy like that said this bad boy is the one. <laughs> He's bad. Yep. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, before we go, uh, one final question. You know, 
we, we, How many final questions you had? Well, what happened with Jane? Which one? Fonda. She ended up blowing something she didn't realize that belonged to somebody else. Do you want me to go over more? Yes. Because you would never say no the to The statutes of limitation are long gone. Right, but you, you like, Jane ratings, is no ratings, longer, I just want ratings. I don't care if it gets you in trouble. Jane is no longer married to Ted, so that's a good hey, thing. Hey, that's been a while, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. It's in the past. You remember the first time I ever had sex with Christy Brinkley? No, I didn't know you were with Christy. With Billy Joe, I, I, they were married, I You were the piano man? Huh? You were the piano man? Sing us a song, <laughs> you're the piano man. Sing us, Sing us a, a song, song tonight. tonight. Uh. <laughs> this is great. You were with Christy Brinkley. I didn't say that. Oh. I might have been. <laughs> Before, during, or after Billy Joel? Uh. All right. Did you uh, have a but play? I would go with that if I had to ask after. Nothing ever happened on the piano. Nothing happened on the piano, man. But Sing me a song tonight. But what about Jane? What about Jane? Now I imagine she would only Jane, go for one of the elite. Uh, you know what? Company. Jane Jane's a hooker. Jane's a hooker. But she's a high class hooker. She's a million billion dollar club. So I'm thinking as far as Hey Jane. If she went after someone in WCW... I love you. I loved your movies. I kind of did. Then I found out who you were behind the scenes. Man, go eat Nancy Grace. You pussy. know what happened. You know what she was like in the 70s. You're a smart enough guy. I, w I was young. Yeah. Well, you weren't familiar with that then? Mm, I was young. Well, th it's a disgrace. But you're talking about... Yeah, she spit on the damn Marines. They right. went over there and fought for She's a, And then she was... Here, bitch, swallow that. And then she I was. I missed it. You saw that. She was a low. She was a, a, a acted like a lower class woman with what she did with She's the WCW. She's a garbage NWCW. can. Cunt. Garbage can. Cunt. Who was it that used her as the garbage can? Oh, what's her name? Dro Drozy. Too Drozy. Well, I don't. He wasn't in WCW, so it wasn't him. Yeah, well, you tricked me up with that question. <laughs> it had. You're talking. It had to have been a high class guy in the company. Now, I know Ted Turner was a fan, big fan of Nature Who Boy. Who are you talking to? Nature Boy Ric Flair. There ain't nothing else but us but in the lights. Ted Turner Where's loved... Where's Matt? He... Oh, there you are. Ted Turner loved the Nature Boy. Yeah. Did oh, she... either... yeah I'll give, a... I'll give... I ain't got nothing against Ted. I love him yeah. to death. But did she ride... You know what he did, what though? What did he do? TBS, he was the first one to come with national... Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. And... You know what saved his ass when he's losing money? Wrestling. Yep. And he because it was inexpensive it. and it drew huge ratings. Yep. And that it saved and, him. That and Andy Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> Barty Fife. Yep. But and did, did he you, never forgot it though. So I got to love him. To the, I got to love him. He was for that. And you know what? The, if that if he didn't lose power at, at Turner when it sold to AOL, I don't know if WCW would have gone out of business. Probably not. He, I think he would have stayed loyal to it. Because even though it was losing money at that point, look at it like this. That they owned it. They were presenting it on TV. But the, the company, WCW, that was owned by Turner Broadcasting, they weren't getting any rights fees. If they were getting rights fees, like WWE gets now from USA and Fox, think of how much... They, they were living basically off of live gates and pay-per-views. If they were getting TV rights fees from the company that owned them, Turner Broadcasting... They would probably be a, a, a very profitable company. Yeah, I think so. And they well, would, let, well, let me ask you this. Sure. Does a, does a person with a lot of money become smart? No. Next. So w w did Jane ride Space Mountain? You have to ask Flair that. <laughs> so he, that's but, a no. But if I was a betting man, I'd put 100 to 1. Yep. <laughs> Did Jane Fonda perhaps wear a little yellow and why red? You why are you try, uh, try, uh, trying? Because I'm really interested in this one. Mm. A little yellow and red. Was there a little Fonda? Fonda okay, hey, bro, this is one you ain't going to get. Y'all ain't going to get. <laughs> oh, tie a yellow ribbon around an old oak tree. Do you oh, still you remember if me? She, if there wasn't Fonda mania, did she ever go, oh, yeah? I don't know, but Otis, you know, Otis does that now. 
We know that. I'm talking about Yeah, but how does he say it? He goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me a taka. Give me, give me, give me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Uh, yeah. I don't think Jane serviced Otis. Huh? I don't think Jane serviced Otis. Huh? Yeah. No hints. Though. Only twice. That's how you got it. Did she? So we even one on one. Did she ever go? Oh! Who does that? Stan. Him. I gotta go wee wee because right. well, they've made me drink so much water to flush out my system. That's all we ankles. have here at the studio. We have no refreshments other than water. <laughs> all right, Marty. We heard about Haku. We heard about JJ Dillon and a lot of other things that weren't on the script. I like you, JJ. You know that, but stop kissing ass, brother. Amongst well, other. How are you gonna live with yourself towards the end when you gotta look at yourself in the mirror if you can raise up to it and go? I wasn't me. I let these bitches own me. I would have blown their dick if I would have got a job. How you live like that, bro? I love you, Jay. You think I love that, you. You think that's how JJ got the job? No, I oh. didn't say that. Do you think J JJ? I'm talking to JJ directly. He right. knows what I'm saying. Do you think others service JJ? No, you stop it. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Why are the cameras angled? 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 <laughs> angled. What, but was there, was JJ service? Are you not going to stop, are you? I'm not going to stop, no. The first time I had sex with your, what's her name? The one that you're, the, the, you? The, yeah, your wife. Mine? Uh, ex, ex Linda? Wife. Yeah, Linda. What about her? The one with the kid. Yeah. Yes. The first time I had sex with her. You banged Linda Marotti. Do you want me to tell them? I'd, I'd be actually kind of interested to hear that. I didn't you, know. You really want me to tell them? Um, I didn't know Linda liked to rock like that. Okay, well, leave it alone. Now stop, or I will. All right, well, so we're not going to get any 411 about Jane. So his wife, the first time I ever met her. I, you know, the funny thing is, I almost wish she let him come in and you met her, because at least he could have got the picture with you. Yeah, but you she still She can gotta, go and do what she wants in her life. I'm done you? with Why did that girl leave you? Why did she leave me? Yeah, yeah. Life became very difficult after that car accident with the sheik when so, I became so disabled. So you, you chose the easy way out? Who? You. Me? Who left who? Her. She left herself? Well, she left old Dan Marotti. Yeah, old Dan Marotti might have been a lot to handle. Let me tell you this. It's very difficult. What's that? I couldn't even understand what so, he said. Say, say. One didn't? Oh, the wallet. Well, the wallet never left. No. So she <laughs> always had that to rely on. No, it's just, you know, to, to get personal on my end. When I became physically disabled, it was an extremely difficult situation for two younger people, especially with kids in the picture, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know you met her. Oh, she seems like a sweetheart. I'm, 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 a lot I'm, of people say that. Well, I'm partial to you. Thank you. Thank um, you. you know, I'll say this. I, in her heart, she knows to this very second, if she ever runs into trouble, I'm there, there in a heartbeat. Are. Okay. And I always will be. I detest some of the things she's done to me. She's crushed my spirit. Everybody's different. She's crushed my wallet. She's crushed my bank account. You could always make money again, though. But exactly. You know what? But those two kids, hopefully, God forbid, will always be around, hopefully, until I'm long in the ground. That's all that counts at the end of the day. As long as they're happy, healthy, and safe, what more can I ask for? Yeah, true that. It, it was a nice life when we had it as is. It's just not that way anymore, so we move on. What if you had to date three girls at one time? I had, well... Are you talking about my Comcast days, or? No, in general, because I got, I'm asking I, you. I had three different ones I was going with at the same time at Comcast. It ain't that hard point. to juggle. None of them were my. So you stay over this side of the room, you stay over there. No, well, none of them were my official girlfriends, so oh, exactly. it made it a little easier. Exactly. But what about Jane? Did she have that problem with Ted and other WCW I superstars? Her I heard her first thing. Really? No, I heard. I wasn't there for one. <laughs> but I heard, like, when she farted, people ran. <laughs> really? But when you hear that little... <laughs> All right, well. You run. <laughs> All right, I'm going to the bathroom. All right, wrestling fans. Well, for my friend... Oh, where's on camera? For my friend, Look, Marty Jannetty. Look, how you throw a curveball. Hey, uh, brother, 
Liberty, did they win? He'll check for you. Okay. We we'll will be back bathroom. in the month of February. Coast of Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry. We will be back in the uh, month Coast of... Coast of Carolina. We'll, what? Go ahead. We will Coast of Carolina. We will... Carolina. We will... <laughs> all right. We will be back next Thursday night at 10 p.m. for another edition of Wrestling Insiders. Party with Marty is Marty. He's got that Flomax going, baby. He needs the restroom. Jay Fonda. For, for all you great folks, if you've enjoyed this... Hit the super chat button. Don't forget to tip the bartender. 15, on top 14, of that, our 12, Patreon 15, campaign 14, is ongoing at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You can help keep the legends working. You get early access, ad-free access to all of our fine talk shows, as well as our Studio Shoot Interview DVD series. We hope you continue to love this series with Marty. Then we have every Tuesday night with Tony Atlas at 10 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, hopefully we're going to still be having Leo Rush with us sometime in 2021. And then Friday nights, after the Thunderdome goes dark in Florida, the dome on John Cena Sr.'s head lights up like a Christmas tree. For Marty Gennetti, who's headed to the restroom, I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well, stay healthy, good night. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't. Do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. As the Demon, he became the first WWE Universal Champion at SummerSlam 2016. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autographed art print personally signed by Finn Balor, one of only 50 made, direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your wrestling collection now. Wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Inside. It's Dan Marotti, Marty Gennetti. As we try and bang out the year 1989 with Marty, I'm sure we'll travel to different decades as we get there. Mm -hmm. As Marty shares his life and wrestling experiences, the fans across the globe are enjoying this show. If you're with us Thursday night at 10 o'clock during the premiere, chat away with us. We love to have great conversation with you fine fans. We have regulars like Slip Rick, Maria Davis, Tina, all of the great Kevins, Ken, Big Ant from Thunder Valley, Will Cortez, Trigger Trey, I could go on and on. We, we know some great people, and we're growing the family. The one thing we ask of you beforehand, if you could, hit the share button in YouTube. That will send out the link of this to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Reddit, all these different platforms that are out there, and it'll grow our family. When we grow our family here, it means it gives us more opportunity to bring more legends to you to do these types of programs. It gives these legends that have been out of work now, going on a year due to the virus, uh, that can't do independent wrestling matches, that don't have autograph signings, it gives them a chance to have an income. So this studio is a great place, and the more professional wrestling fans that contribute uh, and are active in what we do, the more wrestling legends we can help. And we're having a great time on Thursday nights with Marty. Again, the Super Chat is open if you want to tip the bartender, so to speak along with the Patreon over at Patreon.com, where you get that early ad-free access to every episode of Wrestling Insiders, along with our acclaimed Studio Shoot Interview DVD series. And again, you're helping the wrestling legends working. Patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Whew! That it? Whew! Didn't, All did, off the top of my head. Didn't Slick Rick die? Stop. No. Did, you know, Which Rick are you talking about? The rapper. 
Oh, I don't know. Oh. I hope that friend in Maine just moved. Hopefully he didn't know. Oh, so it's not so. when you were saying slick. No, no, that was oh, a different okay. slick record. All right, fans, uh, we, we touched a bit upon this a little bit in our last episode, but the fans were itching for a little bit more. Uh, February 15th, after WWE TV taping in Birmingham, uh, Haku was out on the town. Two men were going at it with a woman at a bar, and Haku apparently cleaned house to the point where he actually bit off the man's nose like it was Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know if you were there or not. No, it, I heard about that. It though. led to some legal ramifications. Was Haku in the hot seat after biting the man's nose off? Well, he was still around. I don't, I don't think that oh, he kinda, was still around, for sure. Yeah, I think that faded away. Uh, but you'd have to ask him. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I don't want to say what I don't know. Was but he, I did hear about that. You mentioned a story before where Haku cleaned out a, a biker bar. It's when you East St. Louis, yeah. <laughs> uh, tell us, uh, from just from your experience in working with the man in the ring and just having him as a peer and as a friend, uh, how dangerous of a man was Haku? Well, he was one of them raw bone strong anyway, mm -hmm. you know, and so when you train on top of that, I mean, he's just got that natural strength, like mm -hmm. tendon and ligament strength. You know, you can't, you can't work that out. You can't get that stronger when you're just born with it or not. And I mean, like he he wouldn't try to chop you real hard, mm -hmm. but when he chopped you, I mean, you felt it all the way through your body. He chopped you in the chest, and you bare hand put on your back, <laughs> going bulging outward. But uh, he just, it was like a he, his hips were like a tree trunk, <laughs> wham, and knocked the wind out of you, and, and you'd be all oh, sorry. <laughs> and, and, and then you would think, like, what if he really laid that in? <laughs> oh, my God. I imagine if he was doing it with intent, yeah. yeah if if he was trying to work and it was that stiff, yeah, man. what would it be like, you know, and, you know if you were one of his up. enemies? Yeah, he's high up. I, I, I think the biggest uh, compliment that I ever heard was Barbarian. And I've told this story. Some of y'all know this story from bef episodes before. But uh, Barbarian had... And, and uh, I mean, it might have been Haku. Um, they were tagging. No, our warlord. It was with warlord there. And um, uh, Barb, they went out and had a match. The guy comes back in, dressing room. Sean and I have already worked. And we're getting dressed. And he starts throwing chairs against the wall. That motherfucking barbarian. God damn it, a motherfucker stiffed me. We'll see who's going to stiff who. God damn it. He's just throwing a bitch. Walking back and forth, pacing, snorting fire, and Barb walks in the door and goes, Oh, hey, Barb, thank you for the match. <laughs> and, and so it, we're all, we're all <laughs> like, Oh, this is a big pitch to bitch fit. But later, after you know, Barb was getting ready, he was sitting next to me, and you know, Sean was over here. I said, Barb, I said, uh, Man, that guy was throwing a bitch fit before you walked in. And he just, Oh, really? Why is he a mighty? He goes, Oh, he was just like, he was going to jump you when you walked in. He was throwing chairs. We pointed at the chairs he threw against the wall, and you see the scrape on the wall. He was throwing chairs, and he goes, oh, well, poor guy. <laughs> and Sean says, what's it like to be the baddest guy in the business? What's that feel like? He goes, oh, not the baddest guy. I, I'm okay. Now, Haku, he bad. <laughs> so that's why I was like, wow. You know, Sean and I both like, that's wow. <laughs> All right, well. If for Barb, can, Barb can go too. For it to come from the mouth of the barbarian, exactly. That is a, quite the compliment and the testament to Haku's uh, toughness, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. There was another, to tell you how tough Barb is, uh, yeah. they went to some bar in Charlotte or somewhere. They went in, and he had a long, full length uh, fur coat that he, he handed to the bartender to put behind the bar to, to hold for him. It's mm -hmm. like another one of them little small ass, you know, redneck bars, probably. I wasn't there for that. They just heard the story. But uh, evidently, at the end of the night, he asked for his jacket back. There's beefcake. Yeah, yeah, your buddy. Did you have him? You had, how'd that go? The fans seemed to like it, but he didn't make a great impression on the studio folk. Really? Yeah. Oh, he was, he was in attitude? Kind of, which yeah. was disappointing. Because well, he's, I'd probably, like to he's been hurting a lot better. A lot, a lot better. You've been hurting a lot lately. Uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can have him back sometime soon. But Yeah, he's good. You know, man. When it's, it's not just me, as you know, that makes this place work. And when you make a not a great impression on others that are trying to help the cause, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to yeah. <laughs> That's just We got the, uh, the thing set up. Uh, the, we're, we got a, what do you call that, video screen over there? A, with a television. Tele <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, that's what... <laughs> 
<laughs> we had television over there. We had on a TV the, on, going. On the WWE network. The, All right, so barbarians at this red yeah, so he, bar. Yeah, so y'all have to excuse my ADHD, HD, DH. I'll reel you in today, brother. And we got to plow Yeah, we got to get through, we? got to plow, we? baby. They, uh, Barb, so anyway, he asked for his jacket at the end of the night. You know, he was getting ready to go. It wasn't the end of the night, but for him, he was leaving. And the bartender says, I don't know anything about a jacket. And this is like a full-length fur jacket thing that probably costs a lot unless he just took it from somebody. But uh, what is that he's putting on Guerrero's eyes? Is that coffee grounds? I have no idea. I'm not paying attention to that. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah. I can see I got to scoot back so I don't see it. <laughs> I can't see that. Um, where were we? But oh, so he coat. wants his jacket back. And uh, bartenders, I don't know what you're talking about. Barb gave him a second chance and a third chance. And then uh, Barb walked behind the bar, and the guy said, you can't come back there. <laughs> he slung, <laughs> slung the guy over the top of the bar to the, the past, uh, patron side. He was back there like the bartender and looking for his jacket. And then a couple of them big bully ass, you know, burly. I don't know. I wasn't there, so I couldn't, you know, I can't give a good description. Uh, but he, I guess he threw everybody around, like four or five of them. And Barb's a martial art guy too, you know, he can do all that stuff. And he's like 6'3", at the time, 6'3", 300 pounds, all muscle. <laughs> and flexible, man. You know, so he, uh, he was a badass. He's back there throwing them around, they called the police. And evidently it took like, they said it was about six or seven police and Barb wasn't hitting them, but he was keeping them, pushing them back, kicking them back, throwing them back, uh, you know, throwing them aside or whatever. And um, Maybe he finally got tired. They were trying to get him, you know, because he slung everybody around. He actually went and closed the door, and they, I guess it had, they say it had a lock. Like uh, I said, Barry I went and, went and locked the yeah, door. Yeah, locked everybody box. in. Nobody leave till I get jacket. He call it. He always say barbarian. Nobody leave till barbarian get jacket. And and you know, because he, he always figures somebody's got it here. <laughs> uh, like Did he, he said, get the coat back? No, no. The police showed up, and he kept them, you know, at bay. Just sling him aside he never punched him now, again i'm telling you what i heard um but finally he got tired and he goes so okay barb tired now you can handcuff so they cuffed him they cuffed him and they went to and then once they had him cuffed they got him to the, the to the uh, car to put him in and went to shove him real hard and he stiffened up he goes you know barbarian don't want to go barbarian not go <laughs> they backed off said okay sir okay but yes yeah, so barb's a bad boy <laughs> You know, when you, but you don't know what happened to the code. No, nah, I have no. no idea. Never. I don't think anybody cared after that. <laughs> you know, they, they was just like amazed that he tore up a whole, a whole slew of bar people and the police department. <laughs> and he, the only reason they got him because he said, "I barbarian tired now." <laughs> he kind of let them. Yeah. He gave in. Yeah, and, he, and when they went to like shove him, you know, Haku in, in St. Louis, he's St. Louis. The reason a lot of stuff happened there because. East St. Louis is right next to a real rough part of town. And, mm -hmm. and also there's like four or five bars down in, and they call it the Flats. Uh, and it was, I don't remember the name of them, but it was a real good club um, that, w that really, it was great for the boys. Uh, there was a strip club next to it. There was a country bar. And it was a, that one that the, the Haku and I went to, it was like a biker bar kind of place. But it was like, it's a whole little area <clears throat> of uh, just clubs and uh, a lot of trouble happened there especially around midnight and later but uh, you know because that thing happened with Haku and I in the in the biker bar and then there was another time that um, I think that's I, now I could be wrong on that uh, but the, the story is the same is, is that the police somebody did something to Haku and something broke out the police came to get him and you know he would the same kind of thing in the barbarian at first he wouldn't let him because he was saying that that guy started, that guy did, he's the one you're after. They didn't know who they were coming to get, evidently. And Barb wasn't the one they was, they, they called on the other person. Mm. And uh, so he still fended them off and they finally maced him. They maced him? Maced him and then they kicked him in the balls and really? beat him, beat, him, oh, beat wow. him up. Well, they beat on him. He was at the show the next day, he had a, like a, you know, they got dark skin, the small one got, you know, the darker yeah. complexion. You can still see a burn mark down his face where they, oh, wow. whatever it was, mace. I didn't know mace would make a mark on you like yeah, that. No, I never heard of that. But, um, yeah, but he had no bumps or bruises. He didn't care. He was fine. <laughs> I mean, they supposedly put the boots to him, kicked him, like I said. And wow. 
roughed him up a little bit and didn't hurt him. You can't hurt them Samoans, man. He's just wasting your time. All you're doing is pissing them off. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this one, Marty. February 1989 news broke uh, in the New York newspapers that uh, wrestling was going to be uh, deregulated in the state. Maybe what year was say, that? This is February of 89 now. They did it With the then. admission from the, the McMahons that professional wrestling was indeed uh, under the auspices of sports entertainment instead of a, that was a shoot, that, so was to the speak. athletic commission that they kind of right. broke? Right, yeah. Which and state? In, in this is New Jersey now. Okay. And in return, to, to, as a thank you to the state of New Jersey to help save them on the taxes, they were gifted a SummerSlam 1989 along with WrestleMania. How did the boys react if they were even paying attention at that point to what was going on from the business aspect of things to, you know, your line of work being admitted publicly and in newspapers that it was indeed? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that the the boys were happy. Happy? Why is that? Because we didn't have to go through that physical. We knew the athletic commission is there. It's boxing. It's usually the boxing and wrestling uh, athletic commission. You got to take a physical. Some of them even make you take an EKG. But the, and it's not bad to know that you're healthy or you know something like that. But it's like, man, we've been on the road 20 days wrestling. We were healthy. <laughs> you know what the hell? Uh, but you got to take the blood pressure. You got to do the ah and, and the look in your ears and put some of them, like I said, put the EKG. And we just we don't want to be bothered with all that. And we, we just did it last night and right, the night right. before. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So so when they got rid of one, it was like good. It was one less to have to worry yeah. about. But you know, and they did start falling off one after another after after the first. If it were they the first one, Jersey. Because it was. You know, to be honest, I don't know. They were they were everywhere. Yeah. There was very few states that weren't regulated by the athletic commission. Um, it was Massachusetts? I don't, I'm sure at one point it had to have been, I think been, it was. I don't know I at what it, point it was done. The only ones that weren't were like South Dakota and Wyoming. They yeah. didn't know what the hell was going on back then. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, for you guys, even though it, it exposed the business to some degree, it, it was a little less work once you got to the venue. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, you could go and get together with your person that you might be working with and either, either you know, go over a match or... You know, you, you got to get dressed according to how soon, like Davy Boy and Dynamite, they're going to get there at 730, show starts at 8, so they had to hurry up and get yeah, dressed. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, they ain't yeah. got time to them sit over there for 20 minutes. Toss some snakes around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Davy. Uh, it's something that would foreshadow what would happen a few years hey, later. Hey, Dynamite but, died too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Goodness. All the boys are gone. Yeah, Dynamite had a rough end of life between yeah, he was in the wheelchair, first his right? teeth and then the wheelchair and then he had his legs amputated. And oh, that's right. I heard that. It was a tough ending for him. Yeah, he was. Some say, though, he reaped what he sowed. I don't know. I, but he, he, he was, was he long was little, gone before I came into the business. He was a little rough around the edges. But he was one that I enjoyed to watch as a fan when I was a kid. I know that much. You know, I Certainly don't know. Certainly, almost a, Oh, he's in the ring? Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. I mean... Sean and I would see some of the stuff they would do and say, well, that, we just can't do that. Because <laughs> you don't want to, we like to say in the business, because a lot of people call it still in the move. If you put your own little twist to it, like I, I, I've said this before, like Sting, you know, he used to do that stinger in the corner where he jumped right in the middle of the ring and land in the yep. corner on you. I thought that looked cool, so I tried it one time on Tully Blanchard when we was wrestling the, the Bane, uh, Bane Brushers. <laughs> But, but brain buster, busters, why am I having a hard time? It was me yesterday, Terry, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, yesterday we were in here for 15 hours, I think. <laughs> but um, the studio, that is. Uh, we uh, I wrestled them, I, I did that stinger, you know, the, the dive. Now I was new in the business, you know, I was only two years, you know, still learning. And like I told you, we learned so much from yeah. them. Yeah. And Arn taught me something that day. Come here, Janetti. <laughs> After the match, I went, what? I thought he was me. <clears throat> the way he said it, like, did I mess up something? He goes, if you're going to do somebody else's signature move, at least do it better. You didn't even come close to doing it as good. Don't ever do that in the ring again. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, you know, I, so people do do other people's moves. And, but, I, I, you know, since I've always thought if, you know, people even come tell me, like, hey, I'm going to steal one of your moves. You know, at least they had the respect to say right. that, you know, where some don't give a shit. Um, but I don't really see it as, as uh, still yeah. in the move. Yeah. If you put your own little twist or flavor, like where Sting jumped straight in, maybe, like, I'll give you an example. If I was to say with Sting, if he would, if I would have come running in and turned backwards or something, 
it had been basically the same move, but with a little, you know, Twist. change of bone yeah. flavor to it. And, and, and then that we can say is called creative borrowing. <laughs> you're not stealing the move, you're just creatively borrowing it. When you were having that great feud with the Brain Busters... But I was going to give you an example. Oh, uh, Billy, uh, Billy Gunn, Murray used to do the rocker dropper with the yeah. leg over. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and Billy, being athletic as he is, he, he did it where he'd run and then jump over you know, and put his leg over and do it. And they called it famous or famous or whatever yeah. the hour it said. And you know, Annie I've seen a lot of people. Annie thought they dedicated it to her. But Who's that? Annie thought they dedicated it to her. AEA? -A -A? You got it, yeah. <laughs> Y'all know who AEA -A is, right? Man, there's 38 cameras. I got to look for that red light. <laughs> no, you don't worry. Let the camera find you. Don't worry about you finding the camera. Yeah, but I won't be talking to this one when that one's on. <laughs> well, just talk Actually, I do because I got my... Look, look go. at this. Oh, I'm not going to believe this. Right, what have we got? Look, these are all my paper teeth this week. All right, well. I got one good. in now. I get the real thing drilled in, I think, this week coming up. But until then... And that, um, was, from, that was from a, a turn post, the, the outside ring. Man. I remember you told the story from your training, but in that feud with the, uh, the Brain Busters, uh, did you get any other kind of interesting sage advice from on in Tully? Oh, a ton of it. I mean, like I was saying... Any um, examples one, you could give outside of that stink well, squat? Well, <laughs> one, <laughs> one of the... Um, I, you know, I mentioned yesterday, or one episode ago, <laughs> two or three. Wait a minute. Mm. There it is. Okay, it's in there. Wow, you got it, brother. <laughs> Yeah, um, how to up the intensity as you go, you know, in other words, like don't go right into, you know, from arm drag, headlock takeovers to bam, 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 you, you slowly build it. You're, you're like, you show where they're getting frustrated because we're out maneuvering them, we're out wrestling them. And uh, then it gets a little, they get start getting pissed off and then they get testy. And then you do a big spas, boom, boom, and you come up, you're all four squaring up and you're, you're wanting to go at it. You've raised in that intensity. And then so when they do the next thing for the heat, whatever, that, you know, to, to stop you and take over and beat for a while, uh, you know, it's, 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 it, it makes, it just flows so good. Did you feel that as your long, you're talking four or five months of house show matches continued, do you feel they, they got better and better as time went on? Hey, this is pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, these are pretty good. If John Cena, know. Cena, Fabio, Pop. Hopefully they will be available uh, around WrestleMania time for the fans That's the first to time enjoy. I had the root beer. That's pretty good. It's a good one, yeah. Uh, Do you have... feel the series got better as time went on? Uh, yeah, because we always adjusted it. Yeah. We, we would you know, take some stuff out, add some stuff in. And even when we had it down perfect, and this was so good to learn from. I mentioned this in another episode, how... Uh, you know, uh, the guys get so comfortable doing the same match over and over and over that you just don't have the intensity in it. They snap an arm, you know, take an arm, and the guy getting it's like, <laughs> basically like waiting for his turn to reverse yeah, it and yeah. then throwing the ropes or something. And the guy getting arms, you know, holding easy and, you know, it, it's just, the fans can see the difference in that. And when you snap into it, even the lockups, I, I teach my kids that even from the very beginning, you know, a lot of people go in, so, what's that word, lackadaisical? There we go. <laughs> I can't spell lackadaisical. I don't even know if I said it right. But, uh, you know, they'll go in and they'll lock up real light. And it's like if you're watching the Fast and the Furious and you see the guards just putting Going along. six miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, but when you snap into it, ah, there with that ankle. I get that fixed soon. Well, by the time y'all see this, I've got to You'll cast. be a new man. <laughs> but, um, damn, but you snap into it. Uh, it's right, right from the beginning, you get them, you're like, oh, wow, man, this is going to be something, you know. It, it, it starts, really, I, I tell my kids, it, the, the match starts when you step through the curtain. Because a lot of places, there might be new people there. I mean, maybe a fourth of the building has got, you know, first timers. Uh, they don't know if you're baby or heel or good guy or bad guy. Uh, you come through that curtain, you've got to be in character right then. Because that lets them know is that, you know, I always say for the baby faces to be more energetic, you know, jumping around, you know, pointing, smiling. You, you don't even got to smile necessarily anymore. But in but, uh, the heels, it will come out and rump them, stomp them, F y'all, you know, kind of thing. Um, well, I mean, generally, not, you know, character. once you get a known character, you, you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, but, I mean, then it, right at the beginning of the match, if there's a big brute and some guy that you, you think, has he got a chance at all? And, you know, you're, you're into it, and then they lock up. 
Yeah. It's like, ah, day. <laughs> it's like watching a movie. It's just supposed to be the Fast and Furious. The car's going backwards. So they brought <laughs> an intensity and they brought variety yeah, they taught every us, night. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and with the matches, like I said, I don't think they got so much better. I mean, you're going to get better once you work with somebody enough times. Mm -hmm. That's why I was so impressed with Kurt Angle. Well, that was the first time we'd ever worked. And it was like magic. But it was so good. It was so good and easy. Kurt's, Kurt's one of the best I've ever worked with. Him and Sean are probably the two best I've ever worked with. Uh, you know, there's a lot, everybody, there's a lot of good ones. But I, I would, you know, people say who was the best you ever worked those with. Those two. I got to put those two. And Kurt, <coughs> you know, Sean and I had seven years together, you know, as a team. And then a, you know, a pretty good run as, against each other. So we, we, you know, we knew each other's thoughts. We didn't even have to say anything in the ring. Uh, but Kurt and I had just met, you know, that was the first time. And man, that, that was so smooth. It was like, wow, that guy is good, man. He, was, he would position himself like if he's got to be shot in the ropes, he'd come up and be against the rope. And he's, you know, you don't want to bait out, throw your arm out so the fans see you giving him the right, arm. Right. And a lot of them do that, and I hate that. Uh, I try to teach against it, but little things like that, and they're like when you throw a clothesline, looping over the head, you, you got to come level, man. If the guy don't dump, no, duck, you know, but the damn, to do that, why don't you just tell the people? I didn't want to hit him. <laughs> he's got to hit the ropes yeah, and right, come back. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, Kurt was right in place. I mean, every bump he took, every you know, of course, I've done so many years. You know, I, I hope I flowed for him as well as he flowed for me. But it was just a, it was the first time, and it felt like that we worked, and it felt like Sean and I, wow. you know, who had worked for years together. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's. Uh, but the uh, but back to the Tully and Arn thing. After a couple times working with him, we pretty much were in in sync. But they like to change it which sean and i like because we're still learning and we didn't get to that rut of same match every night same match you know we do it a couple two three times and it would be good but then they would like all right tonight let's do this let's don't do that and we were like we were, that was the first time in our career that uh, uh that we'd heard somebody want to change up what was good <laughs> you know what's that old saying that if it ain't broke don't, don't fix, it. fix it yeah um but they would change a couple things and we'd go out and do it and it'd be every bit as good so we're like, okay, this one's good too. We'll do this. A couple of days later, they wanted like, this time we're gonna have both y'all come over here, and and we're like, damn, we're always changing it. So you can't get lacks of days ago. Where's Matt Daddy? Am I saying it right? Lacks of days ago. Okay, yeah. I still can't spell it. All right. Uh, you've changed, and my shirt at least, yeah. Yeah, me too. Did you see this? Yeah, I noticed. Did you notice what's on the back? Let me show them. Go. I got to stay right. in frame, so I got to cover my Big fat back. Machine. Can y'all see it? Can you see it, Matt Daddy? You see what it says? When I'm, when in doubt, knock them out. Yeah. Right, I like that. <laughs> I have to do that a lot with some of these. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, we had about a four-month run with them. Uh, about that, maybe yeah. maybe longer. It was maybe, a great run. At least four months. And in that four months, I bet we did like 10, 15, 20 different mat types of matches. We had jump starts where we'd go in and get them and they you know, clear the ring and fire up, and get the crowd to go, go nuts. And then, uh, then we had the slow stare offs. We, you know, fuck you, no, fuck you, no, fuck you. And then you, you know, didn't get into it. Um, but it was, it was uh, I never wanted it end. I tell you what, too, they, they both were athletes. I think Tully played football, football yeah. for, for somebody, and Arnold's a hell of an athlete. Plus, he man, so knowledgeable. Um, but he's a hard worker. Like a lot of the guys in the gym, they're doing curls, doing bench press or triceps or whatever they're doing. And Arn would do that, but in between, he'd be doing something to keep his. He was doing his cardio as he was working out. Yeah, um, he's a hard worker, uh, and I love that. You know, I love because I had to do that to be worth the shit. You know, so I respect when I see somebody's working hard rather than somebody like Sean's just he ain't got to do nothing. I mean, he still did work, you know, uh, but if he didn't, he would have been just as good. Um, so, but I give him props for, you know, he didn't really have to train. He would have been as good as he needed to be. All right, let me ask you this one, Marty. Interesting question, something that foreshadowed. Oh, what I was going to say, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, it was a workout to work with them because they didn't go in there and lag like, I'm not putting the Rougeau brothers down. I love them. 
Um, had, we had great matches. In fact, we did our our. Well, we're going to get there later in April. Okay, well, so but I was just going to say, much, but they would like to do stuff that, you know, kind of easier. Not totally in order. I mean, we if we jump start, that's going to be the pace pretty much for the next fifteen minutes. Um, you know, it, it was a workout working with them, and we appreciated it because it was like we felt that was some of our you know good matches, our best matches, and we were learning so much. At that point. Sean and I, when we got to them, we'd probably been wrestling for two, two and a half years in the business, which is still new. Yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, today, it's new to be five, six, seven years yep. in the business because you're not getting to work like we There's used no to work. There's no place to work like that. Yeah, no. yeah, where you're going 300 times. When you go 300 times a year, you learn fast. Uh, but they don't, you know, I wouldn't think the guys at WWE work that probably 200 times a year at, at oh, best. Oh, you're talking about on a, if you, the guys work every night? Every event without missing any time. I think the most recently was maybe a buck fifty in recent years. That's what I was thinking about yeah. one hundred fifty ish. And that's if you're hitting every. Show. And that's and trust me, yeah. when you're getting throwing your body around, that's still a lot. Oh sure, sure. You know? But it's not what you guys had. No, nah, you double four that. Days <laughs> off, four days on, three days off. You never had that luxury. And then you were yeah. And then you. I wish we. Well, kind of. I, I was happy with what we we did. Because remember, I was single, so I didn't have a yeah, family. Yeah, you didn't have to rush home to anything. Yeah, I wasn't missing nobody at home. I was mixing, missing the next city. You were missing the, <laughs> yeah, your friends in the next town. Yeah. All right, well, let me ask you this one. And something that would foreshadow what would happen about five years later um, is news broke that Ted Turner was going to buy the Crockett promotion. There were rumors going around that they were going to make a big-time offer to try and seduce Hulk Hogan seduce him. to go to WCW. What would the loss yeah, of a word. 1989 Hulk Hogan meant to WWF? If they would have, if they were able to scoop him away, just like that a big been sports a, that free agent, you know, because that was right. I think he peaked right about in there. You yep. know, 88, 89. I think might have been the peak, but he held that peak for a while. I don't know if he would have went, would it have dropped down because he went to what was considered the, the small, the, the lesser uh, industry, uh, wrestling company. Or would that have you know, catapulted me in higher because he went and took over at WCW? I don't know. I really don't know that one. Um, I'm, I'm glad he didn't go. Kept our paychecks good. <laughs> well, at the time, the business was hot. I mean, like I noted. That was the hottest era. By era, the era, end era. of 1989, even though business would start to decline after WrestleMania 6 and 90, I still think that was the best roster WWF ever had was late 89 into early 90 going into WrestleMania 6. But I, I, yeah, yeah, I losing say, Hogan at his peak at that point, that, that would, I think would have been a killer. I think he knew that, too. He was very, a lot of people talking him down, but Hulk's a good guy. Um, you know, sometimes... You don't know what a person is dealing with if you're not in their position, you know. And he's, he's business, just like Vince. It's got to be business. Um, you know what I found surprising, and uh, came out in some lawsuit. But you know that he made far, in later years he made far more money in WCW than he ever did in WWF during the big run. That could be. I, I mean, think I, during their <clears> big <throat> '80s run, his biggest year was only not quote unquote only. Like a, you're shrugging your shoulders, right. but it was only five million dollars, and you'd think where he really well, that's was. that's merchandising too, yeah. The face of the company. You'd think, you know, you would, I, I would have expected it to be more than five million, but that's what it was. Well, that's still pretty good. <laughs> it's still pretty good. But you, I know what you mean, though. He's right. the, he's the man. Yeah. You would think that he was a guy that would maybe double that. I yeah. mean, you look at some of those big house show runs well, he had with Orndorff and Savage. I was just saying, '85 ish and around there, that that was five uh, million. Well, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of scratch. About, I don't know what seventy-five, eight million today. Yeah. Back in that time frame, it's funny. Like you, you watch all the sports, like baseball, football. The, the contracts just keep leaping like monsters. Like what's his name? Uh, the Mahomes boy. Mahomes for Kansas yeah, City. Mahomes, yeah. What did he sign? A half a, a billion half dollar a billion, deal? Just about, yeah. Because <laughs> it was, I think it was fifty million a year for ten years. So, you Good know, we're him. watching, we're watching that, and like that forces WWE to up their contracts. And like baseball, you know, when A Rod did his way back, I think he got two hundred billion for. He got his first big one. I think was two hundred and fifty million in yeah, Texas. For, yeah. Then he renegotiated with the Yankees, and I think he got two seventy five. Yeah. And, and they were like, bam, I mean, from 100 million, which is a lot already, 275, wow, 
Mahomes, or, or as uh, Shannon Sharp calls him, Mahomes boy, um, 500 million. <laughs> oh, man, it's over 10 years, so, but so he's only really getting 50 million a year, and after taxes and after his agent, probably only 25 million. Only, that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, he doesn't struggle too much to live off of that. Yeah, and he can put yeah. food on the table. All right, let me ask you this one. Same. But I was going to say, oh, sorry. Uh, WWE. When those guys made them big leaps like that, <clears throat> kind of put they put it on them like, now we're sports entertainment, so we're a combination of both. The entertainment, the people out in Hollywood, and you know they're making ten to twenty million a movie, right? And and we're doing this year round, three hundred days a year. Not nothing against the football players, but you know they do their thing for six months. Uh, you know, the baseball, the same thing. All the other sports are seasonal. Right. Not us. <laughs> and um, so we're going to get a leap now. Well, they, y'all were getting on average now uh, three, four hundred thousand dollars. We're going to bump it up to seven hundred thousand. <laughs> God damn. You know, when we go do signings, the, like I, I sat with Pete Rose one time, and he's a big wrestling fan. Oh, oh, I was yeah. a big fan of his, you know, and we're sitting there together. And Charlie Hustle. He, yeah, Charlie Hustle was signing his uh, uh, 8x10s for $100, $125, according to which one they he had, one with a gold seal. But um, and I was sitting next to him selling mine for $20. <laughs> and I went down and said hello to one of the Minnesota Viking uh, players. Uh, he was he was sh showing his everybody his Super Bowl ring and everything. And... Uh, I looked, and he had $150, because Super Bowl dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm back over here at the $20 table. Well, it's always that, that way for the wrestlers. You know, the actors, some actors you don't even know. I mean, I'm, I'm not putting them down by saying that. But you, you only know who it is, and they're selling their shit for 100 Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, let me go back to my $20 table. I'm, I'm the blackjack table for the cheapos. <laughs> you know, they they got the blackjack tables for, for the, if you've got a play a hundred a hand, a thousand a hand, you know, go down there to the beginners <laughs> at the two dollars machine. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this, along the same lines of Hogan, at this point in 1989, Roddy Piper was a free agent. He had his retirement match at WrestleMania 3. He started dabbling in movies with They Live and I think Hell Comes to Frog That was Town. a good one. That was his big one. Yeah, They Live. You make one good movie. You know, they say in Hollywood, you're only as good as your last movie. It's sort of the same thing in wrestling. You're only as good, good as, as your, your last, last match. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, he did that one right at the beginning. They Live floated the rest of it. I don't think he did, did any more monster ones after that. No. He was in a lot of Nothing things. Nothing that it was really big. Yeah. It, but that one floated in for the next 30 years. Well, I tell you, again, Roddy Piper. Oh, he's very, very smart man. He too. had been off wrestling television for just about two years at that point. Uh, I guess from what I was told, he kind of worked the NWA for, to get $25,000 just to have a meeting with them about <laughs> negotiating well, a contract. <laughs> WWF, as you know, wound up bringing him in for WrestleMania five in Atlantic City, which we'll get to in these episodes soon. The uh, last, the, one, the last one I saw him was... They came in out off the Hollywood you know, scene, was to wrestle uh, uh, Dust in His Gold Dust. <laughs> oh, in the back Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, they, yeah. They had, oh, Gold Dust had the lingerie. That was memorable. <laughs> well, and you know what? Never mind. The, well, the, the Mrs. Which one? Mrs. Gold Dust. Um, you talking about Terry? Yeah. What, <laughs> oh, well, well, wait till 1996, brother. So I. That's all. I, <laughs> that's all I have. There to, was that Vince laugh. Yeah, <laughs> Vince McMahon. That's he all he I can do Vince say. McMahon better than Vince. But let me ask you this: Roddy Piper again. He had been off TV for two years, but one of the biggest names of professional wrestling during perhaps its biggest boom. If Roddy Piper had chosen the NWA over WWF, do you think that really would have helped? Uh, not, the, not, not. It wouldn't have hurt. Us as much, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have helped them as much if it, as as if it would have been Hulk. Hulk, Hulk was the pro He was the, you know, face of WWE. He was the face uh, of the industry. Yeah, really. Yeah, you know, because he did a few movies that. You oh know, sure. Did pretty good. He did pretty good. Well, I don't know about I that. I think it started was well, started with the Rocky movie where he was what Thunder. Right, Thunderlips. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was way back. Those were during his AWA days. Yeah. Was yeah. it? Yeah. But um, if who's I, that right there? Forget about that. Forget about that. <laughs> I shouldn't even have that on. You're too easily distracted, brother. That's what's his name's wife, That's Lana, yeah. 
the ultra talented Lana, who's still kinda, waiting to You have can't her look at the boys and girls, and they make it hard by putting them on TV. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, what would Piper have meant, impact-wise, walking onto WCW TV, which had I tell you this, big. You, I mean, you talk about 1989. But w, see, he, WWF he, having a great roster. The NWA had a great roster in 1989 oh, they built it too. Up, yeah. Look at those classics that, along with Flair and Steamboat, Flair and Funk. To me, that's where things started dropping off is when Vince bought them out. Oh, that was 2001. Because it was, remember you had the Monday Night uh, Wars. Yeah. You know, yeah. Nitro versus Raw, and you know, you got to outdo the other one. If you hear something through the grapevine that WCW is going to do, oh, let's do it first. Let's start an hour first and then do it. You know, they were doing shit like that. July of 2001 was when my heart broke body after I started working and learning from Ed Cohen at WWF. Yeah. As they started to incorporate all those WCW people, they didn't need to have me around anymore. Oh, that that's what, what led to me starting the independent promotion and Boston Wrestling, what we do here in the studios. So if it wasn't for WCW, who knows? Maybe we might not even be here right now for that sale. Yeah, true. Which would probably be much better for my bank account, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... Who I, knows? I don't know this who to knows? be... I don't know this to be fact, but you know, SmackDown started after, you know, Vince bought out uh, WCW. No, SmackDown started in August of 99. And he bought, which it, was bought a year them out when? March of 2001. Oh, that's right, because they had, um, what did they have the Thursday nights, Thunder? They had Thunder. Yeah, because I was, I, was, yeah, I was with, I wrestled on that a lot when, in 98 when I was yep. with them. Uh, yeah, so they, they had that equaled out. But, but it's still, what, what I think when he bought it out, bought them out, everything dropped because there's no competition. No, I think the biggest problem why that failed was simple. They didn't spend the money to bring in the top talent. The only top guys that came in from WCW for that quote-unquote invasion angle were Booker T and DDP. Look at the guys. Well, they that, brought the other guys in, but they didn't. They didn't come in during the invasion, though. Oh, yeah. WCW, as far as a, a entity on television with WWE, died it's by Survivor Series of 2001. Just a couple of months later. Imagine if they spent the money that summer to bring in Hogan, Nash, Hall, Flair, Sting, Luger. Brett was retired at that point because of the concussion, but Goldberg, um, th there were a lot of top tier. Scott Steiner w was over big time in WCW at that point. And WWE, they didn't, from what I because I was with Ed, they didn't want to change the structure of their contracts to match what over there. the WCW contracts were. But in the end, they fucked themselves out of decades worth of big business. WCW, I could see succeeding as its own entity with Vince McMahon running it. When they decided to bring WCW in as DDP, Booker T, and 30 mid-card guys that people barely recognized as WCW <laughs> was tanking, it was dead. It was dead on arrival. But I tell you this, to show you how hot this angle that sucked was, outside <laughs> of WrestleMania and SummerSlam, the July 2001 pay-per-view invasion did the highest buy rate in wrestling history other than a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam. And it was a garbage main event. Garbage? Well, look at what they did. They, had, they wound up... No, but you said garbage. Garbage, yeah. <laughs> they wound up having to put Kurt Angle with WCW. They put Steve Austin with WCW. And they just... It wasn't WCW. If they, I, if they brought in the guys... I used to think Kurt was like a double agent. They sent him in there. But he, because I it was, it was just no way I thought he would leave, you know, when he left, when he first left. When he went to TNA? Yeah. Do you know the story behind that? Uh uh. Oh, Do I gotta you? wait till we, oh yeah. This, it's a great one. And you know, we're getting the wrap up sign already. You know what? You want to tell, you know, it's not 1989, but I'll tell you, he worked <laughs> WWE and Vince so good. Who, you want to hear what happened now? Kurt. Yes. So this, I'll try and wrap this yeah, up because we're running out of time. Yeah, some people don't mind hearing it again if they hear it later. We jumped in 2006, and this came directly from someone I don't want to know. Incredible. I don't want to say right in the office. But, but uh, incredible. if you remember in 06, they started the ECW brand up again. Uh, and it was like yep. yeah, the third string. It was almost like NXT. It was developmental right. with right. some stars. And to try and give it some credibility, they put Big Show an angle in the ECW brand in the, in the summer of 06. You're talking about they started running house shows? They weren't even drawing a thousand people. Who's that? The ECW, ECW brand. ECW with house with shows? With Angle, Big Show, a Test yeah, was on Yeah, but they were, they were, what was their whole thing, uh, the hardcore? Yeah, but this was WWE ECW. Right, I know, because he, you know, Paul E had to pay all the guys he owed money from what I right, heard. Right, yeah. 
He had to pay him up. He owed a lot a of money. A lot people. of money. Yeah. So at SummerSlam 06 here in Boston, the ECW title match wound up getting changed. I think it was Big Show and Sabu. So Angle wasn't even on the SummerSlam show. So shortly after that, Angle and his agent had a meeting with Vince. He said, if you don't release me from my contract, I'm going to kill myself. What? I'm going to kill myself. Kurt? You know how they do the 90-day no-compete? Right. He had a million-dollar downside guarantee before he left the office that day. Here's your check for $250,000. It was nice to know you. Really? And you know what Angle did? He took the it. The next month, he, went and signed he showed up on TNA. Yeah. <laughs> he worked them good. Wow. And how often does that happen? Mm. But, and, and uh, that was even pre-Benoit, I mean, you know Kurt, what I Kurt, mean? Kurt's either the genius or he's got one hell of a good agent. <laughs> he had a set of balls. Yeah. To go, I mean, how many times has someone gone into Vince and out Vinced Vince? No, that don't happen much. He got the 90-day, what he would have earned right, in that 90 forever. days in one check before he left the office that day. But see, that, that kind of fits into what I thought. That, that, whole, that might be the word that came out, and it might be what they, what they did. Now, go ahead, go down there and infiltrate. Is that the right word? Infiltrate? TNA? No, oh, I don't infil think so. Infiltrate. Like he, when he you was were a big help to them. Oh, yeah, but I still think he was sending back secret, like, hey, they're doing this, they're doing that. Well, potentially, <laughs> potentially, know. but there was, I know Wait, there was, We got to get that word right, inf infiltrate. There was a lot of heat about Is that right, he, Matt Daddy? There was a lot of heat on him because he presented it on as Kurt? if he needed to go and get mental health bad. And then within a couple of weeks, he showed up on a TNA pay-per-view after they gave him the check for two hundred and fifty grand. So, <laughs> Kurt, but anyway, we Kurt has gone through some things. You know that that girl I trained, Trinisha. Uh, yeah, he Trump. likes he like well like they you. Had he some, likes, they uh, had some issues. She was trying to say he's mentally off, but well, I you know Kurt, I, the one conversation I had with him, I hate this. My God, what a. I helped TNA promote their first string of house shows when they were up here in June of 2007. They did two in Massachusetts, uh, one in, at the casino in Rhode Island, and one in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Um, in the, the Sunday, I remember, I went up early in the afternoon with Linda and the two kids, and they have like arcades and things like that. It's a beach resort town. And then I went to the show in the afternoon. And I remember the guys talking about Benoit missing the pay-per-view that night with WWE, oh, yeah, yeah, but because yeah. of my neck problems with the car accident with the Sheik, Angle and I, I remember, we were talking about necks for a little bit, and then come to find out the next day, the reason why right, Benoit yeah. missed the pay-per-view was the reason, which that's, a, knows, yeah. that's an episode for, for a different time, but for my good friend Marty Gennetti, I'm Dan Marotti, we're going to be back to next Thursday as we attempt, oh, as we end? attempt... What do you have through get? 1989. What, We're far? still in February, but that's all right. <laughs> all right, wrestling fans, you have a great week. We'll see you next Thursday with Marty. If you want early ad-free access again, head on over to patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Help keep the wrestling legends working. If you're chatting in the premiere with us Thursday night at 10, don't forget to tip the bartender. The Super Chat is open. eBay, the T-shirt fundraiser at bostonwrestling.com. So many great ways you can help to keep wrestling legends working. Be well and stay healthy, folks. See ya. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest celebration. Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton. The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autograph photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood. Get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston Wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty. But, but, our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. 
Wow. Check it out. On October 28, 2020, Wrestling's Scariest Night was back with WWE NXT Halloween Havoc. This limited edition collector's autograph poster is number 12 of only 100 produced and is signed by all nine superstars featured on the poster, including Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Gonzalez, and your Halloween Havoc host, Shotzi Blackheart. Comes with WWE Authentication Hologram on the back. You'll also receive an on-air thank you from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus mystery autograph photo. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. It's Thursday night. It's 10 o'clock. I'm Dan Marotti. I'm, I'm not Marty Jannetty. He's Marty Oh, yeah. I'm Jay Nile. He's <laughs> always in the house, baby. We love Thursday nights. We're very happy to have you here with us as we continue to look at 1989 and all the other twists and turns that Marty takes us on as we continue through that time in his life, in his career, in the ring, out of the ring. Uh, what are you looking for? Where's my phone, bro? You charged it over there. Remember? Oh, okay. I won't forget I'll see, I'll see it. Right, you see it, brother. You see it. <laughs> it scares me. He always hides. He always hides the phone. I and you know the funny thing is I've never even touched the phone. <laughs> other than when he hands it to me to talk to random strangers that I don't know. Like last night at the hotel when we were. Who was it? I have done not a clue. Yeah, I don't remember. I, don't I think, think it said New York. I might have been Kara. Uh, yes, I think it was. As a matter of fact, now that you mention it, yeah. Nice lady. Yeah, she's sweet. Okay. All right, well, let's get back to 1989, Marty. Um, late February 1989, WCW presents a, a heck of a pay-per-view. Chicago, Illinois, a classic between Ric Flair and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. They had what? several classics. That was in 89? That was in 89. Damn. And to go head-to-head -head with that, WWF said, well, you know, let's fuck with them a little bit. And they ran a free... Face-to-face uh, <laughs> face, face face <laughs> special on the USA Network where they took um, kind of matches that were coming at WrestleMania and they just did kind of interviews with the guys coming up. I remember I didn't order the pay-per-view. I watched the WWF special and it was very underwhelming. Um, do you think it, it hurt the talent overall when you try and see that type of sabotage? As we mentioned, the first Royal Rumble in 1988 wasn't even on pay-per-view. It was a free special on the USA Network to fuck with NWA for doing the bunkhouse stampede on pay-per-view. Um, man, that's part of the business. You learn as you see it. You know, uh, to me, that's the genius of some of these guys like Vince or, you know, even down there. Uh, who, was, who was running it then, Bischoff? At uh, the, uh, no, at that point. Uh, 89. 80, George Scott was the booker. George was? Yep. But, uh, you know, that's the genius of you. We you, you, you one-up them. They're like, well, all right, we'll one-up your one-up. You know, and, and you learn. You, the guys sit back and learn from that. At first, it seems like shitty, but later in your career, you find out that kind of shit goes on all the time. So, you you know, you learn. You learn stuff. And it, me it, and Matt it, Daddy it, were talking about something today. Matt Daddy is, is in the control room, makes all this work. Not Glantz. Great guy. Not <laughs> Glantz. Why do you bother him, man? Glantz said he was looking for your outfits that you said when you were a kid. When you only had a couple, he said, that's two more than diapers? I have. Now, remember you said, you know, when you, when you were young and life wasn't going so great for you, you oh, only yeah, had a couple so of outfits to pick from. That was after that lawsuit. It lost a half a million dollars. Now, Glant said he, he needed more than one, so he's ready to go down there and see what you have left. Yeah, okay. The table spreads. I'll, I'll make something up. <laughs> All right, well, you're, you're a good man. <laughs> yeah, but we were talking about that. Me and Matt Daddy was talking about that. I mean... About Glantz? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but learning, everything's a learning process. I mean, what you see here is only going to scale up as you climb the ladder. There's going to be more shit. And if you just step right up in the, in the top rung, oh, that shit's going to be overwhelming. But if you've learned a little bit, and then when you get to the top, you got all that underneath you that you've already learned, you can handle it. You know, but so that, it was a good for the boys to learn. I, I used to think it was amazing. Like, how are they going to outdo, you know, one up this one? And then they, and they would do it every time. They would, you know, both sides were doing good. You know, it like, was like when uh, I told you, like the last episode. Well, I WCW wasn't doing so good. They were losing so much money, they were forced to sell to Ted Turner. Yeah, you know, old Ted called. Vince even said this on the interview. The husband of Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda, there she is. You ever meet her? I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> You're always trying to get me in trouble. I've just asked. It was, I know you've met a lot of celebrities. I met her through the TV. I saw her on TV. Christy Brinkley, Melania Trump, Vanna White. 
You've met a lot of celebrities over the That's years. what happens when you're in the wrestling world or in TV land. You, you yeah. meet people. Annie? <laughs> yeah, AEA. Annie? Tell, tell them what that stands for. I don't want to say it. Well, I'll tell you this. They came up with an angle, Tony Khan, down in Jacksonville. He said um, Vicky Guerrero is there now, and they were going to bring in Annie to say that AEW stood for ass-eating wrestling, and her and Vicky Guerrero <laughs> were going to start a program. She was going to have a little faction. And if they won the match, they get the treatment. <laughs> if they lose, On camera? If, yeah, if they lose, they get nothing. But we'll see. You if AEW want make, wants to get edgy, they could turn into ass-eating wrestling. You might want to call erotica <laughs> videos for that one. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this one. March 8th, the world of professional wrestling lost Houston wrestling promoter Paul Bosch. Yeah. Did you ever work Houston? Did you know Paul no. Bosch? <laughs> no. no, but when I went to... Uh, what, what year, what, what was the date? Because I went March there. March 8th of 89. 89, yeah, because I went there in um, 2000 and, and ran a power zone wrestling. Uh, with my friend, Rick, Quick Rick Darren, he was the owner of it, and he, we've been friends forever. And he called me up. I was so happy in Clearwater, Florida. I love oh, that I place. I love Clearwater oh, Beach, the best, Florida. Man. Oh, you're bringing that up now? Yeah, so, it, oh, I was so. I don't want to talk wrestling. So, I love that area. <laughs> so happy, man. Everybody yeah, that ever yeah. tells me about they're going down to Tampa, I tell them, Clearwater, Clearwater Beach. go over the Clearwater bridge. Clearwater Beach. It's a little bit of a hike <laughs> over the bridge sometimes. Ain't that bad. It's fun because you see the bay. You're yeah, going over yeah, the, yeah. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, yeah, I was so happy. I, I had my... Everything set up just right each night of the week, you know, which club to go to. Uh, and, and there was, you know, there was a, a night every night. Monday was, you know, Ale House or Sunday was Ale House. Monday, you know, one, I'm not going to name all the places because I'm free publicity and they don't let me drink for free sometimes. There now. you go. Right. Yeah. And plus the doll, uh, Diamond Dolls, it was uh, all my Tampa people know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hush now. They get busted a lot. They got busted a lot, and, but they're sticking through there. Uh, well, because I guess some of the girls uh, down there, and there there's some there's some raunchy ass strip clubs around the yeah. country. <laughs> Two thousand one down there in Tampa, you remember that one? I think it was on Hillsborough Avenue. Um, them and, and Diamond Dolls, the girls were known to take you in the back room for a lap dance, which was always a little bit more. But yeah. it was privacy. You, you see, you see guys privacy. Oh, oh yeah, so guys would be coming in like more and more guys coming in wearing gym shorts. And, they, and at night, and they didn't work out. You could tell they didn't work out. If they did, they hurt. They hurt themselves. But what the girls would do is like get on and do the lap dance, and for, for uh, extra money, because it was known, it was a known Service. thing. They pulled the, you know, they yeah, pulled the servicing. shorts over, you know. So a lot of them were getting busted for that. But um, and, and what does this have to do with Paul Bosch passing because away? Because Rick oh. called me and he said, "Hey man, I want you to move to Houston." Uh -huh. And um, yeah, I, I was happy. Where is that? But it was an opportunity to run his wrestling. Uh, he had bought a wrestling school. He mm. goes, it's yours. You run that, and you're in charge of Power Zone Wrestling. We, we ended, I ended up naming the uh, Body Slam University. I'll bring in one of the, the flyers. It was a pretty cool setup uh, next time we're, we're doing an episode. Yeah, last time, you no heat or anything, but you said you were going to bring some pictures that we I could incorporate in. But you know what? I think it'll be great once you do to add I, some, you know. I can always send them to you. Uh, An email internet. or Facebook. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I'll do that. You got to remind me, because there would be tomorrow. nice little things to interject, especially like this one, yeah. one of the flyers. Um, and it was so cool. We would have even during our third. We had an hour show, and almost thirty minutes of it was filled up with promoting the uh, uh, Body Slam University, you know, the right. school. Yeah. And uh, but we did good with it. But but here was the thing, man. You remember I explained what Gat is, that Gat luck I yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I was sitting there in Clearwater, and for y'all that missed that Gat's. You know, the luck I have is G-A-T, which stands for God's Amusement Toy, <laughs> meaning when God's tired of all his natural disasters, earthquakes, you know, tornadoes, uh, forest fires and brush fires and tsunamis and quasar explosions, he gets tired with all that, he looks around, where's Janine? He finds mine. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, but so anyway, I'm, I'm, I got gadded so bad on this one. I was so happy where I was at, Clearwater. I have my friends, Mike Moran, and, and live right up the street. Me and him have been buddies since we broke in together in Kansas City, 1984. And, you know, they, we're still buddies to this day. But, you know, I got to be, you know, we, we hung out, and, you know, he'd been living there for a while. He was, when I first moved there, he showed me around. Ybor City is another place. That back then, I don't know what it's like now. I heard it's kind of rough. Gangs, gangs kind of took over. Declined. 
Yeah, are you been there lately? Uh, not lately, but I know enough people that are yeah. around the other. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly not Clearwater Beach. <laughs> yeah, Clearwater's doing. I don't even know if Shepherds is still there. I worked there as security for a while. And uh, boy, that was some fun. We had on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, you had oh. the wet, wet t-shirt contest. And I want to go back now <laughs> that you're mentioning it. I love oh. Clearwater Beach. You know Beach. what? People are so happy there. And it has, it's has got to be because of the weather. It's always, even when it's cold, it's warm. You know, and, and everybody's, you know, because of the beaches, you know, the nicest beaches on, on the planet are right there. And, and you know, people want to work out and look good. And when you look good, you feel good. And you feel yeah. good, you do good. You know, to, to quote Deion Sanders, <laughs> and um, you, you, everybody's happy because you, when you're healthy, you're happy. You know, and people want to stay ha healthy there, so you walk, walk around in shorts and tank tops or bikini tops or whatever. Uh, Glantz would wear a bikini top, wouldn't he? <laughs> He'd wear one of those spaghetti string tank tops <laughs> from Colt's gym to show off his biceps. <laughs> you know he wrestled though. He was. Uh, That's what he told. Yeah, he said he was one of the, an amateur <coughs> up there with Angle and Patera Rastani. But if, oh, he was up at that level. He was. Uh, he said he was a higher weight though. He was around 200 pounds at that point, which I, I couldn't picture that. I yeah. didn't either. Maybe he really was a Goliath at one point. <laughs> I don't know. But back to Paul Bosch. Did, did you? Well, ever, I was going to oh, get there. I'm sorry. Sometimes I take a long exit street and can get back on the highway, but. Uh, <laughs> They, uh, Rick called me up and said, hey, you know, come run this. Now, I'm happy as hell where I'm at. I mean, life, you know, as a single guy, you know, the women there in Clearwater. Paradise. <laughs> you know? and, and so, you know, I'm going to leave that fun lifestyle. But it was more, it meant more to me to go run a wrestling company and a wrestling school. So, packed up the U-Haul, <laughs> drove my ass um, from where I was at Clearwater to Houston, I think it took 15, 14 hours, maybe somewhere. It was long. <laughs> I mean, you know, Clearwater's right here at the bottom of Florida. You, you know, drive all across the Panhandle, o over through Mississippi, Louisiana. It's a long ride. Yeah, it's a long way to get over to Texas from there. And I drove. I had a friend help me. One, one of my uh, girls, uh, Donna. Not, not that kind of girlfriend. She's a you know, good friend. Uh, went with me. She flew. She actually flew in from Houston to help me drive there. Oh, that's nice of her. Yeah, I had an injury then. I'm always injured, and uh, so she was going to help me you know, drive. We went right through. We just switch off and take turns driving, so that we didn't have to stop and somebody sleep. You know, he sleep. <laughs> and, and, and after 19 hours of driving, <clears throat> took her to her house, dropped her off, and then drove the rest of the way to, to Rick's place. And and uh, you know, you're dead ass tired after like I'm going to just say it was. 12 hours of, of driving, maybe 13 or something. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, if it, you went nonstop. Yeah, 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 we did. You stopped to get gas and stuff, and that was it. Um, but it was like 3 in the morning, and you've been driving 12, 14 hours, whatever it was, it was like this. But, you know, as soon as I pulled up to Rick's house, I got all excited, you know, because I'm here. Now I want to go see what we're doing. And, you know, I, I jump out the thing, and he comes out, and we hug. You know, we're friends for, like, years and years. Hugging, you know, the high fives and all that. Good to see. You. And I was so eager, like, go show me what we're working with. Let's go inside. Let's go show me what you're working with. And we got in there. He goes, okay, come on in. He got a VHS tape, you know, the old yeah, VHS. Yeah. Stuck it in there. And I'm watching, you know, because I'm wanting to see what my guys, you know, I'm going to be booking it. I'm going to be running it. I want to see what I'm working with. And I watched the first match he's showing me. And I'm like, oh, skip forward to the next one. And I'm watching the next one. And I skip forward to the next one. And I'm watching that one. And my shoulders probably started like this, all excited. And I think they're slowly going like this. It was no good. <laughs> it was like, get to our main guys. He goes, that, that is them. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, well, we'll make them better. Let me see the school, the students. And he got quiet. He goes, well, we only got a few. And I'm sitting there thinking, did I really just move here? Did I just leave where I was happy? And I said, a few being how many? He goes, I don't know, three or four, but people heard you're coming, so there's a lot of people who are going to sign up. And they, they, that did happen. About 15, oh, sure. 15 or 20 signed up <laughs> within a week. But then I was like, well, who are our sponsors? You know, let, let, how many sponsors have we got? He goes, well, that's another problem. I'm like, what? What, what do you mean that's a problem? He goes, 
we kind of need you to go get them. They don't do it for you. They're just not doing it for me. So really nothing is damn set. He was paying, I think it was for that hour, and it was late. It was like 12 o'clock at night. It was like $800 for that, that hour uh, of TV with no sponsors. He just body slam university, body slam university, body slam university, and back to the show. Um, I, oh, man, you talk about my heart just broke right then. I left where I was happy. <laughs> I, left, I was set for a lot of work, man. I was, I was, and in, in, in training-wise, I had, I was going through the boxing gym in the morning from 10 to 12, I think, whatever it was. It was early morning, nine to nine to 11, whatever. To train yourself? Yeah, boxing. Yeah, you know, was, Oh, you box? Yeah, a little oh, bit. I didn't know that. But yeah, and then, but then in the afternoon, or it was around five o'clock. But between boxing, round noonish, or you hit the beach, you know, get some sun. Uh, two or three o'clock, me and Mike, you know, my buddy Mike Moran, we'd head over to uh, the, the gym, Gold's Gym, hit, hit that workout. 5.30 or maybe 6 o'clock, the class for martial arts. Um, since they always moved out, like tomorrow we're going to start at 5, tomorrow we're starting at 7, all right. But so that was a routine every five days a week, you know, weekends it kind of backed off. You've got you to recoup, you know. But, uh, oh man, I loved it. And then when I had, you know, uh, and I was having very few shows. But I was still getting pretty big royalty checks from WWE at the time, or F at the yeah, time. Yeah, at that point, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I was able to float. There was <laughs> pretty much all I do is train. All I do is work out and go to the beach and watch these girls and work security. I, would, I worked security, but I just wasn't doing that many independent shows uh, when I was down there. But to have that life, I mean, I was, well, what, what more could you, you you're living the life, <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing all that training during the day that you love. I love boxing. I love the martial arts. I love my sensei, man. I'm, rest in peace, man. I miss the hell out of him. Um, and, and, you know, you're training the sun, the beach, the girls, the single, the clubs. And I'm going to leave that because I wanted, you know, my bigger passion is the business. Wrestling, yep. And so to get there. It's, it's, it just compounded the, the hurt was to drive all damn night. There was actually maybe a tear, maybe two, um, that I was leaving where I was so happy. Sure. And then maybe Makes halfway sense. I started going towards, okay, but I would be happier here. And then to and get nothing there. Nothing wrong with Houston. Yeah. It's not well, it wasn't Houston. Beach, I didn't, it wasn't Houston. It was, there, there was nothing waiting on me. The, the, we had less than talented guys. It was okay because we got them good. We made them better, um, which, you know, that made me feel good. I was watching the guys, you know, leapfrog up into better, you know, where they, than where they were. Um, but they, uh, <laughs> we had no sponsors for the show, so what, I mean, how are you going to pay me, Rick? Well, I'm paying for your, I'm going to pay for your, you know, where you're going to live and transportation and, you know, all your expenses while you're here. So really, I'm not going to make anything. I just don't guess. You're just going to be able to live. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, but, but that wasn't even, I didn't even care about that. Plus, Houston was new to me. I've been there many times. That's where I met uh, Kim, Kimmy Joe, uh, Kim, the uh, Road Warrior Animal's wife. Oh, okay. Okay. That's where, that's where I met her, you know, and, and Donna lived there. I got it, Bonnie, this girl Bonnie that uh, I used to see all the time. Uh, Bonnie Allgood, her last name was Allgood. Do you want me to tell you why? Sir? <laughs> That's really her last name, Allgood. Um, but so, I mean, you know, I had friends there. And, yeah. And so in Houston, I had never lived there. I'd been there a million times for shows. You know. um, that, part, that wasn't the hurt. The hurt was I just left com complete contentment to come here to nothing. <laughs> There's nothing waiting on me. There's a wrestling organization. You handed me, it's sort of like, no, I ain't, well, ain't going to go political. <laughs> I'm about to go. So, but you're handing me a piece of shit to make better. <laughs> and you really have no idea if you're even going to be paid yeah. outside of your life expenses. Yeah. Well, and, and right away, I got so lucky. Um, right away, uh, Bill Hurd Chevrolet was based out of Columbus, Georgia, and I'm friends with Hurd's. And they had one there in Sugar Land, I think it was. Um, at uh, her, Bill Hurd Chevrolet, and it was one of the, the boys that, you know, when I, I said, oh, you, he goes, we were going to get them. I said, oh, I, they're here in Houston? I know them personally. They're from Columbus, Georgia. And, and so he's like, yeah, you know them. I said, yeah, let's go talk to them right away. So first day there, boom, we got, <laughs> we got a big one. I mean, that was a big one. That paid all the expenses for the, the I think it was $8,800 um, for that hour uh, show. 
or it might have been, I don't remember how that worked, but it, it more than covered that and expenses of running. We know, need a school. car sponsorship. What's that? We need a car sponsorship. Who's up here? Oh, I mean, there's a million car dealerships, but, you know, you're getting stroke in my mind as far yeah, as... Well, I, I, mean, if I know a few people from over the years. I might can find something. All right. Well, anything, you know what I mean? Like I said, anything helps. Anything we can do to try and enhance the show, keep the legends working. We you are know running... when I watch the show, who, who, who do you have for sponsors? I know you do the course sort of like what they did there, you know. Yeah. But yours is, is you know, the products and Paramount. Now, what's it called? Patreon. 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 <laughs> Patreon. We got the Patreon. We got the eBay store. We got the yeah. T-shirt fundraiser on BostonWrestling.com. Uh, we have some of our great friends here in the city in Melrose that like to try and feed the crew from time to time, but that's a different story for a different time. But back to Paul Bosch. Wait, does he all my Boston people, and i got a bunch here, we're going to need some sponsorship. Get in touch with me on Facebook. If you don't have my phone number or you don't have my email, get, hit me up on Facebook um, we, we, or Twitter or what's the other one I'm on, Instagram? I don't even and know. And now a new one, Parlor. Uh, that's the one I'm probably going to stick with. They don't, they don't censor your shit. Parlor? Parlor. You ain't heard about I've it? I've never heard of it. Oh, you, What's you, in it? I'm going to write it down. Yeah, P -P it's spelled P-A-R-L-E-R. L-E-R. -E yeah. They don't censor your shit like Facebook and that Mark uh, Suck a Meat Burger is not in charge. You know, it's, it's better. Uh, I hope they don't see that now blocked by their own Facebook well, but account. But that's, see, that's the shit you won't have to put up with. But back to what I was saying, you know, my, my people from the gyms, right. the car lots, or anywhere. Uh, we, we need some sponsorship. Come on in, baby. Yeah, We're give more me, than ready and waiting. Hit me up. In fact, here's my number, 702. Oh, no, I don't want to do that, do I? 681 Oh, eight one two. As we, we have to wrap up the show, I'm getting the signal in the back. Anything about Paul Bosch? We know he's so anyway, I got there, and, and you know, right away, the first thing I, that I was hearing was Paul Bosch. You're going to be as... You're going to make it as good as Paul Bosch. And I really? Never, I, well, and he had a great reputation yeah. oh, as one of the him. best payoff men to this in the business. Day, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. The older the boys loved him, the fans loved him. So I would always, it's called a cheap pop. Every time I'd be in the ring to do an interview, and I'd say, and the great Paul Bosch, would, and they would just go crazy. They loved him there. All right. Well, I have no idea what that means. because they minutes. 24 Oh, we're over. No, okay. Hey, y'all got to tune oh, in. We're only, you only came out once for this episode? No, it came out twice. Oh, all right. Well, you know what? No, we're not ready to wrap up yet then. Um, all right, good. So, yeah, he, uh, he, man, they love him in Houston. Uh, I tell you this, his wife just passed away. Really? And Bruce Pritchard bought uh, all, everything that had to do with the Paul Bosch Houston wrestling. I think he owns everything that has to do with that. Bruce or WWE? <laughs> no, Bruce personally. <laughs> For himself, yeah, uh, he, he's had a, he, had, off. <laughs> he had a very loyal attack because I think he was only like maybe 10, 12 years old when he started selling programs for Bosch. Oh, really? So he had quite Is the that attachment where from, to Texas? him. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, him and the uh, and Tom. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you know this, Tom, but I love Tom, man. I he him. has a son that's blind. Which Paul one? Paul Bosch now. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he would at the Cauliflower Rally Club every year. He's a uh, he's tremendous with the piano, even though he can't see. And yeah, he would he'd that, play yeah. the, you know, during dinner and whatnot, he'd add the background music. He'd come with the mum to the Cauliflower Alley Cup yeah. reunion. So I guess part of the reason why Bruce wanted to do it was a lot of the money went to the kid to try oh, and help really? him out oh, where okay. he's blind. So kudos to Bruce. Bruce has been a longtime friend of the show. I don't know what you think of Brucey Bruce, but you know what? He's always been great to us. And he was always good to me. I love Bruce. Well, good. All right, as we continue. Did you, did you just shortcut it like that? Yeah, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, well, good. <laughs> I'd re it, it would probably make for a more interesting story <laughs> if he stiffed you or screwed you or lied to you in some way, shape, or form. No, you but actually it's helped nice, me. But I like Bruce, so it's, I'm glad that he was good to you. Yeah, he's every, good Bruce to is another one of those guys that some people, they either really like him or they don't like him. I don't for know some what reason. you would not like about him. <laughs> oh, Eh, in that position that he's been in over oh, the years yeah, in well, talent that, relations, yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, that's a tough spot for yes, anybody. Yes, it is. I told you about the Terry Taylor one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you mentioned a genius not too long ago in this Which interview. One? You did. I don't know. You said someone was a genius, but speaking of geniuses. There's a bunch of them out there compared to um, me. You're a genius. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Early in 1989, we already spoke about on a previous episode, WWF took enhancement talent Steve Lombardi. Um, mm -hmm. A man that was known to fillet, and he got... Uh, known to what? Fillet. Like a fish? Fillet a fish? No, fillet. Service. 
service who, him. Who? Lombardi? Yeah. He was known to fillet. Well, you better not let him hear you say that. But, but you know, it's not a secret. It is to me. <laughs> well, oh, come on now. Even if I knew, I wouldn't go tell the world. He's told the story about the elevator ride with Pattison All and Terry Gowden. was he said, yeah. let's do what we did last night. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think they were playing cribbage, that's for sure. Arnie Scollin wasn't with them. No, but, Arnie, Arnie was... It, you know, Arnie was so fun. I miss him too. I man. thought that was a you know a creative way to do something with Steve Lombardi to take him from just an enhancement guy and kind of give him a little bit of gimmick as Brooklyn Brawler. And then in the spring of '89, WWF went the same route. They took uh, frisbee throwing, palm reading, Lanny Poffo, <laughs> another man that was reading. known to fillet <laughs> only himself instead of others. Pl fillet. Fillet. Okay. A little fellatio. And, Is that uh, what I do when I cut them fish with that little knife that hooks around them? It's fillet a fish. Fillet. It's fillet a fish. Not fillet. Now I'm feel like, Hopefully, you're not fillet the fish. Now I'm going to feel like fishes. I'm blowing a fish. <laughs> if it's a blowfish, it's blowing me back. But WWF took enhancement talent, Lanny Poffo. They turned him into the genius, giving him a little bit of a gimmick, a little bit more of a push. Uh, did you do you think that was a good thing for Lanny? Did Lanny well, seem yeah, of course happy he was with there it? For a long time. Any memories of Lanny turning, morphing into the genius? Well, Lanny's an intelligent. He's part of the Mensa Club anyway. It's part uh, of the what? He's a Mensa Club. That that you got to have a score of what 150 or higher to get. In the oh, Mensa. really? Yeah. And we always said to um, Lanny, like, "Damn, what's it like to be? A, you're a genius. I mean, you're in the Mensa Club." He goes, "Well, it's my brother that's a genius. He's way up the scale." <laughs> so I'm like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, Randy was too, man. Randy was. Randy's the one that told me one time, "Brother." Sometimes it's a curse to be this smart. <laughs> and, 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 and Johnny Polo, but he went on to be Raven. You know, him and I are like great friends. But he told me, he goes, man, when you're that smart and you're around dumb people all the time, <laughs> he goes, it's just not fun walking through life. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine because I'm a dumb person myself, and I see all these people not as, well, how do I say that, not as I can't call myself smart, and I don't want to call them I dumber. <laughs> I think you're a wise man. I tell wise tales. I think you have a lot of knowledge, and I think you have a very good memory. Well, I appreciate that. Can I get a handshake on that well, one? Oh, oh, yeah, we got a socially fist bump. Socially fist bump. You know, Shannon, Shannon Sharp, that's my favorite show. Uh, uh, you know, Little Wayne opens it up. But um, what is it called, Matt Daddy? Undisputed. No mercy, no mercy. Um, they they do the fist bump him and yeah. Skip Bayless they, they they don't they don't touch they just let's do it let's practice it once, like that. All right. Yep. Yeah. We should do that now. We'd be stealing their stealing the. How gamut. can we uh, creatively we'll do, borrow? Maybe it? the elbow. No, because somebody did that. Biden and somebody did that. Him and Kamala. Yeah. Who? Oh, Kamala. I'm sorry. <laughs> Saturday night, March the 11th. It was a big one. It was forget about Saturday Night Live. It was WWF Saturday Night's main event main on event. NBC, 11.30 p.m. That was that a, late? That's when it started, yeah. Holy they, shit. Because they took you, Saturday Night Live's time slot. It was 11 o'clock then. 11.30, after the was news. Was it 11.30? After the news, yeah. No, wow, imagine if they had a 10 o'clock or 9.30 time slot. Well, remember, we've, we've mentioned before, when they did the Friday Night Special, the main event in 1988, in February, when they did Hogan and Andre, 33 million people tuned in. Damn. That was one of the biggest big. nights in the yeah, history that's, of the that's industry. Record yeah. breaking. What, uh, what, are we, what time did y'all tune in tonight? Th we started at 10. Yeah, okay. Uh, that was the last week that I saw, too, was, it was 10. 10. Yeah, then the, we well, we do, do it nine. every week at 10. We did, but because of, uh, to try and keep everything equal and even fit, and easy for people to remember, we have to do 10 o'clock on Friday night for John Cena Sr. Oh, because Friday when night. SmackDown ends... So I figured, why not have all of the talk shows start at the same time so it's right. easier for people to remember? The 10 o'clock power hour, baby. What do y'all think? Throw your thoughts in on that, because we're thinking, some of us are thinking 9 o'clock is a better time. Uh, oh, well, we, it, yeah, you know what? If the fans want 9 o'clock, we can always change it. Let's see what people say. Yeah. Let's see what y'all say. Um, you know, because you can always write in. What's that called when you... you Chatting. Chatting. You chat Chatting. in during the show. And they can always hit the super chat button, which helps keeps the lights on and helps us keep you booked, brother. That goes to Paramount. No, Patreon. Patreon. The pa if they subscribe to the Patreon, which is the cost of a, about a cup of coffee at Starbucks, they get early ad-free access and to the show. Was that one yesterday. Plus all expensive. those studio shoot interview DVDs, and you keep the legends working. So what was that? Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah. don't know what you're talking about now. But <laughs> yeah. March the 11th, Saturday night's main event. It was taped about a month before in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Well, you know what we used to The first one, the very first one, you mean? 
Because what we did, one of us wanted to call it Saturday Night uh, main, main Event Live. Well, the first one was in 1985. Well, no, what I'm saying, we taped, um, the, it was actually a live show the first, then we taped like a week or two. Those would be taped, but still go as, you know, Saturday Night. Oh, yeah, oh, I understand yeah. what you mean, yeah. Yeah, they, they weren't taped on Saturday. They were part of usually a superstars right. taping or right. a challenge, yeah. Uh, they did a great job heating up the guys for WrestleMania Five, which was, at that point, maybe uh, one of the biggest nights in the history of the company, at least as far as pay-per-view buys went. But on Saturday night's main event, you and the Brain Busters battled to a double countout on NBC. I remember in that. Front See, of didn't a we fight back to the crowd. dressing room? Absolutely. But, and then you throw in, i got to ask you this. Okay. Not only are you getting that big prime, a little after prime time, but you're in that time slot that folks are familiar with for Saturday Night Live. Right. Those NBC specials did big ratings on NBC. This was a big, probably the biggest showcase you had yep. in WWF uh, as far so. as the number of eyes watching, where you had on top of the tag team division what you could maybe call a slower paced program with demolition and the powers of pain. Did it motivate you guys to up the ante a little bit to maybe show what you guys could do for the tag team division on such a big platform like NBC? Uh, I think what we always uh, always did. I think Sean will. Uh, you know, is is it the right word to say a test? A yeah. test to this. He, I he can spell that one. He attested to it. He attested. I don't know if I, why that word never come out of my mouth before. Uh, but, but anyway, he can he can uh, confirm this. We pretty much always adapted to who we were working with. If, I mean, if we got Paul Diamond and which at one point he went as Cato under Damascus mm -hmm. as, as the Orient Express and, and Tanaka, who were two of the you know, best workers <clears throat> as a team, as far as athletic ability, those, you know, they were the best we ever worked with. Um, so we could do so much, and that's why that Royal Rumble match 91. Oh, I can't wait to get to that oh, one. Oh, man, and, and I still get emails and, and, and stuff, you know, talking about that match. When Talk they about it. stealing the show. Oh, man, and, and Roddy Piper was so good because he was announcing, remember, he was, he was going crazy. Oh, my God, and this is just the first match. <laughs> he was so good. Now, <laughs> Roddy, uh, as, you, as we mentioned last night, Roddy was one that liked a little variety. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say. Who knows say. what's I, under that kilt, as Bobby Heenan used to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what he said on, he was on Arsenio Hall one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember Arsenio, he yeah. had his talk show thing, and Roddy was on there. And it was for the Survivor Series. I got a bunch of Survivor he wore to kill. You know, he stayed in character pretty much. A lot of the guys will go on there and become themselves, you know, <laughs> but they're dressed up and they're getting their character. And so it's, they're being them and they're not being their character. Um, you know, and it, it kind of throws you off, uh, you know, because they're dressed the part. If you come in regular clothes, it, you know, it'd be one thing. But you come, you come like Bad News. I think Bad News was actually going to wear his damn little black tight things out there. And then they said, nah. <laughs> that would be a little much, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but he was going to stay in character all the way up to the tights, you know. Macho Man stayed in character. Uh, you know, I, watched, I used to watch it because Sean and I was supposed to go on and something went wrong. Uh, imagine that. And <laughs> yeah, this is a surprise, right? <laughs> And, but so it, it was. It was a big deal to work those Saturday night main events. Yeah, because uh, not only if but, I. But I was going to say about I'm Roddy. No, oh, okay. Um, Roddy, Roddy. Um, you know, we learned so much from him. Um, you were talking about he liked other things or something. He liked a little variety. Variety, in life. yeah. A little variety. You know that one time that Sean and I had the accident and, and got into it. I was starting to see some of that variety come out. And when he was rubbing his fingers through Sean's hair, and oh, you're going to be so great. And he's pulling Sean to it. I, from Sean's, you know, in defense for Sean, he was pulling back. <laughs> and, Rod, uh, from what I was told, Roddy was a very touchy individual. Was that? I don't know. Safe he never to touched say? me a whole lot. I didn't see oh, him. The right, only person well. I saw him touchy, touchy was was Sean that night. Oh, right. oh right. yeah. But anyway, um, and Roddy told us a good piece to, for you guys, new guys out there. Um, we got upset about even that that show, the Royal Rumble. Uh, you know, we thought we were pretty good, and, and you know, the Rockers were pretty good. Um, so while we were like every, it was like every pay per view. We we're, were the in house shows. <clears throat> you know, there's no TVs there. <clears throat> you put on, you build up. <clears throat> Excuse me, my my voice here. I gotta get some more. Uh, oh, we got a little fab pop. This is good stuff, y'all. Thank the way. you, Johnny. Yes, this is very good. The root beer is what I'm drinking. 
let the root <laughs> out. But the um, <laughs> it was pretty good. It was good, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I got to reel you back into 1989, brother. You, you, Wait, you, let me let me let me finish, Piper, because this is something for, for right. the young guys to learn to to know. Oh, that's important to me. Okay. Then. All right. They um, you know, in house shows, you put on the, the you build up to the main event, or you should. <laughs> Um, you know, that's why some guys like Brad Rangers, who I love to death, and and uh, I mean, I'm not going to say no more names because that might be embarrassing to him. But we used to say the ring music was the national anthem. <laughs> you know, if, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just played the national Scott anthem, Casey then, then was you one go you out. Yeah. yeah, hair shooting out of my head. You know, I ain't had a haircut in six months, except for I did it the other day, and you see what I did. Kind of got the Bruce Valanche look going. Who's now. that? The comedian. <laughs> Is that anything like it? A little like Bruce. Also, yeah. do I look funny? Is that what you're saying? No, just that's what they hear. All you need are a pair of funny looking glasses, and you could I be got a them Marty Valanche. What did I do with them? I, I can't I'll hear you, Prodigy, but bit. I know you're chuckling along. Yeah, I hear Matt Daddy in there. <laughs> uh, all right, so what were you saying so, now? So, um, you know, pay per view. So, we're, you know, we're, we're joking on, ribbing on them, as, as they call it. Uh, I don't know why I don't like that term either. You know, I got, I got some weird quirks, right? I didn't like shoot, uh, Marty shoot. So if y'all uh, have been following, if you notice at the beginning, um, you know, we'd always say Marty shoots on this. And it's, that's, it's, it's pretty much accepted in all the uh, uh, interviews. People do that. You know, this guy shoots on this or shoots on. But I, mean, I guess I'm so old school that I don't like that word shoot. Being in front of something because for me, the shooting means uh, this is going to be rough. <laughs> You're about to tell some shit that you, you didn't. Or it's said in anger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and raw and is real. And the way it's looked at nowadays, that's not necessarily the case. Well, a like quote say, unquote, a shoot interview is just something done honestly right. out of character. Well, you shoot. So, so basically there's, there's it just different means, ways to look at it. Right. Yeah. And, and then some people, and they admit to it, it's clickbait. You know, because you're like, oh, man, he's going to say something. He shoots on Hogan. Oh, God, I got to see this. Well, I think any interview you do out of character is out of gimmick is a shoot interview. Yeah. So that's that is my I understand your point of view that. But that's just my point of view. I think anytime someone sits down in this chair and then and you're not you're not Marty Gennetti talking about a match coming up next Saturday night at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. It's a real interview. It's a shoot interview. Right. It's. But it, a lot of people, they hear the terminology shoot interview, and they think, you know, you're coming out guns a blazing. Right. To and, and see, the, the way, man, I'm, I'm 35 years, 36 years Six. in business. 36 years Seven, in business. Seven, actually, now. It's 2021. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven years now. Uh, 37 years. Um, when, when, when the word shoot first came out, and Dan and I, we, we had to talk this out. And, you know, I see his side. And. I think you see my side. We had a very respectful conversation yeah. about it. You know, it's sort of like the Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. It's the same subject, but you both got... We looked at it a little different. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it was respectful. Yes. Which is what was most important. Right. Um, and so, uh, but, but for me, you know, Dan's... I've almost been in the business as long as he's been alive. <laughs> right? Because you're 40, 39? 41. 41. Well, well, this year I'll be 41. Well, now. <laughs> um, September. But so, the word shoot in the industry started way back in Japan um, before ultimate fighting and all that stuff, you know, became very popular. The J Japanese would call it, oh, what's this match? It's going to be a shoot. And, you know, all the American boys would shoot. What's, what's, what does that mean? Oh, they're going to go out there for real. You know, and, and, and they would shoot. They would like, it's going to, it's not staged. It's the, they might give you, like, say, hey, y'all do this, you do this, you do this, you go over. But in the shoot one, it's understood, no, we're going out there, and whoever knocks the other one out wins. <laughs> right. And it's called a shoot. And then the interviews come along. And, you know, when somebody would, like, tell some shit, like, say I didn't like Hogan, and I wanted to talk about when he said the N-word, like, yeah, they, would, they would say, you know, we remember that, like, oh, when yeah, his daughter, yeah. he didn't want his daughter dating, you know, Brooke. That's such a cute ass thing, man. I I held her like this. Hulk would have me watch her, hold her like when he go to the ring. Now she's a grown up. And she's like tall she, too. I, we worked with her when we helped with TNA, do a, a fan fest and a pay per view up here, and very nice. But oh, you're sweetheart. right, yeah. very tall. God, yes, she is, yeah. ain't she? And I didn't shrink down. They measured me the other day. It was five eight. It, it, the pre op. Really? I say the other day. It's been well on this show. It's been a while. Yeah. 
But yeah, I got upset. I said, look, man, I'm only 5'11". Don't take nothing from me. And she goes, well, look, I guess from the ankles collapsing, I lost an inch or so there. And, and being it makes older, sense. Yeah, and then being older, your spine <laughs> compresses there is. So I, I started off short and got shorter. I'm wondering if I can sue the government for building a sidewalk so close to my ass. Oh. <laughs> you know, but um, anyway, with, with, uh, hell, what was we talking about? We were talking Saturday night's main event. We have to wrap up the show. I'm hearing the, I got the cue from the back. One question, though. With Saturday night's main event, was Wait, wait, wait. Well, let me right. finish real quick, I'll, right. and I'll make it fast. To be put on first match, used to be, we, we thought it was an insult. Like, we're no better than curtain jerkers. And, and then Roddy Piper took us aside. He goes, it's the biggest compliment you can get. Um, because it's a pay-per-view, you got all the people tuning in, a lot of new faces that don't know much about wrestling, but they're part of a party that's what, you know, you want to start it off with a bang, so you give what close to your best. You got to have that main event, the one you paid, you know, all that money goes into promoting that, that, that show. But you give them the best match, the first match, where it be it a tag, where tags are so easy to do good. And you know, it's funny. When but I, so don't ever take that as an insult to be put on first in big shows. It's we'll a save, compliment. We'll certainly save this for the chronological order we're attempting to do in 1990. <laughs> but you guys also opened up SummerSlam in 90, just a couple of months before. Was that where Sean was hurt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, again, you, that you were put out there to set the pace. So but several times. That's why we got upset. And we so, were like, one more question before we go, though. For okay. Saturday night's main event, did you get the double payoff for those, the payoff from the house and the payoff from NBC like a lot of the guys? I, not us. We just got the one from WWE. You F didn't get the WWF. extra NBC payoff? Not that I remember. If we did, I don't remember that. Really? I don't but think was it did, a good though. payoff for the Saturday night main events? Mm. What you remember getting? It wasn't like the pay per view. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. But it was definitely I, enhanced. I think was it was pretty much better the, than a house show. Not really. I thought I was going to say it's pretty much what. If really? it was a big house, you got a better check. If it was a small uh, venue, then we didn't really make that much. Yeah. There were a lot of guys. And I might remember that wrong. Maybe but remember I think it wrong. I'm pretty sure did it. You know, everybody's wasn't the same. You know, there were some people got treatment different. That's why Nails jumped at uh, Vince that one yes. time when he found out ball, he was wrestling Boss Man. In the, the same match, it, that was a pay-per-view. No, he was angry about the payoff for the match with Virgil at SummerSlam. Because that incident you happened. You talking about nails? Yeah, the incident happened no, in December. Man, but, uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, the incident happened in December of 92. Mm -hmm. The match with the boss man was just a couple of weeks before. So they wouldn't have had the buy rate info to give him the payoff yet. He was angry that he only got, I think it was six grand for his SummerSlam match with Virgil. Because, hmm, you know, it took, it took a couple of months maybe, for you maybe, to get well, those pay-per-view payoffs. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's like three months, two months so back then, yeah. So he wouldn't have had his Thanksgiving Survivor Series payoff in December. Well, all, all I can do, I was there, and all I can do is say what I know. Yeah. Uh, me and Sean were in the ring like we always are, like, hey, what if we shot a guy that way, and I sling you, and you, you know, you're coming up with new stuff. And Nails, with Kevin Kelly, who we knew from Kansas City, uh, not Kansas City, uh, uh, AWA. AWA in Minneapolis. Uh, him and I got along, you know, we were buddies, I mean, he was somebody you just don't mess with. Um, and I was thankful he was my buddy, but he'd come out to the ring and he trusted my advice. I think, he, you know, Nails wasn't there that long. I think he was... No, but not even not even a year. Yeah, and he came out to the ring and he was, Marty, I need to talk to you. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm like, now he's serious about something. Hold on, Sean. He didn't, get, he didn't call Sean. I don't think he liked Sean for some reason. I mean, I, you know, Sean had an attitude back then, but to the point... Um, he says, I'm going to go, what do you think? I want your opinion first. I'm like, okay, what? He goes, I'm going to go back there and kick the shit out of Vince McMahon. <laughs> I'm like, uh, wait a minute, I'm at my ear, what? Yeah, I'm going to, he said, boss man, he was in the match with boss man. Because I would have remembered Virgil, I'm like, oh, man, don't know, Virgil, they just had to take, you know, I would have went a whole different route if it had been Virgil, but he said boss man. But if it was early December, you wouldn't have had your Survivor Series payoff. I, all I know is what he, all I'm saying is what he said to me. Okay. Um, and and he said that him and Boss Man were in the same. When, were they ever in the same? Yes, they did work Survivor Series. Okay, but, so, but would you guys have had a payoff for Thanksgiving I, I don't know. and early like, December? Again, I'm just saying what, oh, what, what he said, said to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, he, he said I was in the same match with Boss Man. Why shouldn't I get paid the same? And you know, I didn't. I was like. I know that does happen, but generally, for the most part, you do get paid the same as your opponent. Now, if you're in a main event type thing, 
you know, Hogan's going to get more than, oh, yeah. you know, who, whoever else. And semi-main, if, you know, if you're Macho Man and you're working with Rick Martell, Macho might get a little more. Yeah. But it, from mid-card on down, you should be getting the same thing. And I think they were maybe upper mid-card. Um, That's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, he found out somehow that Boss Man got paid a good chunk better than him. I don't know what that is, because we didn't quote numbers. He just said, you know, he got paid different than me. I got to feed my family. I got to put food on the table. He's taking food out of my family's mouth. That's the one thing I remember that he said the most, because he was like, Vince is taking food out of my family's mouth. And I was like, well, don't go back there and fuck him up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's not going to work. Go talk to him. And he, he sat there and he thought about it. I said, if you beat him up, you're going to probably get released. Or fired, or you know, you're going to in all kinds of trouble. Just go back and tell him what you know that he didn't get paid the same. You know, stay calm. Okay, I'll try. And then he turned, and he did that nails walk away. That was his real walking light, you know, nails. Yes, you know, Kevin Kelly, how he walked. Like, Stone. That character was so perfect for him, especially when he grew that beard. And now I know I'm veering, I'm going to hurry up because we're down, we got, we got to go out. It's so funny, a lot of guys find this out. Kevin used to be, he built his body, he was strong as fuck, um, but he built his body up, I mean, he worked out, he kept the look, you know, everything, good, great build, you know, unbelievable build, you know, and he was 6'4", uh, kind of probably started so skinny or something, because, you know, he, he was still lean like Rick Rude, he was lean, but built like, a, and he just was getting nowhere outside of the AWA, and AWA was tumbling. And so he just quit. He's got, he gained a lot of weight, grew a beard, a little scruffy and shit. And then he got hired. <laughs> he was like, God damn, if I'd known this earlier. <laughs> but so it, that, that was, he went to the back. And then later we hear a bunch of screaming. I'm looking at Sean like, this sounds like another one of the Davy Boy thing. <laughs> What's going on? Or Dynamite Kid. And so we go sprinting back there. And I got, it was in Green Bay because I yep, remember yep. how the, dress, the dressing rooms were. And I, I look around the corner. All the Minneapolis boys, like uh, Mike Enos, Wayne Bloom, they were, what were they called? Beverly, Beverly Brothers. Brothers. Beverly Brothers, John Nord, all these <laughs> Minneapolis boys, because Kevin Keller was Minneapolis, all, and Barry Dar. So all of them were pulling. He had, he had Vince by the throat, and Vince was going down to his knees. And he, <laughs> his, his eyes, his face was turning purple. I thought he was going to die right there. It, it looked like he was squeezing the shit out of a cat. And I wouldn't know that because I'd never squeeze a cat. But, but the Vince is going down, and he's choking him. They're going to kill him. They're, they're all of them. I think Sergeant Slaughter was in there. I don't know if he's in Minneapolis, but they, all, they was the ones pulling Kevin off. And Kevin was smart enough. The first thing he did when they finally got him away, I'm sitting out there, and I thought, oh, I don't know if I should say anything to Kevin or run in case he's still mad. Um, but I just kind of backed off, and Kevin walked by, and right Four feet outside the door. Remember now, it was payphone days. There's a payphone in the hallway. He goes right on it. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Calls the police. He goes, I'd like to make a report. I just got fondled by, it's known, it's known that he's a gay man and he does this with us wrestlers. And Vince McMahon just fondled me. So I had to make him stop. And the police came and made a report. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I don't know whatever Must happened. Must have been a hell of a day at the TV <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, And I don't know whatever happened now. I know we know Kevin wasn't back again, but I don't know if he got lawsuited or anything or if he tried to. But I thought it was smart. He protected himself. Because usually in incidents like that, it's the one who calls first that they side with. You know, if, if, if that was a guilty person like him, uh, but he called first and said he got fondled. He, you know, he reached well, out. And, and he was smart because he knew that was the year that all those sex and that, drug yes. scandals were breaking yes. out. So That's why he, he, he was very, very smart the way, you know, he, he not played. very ethically, but he was smart <laughs> in the way he decided to handle it for himself yeah. as far as maybe protecting himself from Vince taking legal action against right, him, you know. Right, exactly. Vince had enough legal problems as it or was. Or you put him in jail, more. man, because yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a solid. And they would live his gimmick, yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. All right, wrestling fans, we're running out of time on this one. We took a jump leap from 89 <laughs> to 92 to end it, but for my good friend Marty Gennetti, <laughs> I'm Dan Marotti. Again, take advantage of all the great offerings we have. If you're watching during the premiere Thursday night, hit that Super Chat button. 
Give us a, a, a nice meal. You know, go out for a nice cuisine tonight, maybe, or a, even a, a cold so what's it adult called? beverage. Huh? What's that place called? Kolo, Kolo? Kowloon. Kowloon. The world-famous Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex. Oh, we complex. won't make it tonight, huh? We won't make it, baby. Damn. All right. Patreon, eBay. We got the T-shirts on bostonwrestling.com, and we got you. Because I know you guys are sharing the links. Curveball. I know you're hitting the thumbs up, and I know you're subscribing, and we love you. And because the more you guys help us... The more shows we can give them. And get in touch with me through the Facebook. You promoted to my people in Boston. Get in touch with me. Yeah, we're always looking for sponsors. We're rotating on the screen as we speak. Until we speak again, you and yours be well, stay healthy. Good night. Ah, uh, Sia. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty. But, but, our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders in studio shoot interviews on eBay with this brand new personally autographed WWE Royal Rumble 2021 11 by 14 poster signed by WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, his advocate Paul Heyman and Kevin Owens. Reigns and Owens battled for the Universal title in a last standing match January 31st in the Thunderdome in Tampa. This limited edition collector's poster is number 31 of only 50 produced. Comes with WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Also comes with an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus autographed 8x10 photo. Get this rare, awesome collectible for your man cave and help keep wrestling legends working now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another episode of Wrestling Inside. It's Potty with Marty as we roll ha through haircut this with Marty. MJ's cold, barbershop. cold winter. Hopefully we're keeping you warm on Thursday nights, whether you're having an adult beverage or maybe curled up under a blanket. Like a good friend out in Pittsburgh. Or some Fabo. Or some Fabo pop. Fabo. Why do I keep saying Fabo? I don't know. What's Fabo? It's pretty All good, though. I'm drinking some now. I'm sure they're tuning in on the live premiere. Maria Davis, Tina, Slick Rick B, all of the Kevins, it's Vaughn. T Tania. The one you Sometimes couldn't. it's Tania. You know, I she has to several her aliases. I do. <laughs> she, She's a, a, the woman of mystery. Tania, be careful. Man. Also you got known me nervous. As, I just did a cameo for her. Sometimes and I had to get, known had to as Smokey. It. Are you sure? Yeah, and That's sometimes no. And I accidentally called her Stony for a while. <laughs> because you know what? There's a lot of folks to try and remember. But, you know, as we mentioned, Marty, we're going to be trying to set up a, a way for fans to have, instead of those cameo videos on a cell phone. Tell them about Paramount. Patreon. Patreon. We'll get there in a second. Oh, okay. But when you, next time you're here in studio, we want to have it set up where you can do live video greetings here in studio. Where fans will yeah, get a really so nice, fun. nice high, instead of a, something shot with a cell phone, a high quality video with you. But you know the only Because you're all about quality. Well, where's my phone? Oh, it's on the, the charger again. The same, every time, every week. The same place you left it last time. <laughs> last, last about 10 episodes ago. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, let's party with Marty as we remember the year. You ever had a Bluetooth? 1989. I don't even know what they do. What, Bluetooth? I've never had one. I got one, but it's because I, I got my tooth well, knocked out. you got out. a white tooth, yeah. Uh, and I had a, I had a piece of paper that had blue lines in it, and it's got the whole tooth blue. Which, oh, they were over there. 
All right, well, don't, um, don't, yeah, don't freeze frame that and put it all over the damn shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just pretty much told them what to do with it. Uh, all right, wrestling fans. March 18th, Saturday, March the 18th, 1989. A kind of nondescript day. Nothing huge. Well, did we just go up to 1990? What did we do a while ago? Or well, I say a while ago. Well, we last keep, week. We, we're trying to get through 1989. We're but we like to jump around. <laughs> uh, just to show how hot the industry was in 89. March 18th, you're working the A team. You're underneath Hogan and Boss Man. Double shot in the afternoon. You had a matinee at MSG. Hogan and Boss Man in the cage. Rock is in the Brain Busters. Is that what do you call it, matinee? The day Ma it was in the afternoon. Yep. 20,000 people sold out. That night, this guy right here. Uh -oh. Was lucky enough to see you guys I, in the same Hogan and Boss Man cage match in Boston. Sold out 16,000 in the garden. The garden. 36,000 people you guys did in one day. Yeah. How uh, hot was the house show business at that point in 89? And the Spectrum, an hour down the other way from the garden, about an hour and a half, I guess. That would always be sold out yeah. during those things. I mean, there was three venues right there that bam, 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 sell out, sell out, sell out. But, I mean, all the places sold out, but you're talking about the biggest run ones in the country. You know, there's 16,000, 20,000 plus, I think. They re, well, they redid it and added more yeah. seats. It was very rare for both for the, for, for, to run Boston and New York in the same day. It only yeah, happened a yeah, couple of times. A, because we had to, we drove, you know, Trump had an airline back then. Remember yeah. Trump yeah, Airlines? Yeah. It, it went to Washington, D.C., I think, Boston. It only went to like four or five places. Mm -hmm. But there was that much commute. So would you fly or did you drive? Sometimes we, when we do the On doubles, a day like that, when you had a matinee in New York, would you drive well, to Boston or would you fly? I think we flew because... Oh, really? It was, what, a three-hour, three-and-a-half, four-hour oh, drive? Yeah, during the day, that time of day, before I would drive. Four-hour drive, yeah, from Boston to New York. And we had to do that a handful of times. 36,000 people in one day. Well, yeah, when we did this, um, my biggest show was actually at WrestleMania 3. I think they had 93,000 90 93, at WrestleMania 3. And uh, at the Pontiac uh, Silverdome, which they tore that down recently. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's nothing now. Uh, it's sad. My girl For Wendy. historical purposes, I wish someone did something with it, but. Yeah, I know, right? And people up there felt the same way. My, my illegitimate uh, mother of my daughter, illegitimate daughter, um, uh, she, she sent me a picture of them just, you know, tearing it down. Wendy, she was, uh, you know about Wendy. Wendy? Wendy. No. What do they call that? The baby mama? <laughs> His baby mama. Um, yeah, she, uh, we, we, we're good friends. We stayed friends shit, since 1988. <laughs> so however many years ago that was. It's like 30, 32. Yeah. 32. Uh, that's a long friendship. Uh, but she uh, she sent me pictures. If that was 93, that was my biggest. And, but you know what's so different? But you didn't work WrestleMania 3. No, I was, there, I was there for a dark match or some shit. And, no, and, and you were in AWA. No, we You had, didn't come in to get fired from WWF until... <laughs> no, that was, was... May and June of 87. Of 87, yeah. Yeah. What year? That was 86, though. When it was... Uh, Sean and I went to it. Maybe on call or, you know, come meet kind of thing. You were actually at WrestleMania 3? Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hell were you doing there, working for another company? No, well, we didn't wrestle. Well, because you... You were just I, saying hi to the boys? No, or? we got an invite. Um, oh. But um, you, I don't remember the contracts back then. Now they're, well, since 1990, for sh maybe, maybe even later than that, 96-ish on up, there was a, uh, not to no compete, but... Other companies couldn't approach you while you were under contract. And I think they have that in other sports, too. You oh, sure, sure. I don't know what they that They call it tampering, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, that, I don't think we had that until later in the mid-'90s. I don't think it was at first. So you were, a, even though you wrestled for AWA, you were a welcome guest at WrestleMania yeah. 3. Well, what you got to remember, Terry Garvin was in there, yeah. and he would, why you, do, why you say that? <laughs> <laughs> the captain of the cream team, baby. Oh, damn, man, come on. <laughs> So you were an invited guest. What was your impression of you and Sean showing up? You know, as AWA, it, it wasn't dead at that point, but it certainly wasn't on fire. No, it, dro it dropped a lot. What did you think of 93,000 people but, at that time? I'm going to tell you what's different about it. Well, for, well our impression was, like, fuck, we're, we're McNichols Arena, which was in Denver, yep. our, our favorite place. You um, love Denver. Yeah. Uh, it, would, it would be, it was the last one that would stay half full, which meant like, 8,000 people or something. 
And now we go into this place, like we're invited to come down, and it was actually a we we're, were going to get talked to, but the TV, like like that pay per views. Vince say so busy. You ain't, oh, you ain't, yeah. you ain't Wrestle, get the day you go, of WrestleMania. This is what you're gonna see. He went that way. He went this way. He went under. He went up. He went over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all you're gonna see of him. But it was still nice to be over and, and see the production. And, well, actually, it was all when we came in. It was all set up. And um, yeah, I mean, they they wasn't doing the repelling from the roof shit. And you know, like I said, all the big guys. We just kind of seen the show to see that many people. That's a plenty of silver dough. Now, did you did you watch it from the back? Did you try and Pretty sneak out back. into the crowd? Mm, or? No, no, no. We, we were nervous wrecks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can remember, imagine. We, we, yeah, we're rookies. Yeah. We're rookies. You're young guys. Yeah, and um, see when it goes in your hair. No, oh, here we go. Oh, dear God. Well, that was. Well, just put it in the ball is all we ask, I guess. Yeah, we don't want nobody to trip over that. No. I got gray hair. Can y'all see gray hair? That looks blonde to me. I don't know. It does look blonde, don't it? All right, well. Um, it ain't in my ear no more. Um, but, but, but then the first time we was actually on the show was, uh, this, what did they call that? Not the Sky Dome. Toronto, what's that called? Sky Dome? The Toronto Sky Dome Sky was Dome. WrestleMania 6. Yeah, 60-something yeah. six, six, <clears throat> sixty something thousand. It was a record indoor. Uh, for Toronto, yeah. For Toronto, for the Sky Dome, yeah. And... But it's just like when we was at the Pontiac Silver Dome and watching, I mean, it's, it's like you're watching a football field away. You know, the ring is actually small to people from where we were. Um, but when, when and in Toronto, we're in the ring, you know, and we're looking out at people. It's just different because of the roar. Like when you do a spot and wham, you end up with a, the big slam or something, and it, ah, it's right on you. In, in a big open uh, spot like that, like the... Uh, Sky Dome. It's like a delayed reaction. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it comes on like, Oof. you know, it's, it slowly comes to you. So you almost got to time your shit different, you know, because when you get that big pop, you time it before you go, which the guys need to learn that today, especially in the, in the I was going to say welterweights, the, what do they call them? The cruiser, cruiserweights. Cruiserweights. Because they're bam, 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 bam. You know, 38 great spots. Each one of them was a great spot, but you go right into another one. And never you cheat yourself. You're not you, pacing yourself. Yeah, you don't. You don't let the the crowd see you. You just do a double flip and just splash the guy. And instead of giving them the holy shit, did you see that? You pick them up and go into something else. So the eyes have to follow the action. You know, they can't even think about what they saw. So that that move was brilliant, good, uh, unbelievable. Won't even be remembered. <laughs> you know, you just wasted it. You cheated yourself because you did such a good move. And you cheated the fans. You didn't let them have it because they got to keep up. Now you're throwing them in. You go arm drag them after you just did a double flap, a <laughs> double flip. But anyway, you time your, your your match by that. You know, when you do the big bam, and you get that pop, you you let it soak in before you go into the next move. But when you get that delayed, wah, it's now, like, well, we got to wait a minute. <laughs> it's like dead air, and you never want dead air on TV. You know that. From, from this. At WrestleMania 3, did you get a chance to sample the goods? We had many of the stars here that appeared on the show, and they said there were uh, lines of cocaine waiting for them as they got ready to go uh, there's on. Some certain did, you, did you sample the goods at WrestleMania 3? I, um, as I know, far as the cocaine part? Yeah. You know, one time. It was somebody, free. Yeah, I was going to tell you. Somebody told me, I hate this shit going inside my ear. Yeah. Um, I think we need to get you over to Noel Salon, 347 Pleasant Street, That's your, downtown your Malden, place, Mass. Huh? Yeah, well, you form a place. So you know how to cut hair? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I did the books. I did the payroll. I did the bookings. Did I you did... do the hirings and the firings? No. No. Because <laughs> you might have gotten in trouble. Uh-oh. Well, I, 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 you know what? I can't, that's one thing I can't do because I love each one of those people in different ways. They were good human beings. They, all this still good human beings. Was that lightning thunder? You heard that? No, that was just him rolling in the chair. Did you fall? No. Uh, just, forget, forget, even... forget about him. Forget about him. Oh, so yes. did, did you get free blow at WrestleMania 3? I'll tell you one thing that I'm not going to tell you. All right. Um, back in the day, no, I... <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't. Okay, well, I heard. It wasn't first hand. I could, we're going lights out. We had lights out because Moody visited us that one time, remember? Yeah. 
Um, that the last pay per view. SummerSlam. Yeah, we had to do it from a hotel room. Yeah, <laughs> that was a disaster, but we made it work. The one we just did in Survivor went real well. We, we, that was fantastic. Did we do the Rumble? I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll have to check the video <laughs> archives. You know, it, sometimes it gets complicated. It's not really that complicated. I'm just stupid. But when you're taping so far ahead, <laughs> and you're like, well, this is coming up. No, it ain't. <laughs> we <did that>. We're <laughs> but, taping this episode on Survivor Series Sunday for yeah. the fans at home. But, uh, so, and we're into February. Right. So back to what you were going to say. Oh, some of the best cocaine that I never did was with Vince McMahon. Really? You, you didn't hear me, did you? No. Some of the best either. cocaine I never did. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's not a secret. Vince was known in his oh, time. Oh, yeah. He liked, he was, uh, but I said never did. <laughs> so that yeah, way, never, I didn't say it. You never said it. I heard. <laughs> Many in, the, in your seat have said the same thing. Vince, in, in his day, he liked the, the, he liked he the party, medicine. You know, you know, he was one, one, He wanted to be one of the boys. One time, and I've told this on one of the episodes previously, you know, Sean used to be a little bit, a little bit, just a little. And he had this little cocky and arrogant, you know. Oh, wow. And uh, the PTs was the name of a strip club there in San Antonio. <clears throat> and uh, I think I've told you, you might remember, um, Vince, you know, we all went to the, to the club after it was a TV taping. And this club, PT, the strip club, um, they catered to us. You know, like drinks, food, you know. The, the girls were all like, oh, they got money, let's go over there. I mean, you know, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. You ain't going to miss. <laughs> but but um, that was horrible, wasn't it? I actually got a, a girlfriend for like, I think I've seen her almost every time I went to San Antonio for... Did you? For almost. For a couple, maybe a couple years. Oh, Tara. And then she got into, she went from stripping, she went into Penthouse Magazine. Wow. And then got a bunch of them. And then she went to Hollywood and did good. And she, you know, people change. Stardom changes people. It does. Well, sometimes. Most well, of the time. You know, when Macho told me... The best line I'd ever heard, but it's not a line, but it's the truth. I found it because I was saying how Sean was changing, and I said, Man, just you know, this getting famous part is changing Sean, he's not who he used to be. No, brother, it's not changing him at all, it's making him comfortable to be who he really is. <laughs> and I, th you know, I thought about it, like, that makes sense. And then I've seen it, you know, with the years go by, I watched somebody come in, well, quiet and timid, and you know. Guy and, and then you give them a little stardom. That's why Vince, very smart, tests you when you first come in. And, and, a and lot you of people, should. Yeah, yeah. And, and you run an organization, so you yeah. know, you know. You test them when they first come in because if they start getting b bitchy, why should I lose to him? Right. Or why should, what are they going to do when they get up there to Steve Austin? It's Austin's even going to be worse. You know, what you going to do now? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so Vince, uh, so with the let's talk. You mentioned P party events in San Antonio. P P yeah, PT is the place, and and uh, all the boys were coming in, and everybody was in there. It was packed. They, that's why they catered to us because they knew when the people around town knew that we was in town, we're going you to PT. It's going to so, be a busy you know, night. Yeah, we drew for them, <laughs> and uh, so after it was a TV taping, you know, just a long ass day. It's like five hours. You got to be there taping. Um, as the guys would finish, shower up, clean up, do whatever they do. Some would grab a meal first, but, you know, PTs, they're going to feed us there. But, um, they'd come in the door. The way the door would open, it was like a, a street light, you know, thing. And you'd open the door, it was like you see the silhouette, but you could see the person enough. And like, oh, it's Taker, or it's this guy, or it's Warlord. And uh, you'd hear the whole club, like, nudging. He's like, it's Warlord, it's Warlord. Oh, it's Davy Boy. Oh, it's Kurt Henning. It's Mr. Perfect. You know, that kind of thing. Well, Sean didn't. I was already in there. I was sitting around with, I don't even remember who, Kurt Hennig and Davey Boy and Jimmy Powers. You know, all the, all the pranksters in the, in the place. I, I think, I don't remember if Owen's around. But I was always with Owen. And Owen was one of the biggest pranksters around. Oh, yeah. And uh, God bless, you know, rest his soul. And bless it. Um, but so Sean comes in, you know, after whatever he, because he lived, he was living there yeah. at the time. So I guess he went by home first, then he came over and uh, <laughs> opens the door and everybody, everything gets quiet, you know, because everybody's looking like, who is it, who is it, who is it? And he sees that. He's walking in, all the girls are even dancing, they're stopping and looking. And he's looking around and he goes, <laughs> he thinks it's just him, right? He don't know they did that for everybody to come through. Don't make them like this anymore, do they, girls? And everybody was like, ah. Oh, no, is this your Sean? <laughs> 
What? That Sean? Yeah, Sean. Okay. Yeah, don't make them like this anymore, do the girls. Yeah, it was just a, 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 a complete <laughs> letdown. The whole place was like, oh. <laughs> but Vince was there. Pat Patterson was there. Pat Patterson yeah. was there? Yeah. What was he doing? Uh, Hoping to, I don't know. Party. <laughs> but um, Vince, this is why he stopped going out with the boys, from what I understand. I was there for this. They... Um, you know, he partied. He, he, yeah. you know, he drank a little. Medicine man. He's Medicine, maybe. And, and sometimes. Like the scotch. Sometimes, I'm not going to say who, but sometimes the nasty boys would be there. And Vince's drink would get halcyons or something dropped in it. And that particular night, somebody had dropped some pills in his drink. And actually, it happened twice. I, uh, the China Club in New York was the one that ended it all. It was, it was bad. <laughs> But this time, it wasn't as bad. Uh, I think China Club was because it happened to him the second time. He said, no more partying with the boys. But he got so lit that he was letting guys do their finish on him. Like, uh, who, who did the sharpshooter? Brett, Brett did the sharpshooter on him one time. Uh, Bro Warrior Hawk, that's who I was sitting there was with Hawk. And Animal wasn't there, but Hawk was, had he somebody. He did the clothesline off the stage, Yeah, right? yeah he yeah, got yeah. a clothesline dance, and he almost didn't <laughs> flip all the way on the dance floor. It's out on the dance floor. The whole place is going crazy. Yeah, popping. Yeah. And meanwhile, Kurt was like, keep him here. You know, Kurt here, Mr. Perfect, keep him here for a little bit. And, and the, the, you know, like, me? <laughs> Why? Just keep him here. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> Whatever that, you know, is going to entail, what I got to do. Um, but it was okay because Vince didn't try to leave. He, you know, he stayed and he partied with us. But evidently, when he got back to his room, I, I guess Kurt had the room right next to him. <laughs> so he knew exactly where Vince was and he had to, from what I understand, I wasn't there to see it, he had to step over, like the back, the balcony, you know, it's like a little, it was like outward thing. And, and reach over to the other balcony and go in that way and go in the sliding glass doors uh -huh. to go in Vince's room. Vince came back that, that night and somebody had shit in his bag and oh. cut his shit up and did all this stuff. <laughs> they even shit in Vince's bag. Oh, huh? they, uh, nobody. nobody was, I've never <laughs> heard that before. Yeah, yeah that was uh, San Antonio. Wow, what a what a next morning it must have been for Vince to open up his bag. Well, he got he got he got upset because he couldn't understand because they had you know the door was locked. <laughs> Kurt, he couldn't understand how someone got in. Yeah, to my great Kurt Henning thought he was Liam Neeson and taken <laughs> jumping from balcony to balcony yeah. to shit. In you Vince's know we used to do that. I didn't because I'm you know I'm not scared of heights, but I'm just scared of my luck. I that wouldn't do that. That guy look, but yeah. Sean did it in Salt Lake City, Utah. He was doing that. And we were up he on the seventh from floor, not jumping, no, cr you know, cl climbing over. And, and you're hanging on a damn Whose little metal thing. was he trying thing. to get into? No, he was just doing it to show he could do it. He wasn't trying to get into He was nowhere. going into strangers' hotel balconies? No, he wasn't going in. Yeah, <laughs> whoever was next to us. He was just drunk and, oh. and cutting up. Having fun. Yeah, and, and I was just laughing at it. All right. But now when I look back, like, holy shit, what if it would have come out? We're going seven floor up, man. What happened at the China Club in New York? Uh, nasty. Now, I don't. I won't say nasty boys, but somebody got him. Would uh, it was ecstasy. Remember, yes. <laughs> remember the ecstasy. Stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of a love drug. <laughs> oh dear Lord! I can only imagine what direction. And they got Pat in. Patterson too. And, and I think Pat was the one. Now I wasn't there for that. I was there for the PT club, but this the China club. I love that place, man. I'm so sad it's gone. There was some. I almost got m killed there once. Oh really? <laughs> But, uh, you know, I met all this, you know, a lot. They had a VIP room mm -hmm. in Monday nights, and that's when we did uh, Madison MSG, Square Garden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the celebrities, local, you know, whoever was in town, VIP club was where to go because it was other VIPs, you know, celebrities. It, it is just hard to be out in the crowd, you know. Yeah, when, it makes you, sense. You know, because you, everybody's, you know, you're like this, like, yeah, can I get my drink and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, you ain't got to worry with that when it's all the celebrity types. So that's where I met Janet Jackson, who was my dad. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Mariah Carey, who I think threw up on herself that night. Oh, jeez. TLC, one of them died, uh, Lisa. Uh, but it was, Did you uh, have any <laughs> relations Sign, with Seinfeld the... Was Did like, you have any relations at the China Club? Huh? Did you have any relations at the China Club? Like, what do you mean? 
Well, physicality. I ain't going to get into that, though. <laughs> Janet Jackson, did you have a little Rhythm Nation or what? Well, I was disappointed more times than I was happy. <laughs> Just say it that way. Leave it at that. But, um... All right, we, we, we can leave it at that. But yeah, so what but, happened? So when so Vince the, and Pat got the ecstasy, yeah, and, what, and, and, and what the ecstasy happened? For, for y'all that have not done it, <laughs> it's probably 99% <laughs> of y'all. Ecstasy, the younger, see, I'm an old guy now. I'm like 117, you know? Well, you know our combined age now. We, we mentioned that before. 100 and something. Actually, now 101 because your, your birthday's passed. Oh, yeah, it's 102. Cause you're 41. So happy birthday, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Belated birthday. Cut it's my a hair weeks ago. All right. Where's Free haircut. Phone? We'll get Hollywood Barani down here to do it. <laughs> but so uh, Vince and uh, Pat, it's it's sort of like the oh, and, and it brought the age up because the younger generations, when they do, well now they got uh, they got different name Molly and all the different names for it, uh, but it was basically mescaline or. or MDMA. That was the good shit. <laughs> that was when it was good. You know, and then they started making it in bathtubs with all the bullshit. And you didn't know what you're getting. You might spend a hundred dollars for five of them. And ain't none of them where it's like you take all five and the music and the lights are bright and sounds good, but you know, it wasn't what the the mescaline would do. So how did Vince yeah, and Patterson... would, Wait while I'm getting oh, to I'm it. sorry. <laughs> and and you you could tell when you walked in the ecstasy bar. Because everybody's like this, oh, how are you doing? And, and the younger ones, they love the damn the raves, you know, with the glow lights and the music. Yeah, the music. Yeah. Um, but when the real shit, now nah, you're rubbing on everybody. Oh, you feel so good. Let me rub your face. It's almost like what uh, happened with Cecil the Lion and a former ring announcer outside. That, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah. So if that's yeah. bad, that's what there. Before you had times. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but so, Pat or Vince, well, I think it was Vince started rubbing <laughs> on somebody, and Pat was like, "Let's get out of here." <laughs> we, but Pat, somebody has got our Pat drink. Pat had the ecstasy too, you said. But yeah, he took it too. Who was but he, he saw rubbing? Vince like starting to do the, the. Oh hey, who was he rubbing? How you doing? Sean? Who was he rubbing? Oh, I don't know. No. I, I, I wasn't there for that one. I was at the one in PTs. I just heard about it, Vince. Was rubbing on somebody. I mean, it could have been Tatanka. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, and and Pat was like, "Come on, we got to go. They got our drink. They gimmick this. This car, you know, gimmick. They gimmick this." <laughs> so he got. So he was, he was a little friendly with Sean and Tatanka. Well, maybe Tatanka. I don't know about Sean. I oh. think everybody in the world thinks that. I don't know. I've never yeah. sit there and videoed it. Yeah. You know, I've never watched. But, um, well, I I, I think. I think they're just close. I don't know how very, close. Very close. Yeah. Very close. I don't know if they enter each other, if that's what you're getting at, but, but um, I know they're pretty close. Very close. Boy toy. All right. Well, he lived the gimmick. But, but that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. Vince stopped going out with the boys because, you know, After I guess they figured out they both. And I guess they got back to the room and they were like, yeah, they what, got us. I wonder what happened. Two beers didn't do that. I wonder what happened when they got back to the room. <laughs> uh, the reason they were good friends for them, that was second highest to that trouble. Remember when they got in well, trouble with the Well, you want to hear thing. a story? Shit. Should what? we say this story? No, so, yeah, you you say it. If what? it's that bad, you say it. You know what? I'll see if you've ever heard of this one. And this, this was from one of our Tony episodes. But, dot, 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 yeah. I believe the match was... God, who, I don't remember the match, but it was a house show in that's the... Too much. You got to... A little much, yeah. And no, that's not much, but straight across. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, and it, it was Patterson, maybe against Pedro Morales. Oh, this is way back. Yeah. And the referee, whoever the referee was, he was in charge of giving the finishes that night. Tony was booked on the show, and he overheard it. And um, <laughs> for some reason, they, they were confused about something, and they needed to reach out to Vince. So the referee said, okay, he gave me his number to reach him in case of an to reach Vince in case of an emergency. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the number happened to be Patterson's home. And Patterson snapped. He said, fuck, he's with Louie again. Yeah, Vince? Yeah. About, about Vince? He, Vince was the number to Louis, reach. Louie was his. Yes. Vince was at Patterson's home with Louie while oh, Patterson damn. was working the house show. So they had a trio going on. I don't know, but 
Yeah, I called. I called. Um, you know, Pat and Louie were. Everybody knows. Oh yeah, yeah. They were in they a relationship were an forever, a long yeah. time. They were almost faithful to each other. But, almost, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they. I called from uh, Europe. I think I've told this on a previous episode. Y'all got to start watching, man, because some catch stories, up in the archives yeah, if you've missed any. Yeah, so some stories come out that shouldn't be coming out, but that happens a lot. That's why there's a lot of extra kids in the world. But anyway, um, talking about things coming out that shouldn't, that wasn't meant to be. But um, um, by the way, are you for or against abortion? Against. You're against abortion? Oh, good for you. That's Unless it's a situation where a right, woman is violated, yes. attacked, right. molested. Or it's going to kill If the, the child is going to be disabled or challenged or something like that, then I think it's justifiable. But if it's just a slip and you say, oh, okay. See, to me... Responsibility. And hopefully, I don't get this doesn't come out too wrong, and the the females that watch turn heel on me. But I don't <laughs> think it's a, it's an issue of women's right. I think it's an issue of human rights. You know what moral, I mean? Moral, moral, yeah. I'm Catholic, so I mean it just it kind of is what it is. It's a personal opinion to those that are for it. I I re, I respect your opinion. And you know, I always think I don't know what the hell that has to do with. It Patterson it, and Louie. But, pretty much nothing, but oh, we'll, right. get, we'll get back to them. All right. But, you know, when I was 16 years old, um, my girl at the time, she was like, I think she was a year younger than me. Um, her name was Jill Kirby, but don't, I don't want to say that on TV. No, we won't. Um, but she, <laughs> but she, <laughs> um, we, we thought she was pregnant once. And I'm 16, and, you know, I'm just getting. That's tough. Yeah, and I'm thinking this is going to change everything. And you know, I I never really ever like use condoms because yeah, they don't feel the them. same. They don't. It just don't feel the same. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, and a little extra and money. I, and know. I always figure, you know, I didn't find out until later in life that there's seepage, you know, and that little bit of seepage. Because when you blast the whole thing, it's a whole bunch of stuff. You don't think that even seepage, like a little drop. Yep. There's a thousand sperm. Why are we talking? That's why Annie always felt safe. She never well, she had to put, worry but, about. But she, but she put that cellophane over the saran wrap. Saran yeah. is that what it's called? And then when she would uh, into somebody's butthole, she didn't have to taste the shit because she had. Man, this is getting X-rated and ugly. So back to what I was saying. I, I always, we thought me and her. You know, I think she was a year younger, and I was 16, so she was real young. Um, and that, that can't be statutory rape if you're <laughs> you're underage too, can if it? If you're both underage, I don't think so. No. Yeah. But so um, we thought. I don't know why we thought. I think she was starting to pooch or something, and she didn't have a period. And I guess when girls miss a month or something, I don't know how it works. I've never been a girl yet. But um, it, it, we thought, what if what if you are? What do we do? What do we do? We started considering abortion. Yeah, you know, we it's actually a tough decision. It. I mean, you're looking at two teenage kids. That's tough. Yeah, and you know, we, we've but got to me, whole I would life. say, you know what? And, Adoption. And, we, and but, you know, to me, if you if you want to have a kid, and then one day you come up pregnant, yeah, hey. But if you're just fucking, if you're just having sex, you know, to enjoy sex because it's kind of good, according to your partner. You know, sometimes I, I think I've had bad sex maybe twice. No, oh, all right. I mean, because you can take any lame-ass starfish. You know what the starfish fuck is when they just lay there like a starfish? <laughs> you got the five points. Um, starfish, you, you, it's up to you as a guy. You got to yank them legs around. You got, man, this has turned into an X-rated show. But so I, I'm, I'm always, I remember how I felt at 16, thinking abortion because the kid was not intent, intended. So it's like, don't bring a kid in the world. We ain't go, I'm 16, she's 15. I'm working at a bowling alley. She's not working at all. How are we going to feed it? You know, of course the parents will probably take care of her. They might say, get the hell out of here. Mine wouldn't because, you know, they were different than most people. But, you know, hers, you know, they were up up there. You know, they, uh, what do you call it, financially, they were, they were up there. Upper class? Yes. And so they probably would have. But that wasn't, that wasn't what we wanted. We wanted our life. You know, you, you, once you have a when kid, you from what I understand. When you lose your youth, th that changes your life. Yeah. It really does. Well, Sean told me that. He goes, when you, when you care about something more than you care about, it might have been Al Snow. I think Al said that. Because I asked Al. Al was the most faithful guy on the road. He was another one. That really? Never, yes. And, um, you know, he saw me always with all these different girls every night. And he would go out and he would 
you know, cut up and, and mingle and stuff. Yeah. And, and the girls liked that. I mean, they were always, he would always have a pretty girl talking to him at his table. But he'd always, we, we roomed together, so he'd always come back by himself, you know. And I asked him one time, we made a road trip, I'm like, how can you not mess with these beautiful girls? And because he had always said to me, one day when you're ready, you'll settle down. Uh, and I said, but what were you? But how do you stay faithful? You see none of the other guys are. How do you stay faithful like this? And he goes, when you care more about your, somebody else than you care about yourself, it changes you. And You want to hear a story? Yeah, I'm about to, ain't I? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It was a TNA girl. This was Cauliflower Alley Club over 10 TNA, years ago okay. now. The, the night, not the night TNA club. Impact. Oh, okay. And um, you ain't gonna tell me. Followed who, me back. Let you tell me who later, because I yeah. know a bunch of them. Because <laughs> it was it. We, it was we spent the night at the Cauliflower Alley Club. There's a TGI Fridays, and they kind of have an area set aside in the casino for, for the wrestling people when they're in town. Right, right. They can have a little privacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and superstar Billy Graham was there trying to hustle them for the week. And <laughs> what do you mean by that, though? He's always hustling. You know, <laughs> what, him. I mean, I love Billy. He should man. have died about fifteen times. <laughs> but he's, I don't know. He how cheated many, life. Or I don't he know how many death. liver transplants he's had. But he whatever. Had the, a few of those. Billy and I mean, actually, I had a little heat. Still have a little heat with Billy. Well, but you that's got a some more now. Story for a different time. <laughs> but no, Billy. No, no, no. Well, Billy. Yeah, Billy was trying to. Uh, By the time I'm done here, I won't need Erica. Right. Billy was. Very flirtatious with, I don't know if... You're talking it, about superstar. Yeah, I don't know if it was transgender or not, but uh -oh. they wound up being, it, later in the, the year, they wound up being stranded in Boston because of Billy, and not, <laughs> not expecting it, they had to stay, Cold as hell she had to winter. stay at John Cena Senior's house. Oh, for real? Because there was nowhere else for her to go. But that, that's for the story for the book. But anyway, so this, and I'm talking... I don't think I am much of a, uh, a, a, a magnet playboy. for women. Exactly. I'm not much of a playboy. But you know what? At the end of the night, we were all... If you would get that... So you got another one shooting a transfer leg. No, it's something down here. This looks like a big-ass transfer crawled oh, up here. Here we made go. Here we go. All right. Oh, you got it. Make, all right. Thank you. I don't know if y'all can see that, but... Thank you. Thank yes, you. they had one with, uh, hanging out his nose about this long. So anyway, no, we all left as a group probably 10, 12 of us, all going up the elevator. Yeah. So it was it, it, by the... The time we were getting towards the top, it was just me and this woman. And we were talking, 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 blah, 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 blah. Oh, please. No, this, I'm, I'm talking. This was quality. Oh, okay. So she's holding the door open, talking to the elevator, blah, blah, blah. So it was nice to talk to you. You know, good night. Then she walks out, and the elevator door closes. So I'm like, whew. So I, you know, I so we still keep talking, and I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what just happened? <laughs> what the hell just so happened? So we're going down the hall. Con continuing to go towards my room, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew well, where this was that? going. <laughs> I knew where this was going. And I got two doors away, and I said, you know what? This could have been the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> but at that point, back in Boston was the lovely, blue-eyed, blonde-haired Linda Marotti. Oh, okay. And two doors away, I said, it was really nice to talk to you. Maybe we can have you up for a show sometime. i got to pack and get ready for oh, my you, flight. Oh, you put that security blanket, like, maybe later. Insurance plan, as I call and, it. But, and you know what, though? You want to know why I know I made the right decision? <coughs> That's the insurance Because thing. about a half an hour later. Cause this oh, was you made the, the right decision. It was without. probably 5, 5.30 in Vegas. So it was, you know, morning back here. Right. Linda and the kids called. Oh, While really? they were having breakfast. So imagine how bad I would have felt. She didn't normally do that? Huh? She didn't normally call you like early like that? You're Linda, talking about Linda. Well, it was just the time difference because right, I was right, getting ready yeah. to go oh, to okay. bed so and they, was she was getting ready, you know, they were yeah, having yeah, breakfast yeah. at school, yeah, yeah. get the kid ready for school. And how bad would I have felt as a person? If, if you were laying there. If I was banging some wrestling woman. While, I'm going to make you feel better. While, go her ahead. And, while her and the kids were calling me on the phone to say good night. You I'm know gonna, what I mean? I'm going to make you feel better about Thank that. Thank you. What do we got? It's more than one time I've been in the room when, with, with a tag team partner mm -hmm. or even a friend sometimes because this happened more than once. Um, a lot of the guys have to call home that night and say good night, you know, after the show. I guess, you know, that's what married people do. I, I, you know, I ain't never been married. I was once for four days. 
<laughs> but I got it annulled though. Good. But so I've never been married. But um, the married people, I guess you you call even boyfriend and girlfriend. I used to call Ray Lim once in a while. Like if we had ten, I was trying to save money back then to party with. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to get high, not talk yeah. on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I'd call her and check in. How yeah. are you safe? Are you safe? Yeah, everything's good. But married people or closer people would. Um, Every night, you're supposed to call home. Yeah. And uh, some of the guys would sometimes, we were rooming together. And I'm thinking of one time in, in, in particular, but I don't want to say who it was. It was a tag team partner. I'll yeah. just give you all that. All right. Um, I can almost go as far as saying the f first name because I had a couple of them. Yeah. So it was a Sean, but I'm not saying what Sean. Right. Um, Wait a minute, one was single. I can't tell the story now. You can figure it out. <laughs> it it might have been somebody else, like the barbarian yeah, story. It yeah. might have been it somebody else. It could have been else. someone else. Um, but the, Potentially. Called home and, and just say goodnight while they're pumping, while they're on top pumping away. Hey, honey, I love you. I'm, going, I'm sleepy. I'm going to bed. While now, the rat me being was single, in the room. I can't, you know, relate to that because cause I'm thinking that's dirty as shit. You called your wife while you're fucking another girl and tell her you love he her? He was actually in her? On top, pumping away, bro. I mean, she would have asked, what's that I hear dueling bed, bed, bed springs in the background? What's that about? You know, she had been, he'd have had to come up with an answer. But, now, uh, I have to ask you this. Was he drunk but, uh, but or high? Also, or? No. That's, that's pushing the limits a little bit to call while the rat is actually in the room. I was Not only rat, in the, the room. The rats usually find at arenas. That's why they call them arena rats. Yeah. This was found at a strip club. Oh, okay. So this was a more quality piece. Well, yeah. 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 Wasn't those garbage rats? You know, they were Wasn't some... those garbage arena rats? This was a quality one. Some of them rats spiffied up when they come down to... Oh, you they didn't... sure would. Yeah. The, the, just the aroma of the perfume. Uh, oh, my God. Topeka Patty was the worst. Um, you know, she was a sweetheart girl. Yeah. Um, she was a Bozak, though. When Sean... Like, no, I was probably still... I forgot. I was going to say this is before he's married, but he's got family now, so you, you don't want to do that. Well, that's all right. Everybody had a life before they were married. Right, but I don't want to tell it because of the wife and kids now. So I'll, I was just, just finish up on what we was at. There was more than once. I actually seen girls call their, while they're getting hammered, call home and say, I'll be home in a little while. Yeah, I got stuck in traffic, yada, yada, yada. I mean, and I love you. That's what got me the most. They're getting fucked, and they're saying to the person at home, I love you. <laughs> what the fuck? Judy Martin. Mm -hmm. Who? Judy Martin. What'd she do? No, was, she, was that who you're talking about? No. No, all right. All right. No, it was a dancer. It was a dancer? <laughs> yeah. Exotic. A WWF dancer? What are you talking about? You, you lost me there. You. Oh, you're talking about women that were with the wrestlers would yeah. call their home. Yeah. Talk, I see what the you're saying. The women would okay. call sometimes, too. I mean, not only did the guys do that. So when this former tag team partner of yours was laying it in. I feel so much better about myself that at least I'm not that bad. So that's why I was telling you so you don't feel bad about thinking about it that night. Temptation. I'll tell you this. To be, I'll be very honest. It was very tempted. But you know what? It's almost like what Al said to you. I cared much more about her. Right. I cared much more about those kids in that family structure than I did getting off. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, because the next morning, like a couple times in Africa, they didn't tell me ahead of time they wanted money to, to come. The women? Yeah. So the next day when I'm leaving, oh, uh, they I'm wanted like, to pay them. Yeah, I'm like, well, you didn't tell me that. I thought we hooked up. <laughs> 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 oh, you have to pay. And I'm like, you had that different money, like African money. Um, it would be a 500 on it. It's only like a few dollars, you know, American. But they wanted it. Yeah. But, but no, I handed her a 500 because I, I wouldn't. I was, you thought it was a lot. I, I got to yeah. hurry up and catch the bus. What was funny about this one I'm thinking about yeah, right. was that uh, the bus is out there waiting. They're blowing the horn. And the guys are coming knocking on the door. And I open the door. They see the girl over there. Um, and they're laughing. They run back out. He's, he's getting dressed. And uh, well, I gave her the 500. I forgot what the money's called in Africa. Y'all, y'all probably know. Uh, but anyway, didn't but, amount to much. But I didn't know. I was hung over. I thought five, 500 should be good. <laughs> and she goes, "That's all you think I was worth?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You take it. We'll give it back then. You don't want it." And I left. 
And then Jake's coming out, and I'm sweating, I'm hurrying, and he's laughing. He's like, what, what's going on, brother? I'm like, look in the door. And he went in there, and Jake didn't make the bus. <laughs> oh, no. Jake went in and violated the woman with Damien or was with his own snake? I don't know. I don't think he had know. Damien with him. I didn't see the bag. I don't remember. So but Jake yeah, went and finished? Yeah, he, he had to come way later. He didn't make the bus. He got the sloppy seconds. <laughs> No, that's all but right. he didn't even bother him. He didn't care. No, that's all right. That's all, well, when you have no taste and no class, I guess I'm I got class. You do. Oh, yes. That's, in high that's well. That's what Annie used to say. Remember? I got class. I got my class, baby. I'm not like those other whores. Can we take a flow, Max? Uh, Can we, well, you know what? We're just getting ready to wrap up. So, wrestling fans, this was a, so a very, hair. very short episode about wrestling, about 1989. No, it was probably the right thing. We <laughs> talked about marriage. We talked about life on the road. Next week, we're going to talk WrestleMania 5, a big one, hey, from Atlantic hair. City, New we'll Jersey. He's going to take the flow, Max, break for all our friends. Here in the chat, thank you for joining us. Remember, the Super Chat is open. Send us a tip of any size. We appreciate it. And go to it Paramount. It keeps the light on. He's, he says it wrong again. What is pa it? Patreon.com Patreon. backslash Boston Wrestling for the price of a Starbucks coffee. Get early <laughs> ad-free access to all of these great talk shows, plus our studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep the wrestling legends working on ebay all of this great merchandise is for sale just about everything except for me and marty so check it out and some great things are happening our talk talk show series continue each and every week and for marty Janetti, i'm dan marati until we speak again we ask you to be well stay healthy and join us next week good night good night yeah yeah fans we warned you this day would come unfortunately we're running out of original episodes of wrestling inside his potty with Marty each and every thursday night at 10 p.m but we're starting up that indiegogo you can help the cause you can help Marty's show continue each and every week nobody does it like Marty. we had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash november 13th at memorial hall here in melrose we want to have the good times keep on rolling but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. At Survivor Series, it was champion versus champion as WWE champion Drew McIntyre battled Universal champion Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman. Get this 11 by 14 poster autographed by all three men. Limited edition number 42 of only 50 with authentication hologram on the back of the poster itself. Comes with a mystery autographed 8x10 photo and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Hi, wrestling fans. We're rolling through winter time, and I'm being recorded right well, yeah, now. Yeah, we're recording us recording stuff. We're recording <laughs> us recording stuff. Well, we're coming This soon. is our show. When is this show? In? This is going to run this Thursday. This is Thursday night, y'all. Even uh, though you're seeing it Friday. He's recording <laughs> you as you watch us. That's yeah. good. Yeah, we'll record a camera, Marty, recording a camera. A, you're a character and a half. You've Marty, changed, let me tell bro. You. We've recorded some interesting content already. We have some happy birthdays we got to send out. Yeah, who we got? On February 24th, the, the co-owner of Boston Wrestling Sports, the MWF, Mr. Neil Manolian, uh, has joined me hitting the big 4-0. Unbelievable. 4-0. We were two crazy Are we kids. still rolling on here, right? Huh? Look, man, I'm shaking like a dang... I don't know what you're shaking. But I don't know, man. It's chilly in your car. Quincy used to say, shake the weasel. Yeah, I got hurt. But he's joined the 4-0 club, so happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, brother. We send out a happy birthday to the other junior ambassador of uh, Boston Wrestling, Mr. Brandon J., the brother of the... The individual that got the PlayStation, he is, my gosh, I don't even want to say how old he is. Or I, might, I might water up. Why? Because when he came in my world, he was just a little four-year-old. And up. now he's, my God, he's driving a truck. He's legally drink. Oh, yeah, 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 so he's yeah. He's getting up there. 20, 
Oh my God! I don't even, I don't even want to say brother. it. Twenty three. Oh my God, Brandon! Ain't that crazy? You're killing me. You're killing That's crazy, me. Crazy man. Twenty. You know, swaggy. How and can half. I have? You know, how could I have been a a quasi uh, pretend grandfather at thirty seven? Yeah, well, he got started young is I'm the answer to that. You and not me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that, though? My guy was 37 no, crazy, when he had man. his kid. Anyway. You and know, we Swaggy, all... Swaggy's two and a half now. Really? Yeah. Is that him texting you? No, probably. No, <laughs> He's right. always, it must be I tough to, to text with Paul. I got to call my brother. Uh, when we get through with this one, uh, have me call Gino. All right, I'll remind I, you. Because Swaggy, I forgot to feed his Oh, does he go and visit? Does Gino visit well, no, the go. He'll go. He will go over there. I forgot to put food in the, um, you know, like. Well, a, he's got to eat. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know that's he, that's he, what Annie do used right to say. One day, but I don't want to go two days without eating. Annie used to say that too. Anyway. Annie and she ate. <laughs> <laughs> and we also want to send one more happy birthday shout out to a land down under in Auckland, New Zealand. Our good friend Auckland. Radley Fenner. It's unbelievable the lack of Corona they've had down in New Zealand. They've that, only had that year. Won't they got things down there at Corona Grove now? Nah. <laughs> Twenty six deaths. That's it. The whole time? You know, they got black voodoo down there. They've got what? They've got magic, black magic, voodoo. Black magic? Voodoo. Why is that? Voodoo. I, I don't know why. Well, we'll have to They ask. still believe in, in, you know, this girl one time uh, we was in a club in Sydney, yeah. Australia. Well, I'm she, talking New Zealand now. Yeah, I know. It's right, right, yeah, right yeah. there. Well, all right. And, and um, but she, you know, she was a New Zealander, uh, Aborigine. You know, she was still part of the, like, tribe. And, mm -hmm. and she, uh, she put a necklace around me. And, and and I thought it was kind of cool, you know. That's cool. I got you know an Australia, well, New Zealand uh, thing. And then she goes, you know, this is blessed with a curse. What? <laughs> blessed with a curse? What the hell? And she goes, yes. Yeah, if you don't do me right, something bad will happen to you. Wow. And we're like, can that's I take this motherfucker off? That's some serious <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can, what's going to happen if I take it off? Anything going to happen? You don't want to take it off. I ended up having, she forced me to have sex. She was beautiful, too. And you wouldn't believe an Aborigine or a tribal lady it would be so beautiful. You would think they'd look like, you know, with a bone in her nose and hair sticking up. And Tony, in New don't, Zealand, Tony, really? don't you call me a racist for that. <laughs> Damn it. I'm telling you how that. You know that. You've been down there. But, um. Oh, she was beautiful. So, but I had to go ahead and, and you know do that. When better. were you allowed to take this cursed necklace off? I went ahead after a couple of showers. I went ahead and said, "Damn, man," because it was like I don't know what and it your was. Your luck has gone downhill ever since. <laughs> she meant business with this cursed necklace. She, all the Australian people believed in it. Really? Yeah, they were like Marty, because <laughs> well, she was a real voodoo girl. My she friend in New Zealand has invited me down so many times before. The coronavirus and whatnot. And I'd like to go. I'm yeah, telling you, man. Be an they put them beads I don't want to be corona, cursed. Corona ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> I've got enough bad luck. Maybe that's why they've had so much luck down there. With that, only 26 deaths, yeah, every day they curse the right? virus. You know China did that shit on purpose. Well, I don't know about well, that. We don't get into all We do want to send Radley a very happy birthday. He's happy one of birthday, our great brother. fans. He comes from a great place. Uh, then the home of our good friend Bushwhacker Butch, who is yeah. going to be making a... Did he, he's going to... Well, I'll tell you this. He was supposed to come back this spring. For real? But Luke texted oh, man, I love me... Him. Luke's texted me the other day that it's Let's postponed Let's call Luke in now. a little bit. You wanna, <laughs> Let's do it online. I mean, you want to surprise what do, Luke? What do you call this? Um, so that's too bad. The bushwhacker, is Butch has only been back in the country one time yeah. since he moved when yeah. he went into the Hall of Fame. I don't know if you... Oh, he's this? in the Hall of Fame too? Damn it. Well, he deserves to be, though. He does. Man, he's got like a 50-year career. And he was going to... They were going to come Remember in... Remember Sheepers? Oh, yeah. That's what I thought was so crazy, because when I was a young... When I first started watch when I was a kid, you know, they were these ultra-violent, bloody... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Warriors. Yeah. Then they came to WWF as this comedy routine, and you know, I was surprised. Well, you know, let me tell you about their first day in there. All right. Um, the TV tapings usually when you start, you know, you don't start at house shows because they want to just you know show you a few times. Yeah, to get you over. Right. And so they come in, and you know, I, I knew, I've known them from magazines only, you know, the sheep herders, but they come in as bushwhackers. We're like, what? Bushwhackers? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, I have respect for them because veterans, you know, yeah. oh, you yeah. always respect your veterans. And um, oh, uh, uh, Luke, Luke, uh, we're, at the, we're at the cafeteria or, you know, they, they, what do they call it, catering. 
and you get food, you oh man, you just load up. But you better load up because you're not eating till you. That's like around two o'clock. It's over around three ish, you know, or when everything's gone. You ain't eating again until about eleven that night, so you better load up. <laughs> but so they're going through and they're getting stuff. And Luke, now remember, he's fresh in the territory. I only knew him from magazines. A lot of the other guys didn't, you know, had no clue, you know, who the bushwhacker guys. And they didn't just something new better than me. Of course, the veterans knew. But oh, Luke, he's over there. Goes, oh, oh. Oh, oh, and he spit out his, his um, <laughs> right on, and it was on purpose, right into the, the food, but it's like his, uh, what do you call it, a little partial, like I'm yeah, supposed yeah, to have. Yeah. I left it at home. I went through all that fuck, like, all that trouble and left the son of a bitch at home. <laughs> now I got a paper tooth again. But oh yeah, it, it came out and it went into the soup. That was our introduction to them. <laughs> now that he was spit Luke. It, Luke, yeah, he spit his tooth out in the damn catering food. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great introduction, I guess, but it's going to be Never great when the bushwhackers <laughs> are back here in the United States. Butch is going to stay for a couple of months. We need Ho to call Luke. Well, hopefully we can. I want to have them here in studio together because how many t opportunities? Oh, God, they're great. Man. How many opportunities are we going to have to he, get they're Butch? They're going to you lick know? you. What's that? They're going to lick you. They're not going to lick you. Yeah, I no. bet you know. Rich I am not going to be licked. <laughs> I will not be. I refuse to. All that, right, that ain't what Ann said. Uh, the, she does a different kind of licking. Yeah, uh, it's finger licking good, but what's, just shave. not on the finger. She she has she like now I wouldn't know because I'm not I'm not that way. I don't like girls putting their tongue in my you know my yeah. butt. Um, You've never had she, your ass eaten. No, nah, I don't need no. it. It, it, it. It's it's I don't even like having to wipe my ass. Oh, <laughs> but, that's um, just kind of out of necessity, I guess. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. the only reason I do it. But um, she makes them like. Greg Hammer, or oh, is he still married? Did she die? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to say nothing then. Oh, some of the other guys. Beefcake, oh, he's married for sure. Sorry, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Missy, oh, you had Beefer here? Yeah. How'd he do? <laughs> That's enough. I, <laughs> say, no, him, say no more. <laughs> I'd, have him, I'd, I'd have him back under the right circumstances for sure. Yeah, it will be for some great circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say she makes him shave the hair, like if she's going to lick her butt. Annie? Uh, oh, yeah, she yeah, she actually, I'm, I'm not going to say. Would Annie do the shaving? Uh, that I don't know. I, and I'm not going to say Greg Valentine's name. Yeah. But she would have him shave his, you know, shave his, the hair because she didn't like the hair in her mouth. She wanted a smooth ass. Yeah, she eat. wanted yeah. clean shit. <laughs> <laughs> so when the boys came to Boston, they'd have to be, they'd have to groom before Annie would if go they to were town. Be, yeah, she was particular about Really? That. Well, that's what I heard. I've never. Now, I like Anne as a friend. This is a woman that stuck her tongue in men's asses, but she was like that, that particular that they had to be nice and, and no, smooth. Yeah, for look, Annie. I'm gonna stick my tongue in a pile of shit, but don't have hair around it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know, cause fans in the, in the booth right now. I, Man, I'm, I'm, don't even I get look. me started about glance, but we have our new. <laughs> Intern here at oh, the studio, yeah. Dave, helping out. He's a good man. We appreciate him coming down for this insanity. He knows <laughs> next to nothing about professional wrestling, and now he's hearing about Andy the Well, you're going to learn a lot then, and, brother. <laughs> and not only about Andy's special skill, but apparently she likes the men groomed down there. So. Yeah, man, she's a stylist. <laughs> now, with, did you ever have to help Sean prepare for his evenings with think, Andy? I don't know if Sean ever got with it. Um, oh, no, it's not what she says. Unless she had some money to give him or something, or cocaine. Back in the day, we did cocaine. Yeah, well. We don't do that that much. Oh, anymore. no, never. Yeah, no, well, not that much. No, not at all. I better say not at all. My brother kicked my ass. <laughs> um, look, and I'm not doing it now, but it's, it's cold in here. Every time you rub your nose, people say in the chat that that's what you're doing. Cocaine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's I saw, oh, I, I watched one, and I was just like doing this. I'm like, damn, man, stop. The, I couldn't even hardly wash my own damn thing. The fans was, don't realize how cold it is it's in this room. It's chilly in here. It's not usually this chilly. Because we have to keep it cold because if those cameras go for six figures. So if those I'm going to pawn one of them. What's that now? I'm going to pawn one of them. Well, and we can buy a little heater then. It will be I, nice I, and warm. You should have told me. I, I got this little space heater. Or Annie might be able to, to warm. Why don't you call her? No, that's all right. I'll do it right now. But you never had to help Sean prepare for Annie. <laughs> no, I've never groomed Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you learn something new every week on this episode, uh, fans. Thursday nights at 10, at least it's after 10 o'clock, to start talking about ass eating. But uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm going to post this on my Facebook. Okay. Um, he was just having us talk about, and, and we called her, excuse my <laughs> language, we called her ass-eating Annie, because she used to like to lick, 
you say it, I can't do it. Well, she was almost like a bushwhacker. <laughs> Only instead of the head, <laughs> yeah, it was she BS. was. Look, we're, we're video. This is going on our show. When's our, when is this going? Thursday show? nights at ten. This one right every here week. The, this this one, one. This this, this one. episode will air this Thursday. This Thursday we're talking about eating ass. Cause she, what the thing was like. But you know I, my favorite line with her though. Is what, what she'd what say, "I'm not like those other whores, baby. <laughs> when Vince comes to town, he'll buy me a drink." <laughs> I don't let those guys fuck me, baby. She, no, she, she just eats their ass. Yeah, you know, she. But she's, she like I'm not gonna say Greg Valentine's name because no, like, I think he's you know he's still with somebody. <laughs> but um, she used to make. The only time him, she'd smile. Yeah. Oh, the only time Greg would smile was his visits with Annie. Yeah, and, and and but she would make them shave the hair away from their butthole. And I, I just thought, like, you're sticking your tongue in shit, but you don't want hair around it. <laughs> what the? Yeah. I tell you. Well, I guess everybody's got their own uh, particular <laughs> likes and dislikes, and now we know a little bit more about uh, one of the, the crowd favorites. Crowd favorites. When we have the premieres <laughs> on Thursday night at 10, they love us. Uh, stories and imitations of poor. You think Annie. they love hearing about ass? They eating? do. They. I don't know. No, if you they, do. <laughs> I don't know if it's the ass eating that they like hearing about, but they enjoy hearing the tales of Annie. They want Annie Why in the studio. Why don't you bring her on for a special? Thing? Could you? I mean, how, how, that interview. She would, might even do it on 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 camera. Not to me though. Yes, she. I yes, would you. never shave it. No, I gotta see her face when she licks it. I would never. People have. You know what was funny? She Someone, might strap one on and try. Stick you. One of she, the, she wanted to do that to, a, I think it was Tito, but I'm not sure Tito, uh, Santana. She did? She wanted to uh, put, put a, a strap on? Yeah, oh. I'm not sure it was Tito. Oh, no. <laughs> I love Tito, <laughs> man. He's the best. Uh, and so it probably wasn't him because he he's one of the few guys that didn't mess around. I've heard <clears> that. He <throat> was yeah. very loyal yes. to his wife. And him, I mean, Owen Hart never messed around. Macho never messed around. Well, well he, why just, would he? And he that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was only like four or five guys, and I respect the hell out of that. I mean, because to me, you know, a marriage is, you know, God brought that together. Um, well, it was like that story that aired on one of the most recent episodes I told you about at uh, the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion in Vegas when one of the, she must have had a lot to drink to chase uh, me down the hall, uh, but one of the girls that was with TNA at the time followed Sasha me back Banks. to my... She wasn't in TNA. Oh, no, I was just followed trying, me back I was to, to my hotel you. room. I tried to trip him up. He likes Sasha. I do. She's very nice. She was with us here in Boston wrestling before, uh, going on to much higher paying she ventures in the, WWE. She started the Daytona 500 a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. She's well, doing what time this show is a couple weeks ago. All right. Well, no, not really. It's Thursday night. It's still February. It's still chilly. Here in Boston, at least. It's, it's ice. I'll, I'll send y'all some pictures of that. All too. right. Well, we're looking forward it's to it. It's snow cap. All right. One thing we need to he catch fell, up. He fell on the ice. He busted his ass. I told the fans about you it told already. It? I did. I, <laughs> there was an ice storm or there was ice of some kind that I didn't know about here at the studio. I locked the door. <laughs> I turned around. How did you not know about I looked it? like Joe Pesci <laughs> and Daniel Stern in Home Alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. All of a sudden, I was in the air. I landed on my neck and my head. <laughs> And somehow this leg was bent, bent and it's killing me right Underneath, now. Underneath, yeah. My, my, the bottom part of my right leg went back so far I could feel my heel on my oh, ass cheek. Man, that hurts. So it was, it was a Home Alone like bump, I call it. Uh, uh, it was. I'm, I'm hurting him as bad a shape as you. If we could have video that, we could have made a dollar. You know, it would have been funny to see, just like that cat. Video it wasn't funny at the time, about. but you know, later you can laugh After at it. After the fact. Yeah. And I remember my ride. I was screaming, "Help me! Help me!" And he goes, it's all oh, ice. Oh, I would have videoed that. <laughs> my sandals, my sandals were all over the sidewalk. Hey, let me ask my you something. My cane made it to Main Street. What's that? And actually, everybody, control room, everybody, I, I always have to ask this once what in a while. What do we got? And uh, y'all at home, too. If you woke up and you had a dick in your ass and a dick in your mouth. You've asked me this one Which, which one would you I, take out first? I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that. The, the I, did, I asked Al Snow one time, he got mad, he goes, damn it, there's no right way to answer. The, the <laughs> thought of the anal violation is just a little too much for me, but then again, the other office doesn't sound like yeah, much see, fun either. That's but, why, which one you could take out first? <laughs> oh, let's get to the main topic, main yeah, well, point of contention yeah, what is of the, the show. Topic? Well, because uh, it, it's been a while since... By the way, we're going to be on TV later selling cards. Well, the, it, those shows will have already passed by the time they, this oh. is, but... Why oh, so not? I'm you're, wasting time. You're wasting time, Ronnie. Right. Right. <laughs> um, 
as Marty tries to solicit his goods here on the show, we wanted to try now, to cover hold on, let me cover that some up. of the brothers that we've lost since the last time you were here. Yeah, I think man. it's very appropriate. Well, I lost two close friends, that, but they're not, nobody would know them wrestling. Well, wrestling people are friends in real life. Real life. Well, you can send a shout out if Jeff, you like. Jeff Ullman, love you, brother. Don Jackson, love you, brother. And hopefully they're in heaven. You know what's crazy? What's, what's Jeff was in good shape, good health. Rachel, his, his girlfriend, well, one of his girlfriends, or his, you know, I say it, Rachel, sorry. I'm just going to call you a girlfriend. Um, she texted me, and, and the, the daughter, Adrian, Adrian, um, age, we call her age, she texted me, and I, they, they had done that before. Well, now, Adriana, the, 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 it was not his daughter, but he kind of adopted her, um, you know, when she was seven, and, you know, she's like 23 or something now. Um, she texted me once before, and, and it was big, like a surprise birthday party, and I thought that was cool. You know, because they live in Arizona. I, you know, Jeff and I were roommates for a while out in Arizona. Then I went to Vegas, and then I moved back, back to Georgia. <laughs> no, I'm actually in Alabama. Look, what did I tell y'all who's going to win the national championship? What did I told y'all? Alabama. Well, I have to see what Matt Daddy thought about that in his salmon pants. Yeah. <laughs> But I did call it, didn't I? You did. You yeah, called it. Yep, Alabama. And, and again, go ahead and be prepared for next year. All right. Win it. Well, I, I guarantee it. Sorry I will about put five fish fillets on it. Very sorry to hear about the loss of your friend. Yeah. So um, um, she she called Adrian, texted me again, and I figured another surprise thing, you know. So so the surprise parties cost you, man, because you got to get in the flight. <laughs> you got to. You know, you spend a little money to surprise somebody. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Hey, surprise is your wallet. <laughs> your wallet's like, nah, come on, man. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I almost was going to ignore it because I, I didn't want to say, oh, no, nah, nah, I can't afford it again. But then Rachel hit me up, and I thought, uh-oh. Now, they both, that Rachel's the girlfriend, you know, the mother of, of Adriana. And, um, and again, I thought, uh, uh-oh, something's not right. And I kept thinking, when I called her, I kept thinking she was going to say he was in a bad car wreck in the hospital. And um, He was a younger man? He was my age, 60. 60 That's what, young. I don't know how old I am. 60, I think. One. That's how one. do you know? Happy belated birthday. Thank you, brother. But uh, 60, or yeah, he was good, good shape. So I called her, and I'm like, hey, what's up? She goes, I guess you know. And I'm like, and I'm still thinking car wreck. Because Jeff, Jeff's indestructible. He's one of those kind. He just, he's not going to die. But she said Jeff, Jeff died. <laughs> I'm about to cry right now on camera. But. Well, it's tough when you lose a friend, you know. Yeah, but, Especially uh, in our fraternity, our brotherhood here in the King of Sports Professional Wrestling. Look at how quick they go. I mean, it's, it's better than it was in the you, 2000s. But when you know was, what I don't understand, Dan? What? She, she, I said, what? It took me a couple minutes, just like right now. I, I'm sorry. I'll get up in a minute. Um, it took a minute before I could even say anything. Just, I'm sure you were and, shocked. Yeah, because it was Jeff. And um, and how did you know Jeff? From what part of your life? Orlando. When I, when I had my house in Orlando, he, he was um, he was he was big time. He was. A, was he a neighbor or uh, just a I friend? I actually met him through Pat Tanaka. Pat, oh, really? Yeah, Pat brought him over one time when this is back, man, gosh, damn. Early 90s? Sorry, y'all. Um, yeah, early 90s. That's understandable. And, um, you know, back then we were partying, you know, and Pat partied probably harder than any of them but me. You know, Jeff partied, you know, Jeff was able to, did something for all my damn drug freaks out there, because we don't do that no more, so we can talk about it now. Um, when you start doing cocaine, you don't stop till you run out. <laughs> Jeff could stop and there's still a pile left. Oh, you, you must not be getting the same effect as we are. <laughs> How often were you doing this cocaine, Marty? And look, and I'm not doing it now. It's cold in here. Tell them it's cold. It's, it's, it, it's in the 50s. It's not bad. It's, it's, the 50s. In, the, it's in the 50s. In That's this why room, I got yeah. this Falcons jacket. Next year. But next year. We, we there next year. How often <clears throat> we, would you do cocaine, <clears throat> now, would you say? Back in the day. Every day? Every day. Every I, I single day. Five, a, a bad day, when I say bad, I mean um, I didn't get it that much, was $500. Wow. 
We was doing. You were spending five hundred dollars. No, no, a thousand a day. Five five hundred. Here's how it worked. You go to the bank back then. You could only get five hundred per right. per day, a twenty four hour period. Yeah. So I had to go like if I had got something, he you had to wait till after midnight to get another five hundred. And, and I did that. I sat there at that machine so many times. Now you're waiting. talking about Jeff or you that was doing that? Mike? Well, I was, I was, uh, but Jeff came by with Pat one time, um, and I thought he was an art because he was a business dude. He's a multi-millionaire. Oh, really? You remember that, that five cents a minute way back, uh, IDT or some shit? But remember when you used to have to pay for yeah. for about a minute? Oh, like and he had one of those codes. He where came, you get a yeah, discount. he came up with one 10, five 10, cents 3, a minute. Ten, ten, three, two, one, or something. Yeah. So five cents a minute. He he undercut everybody and fucking got rich off of it. You know, um, that shows you how much greed is out there. Uh, everybody else worked their way down to ten cents a minute. He said, "Hell with that five and wham. Now <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah, now it's a whole different. They ain't even around no more. Uh oh, red mask. Wrap it up. Okay. No, we, uh, that's just the signal. I think we've hit the twenty minute mark right now. Fans, why don't we take a brief time out? We come back. We're going to talk about some of the greats uh, that have passed since Marty's last visit. Stand by. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s live wrestling event and Legends Fan Fest celebration. Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition. WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton. The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autographed photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood. Get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this WWE NXT TakeOver War Games 2020 11 by 14 Limited Edition Autograph poster signed by everyone on the event, number 23 of only 100 made. Include signatures from the Undisputed Era, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Tommaso Ciampa, Timothy Thatcher, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Rhea Ripley, Dexter, Loomis, and more. Comes with authentication hologram on the back of the poster. Also comes with mystery autographed 8x10 and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Hi, right, wrestling fans. Welcome back. We had that touching story from Marty, along with some uh, potty stories as well, as you always get with here on Wrestling Inside His Potty with Marty every Thursday night at 10. Uh, we've had some some greats. We had some uh, some shocking deaths since yeah. you've last been yeah, here who, in the world who, of professional who, who, wrestling. Who, 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 First, uh, let's talk about um, a man that... No, we already did Road Warrior Animal. We, we did that. We did him. Nat, the natural Butch Reed passed away at the age of 66. When he... When? Uh, within the past week, week and a half? Nobody fucking told me. Come on, man. Y'all didn't tell me. Holy shit. You didn't even know? No. Oh, I got to put my head down again. The what? Well, I know I you didn't probably know. missed Butch in WWF. He no, left right we, after no, WrestleMania no, no, we, 4. No, we were, no, we were boys. But I mean, where would you? The Kansas City Territory? I had met him there first, but uh -huh. uh, they, he was the natural. When I, when I first went in, he was the natural. Remember, he had blonde hair? For that one the day natural run, bush, yeah. Bush, no, it wasn't one day. <laughs> the 87 run. Yeah, that, that's when we went in yeah. the first time. Yep. Yeah, didn't we? Yeah, but you no, know, I've known Bush, man. See, I just saw him a year ago, man. We took pictures together at like a convention, a signing. Man, we, we love each other. That's another thing, Tony. That's a friend of yours. Ask him if I'm a racist. Damn it. I still love you, Tony, but you got to knock that damn racist shit off. That makes you a racist. Well, uh, any time we lose one of those greats. I mean, I would have loved to have had Butch Reed in the studio to document his no, stories been good, about man. his career. He'd have been good. Uh, the, you know, he, what was he, a main event guy in what WWF? Happened? No. What happened? He had two major heart attacks, and I think maybe a little COVID set in. 
Well, they're going to put read. that on it. So, rest in peace, Butch Reed. Any memories yes, of Butch Reed? You. How did you know Butch? From well, what territories? Well, uh, I met him. I was in Kansas City. Uh, we wrestled in St. Louis every other Friday, and he used to come in from wherever he was at, and he was like a big star. And uh, man, he was so nice to me. I don't know why he took to me. He liked me. Uh, him and John Nord, if you remember Nord, he, I know when you do these things, you show a picture of him. Put show that picture with the horns. You know when he when he went in as uh, the barbarian or something. He was Nord the barbarian. He was the berserker. Berserker. Yeah. I'm thinking of berserker. Yeah. And um, sorry, I will post this on my Facebook. So don't get mad at me for. About what, Butch Reed? No, uh, no, just us. Oh, just cutting us up a while ago. But um, he, um, him and him and John Nord got in a fight. Physical, you know, got into it. Hmm. Uh, Bill Watts put evidently put him put him up to it. Um, Bill Watts loved, still probably does, <laughs> loved to watch the guys go at it. Um, and now I'm about to veer off story. I'll come right back to it, I promise. But it was a guy named Ed Carr Boo, Boo Thomas. Um, he, he'd won two tough man contests. He was a bad boy. He was All-American at Oklahoma mm -hmm. in football and wrestling, like Steve Williams was, you know, mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Death. Uh, Ed Carr Boo Thomas was, is a bad, I don't know if he, I ain't seen him in 20 years, but bad boy. But Hercules and him got into it. Hercules Hernandez, remember mm -hmm. Herc? Oh, yeah. And, and I guess Herc whooped him up. Really? Yeah, and, and then uh, they told, you know, Bill Watts, because he had to, you know, he was all bruised up. So, you know, so, you know, Watts, like, what happened? He goes, he said, he was, uh, what's his name, uh, Dundee. Uh, Bill Dundee, what, what, did, what did he go by? Something other than Bill Dundee. But Bill Dundee, well, Herc got him, tore him up. And Bill said, that's impossible. He's won two tough men contests. And, and, and old Dundee goes, yep, well, Herc wasn't in them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line. I like that. <laughs> but um, back to Butch, I mean, they got, I, you know, I guess I wasn't there. I saw the results. I mean, you know, Butch had a couple marks on him, so, and, and he's a bad boy. I heard he used to tear up the streets in Kansas City, but um, they, um, I'm surprised he ain't got a son in wrestling, or does he? I don't Who, know about Reed? it. Yeah, I don't. Not that I've ever heard of. Yeah, but um, they would gotten into it, and, and John had a black eye. John Nord, he had a black eye, and Butch had you know some marks. So evidently, and they said it was they had pulled it apart. They were both still windmilling each other. And, uh, you know, it kind of sucked. Like, the promoter got y'all to fight. And, uh, but Butch, whatever reason, like I said, he uh, he liked me. Uh, and he came and talked to me, and he, he goes, I didn't. I, evidently, he felt like he won. I, I didn't want to have to do him like that. <laughs> so that means he felt like he got, you know, he, he won. Nord never talked about it. Nord just, I didn't like the fact that Bill had us do that. He he finally he he caught the bigger part like what the fuck would a promoter have two guys fighting like that that's bullshit. People have said that Nord would make for an interesting interview in this. Oh studio. he oh I promise y'all, Nord is the fun most fun. I mean because he's 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 out there but he's in there. <laughs> you got a contact for him? Yes. No maybe we'll reach out. You want me to do it now? Yeah, <laughs> like I said, there's just. Marty, it kills me. You know it means a lot to me to try and keep these guys working. And right yeah. now, again, the times suck. There's no independent wrestling events. There's very few autograph signings. <laughs> Almost no conventions of any kind. No, there's a, there's a few. But not many. Yeah, I not mean, many. compared to pre-coronavirus. You, know, you know it's supposed to go to England, Liverpool. Yeah, this, I remember this. you were telling me that. April, yeah, yeah they... they Cancel Evidently, it. they're going to postpone it. Yeah, well, like we, England's not doing that good. Like we mentioned, even what we're seeing on TV, yeah. nah. Because <laughs> I got a lot of girlfriends. I mean, a lot of friends over there, and they're telling me. Like, well, I, got, man, I don't have any girlfriends over there, but I, I, I'm friends with a couple of the indie guys yeah. over in England, and they told me it's it's not good. Yeah, they're all locked down. And shit, yeah. they're, they're doing worse than us. So that's why everybody want to give Trump a damn hard time. Hell, you know, we were doing better than anybody else. They were like. Yeah, but we got more damn cases. Yeah, we got more damn people. <laughs> Shit. You gonna compare us to England. England's the size of Florida. <laughs> right? So they they got a thousand deaths. So we got ten thousand deaths. We got three hundred and thirty million people too. <laughs> I, I just think it's so important that we get as many of these legends in the studio as possible. Um, it, you know, it has value. Did you call Coco? 
I still have to text him. You want me to call him now? Let's uh, call him no, on air. No, not on the show. No, because we get this. Oh is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, serious yeah. subjects on this episode. Okay. Okay. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but Sorry, for, for Butch Reed, sixty-six, a young age. Do you know? Is that what he was? Sixty-six. 66 yeah. Same age as Tony, as a matter of fact. So they, I wonder if that must have hit home with all Mr. USA. Oh, I'm, but, I, I guess you, I bet you it did. Um, I, I, I look forward to having Tony here to share his memories about Butch. But other than that fight with John Nord in the locker room down in Mid-South, any, did you ever travel with Butch? Well, did you ever hang well, out with Butch? A couple of times, a couple of road shows. Um, and, you know, you know, just a typical, you know, have a few beers, talk some, yeah. you know, war stories. Uh, but one of my memories was when Sean and I first came in, to, you know, we got fired the next day. First time we ever went in, he was going as a natural, Butch Reed, right? And I'm I'm sitting at the table, uh, at a table with uh, Dynamite, uh, not Dynamite, uh, Davy Boy Smith, God rest his soul, um, Dino Bravo, God, gosh damn, everybody's dead, damn. You know, and it does start scaring you when all your boys around you are falling. You know, my brother told me when you get to a certain age, people, your friends are gonna be dying. But man, this is you know Not this at the rate this, that we have. Yeah, to go and, and this has been going on for the last twenty years. There was, there was from two thousand to two thousand two, there was seventy deaths of the boys. It was in the USA Today. Remember that old oh, newspaper? Oh yeah, they, that big article. Yeah. Yeah, and it was seventy of the guys. What's going? on? They tried to blame Vince. You know, I mean Vince. How the fuck did he make somebody die, other than Owen Hart? But I mean, he, damn, did I just say that? <laughs> I did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You're falling asleep. No, I'm just, I'm captivated. Oh. I'm, I'm interested to, I don't know much about Butch Reed, so that's why I'm really interested. Well, in I mean, and I, don't, I don't have in depth, you know, uh, but I mean, a, we loved each other. Yeah, and we loved each other. You know, every time we see each other, you know, so, you know, especially the last years. It's been a year since I saw him, and it was at a convention, a signing in, I think, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Man, they got a great ass damn sports uh, memorabilia place there. Mm -hmm. But um, and you know who else was there? That I can't think of her name. Uh, Melon. Mel she, I think she went to the ring. She was uh, for for Morrison and the other dude. Melina. Melina, that's it. Melina. Man, she looks good. She's done her hair different, and, but she looked good. I always thought she looked good anyway. But she did her hair different. Like damn. I'm sitting over there and me and her are like waving and, and I'm trying to sign and you know, it's like, damn, can, can I go sit somewhere else? <laughs> People were laughing about it too, like they're getting autographs and they'd see me staring at her and they'd look over there and they'd, they'd shake their head like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we understand. <laughs> but um, Butch was there at that one and uh, that's the last time I saw him. It's been about a year. Well, we hugged up, man. We took pictures together. And, you know, I mean, gosh, he was healthy. You know, he was happy. Well, I assume, because, you know, he was, he was laughing. He was cutting up, you know. He, and he would, back in the day, some, on the independence, not ever you known. I didn't really see him that much, like you said, at WWE. <clears throat> I think I seen him for about, I don't know, six months, because he, something, he well, quit. He was done right after you. Right before yeah, he, he came wasn't, in. Yeah, he wasn't there He long. finished up after WrestleMania 4 when he put over Randy Savage in the that world was? title tournament. Yeah, yeah, because he, he didn't, and that was it. He was, you know, he was supposed to get the run that Honky Tonk Man wound up getting, but there was, he oh, ran he into was? issues with no-shows, yeah. How right did there. Honky keep the damn belt 50? I love him. That's my boy. In fact, we should call him. He'd be a funny, I, I've tried. Oh, he'd be great. Trust I've tried, but He will just, keep y'all laughing, man. Because he finds negative it makes it funny though, but he points out the negative shit going Everything. on. Everything. Yes, yes. We were over in, um, I think it was Ireland, and he was talking. No, 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 no. Nova Scotia. It was up in Canada, North Canada. It was Nova Scotia, and he was talking shit about the promoter. Hey, that motherfucker. He made all that goddamn money. We got thirty thousand people out there, and he's just gonna give us five hundred dollars. You know, but but you agreed to a contract ahead yeah. of time, you know, so you can't complain. <laughs> but he, that motherfucker, let me tell you. And he walks by, right where he's getting motherfucked, right? He walks by and stands there, and I'm I'm like, I'm doing like this to the honky, like, that motherfucker, he's that sorry ass old Jew ass motherfucker. 
Oh. And then and then he walks in, he goes, really? And Honky's like, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Honky would be great in this studio, too. I oh, mean, he'd be great. I, I, this, think about it. Let's At the end him. of the day, there's so many that would be great in this studio. Yeah. But Thursday night is your night. But Honky, not won't, taking Thursday. Honky won't try to overcharge. What's that? I got to tell you what I told Coco, just so it's out there and open. All right. Because you know, I don't like to know nobody's numbers, just yeah. mine. <laughs> I just need to know mine. I, when I get help somebody get booked, I, not, I don't want to know how much. I don't care if it's more than me or less than me. I don't want to know. But I told him, um, you know, I said, don't go too high, but don't go too low. You know, now, now that's up to him. What he, you know, I don't know how y'all negotiate, you know, because you know, with me and you. We treat we, him with respect. Right. And that's, all, and that's basically what I was saying to him. I already told him he was a good guy. Oh, good. Oh, I appreciate that. I mean, I'll show you the text. <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? If my feelings towards you should have at least should have come you, to light with you, when you we think had that, that issue with the last time with the hundred dollars that went missing, and you know, a did lot you of ever the guys, find that? No. Did you ever check? Uh, he he checked the car, DB. Yeah. No, no, up there at the hotel. Because remember, you thought you oh, lost you, it. You went and checked. Look, when you got yeah, back to the right. hotel yeah, yeah, that yeah, night, yeah, I yeah you know who it was. But you know, you know I, who it was? What? Working in the front when I went to check. Your girl. <laughs> yeah. Your girl, Maria. Don't say her name. Maria. No, I'm talking about our friend in Pittsburgh. But oh. <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> there with is a Maria most there. Of the, with, I'd say 95% of the guys, I'd say they were trying to hustle me for an extra dollar, uh, an extra hundred dollars. I don't dollars. need to, man. <laughs> but with you, I didn't doubt it for a second. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I be, did, had no doubt. And I think that says a lot. I think that shows in the chemistry that we have on the show that the fans enjoy so much that there is beyond the respect for your wrestling career that I have for you. It's just I genuinely like you as a human being. You know, well, you're a thank good you, guy. Man. I like you too. Oh, well, that's well. why I told Coco and I've told a couple of the guys. All right. Well, that, you know um, what? We're well, always... I told the Nasties, I think. You know, he's. Yeah, the Nasties did tell me you yeah. uh, had mentioned it. Yeah. The... yeah, I said he's one of the good ones because there's, there's a lot of bad ones out there. There I, really are. I hate saying that, but it's the truth. The one thing I take pride in, Marty, and here we Marty, are now. You said Marty. In September, it'll be 20 years of Boston Wrestling MWF. Two months Who's after. Who's been running it all that time? Me and that, who we gave the birthday shout out to, my Neil Manoli. 20 years, man. 20, we, we, I was two, two months out of WWF. Ed Cohen didn't need me for anything oh, yeah. else. <laughs> they were done with me. So I said, you know what? I was getting ready to go. Did to you mess up? No, it was just, it was in the middle of that when Mutual they brought WCW time? and ECW oh, mess. Okay. And they just, there was so much confusion. But anyway, um, you got a brush. Like Pat said, you get to use your fingers. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, let me let y'all know something because I look horrible. Two, uh, mu two months after that, I said, you know what? Fuck months. it. I'm going to go for the gold. I learned from Ed Cohen, the second guy. Him and, you know, him and he's still there, ain't he? He's dead. He died too? He had cancer four times. Damn. One wasn't enough. Ed was in rough shape. Damn, I didn't uh, know, you know that what? either. Yeah. Look at who talk about learning from a successful individual. Right. He was running the live events department was he pretty back good? when they did A, B, C, and D tours. Right. I mean, the, over sometimes he told me they were years, they had over a thousand live events. Yeah, and he was in yeah, charge of them all. We, we, you, you, you would do three hundred something plus. We we worked three hundred days a year. Yeah. We, but we had over 300 matches because we did double shots. We did Peoria yeah. in the day and then, and you know. Multiple yeah, matches at TVs. Did I tell you about up here in Connecticut area, uh, one time we flew into Hartford. And we always did Hartford at night. And so I drove down to New Haven, uh, uh, went to New Haven. That I think, I don't even know if Sean was with me. I think we'd already split off. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I know I had some a girl with me. I can't well, remember. Well, this is a surprise. <laughs> All right. Was the sky blue, too? <laughs> yeah. It was actually white, like here in Boston, man. Ain't nothing but snow over here where in Boston. You can't see nothing but white. But uh, they, um, we drove down to New Haven because that's always the day show. I got down there early because, yeah, one o'clock shows. You know, they want you there an hour early, so you got to right. be there by, by noon. I got there by 11.30, so proud, like I'm early. And they said, it shows tonight. You're in Hartford today. <laughs> I oh, to God. It. I had to turn around and shoot. And then they ended up being a little bit late. <laughs> Did you get a little fine? Or no, uh, I think it was Black right Jack Lanza. It? Don't tell me he's died. No, he's still alive. He's still good? Um, no, he laughed it off because he, he, he knew that we always did New Haven Day. 
you do the smaller city, the day shot. For right, some for the reason. matinee, right. Yeah. Yep. And then you do the bigger one. Well, I tell you, you know. But I they flipped it on me. <laughs> I feel bad. Oh, Vince, Vince did say something to me. He goes, well, don't we give you a booking sheet? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then there's that. But I feel bad that I lost contact with Ed over the years because I, I hold him even to this I really this didn't know him that well. Was he a good dude? Yeah. But you know what he'd always say to me? Hmm. Anytime he'd give me some good scoops. Danny? I better not hear about this on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the internet changed everything, be, man. Well, this is what you're talking 2000 and 2001. Died. What's that? Howard Finkel died. Oh, yeah. You knew that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and but, because you said the internet, what made me think of it? Time. Was that 30? Oh, that. So that means, geez, we've already hit the 40 minute mark on this is that episode. What that is? So we, we got to get did talking you say about my, these legends. Huh? Did you yeah, say the 40 minute mark? mark. Um, did you got that but, Boston going on? But no, so anyway, to, for, for my story. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, they, July of 2001, they didn't need me anymore. I went home. You know, I was pouting. I was sad. I thought I'd be there forever. Um, and you I, wanted to, yeah. Of course. I was 21 years old. So That's I called my good, friend. Though. I said, you know what? Because Tony Rumble, who broke me in, he also oh, passed away. <laughs> so he died too? He, he 1999. So I said, you know what? what? Let's go for the gold. We're going to start this. So we booked the arena that ECW used to run in in the area. We Philadelphia? Had, no, right here. In, no, the, we're, when they run in the Boston area. Revere, Massachusetts. We booked Road well, that's Dog. Over, that, Revere's a hojo over there. Yeah. <laughs> Road Dog, fresh off WWE TV doing DX. We booked Jerry Lawler, who we wound up losing because he was in the middle of his divorce. Was he still dating Cat? He was in the middle of the divorce from her. Oh, they he, were actually married? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know, Jerry. I'm sorry. Superfly we, we, Jimmy Snuka. We had a minute. I Co told you. A couple. Who? Cat and I. I'm sure more than a minute. Two days. Percy told me he had a collection <laughs> of uh, Polaroid pictures. Yeah, he, oh, of, oh, my God. That, uh, and, uh, do you know? No, I can't. I can't tell. I can't tell this on Why? camera. I can't. I, I can't tell them that when she was 16. Uh, yeah, I, was just, you know, I ain't gonna say that. That's nothing. rough. Yeah, Jerry. Pictures uh, though. That's what made me pictures. Sean, but you know, my what? partner was. Never mind. Sean and Stacy at 16. Really? Well, no, she she was up to 18 by then. Oh, all right. I think Jerry. I'm sorry, Jerry. I, I ain't saying. I'm sorry, Cat. Miss you. You ain't called me in over a damn month. Or two. You hear from her that much? No, not oh. at all lately. She's. I don't a, know if she's mad at me or something. She's a very lovely lady. I love her to death. She did a fundraiser for us. I don't know if, you, if you've ever heard of the Mermaid Girl, Shiloh Pepin. She passed away. She was who, the, who the, was the United States only. She was a mermaid. Well. Oh, you mean she did a, a conventions? No, she. She was. A, she was a kid, and this was a fundraiser. It was myself. It was a what? The Cauliflower Alley Club and Superstar Billy Graham put this together. Yeah. This poor girl, she was born. A mermaid. Oh, her feet were together. Her, er, everything from the waist down. She mm -hmm. had together? no ass, no woman a parts. A fishtail. She just, That's everything was. That's not true, was, though, man. That's impossible. Uh, there's a documentary on, um, I think it's A&E. And you, they say God don't make mistakes. The poor thing. So what we did was, right down the street at the venue we ran at Memorial Hall, we did a fundraiser for her, and thank God we did it, because this... By the way, let me apologize real quick. Sorry about that, guys. I love God now. Yes, I Yeah, love I God didn't too. mean to say that. I shouldn't have said that. But um, that, that still is kind of weird. Why you let somebody be born like that? It's, I think she was I 10. didn't even like two kids together with their heads like that. Why do you do that to people? We ran a live event. And I, I don't even want to get in. There's so many stories. Some the, the, this whole event could be a story because of superstar <laughs> Billy Graham's involvement. But is he alive? I, he he should have died about 15 times. Yeah, yes, about 1980. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the poor thing. We did a fundraiser down the street Memorial Hall. We raised enough money for it who to blew go her to, nose right here last. Uh, I don't know. Who'd you we say say your left? Tony, I think. Should I blow? Filthy. Should, should I trust him? What I, is gotta it? I gotta blow my nose. Oh my God. Damn. Tony, you better be clean. <clears throat> and we sent her to a kid's summer camp for the disabled. It was the first her? time she ever. Yeah. The mermaid girl. What'd she do? I don't know. I mean, because she used her feet? No. She was in a wheelchair, or if she moved, she had because. I mean, they everything, were together. They were. everything from the waist down was just fused together. Almost just. I gotta picture, go see that it's documentary. Like a, just picture a triangle upside down. And yeah, her I gotta feet go were like all wedged, and and then did she have a good attitude about it? 
Uh, or does she, does she like cuss? Sometimes I cuss God even she though I, hate to say I love it. him. She looked, she looked a little bit like J.R. Um, but oh man, <laughs> wow, <laughs> damn. But you know what's sad is we got her to the camp in the summer, and in October she passed away. That year, she was on Oprah. How old was she when she, oh, she was? Ten or eleven. She she was a kid. Oh, she was. Oh, and she died young. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but I mean, it's just her. Well, if her damn feet were glued together, it probably interior wasn't that you know good either. I still talk to her dad sometimes. His name is Elmer Pepin on Facebook. He's a good, good man. I think he's trying to work on a book hey, about it. But I mean, can you imagine not only lo not only losing a kid that young, but to have had a life of yeah, yeah, where they do a be. documentary on your daughter and it's called The Mermaid Girl. But I mean, that's the only thing they yeah, could equate I mean, it to. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, there was there was no. Genitalia of any kind? There was Why'd you nothing. Look? Huh? Why'd you look? No, I mean, this is just, these are some of the facts about the, her body. Oh. It was so, it's the only case they know well, how of. How did she poo poo? She must have had a bag, I imagine, or something. Or, yeah, maybe on her side or yeah. something. Yeah. Like George just, Steele had. Did I tell you about well, that? Hopefully, Davy Boy didn't get the pin out. I did tell you. Told, so yeah, I did he, tell he you. Told us that one, but <laughs> Shiloh, we wish you were with us too. My God, she would be now 20. almost drinking age. 20. Yeah, she would be about 20, 2009, so, yeah, she would be getting ready to be a drinking age. She'd really be giving Elmer a hard time. See, while you worry about her drinking, you want to look at her genitalia. There's nothing to look at. Well, well you, you should know that. Well, Kate was in the documentary. Oh. Elmer was talking right, about it. you get it past this time. If the father can <laughs> talk about it. Oh, we're going way off track. Yeah, where were we? Right, yeah, where were we? We're going to take a brief time <laughs> out. We're going to talk more about uh, Fallen Brotherhood. Are we Stand about to do by. a commercial? Yeah. Fans, we warned you this day would come. Unfortunately, we're running out of original episodes of Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. But we're starting up that Indiegogo. You can help the cause. You can help Marty's show continue each and every week. Nobody does it like Marty. We had an incredible time with him at our 20th anniversary bash, November 13th at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. We want to have the good times keep on rolling, but we can't do it without you. Look for the Indiegogo link in the comment section below or across our website and social media platforms. We have some great perks, great rewards where you can even meet Marty himself. There's nothing like it. Since July of 2020, every week we've brought you the show. We need your help to keep on going. We tell you without wrestling fans, there is no professional wrestling and there's no better time to help the cause now. Let's keep Marty rocking each and every Thursday night. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this limited edition WWE NXT Johnny Gargano personally autographed. 11 by 14 comic book style poster, a great addition to the collection of any Johnny Wrestling or NXT fan direct from WWE. Also comes with a mystery autographed 8 by 10 photo and an on-air shout out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Inside Us at your house. Get it now. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back as we continue this journey trying to talk about some of the fallen brothers. I guess this is going to turn into an extended episode at the length we're at. We also lost a man, you talk about amazing, like uh, the Mermaid Girl, but as far as feats of strength goes, we yeah. lost Danny Hodge. He died, I did hear that one, though. Now, I mean, a I man never know crush him. an did apple you? with his hand. Yeah, did you? Yeah, that's easy, though. You stick your fingers in there, and you kind of puncture. I've done, I've done that one. You've crushed an apple with your hand well, like Danny I don't know Danny about crushing Hodge. it, but yeah, I broke it. You know, Where you stick your fingers. came out? You, yes. Well, yeah, well, yeah it's, it separates like... But you stick your fingers in, they'll, they'll break through and then you squeeze it. It looks like you just took it. Went, <clears throat> it's, really? It's tricks to everything. Do you know you can't break an egg? Y'all can't break an egg. You can't break an egg. No. Now, how if you it, take what? it and put the small part in, in towards your fingers, not the bigger part. You know, the smaller end, put that there. Go ahead and try it. You can go do it now. You're not going to break it. Don't curl your fingers in like I just said about the apple. No, just squeeze the fuck. Well, squeeze an egg. I almost said fucking. I did say that. Did say it. Yeah, that's all right. Well, we're not responsible for any damaged clothing, folks. If you decide to or try carpet, Marty's egg <laughs> trick. You can't. 
I promise you. Any memories of the late Danny Hodge? No, I never met him. Never. You never even met Danny no, Hodge? No, I've just seen really? pictures. That's about it. Brilliant. Jerry Oates, the guy that trained me. Yeah. Uh, he, he was a big, you know, he loved him. Yeah. I, I didn't know, I don't even know much about him. But he, he I was, believe him and the Hulkster are the only two wrestlers to ever grace the cover of Sports Illustrated. Really? Yeah. D Danny got on there? Danny got I know on the Hulk cover. Did. I remember, I remember, I think I got that at the house. Yeah, he had that lightning bolt background behind yeah. him. I think that was 85. By the All way, right, well, this might look like a, a toy for a girl, but that's not what it is. Oh. I had to brush it. Thank God the director in there came and, and gave me. Because I left everything at home. I'm so ill-prepared. I apologize for that. That's all right. I we left my to... tooth. I got paper in there again. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I went to all the trouble to get a we tooth. We're used to you being a mess when you show up. Don't worry. Not this bad. I left everything <laughs> at home. I don't even think I left swaggy food. But all right. I got to get my brother to go feed him. you bring him. Uh, oh, I did. Parts of him. Look. Well, yeah. What was I going to... All right. On to, I guess, real no Danny Hodge memories. No, I don't. Nothing. Mm. All right. Well, no, I never met him. Not unfortunately, he did passed. you? I met him at Cauliflower Alley Club reunions. Did you talk to him? Uh, just a bit. I tell you this though, you do, you wouldn't want to shake his hand. Why? He did, oh, he, he got a grip. He just he trained his calluses. The rest of his body, not so much, but there was just he would <laughs> train his hands. They the old schoolers did that. But I mean. For him to, to literally, I don't know if he used your trick, but he could squeeze an apple so the juice would come it's out of the bottom trick. of it. Just, you, All right, well, well you I, know I, more. I've never done it. I'm just, I guess I'm sneaky. I'm always trying to look behind we the may, scenes. <laughs> we may get an apple for you to try and squeeze here on the show. Get an egg. Can, I don't want to get the egg. It won't messy. break. I'm telling you, don't be afraid to try it. You're not going to break it. All right. <laughs> it don't matter what kind of grip you got. You will not break. Yeah. The small end towards the fingers, though. Remember, oh. put put the egg. Like, like this huh? is. What do we got? Oh, it's Coco. You want to talk to Coco? Not uh, right now. Let me just say. Tell him, tell him we're actually taping. Why not? Hey, we got to call you back, man. We're right in the middle of taping. Tell him we say hello and we welcome him into Boston. What girl? What? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, I met her last night. Oh God. Oh, I, I, we on, we on camera. I'll call you back. All right. All right, bye. All right, bye. Sorry about that, y'all. Was he with Frankie? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know them girls would go to his room just to see Frankie back in the day? Yeah, and then I bet there was a little fly in. That might have been. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Pam. Hey. The feathers. <laughs> the Pam, feathers. Pam, Pam, Pam was a beautiful black girl that um, loved. Well, I can't be saying all this on camera, can I? Yeah, go ahead. No, I better not. But, well, no, no, because I think she married one of the boys. I know exactly who. I don't know if they married. If they did, if they're still together, I'm not going to say another word because we love him, man. We He did the sidewalk slam. You know who it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't say it. Don't no, say no, it. I won't. I know exactly who you mean. <laughs> yeah. That's no, my brother. Was, uh, I, I love him to death. She liked Frankie at one point. Everybody liked Frankie. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Coco got a little she, Coco, one time. Coco he got, got a little hot Coco. Yeah, he got mad at Vince once over his pay. Yeah. He goes, God damn, I'm going to have to shake and bake Frankie to eat. You're not paying us right. <laughs> 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 you know, shake and bake Frankie. <laughs> well, he's very well spoken. He had a long run. Oh, did you? Then, uh, you, you ain't had him here yet. No, Coco. Uh, but it'd be very lovely. He'll be, a, oh, yeah, he's got some stories. Anyone that was around hey, in that era, I think the fans want to hear their stories. Hey, Nostalgia the, is cool right my, now. One of my favorite Coco stories was South Philadelphia. I might have, I probably already told this. I don't recall this one. Well, we went to the hood to get some stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, back then they put, they, well, I'm sure they probably still do, but little capsules. Blue was a 10, red was a 20 piece. And now, what do you, I don't, as someone that's not a cocaine, drug guy, and coke, cocaine okay. and, and free base smoking, and some people call it crack. I don't know. Dave and I are learning a lot tonight. Our director <laughs> in the back. <laughs> but, but so you go through the hood, man, and, and I'm the white guy. First of all, we stopped the first place. Coco says, "Stay in the car, don't get out." You know, because I'm white as hell. They yeah. know what's up. But he's trying to get a better deal. You know, because they'll brothers sell brothers better than they will sell white people. You know, they're going to rip. They're going to rip that motherfucker. <laughs> Don't let me cuss. You can say whatever you nah, want. It's wanna, after 10 o'clock, yeah. brother. We're pushing 11 Oh, so the motherfucking time. <laughs> 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 but uh, they come running up to where well, the first time it was so funny because I'm sitting there. I'm the only white guy in there, and it wasn't the best neighborhood, you know. 
you can actually see the gap, you know, sticking in some of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can see them walking by like, God damn, <laughs> shit, don't let me piss them off. Don't let them, let them see me, God, don't let them see me. But old Coco's over there, and I hear he's talking to some guys, and I hear, you ain't no Coco, goddamn beware, you too goddamn small. <laughs> I'm fucking dying laughing. Coco got so mad. <laughs> he got so mad they called him too short. <laughs> and he showed him he had his bird watch. He did that in uh, Tokyo. Another time, I got another story. All right, <laughs> but let me finish We're this. We're gonna one. have to turn this into a two-part show, but that's fine. <laughs> Coco, um, he come. He was mad as hell. He got back in the car. He speeds off. They didn't sell him. They didn't give him. He nothing. didn't even get the cocaine no, at the end. No, of it. he was no, that insulted. Didn't. He got they mad. Didn't he didn't get the coke. Yeah, they said you ain't no Coco beware. If they actually said you ain't no Coco, goddamn beware. <laughs> he got so mad. But so we got in the car, went around the block, yeah. and then you know now they, they see me, so they know white boy in the neighborhood. That means buying shit, and they, it's like sharks, man. They out, they, they your lunch meat, you know what I mean? They roll the window down, and they, they're sticking their hands in, trying to be the one to sell, you know. And they, the one guy's got his hand there, it's all full of caps. Coco goes, he hits it, the shit goes all over, and he hits the gas. We got shot at, man. It was a rental car. They shot it. Yes, he just shot the oh back my. window out. We don't shot a hole through it, I mean. But <laughs> man, old Coco. Uh, Philadelphia, South Philadelphia is not a place to play. <laughs> well, I like to go and get the subs when I'm down there. I like the they steak are and good. cheese sandwiches. Yes, they're very they're good. Real but good. you and Coco weren't looking for subs. We we found some subs. Where did you get <laughs> I just thought that was funny, man. He you know, knocked the shit off the car and took off. And said we got shot. That some bitch was in the middle of the window. It went between the How two of us. How did you return the rental car with Ah, uh, Coco right? did that. I oh, didn't. Right. <laughs> well, what do you do? Take the rental car back. So pff, we rode through the wrong neighborhood. They shot at us. <laughs> did you uh, wind up getting what you needed somewhere else? No, we got that when he when he hit the hand. What are you talking about? No, did, no, well, no. When he hit the hand, the bag. All, all the stuff was there. It was like little tab, uh, yeah. little capsules. When he hit it, it went they all went in all the car. Them. But I mean, yeah. did you want, oh, they went in the, landed in car, the car. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. That's, that's why they I shot see, at us. Yeah. Right, well, I understand the gunfire now. Yeah. <laughs> Marty, I tell you the story. <laughs> we started to talk about Danny Hodge breaking apples and yeah. we end on Coco B. Wiz and Marty's cocaine adventure in South Philadelphia being well, shot he, at. He didn't mean it like that. He didn't mean cocaine. It was just some kind of powdery substance. Yeah, yeah. But it was rocked up, though. They call it, it free, free base. All right. Well, wrestling fans, again. We don't I, do that no more. Uh, David Boy said we don't do any less either. <laughs> <laughs> they, you, you plateaued. Yeah. You plateaued. Yep. All right, wrestling fans, we're running out of time on this episode. We went longer than expected. We're going to have. We pop- didn't talk about 1989. We, we still have. There's a lot we got to talk about before we even get back to 89. We're going to take a little break in our timeline. This is so much going on with Marty, so much going on in the wrestling world. Uh, For my friend here, Marty Gennetti, we will be back next Thursday night at 10 p.m. Don't forget, tomorrow night at 10, when the lights at the Thunderdome go off for SmackDown, John Cena Sr.'s dome is just lighting up. When will this air? This This will air on Thursday. This coming? Correct. Alabama just won a few weeks ago. All right, for Marty Giannetti, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next week as we continue to talk about some of the great brothers we lost recently. Until we speak again, you and yours, stay healthy, be well. Good night. Love you. It hits different live as the road to WrestleMania comes through State College with the head of the table, Roman Reigns. And a new challenger has emerged to dethrone the queen. Face me and put your title on the line. As Naomi battles Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's the WWE Road to WrestleMania Tour, live in State College, March 26th. Tickets and superstar experience packages on sale now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media, but Leo, brother, they gotta check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this limited edition Bailey autographed Rob Schamberger out print, one of only 50 made, a great addition to the collection of any Bailey fan direct from WWE. Also comes with a mystery autograph photo and an on air shout out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. 
Marty, can you believe it? We've made it through January. We've made it through February. It's now March. I imagine in your part of the country, it's still going to be much warmer than it is up here. But once we hear March in New England, you know, we start to think, oh, a few weeks we may see a little grass. Not, not, not your death kind. He said March. March. Yeah. March. We, um, we almost got snow in Alabama a couple of days ago. Did you? Well, I Actually, friends. we got a little bit of flakes that didn't stick. We're taping this during the cold snap that almost the entire country had. I had a friend in Houston. Yeah, it's was cold in here. That's single, why I got the jacket on. Single degrees down in Dallas and Houston. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. They, 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 well, I got, I got a friend, uh, that, you know, we do. he wants me to get on his podcast. I tried to get you on there, but they said you charge too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a good dude, Rob Wiles. Hey, Rob. Uh, but they... He's been, his partner, like me and you, his partner, yeah. uh, has been stuck in San Antonio. We, we, they've already paid. They sent the money to PayPal. Yeah. So it's paid. It's ready to go. But they, they can't do it because he's been stuck for four days. They can't get no flights out of San Antonio. Really? Yeah, ice and all that shit. Oh, Jesus. Well, the, the country, the, the, like I said, we're taping this probably the previous week when you let see me this. Show but, let me show them this cause in case I have to do, do it to you. Like when you're walking in the streets, I can't get up, can I? Can you hear me? Yeah, he can. You want to keep your fists like this downwards. That way when you come upwards like this, they don't see the knife coming. That's only if you have to slice somebody. But you keep your hands like this. Like you're going to bold up and shit. And you bring that up like, okay. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> and where did the knife come from? Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can't make this up, folks. You know what, fans? Uh, during the break, in between episodes, I had to run in the other room to my desk. And you know what? Just to, uh, to show a little appreciation, we had a new individual join the Patreon. Yes. Uh, Marty. King Dave the uh, Third. I'm not going to give out your email address, but we appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Marty, honestly, we appreciate King Dave the Third so much, you're not going to stab him. Um, <laughs> join in the Patreon, because you directly are helping legends like Tony, Marty. Tony uh, who? Mr. USA. You're hey, help, Tony. You're helping, Stop calling me a racist. You're helping them come to this studio so they can earn He's extra old. income or in a living. So, King Dave the Third, we thank you. You know what? An idea that some folks gave, Marty, is what just gave? Uh, if they're with us for a certain amount of time or at a certain level, maybe yeah. just we do a couple of quick phone calls for 30 seconds. We'll do it right now. Say, let's hey, let's King, call Coco. Well, I don't know. Is, I don't have, uh, oh, you don't got numbers? You know what I want to do? What? I think we should tape a little video for Coco and text it to him. Just hey, what to up, show Coco? him what we do. But anyway, we'll get to Coco. Okay. Uh, Marty, one of the tragedies, that it, uh, one of the saddest stories in wrestling in recent years, a man just... Uh, about a year older than me, uh, Luke Harper, Brody Lee passed away yeah. not too long ago. And what a sad, sad story that was. It was pretty, was. Uh, that's, that's what's upsetting. 40, 41 years old. You know, if, you, old. if you're laying in bed and you're sick for like a month, you know, it, it's a lead-in. You know, man, you may not make it. But when just like that, like Jeff, you know, I was telling you in the last episode, my buddy Jeff, I just texted him, teasing him about because he's a big Pittsburgh He's from Pittsburgh mm -hmm. originally, and he loves the Steelers. You know, and, you know, we love our sports. I got my Falcons, even though they ain't next year, next year. But um, he, I text him because they, they won like 12 games in a row. You know, they were undefeated, and they just started losing. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't win another damn game, I don't think. But I was teasing him about it. And me, you know, I said, well, how are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm feeling great. Now, I got his text time stamp. And he died 30 minutes later. And he was fine. He just really? told me. Yes, he told me. He texted me. He goes, oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? How's your ankle? 30 minutes later, he was dead. Well, Brian, they said They said uh, heart. They called it natural causes. But what's that widow maker thing? Something called a widow maker. I guess it's a, something clogs in the heart or some shit. I don't know. But he was in great health, man. Well, Brody, I mean, he was competing in AEW as recently as this fall in October. Yeah. Uh, he went on one of those Peloton bike rides, and he just he did he couldn't finish it. Peloton. What's that? It's one of those fancy uh, bike. Oh, okay. It has I think it has the TV monitor on it. Yeah, yeah. And he, he just he couldn't finish it. That's he just, where he died. Well, he didn't die in October, no. But I mean, he just his, his body started to give out. He went to the hospital, and it was oh, so some kinda, kind of lung infection. Sort of like Warrior. Warrior knew something was coming. And they they they. AEW was good enough to try and get him from, I think he lived down in Tampa, if I remember correctly. I think so, yeah. And they got him up to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville and just, 
Well, they get he dead. needed to get healthy enough to get a lung transplant. But you're talking about a guy that's six foot four, six foot five, bigger than me. Yeah. You know, how many of what those are you, lungs? Six three. Six three. Dan's a big old boy, man. He's <laughs> wide. He's thick. Man, I'm glad he don't try to beat me up. But how I mean, how many lungs like that would there have been even? No, or, not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how many what? How many lungs like that would be available for a transplant for a guy of that size? Mm. You know what I mean? Even if he well, was healthy yeah, they enough. Yeah, they do got to kind of fit, huh? Yeah. Damn. Just a sad, sad story. But I, but see, I, I didn't know that. So he, you could see it coming. He, he was in the hospital, in the Mayo Clinic yeah, see, for two I, yeah. months. Yeah. And I they, didn't know they that. Knew. They, mm. and, unless he got healthy enough to just get on the list, yeah. not get the transplant, get on the list to get the transplant. He yeah. wasn't even healthy enough for that, and he, he just he passed. And what, what, what a sad story. I met You're him. the first one told me, though. You, you texted I, me right when you know, it happened. I like to, because I know people like you and Tony, you're really not on, active on the internet and so on. So I like to like, John try, Cena, seeing you the same thing. <laughs> I like to let you know, because I don't know, I, I don't know how close you were, if, even if you ever met the man. I met, met, him, him, I met, him, I met him at least two or three times at various WWE nicest events. Nicest guy in the world, man. Yeah. And he left two little kids. Oh, I really, man. you know what? A lot of time has been spent bashing WWE about different things they do, don't do, and so on and so yeah. forth. But the class that AEW has extended. Did they give him a 10 bell? To, oh, a 10 bell. They brought his wife and his kid into the ring. Oh, man. And they left the boot right in the middle of the ring to end the TV show. Wow. And on top of that, not only, not only is Tony Good Khan beyond. in AEW... Um, you know, gone out of their way to take care of the family. They took a, a group of them, Cody Rhodes, Tony Schiavone. You they, know, Cody's in the airport. He's what? Him and his wife. Yeah. There's a damn, I got a picture I'll show you later. I, I wish I could show y'all, but I don't think y'all can see it. I got a broke screen because my cat buried my damn phone in his litter box. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because he, yeah, right, cause he right. thought I wasn't paying enough attention to it. All right. But um, Cody's on in Atlanta airport. I'm walking through and I look, what the fuck? There's a big ass damn billboard thing. They got some kind of winery or some kind of something they own. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll good show for you. him. Yeah, that's what I was saying. But I was like, the fuck's Cody doing hey, on the wall know, in the uh, airport WWE, in Atlanta? WWE, you talk about some of the, you know, for all their successes, one of their failures is Cody Rhodes. I mean, what a first class talent. I don't know if he could be the face of WWE, so to speak. I'm but not he say, certainly, but... he could be, could have been a top tier player for a long, long time to come. I, I don't, Cody knows this. I, I, of course, I know, you know, I was good friends with, with uh, Dustin. I mean, well, we, and my, we, I've heard, but I'm not even going to go there. But Dustin and I used to like to buy, we'd go into adult traveling. stores yeah. and buy the blow up girl dolls with the mouth open and put it in the passenger seat and drive to towns and, and just watch people <laughs> when they'd see that doll sitting there. Uh, wait till we get to 1996, some of the questions. That's, a, that's so far away. Uh, yeah, we're still in 89 in our timeline for your WWF career. But, I mean, just, uh, just imagine that. Cody Rhodes, Tony Schiavone, a whole group from that company taking that, the, the, the son to Disney World for his birthday. And they have, uh, I think it's a little too much They've put him on TV as a character. They call him Negative One with a mask. Who does? AEW. Oh, when he puts the mask on. They put Brody Negative Lee's, One. Brody Lee's son, yeah, Negative One. And they have been, and this is what I think speaks a lot. You know, this is a lot of fans that love AEW. There's a lot of fans that dislike their presentation. And that take that out of the equation. But here, they have already extended a legally binding contract to that kid when he turns 18. If he wants to join that company, he already has a contract with they, they do that already? That, what does pretty, that say about the Khan family and the people it, it, that run AEW? Well, they're catching up. They're whatever doing, you, other sports do it. Whether you love AEW, whether you dislike AEW, whether you're somewhere in the middle, what does that say about their hearts? Is there a Tony thing I'm a racist? I'm talking, uh, to, not Tony Khan. Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas. Oh, I'm talking about Tony Khan. I mean, what a kind thing oh, to okay. do. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. For that company to go above and beyond to get him into the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville to try and save Brody Lee's life, uh, and, and the, yeah. just the genuinely nice things they've done for the family yeah, and that kid. And that I be. think it's a bit much to continue to put an eight-year-old on television in angles, one man's opinion. Uh, I don't know, brother. <laughs> We're well, advancing. <laughs> I think that's a little much. That's one man's opinion. That's but what I want to do. What? Is, is start a little league pro wrestling style. 
for kids? Yes. That young? Yeah, all they got to do is learn headlock, arm drag, slam. You know, they ain't got to be doing all the random yeah, stereo It'd be shit different. Yet. Don't I you don't think kids you don't, you don't think kids would love that? I they do it, it anyway. I don't think they should be bumping at that age. That's you teach them right. I know how to teach them right. Look, man, my best student, Sean Michaels. Well, you help, help them. You know, I told you anything. what Billy Gunn told me one time. He uh -huh. goes, Sean, because I, I, he knew Sean, from, you know, from the beginning. He goes, you taught Sean so well. He's like one of the best now. He goes, you tagged with X-Pac when he was a one, two, three kid. He shot to the top. You tagged with Bob Holly, who became hardcore Holly, and shot to the top. You tagged with Al. Al was already good, but, but he says, you tagged with Al Snow. He became a star. He goes, gosh, damn, let me tag with you. You're Springboard. <laughs> Your name should be Springboard Genetti. Anybody tags with him is getting shot to the top. Well, him and, and he'll he, still stay the Marty Genetti of the team. His, his son is <laughs> with AEW now. No, Billy's? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which one's he? Austin. Oh, oh my God. I yeah. knew him like this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's, he's with them every week now. So, I mean, I tip my cap, and I'm, he's the one wearing the hat, but I tip my cap to AEW. What they have uh, done for that good, family man. is commendable. You know, you, you know, WWE, you know, to be fair, WWE does a lot of things behind the scenes that they don't put out there on the Internet publicly. I've, I've been part of it with helping a couple of the legends over the years. Where, with, with them? The talent relations department. Or just in general. So, okay. What's that now? With, with, I was going to say with AEW, but you mean no, in general? No, no, with WWE. In general, I mean, okay. I, things that have never been publicly disclosed on the internet. I've worked mm -hmm. on some projects with WWE, which is partially why they are so kind to provide us with all this great merchandise and so on. But What do uh, they provide you with? Well, look around. Give me some of it. No. <laughs> I need it for the set. <laughs> Gee, I'll tell you a funny you got story. got a new prop. I'll tell, see that John Cena you poster over there? You ever cut? Yeah. I'll What's tell that? you a funny story about that. All right, tell me a funny story. It's, uh, it involves John Cena Sr., but it, I'll tell you later. It's a long one. What about that box in front the of show. it? There's a gift. No, that's just... Uh, actually, I, speaking of a gift, there's a gift for you in the other room that I have to give you. No, I saw that shit. Was, somebody shit on the floor back no, there. No, 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 no. That's probably... That's, right. something, that's something nasty boy this would is have a, did. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is a, a serious subject. Again, I want to commend the Khan family. Um, you know what? Good for you. Remember Kupla Khan? Who? Cooper Cotton, way back. This no. is like in, well, you weren't even born yet. No, so, I, I don't. I forgot how young you are. I just. Cooper Cotton was a, well, they call him, we like to say extras. Yeah. Or enhancement, you know. <clears throat> but back then they called him. Jobbers. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't say the word. But Cooper Cotton was a pretty good one. Like Mike Jackson, you know who Mike Jackson? Oh, yeah. Mike he was, still wrestles, I yes, think. Yes, he does. <laughs> he calls me every once in a while. Hey, you want to do this show over in Smell Oakville? Smellville is right ne next to Stinkville over there in Alabama. I mean, he finds the smallest. We used to think that, like, Terry Garvin, when he was running, <laughs> when he was running, um, he was booking for Kansas. What happened, bro? <laughs> he, was, he was booking, you know, he was booking for Kansas City. So he did a lot over. more than book, but... Well, we used to think he, because he had a map in his damn office yeah. on the wall. And, and we were like, he just takes darts and throws it wherever it lands. I'll call them and see if we can get a show there. Because <laughs> we, you know, one, one time we was in Dodge City, excuse my language, fucking Kansas. Yeah. There's not much to Dodge City. What you see on TV, like that little prop set, you know, where the Westerners walk through. Why are you playing with this night? Where the Westerners come through, you know, downtown, you know, and it's, Dodge City is exactly that, and and I accidentally got with a girl that night. Oh, and, accidentally? Well, yeah, I was dating somebody. That, that yeah. was wrong. I'm sorry, yeah. Raven. Um, that was wrong. That How was, many? Huh? How many? No, I can't. Was it multiple? Oh, that night? It, oh, yeah. just one. Just girl. one. All right. Yeah, and, and and we stayed at a hotel. All the guys usually try to stay at the same place. Yeah. Especially when like this with the, like there were two vans. You know, we had two the, vans. Yeah, we had oh, the, wow. the heels in one, bad yeah. guys in one, and good guys in the other. Yeah. And so you all stay all together. So the next day, but I drifted off. <laughs> I just, you know, Shaka. Caught up with. How you find a girl in Dodge City? I don't know. Dodge, bitch. <laughs> you got to move. But um. No, no, we got some friends out in Kansas. Um, oh, I love, I love Kansas. I'm not talking but, bad. But I mean, there's Kansas. a lot of 
there's a lot of rural areas in yeah, Kansas. Yes, a lot good of friend when you, Kate out in Hoisington, Kansas, could probably uh, attest to that. There are. It's a, a quiet. It's a beautiful part of the country. Hey, but when it's you kind drive, of a quiet part. When you yes, when you drive from Kansas City to Wichita, you just put your car and drive and just look go to sleep. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it ain't nothing but it rolling hills, and you actually hope to see a hill because it's flat land. It's flat. It's, yeah, that's yeah. what I was just gonna say. Yeah, I, I consider that to be a flat part. Yeah, of the it's country. flat. It yeah. is, and there's wheat fields or some shit. Might be weeds, but I think it's in the wheat fields. Do you think there was any whistling in the wheat fields? I uh, saw so twice. Twice, okay. One time, me and uh, Rogers, Arkansas, who we're off subject again. A little Rogers? junior soprano action going on. Yeah, well, you know, Tommy Rogers and I were tag team. Tommy liked yes. to whistle in the wheat fields. Well, we were, we, 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 man, they really are these big ass hogs. So we, we went out, we, you know, we accidentally got with a couple girls. Yeah. But we, you know, we, we had to get drive back, it was like Rogers, Arkansas, it was like a three and a half hour drive back to where we lived in Kansas City. So we, we weren't going to get a room, so we just decided we'd go out into the woods area. The girls knew where it was, we didn't know, they were like, yeah, go here. And um, A little outdoors action. <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, I mean, we just get out in the field, you know, yeah. or you know, if, you, if you want in the back seat, you know, whatever the case. We all, we all four of us got out and did it outside. Yeah. And, and motherfuck, this big hog, right? They, they call them Razorbacks. Those things are for real. They're like this high, if not. There was a Razor hog. Yeah, razor man, we got, hog. we had to get on, it come charge after us, man. We got up on the car, <laughs> we were on top of the car. The bastards, he's wanting to attack us. The hog was trying yeah. to attack you while I you. I tried to pet him while to you calm him down. While whistled in the wheat field. Yeah. In a wheat field. <laughs> I tried to calm him down. I'm like, stop. You know, they kicked him in the snout one time, and it kind of slowed him down. And I was like, I'm sorry, come here. I did get one rub on him, but it, no, man, we he were scared. None of it. We were scared to death. They both forget they got teeth that will <laughs> rip you up. Man, we was we were scared. <laughs> we wait, and we had to wait till he was tired and left before we could get in the car and get the hell out of there. <laughs> Why couldn't you get to the car? Was the he fucker in front hog. Of it? Oh, he was in front of you. Yeah, no, he, you get down on the ground, he can get you. <laughs> oh, you were on the ground. No, we was up on the car. You were on the car. He was on the ground. If we got on the ground, we're, he can get us. We had to wait for that bastard to walk off before we could get in the car and get the hell out of that wheat field or wherever the hell it was. So you never finished the whistling? No, we could have gone longer. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> such is life, I guess. <laughs> Well, the, Marty, the story's the party. It never ends with you, my friend. But uh, again, AEW, you know what? For this a is new not company, a female adult toy. It's a brush. First class organization for what they've done. You had to say first class. For, uh, <laughs> the, the Huber family. Um, you know, to the point where they didn't even do a lot of times. Hubert? That was Brody Lee's last name. Hubert? Huber. Oh, Huber. H U B E R. Uh, and you're, again, tip of the cap to the cons for doing that. Hold also, this, hold this right here. No, I don't want to touch it. What do you want me to do with it? Huh? What am I going to do with uh, it? You need that bowl again, I guess. I, no, I'll just I, take it I, here for now. I, I, I <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't bring me nothing to brush my hair with. Huh? Thank God Brother Man brought me to so I could brush my hair. Well, I, don't I left know. everything I don't, at home. I've never traveled and not brought a brush and toothpaste. I, yeah, I forgot everything. I forgot. lost my tooth. I didn't lose it. I left you my forgot tooth. your tooth? I lost my tooth, my toothbrush, right. hairbrush. Uh, I brought a shaver, but I left yeah. the shaving cream. Man, yeah. I, I don't know what happened. I think what happened was... The, you just weren't prepared. I guess no, is the best well, no, way to sum it up. No, so, sometimes I got, not very often, since my ankle. Nobody, you know, nobody seems to want to come see me, but we had a little bit of a party, and it was a couple extra girls, and my boy Darren, the one that was going to be the the, the, the policeman, you know, for the, that death, he was going to arrest oh, me. Okay. Yeah, Darren. His name is Darren Kelly, the guard. We call him the guard because uh, he really was a correction officer, CO. A little Chattahoochee action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody fell for that. I was so happy, but at the same time, I got scared because. The day of Columbus Police Department yeah. is <laughs> starting to investigate. I, I wanted to call him and say, no, 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 it's a wrestling storyline. My brother said, no, don't, don't call them. <laughs> don't, they'll tell you to come down there, and then they'll get you and hold you until they prove that that was a storyline. 
<laughs> which well, they couldn't prove. That. I hope at some point you get a chance to tell the whole story. Well, I, I told you we did. You know, I told. I told well, you. I was here. Remember, I was here for the conversation you had with a, a former coach of yours on the phone one coach day. Coach Tooby, yes, my college coach, wrestling coach. He gave you some wise hey, coach, advice that what day. Up, though? Well, uh, when, when would this air? I want to take me sure you watch. This is the first week in March. Hey, coach, I'll, I'll let you know about this season. Right. Best coach, coach welcome. ever. Thank you. I've had a few coaches. He gave you some wise advice for and what a lot say. of times. <laughs> and I think that hopefully snipped the whole Chattahoochee story in the 30, bud. Thirty seconds. A good man. Thank you, to David. David, our new partner in crime there in the control room. He's a good man. Yeah, it's he pretty pinch cool, man. hit because a because a f and glance. F and Will you Glantz, leave Glantz Goliath. Goliath. Leave him alone. You, I, I told you I like Glantz, but he just he pulls these stunts. You probably said some. We were having great conversations all week about Mania Week in Tampa with ideas we had. What you going to do in Tampa? Huh? What you going to do down there? Well, I, th uh, I don't know if I want to say well, too much. Well, I can much get there. I mean, that's a great place. I, of all the places I lived in the world. <clears throat> you loved it down there. Yes. I, I mean, Hawaii would have been the first pick. Too damn expensive. <laughs> I mean, it's way oh, too. Oh, that bad? Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, man, you spit on the ground, it costs you. Hard. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Tamp Clearwater in particular. Oh, Clearwater which, Beach is beautiful. It's the best beach in the world. And, and I'm and, not a beach guy, but I love Clearwater Beach. You need to brush your beard. Here. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, it's got that tarantula leg sticking up right there. There, you got it. You got it. Well, I visited my good friends this week at Noel Salon, 347 Pleasant Street, I it downtown was closed. Malden, Massachusetts. No, they just, it's at the point where they don't need me right now. Uh, if you're oh, in the Boston area. See, you started shit there, too. It, they, Stop they, starting shit. They've done the hair of the, uh, the Silver Twins from 90 Day Fiance. They've done the hair of Steven Tyler or Aerosmith. No, they so did not. That's my brother Sweet right there. That's Swear my brother. You know that guy's almost 70 and he's still got it? He's, he's got some little plastic surgery going well, on. Well, he's got money. <laughs> but you know what? He, yeah, he's had his hair done by Noel Salon. I can do some plastic surgery. Came in surgery a big limousine. Huh? Came in a big limousine. Uh, he I, did to the haircut? I, I, I didn't get to meet him yet, but he had, he's had his hair done there. What do, you get, what do you do? You did a white streak? I have no idea. Well, you I were working there. It, what's that? I wasn't there for it. Oh. But I've seen all the pictures of it, and so they've had some interesting, you know, celebrities even come in and out of there. So NoelSalon.com, it is a wonderful place. I was there for 14 months, and it was like a second home with all the great friends. I yeah, had I there. think. But I hate to say it because I don't want people doing the L L G B D L whatever the hell it is. Yeah. But he started taking. I think he started turning gay when he was working there. Why do you say that? Because of hair salon guys. It was hair a, salon. You could also look There's at nothing it. wrong with that, so don't the LGB, what's that thing but called? L LGBT. LGBTQ, I think is what it is now. Yeah, you know. Did you I get just, it right, Dave? Is that what it is? Why do you think he's got to know it? I don't know. He's a smart <laughs> kid. But yeah, um, anyway, that, that group, I think it's lesbians, gays, yeah. transvesticals. I don't, I don't know. Well, they, they have a large transgender base that goes in yeah, there, too, which big was time, man. interesting. That Taylor Swift, she's so... Interesting. She's so... But, um... Y'all love her. I don't know. You look at it from the wrong way. You're looking at it as, oh, you could be LGBT. You could also look at See, it like... See, you do know what it is, it, LGBT. But listen, but listen it's, <laughs> you almost could look at it as if it was a buffet. You know what I mean? <laughs> the yeah. problem was most of the... Well, see, that in one of my buddies, Tim Dobbs, what's up, brother? Works at a hair salon for that very reason. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Who most comes in the hair salon? Most of girls. Them, right. Most of them were oldie but goodies. But you know what? Hey, what are you gonna do? Well, I that's because that's you're you in Melrose. Oh, this is in Marlin. Oh, so where's that? It's one city over. A whole city. One whole city. But they're wonderful people. They treated me so good. I miss being there. Oh, it I'm was, sure, it was yeah. a different world compared to this TV studio, let me tell you. <laughs> well, you was doing both with, at one time. Yeah, I was doing both at the same time. I was, I was only there three days a week, but the fun that we would have, the laughs that we oh, would I'm have. Oh, sure, man. Oh, my God. I miss it. I miss it a lot. But I, I hope folks continue to go in and support them. It, has been, it hasn't been easy in these coronavirus times, so hopefully. But they made it, so they survived it. They came back. They haven't shut down, but, you know, it, it's, it's not probably, the client sure, base yeah. that it was before. You know what it, I mean? It'll get back. It'll get back. Let's all support them. 
And for, Everybody around this area in Boston, Melrose, and, and Revere, where else? Uh, Medford. Medford. Uh, go to Everett. Go to NoelSalon.com. Yeah. You get all the, and they also specialize, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, I think it's a trick, trichomania. That's, a, that's hookers. It's, no, it's a disease where girls, oh, for what? whatever reason, they, they actually pull, rip the hair out of their oh, head. I've seen this And they, we have a specialist, we call her Hollywood Barani. We have a, a private room, or they have, a, I'm not there anymore, they have a private room. You'd be better. And they create these, these pieces, and they come out, and they look these like pieces. a million bucks. You, you know, like, well, they call them like hair systems to fill in the oh, patches they, oh, they plug it up. from where they rip the hair out. Plugs, yeah. And it's just, and it makes them feel like a million bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a nice thing to it, see it, someone it, 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 coming it, it, in looking so sad. Unless you're doing that, that um, shit. What is it? Not, not K. Some kind of drug that, that you, you just freak out and you pull, you, you bite your own self, and you do all kind of weird, you know, dancing yeah. and shit, and pull. But I don't think that's what they're doing, the ones that pull their hair there out. There was, I mean, touch, we talk about getting off topic, but I mean, they're, yeah, so, way off. they're so good. There was this family, nice, the guy, the, the dad was a cop. I used to like to talk with him. They, they were from uh, upstate New York. They'd drive in, once a month, they'd drive in four hours. They'd have the daughter, because she had that ailment, yeah. to pull the hair. They'd have her, they'd do, redo her system so it looked nice. Then they'd drive four hours home. They'd spend nine to ten hours on a Sunday once a month coming to that salon just so the daughter could feel comfortable in life having a full head of hair. And I, I just what, I always thought that was so nice. she pull the new shit out too, though? What's that? Like once they plugged her up, would she pull that out too? I, I don't know the particulars of it. I, I'm not well versed in it, but I know the the disease is. It's just they would, so it's actually, for whatever reason, they would they just that, they would find the need to just rip the hair out of their head. That's fucking crazy. And, 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 I thought I was bad. It's shit like that unless you know you're all right. <laughs> you well, know? it's just it's nice to know that there's a place where you can go to yes. look good. Yes. You know what I mean? Especially, it's one thing for an adult, but for a little kid to be in that position with, you know, you know how hot kids oh, can sorry. be. When Did I mess the mic up? You hear uh, me? I'm good. He'll let us know, I think, if there's a problem. But again, noelsalon.com. Uh, Marty, we talked about all these greats that have passed since your last visit here. What about the Hall of Famer, Pat Patterson? He didn't die. He did. He's he didn't call me now. first. You didn't know that Pat Patterson died? I think I do. I, I've been drinking a lot because of the pain. Oh, all right. All right. And, you know, by the way, I stopped drinking up until... I Today. can only get so much pain medicine because they, you know, because of the epidemic with opioids and whatever the hell. Um, shit, when you really need it, you can't get it. And so alcohol is always there. And um, I hate it because you know, I'm trying to train hard and work out hard. And it was a miracle, this, this ankle, 10 weeks. Didn't finish telling y'all last I, week. I, again, I can't get over how good you're moving after and, 10 and, weeks. And, but you know what? I was, thought you were going to be here, and I said, geez, I don't know if he's going to need a wheelchair. I don't know if he's no, going to be on crutches. And week. you walked out on your own. I was Not only was I happy, but I was proud of you that you've done so much so quick. You know yeah, what? The, the first so, time you were here, I've told, I don't want to repeat the story again, but the first ahead, time though. you were here, to see the way you walked, it bothered me so much. And now to see you move, you know, you're not moving great yet. I'll you're, get it. You're I'll still it. recovering. But this is the best I've seen you moving in all your visits here. Yeah, and, and I'll get better. I'm going to get to the point where there's this girl, uh, Humberto, or something like that. I'm sorry if I got it wrong, sweetie. Yeah. Um, we're, we've got a challenge. She thinks she can beat me. I guess I'll be the new Andy Kaufman. She, in a wrestling yes. match? Yes. You want to hear a funny story about beating someone? I'd love to. Um, my Let's good, my, day. my good friend from WWE, Finn Balor. The last time I saw him in person, he said, "Craig or Craig, it's some kind of an Irish term." He said, "The next time I see you, we're going to have a race, and you're going to beat me. You know <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I can beat Finn Balor in a running race, unless he breaks his leg. Or he, something. And, unless he gave me like a day's head start or something like that. <laughs> but I was what's telling, in that gift box? It's just an empty priority mailbox. Why is it sitting there?" Uh, I I don't know. I I've think, been sitting here wanting to open it. It's I think like our a, good friend Howard Miller put it over there, the stunt double. And and it's right in front of John Cena. It's blocking John Cena. Where's where's but seniors look, seniors pops and stuff? You got right there. This is good stuff, Fabo. And you know how what? you say it? It's Fabo pop. Fabo. 
it, he said in the month of March it's going to start to be produced again because really? of COVID, I guess there were issues with COVID at the factory and they couldn't make more. But he said not all of them, but the more popular flavors they're going to make more of starting this month. So well, they were we'll all pretty good, man. I had one with some vodka one time. Yeah, <laughs> that made it even better. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that red one. It was man, it was good. But tell these me things this. are good, y'all. Memories of the Hall of Famer Pat Patterson. What, what I loved about Pat was he was always on my side. Um, he loved Sean, of course, and there might be ulterior motives there. I don't know none of that shit. But, you um, don't. Well, people said. You don't. I, I don't believe it. but You don't believe it? No. I, well, maybe not. You don't. Do you think there was any fellating? Oh, stop it. Stop it. Was there any fellating <laughs> going stop. on? All right. Well, we're just trying to get to the bottom of it. Literally. Keep it up. <laughs> Remember now. Keep it like this. They don't ever see when you come up. They don't see it. Look, man, look what you want to do. Yeah. Do you think? And if you get them right across the face, you don't got to get them across the throat. Because it, it, from what I understand, it burns real bad. It makes them stop. <laughs> they won't mess with you. Do you and you think, didn't even have to get them across the neck. Do you think that Pat ever wanted to reenact a little Annie action on Sean? Yeah, oh, I know he did. he wanted to, but I just don't know if it happened. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And I, whatever Pat, I love Pat. I love Terry. Terry, what's his name? Garvin. I mean, but I got so many gay friends that y'all can't say something to me about the LSGBC, Q, whatever the hell it's called. Um, I got as many gay friends, just like when Tony called me a racist. I got more black friends than he does. <laughs> well, considering where he lives now, you might be right. No, I know I'm right. <laughs> And I love Tony. You know, Tony sat there and said, oh, Marty, you do it. Marty, Marty talked to me twice in 20 years. I was in the same locker room with him 20 years. Well, he talked to me two times. So that means how many times you talked to me, Tony? <laughs> you didn't come to me. But um, no, we, we actually talked. He just forgot. I got pictures, and I'll bring them next time for you. You have evidence. Yes. I was oh, sitting, let's, well, he said, he said what did, how did he say it? Maybe 10 minutes. And he got it. He did the math right, wrong. Yep, yep, he did he, the uh, math wrong the first time. He does, <laughs> that's a minute a year. Well, no, wait a minute. 30 seconds a year. <laughs> but um, hell, 10 minutes in 20 years. I spent almost a night with him in the hotel room. I don't remember where, somewhere in New York after a convention. And um, I had my black girlfriend. I had another friend of mine. It was black. I was the only white boy in the room. And, and Tony is a picture. I got one picture. Because we laughed, man. Tony's fun. I love Tony. You know, he called me a racist. That's fucked up. I tell but, you this. Do you know what the fans want? What? They continue to ask for, on New Year's Eve, they want us all together. I, I'm down. New Year's Eve. But they that want was to have last week. <laughs> well, no, they want to have a New Year's Eve party with all of us together, live. Party. Party. Is there an R in there? No. P A T. -Y. I'm, I'm down, though. I mean, well, you know, Tony's the one. That's one of my New Year's resolutions you know, is to put you know, this I've known Tony together longer again. than he's known me. How is that possible? Because he used to be a bodybuilder, and you know, worked out at the gym. I worked oh yeah, out, yeah, yeah. And he was Mr. USA. He could finish like third or fourth or something, whatever it was. And Jerry Oates, the guy that trained me, he, you got to make sure Tony sees this, uh, you know, try to you know, see this. You know, Jerry, Jerry liked him, you know, because he, he was getting into wrestling. By the way, Tony, word in the street is it might be true and it probably isn't. <laughs> I'm going to go for your team and say, nah, nah. But Tony paid his way into his first match. Oh, that's a true story. He's told it. Oh, he's, he's yeah. already told oh, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, stop paying for your own matches. <laughs> you go in the back door, not know. the front. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. USA and I have known Tony since 1993. So I have a long history with that man. It was nice when we went and saw Cosro, the Iron Sheik, at a WrestleCon in New York City. Have you had him on here yet? Who? Sheik. That's what got us on Howard Stern. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. I saw. I saw. I think he was on there more than once. Oh, but I mean, have you ever seen the actual video? Which one on Howard? Well, what ha how it started was some, someone on Howard Stern, when YouTube was in its infancy, saw clips of Sheik talking about <laughs> raping Bl Brian Blair and Hogan, <laughs> and Howard started. Hogan, he's gonna rape him too. <laughs> Howard was playing clips of it daily. Yeah, how could you not? <laughs> a, a friend of mine, Tech the Jackal, he, text, he emailed me one day. He said, you won't believe who was on Howard Stern today. I said, who? 
He said, you. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, how'd you he get said, on they're playing clips of that interview with you and the Sheik. And I went and looked at the hits on the website that night. Turn. They were playing <laughs> that video. And we wound up later making an agreement. They wanted, once they started to have a video platform, they wanted to use the footage. Yeah. And they gave us free commercial time in exchange for it. So we've been seen by oh, millions on YouTube. We've been seen by millions on Howard Stern. And those videos are available, of course. Where, where, Marty? Oh, YouTube. No, wait. Uh, that Patreon. Page, page, I, well, I was going to get it. I was just about, I was about to get it. Patreon. You get the early ad free access. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Patreon.com. Patreon, so you don't forget it. I don't know how to spell it, but it's Patreon. And we just have our new I friend, King David, who joined today. How we do you appreciate spell it? that. Look, speaking of Tony. Oh, what are you looking for? Look at Tony, man, but that's what I never finished saying. He was a bodybuilder, and he started getting into wrestling. And Jerry Oates, the guy that trained me, one of the guys that trained me, um, look, damn, look how he's built, man. Damn. He was Mr. USA. Man, look at him. Um, and, I, I'm, and I'm not gay, and I got nothing against gay, but damn, yeah. look at his, man, he's, man. Well, speaking of gay, we'll go back to Pat Patterson's passing. Again. I, like I said, you worked with Pat oh, like so your he was entire so, WWF career. He was he was so good to me, man. Mm -hmm. He everybody loved Sean. Um, in the office, yeah. <laughs> they he was his way was paved when it started, and let me tell you how. I know. Terry Garvin, when he came through, he'd only been in the business six months. Terry Garvin came up to me and said, "We got this new kid coming up. Are you? We'd like for you and." Dave Peterson, he rest in peace, Dave, my best friend ever. Um, you remember him, DJ Peterson. He passed. Yeah, yeah I didn't know. Yeah, that. a long time ago. Yeah. DJ Peterson. Yes. I, I think I would have. He looked like that. Magnum T.A. But, from AWA. But even, Was he in yes. AWA? That's all yes. right. Okay. Yeah, and he got in WWF for a minute. I remember him from AWA. Yeah, good brother, man. I mean, good. I brother. didn't know he had passed. How long has it been? Do you know? Ninety-four. Oh wow, long time yeah. ago. Okay. And. Um, but he, I mean, him were friends, and he, Terry Garvin came and said, "Hey, could you, um, you know, you you guys look after this kid, please? Me and talk about me and like take him around, ride, you know, road trips, and you know, look out for him." Knew he was 20, and you know, we were 23, 24, or something. But we'd been there a while, you know, we'd been in the territory for a little bit, so you know, they asked us to take care of him. Did and, Terry want to take care of well, him? Well, and, and me and Dave looked at each other like they have never asked. Other guys come in and out. So why this guy? You know why? And you know, Sean was a good-looking. You know, again, I'm not LBGDTQ, but um, you know, Sean was a good-looking kid, 20 years old. Um, you know, sort of built decent. A little arrogant, cocky-ass motherfucker, and he knew that. Even back then? Yeah. Oh wow. He pinched me on the cheek one time and said something. I, I almost had to drill, but the knock his hand down. Said, "Don't, don't do that again." You know, you don't grab a person by their face. And Why did he them. grab you by the cheek? Uh, he was, he was, I don't know. Was it meant, was <laughs> well, he trying to do I don't with, know. But but was it, it meant in fun or was? Oh, yeah, it wasn't bad. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, but but you don't want somebody grabbing you like this. The fuck you, fuck, get the fuck off. Excuse my language. <clears throat> but, um, and I think I've told this many thousands of, of time. We had to go find him. I think it was Topeka, Kansas. We went in his dressing room asking around, hey, is anybody, hey, this. Because, you know, we're going to let him ride with us and stuff. Um, and it was, I know it was Topeka, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, we, uh, you know, hey, Sean, we, we went up to this one guy. I mean, he looked like just like a redneck from uh, somewhere in mid-Texas. <laughs> redneck. And we said, hey, man, yeah, do you know, uh, Sean, have you seen a Sean Michaels around? He goes, I'm Sean Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> He had his pants, <laughs> his blue jeans pulled up to here, big old Texas damn belt buckle thing, cowboy boots, short, short hair. And me and Dave looked at each other like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, this was Sean? Yes. Oh, it was actually him? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. And uh, first yeah, thing we... He first, always wore the pants a little high. Way up. Yeah. I mean, they were almost under his chest. And, and um, But was the first thing we did, and Terry couldn't get mad about this. He said, take care of him, right? We had this girl called Topeka Patty. She blew everybody. I mean, all I had to do is ask her, like, hey, you know. Would she take care of Dave in the control yeah, room? Yeah, she'd take care yeah. of you. No, I don't need <laughs> Topeka Patty. Well, Topeka Patty, what we got? What we got? Oh, 
Double, double, fist double, double fist. Double fist. Double fist. Well, double. it sounds like Terry and Pat. All right, anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so we, so Sean, we took them on. Well, you know what, fans, right now, before we continue, let's take a brief timeout. We'll be back to wrap up the show. Stand by. Wrestling fans, VIP packages and tickets are on sale now. The Boston Wrestling MWF's Back to the 80s Live Wrestling Event and Legends Fan Fest Celebration, Saturday night, April the 16th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. Meet WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, three-time WWE Tag Team Champions Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Orton, The Wild Berserker, Dangerous Danny Davis, and more 80s WWF icons to be announced. Take part in a VIP exclusive Q&A session, a VIP exclusive 80s Legends group photo, an autograph photo fan fest open to all before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow light up the ring like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Relive your childhood. Get the best seats in the house at bostonwrestling.com now. We'll see you live April the 16th. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the momentum here in Boston wrestling continues as we continue to build and build and build. The fans want to know, how do we help? We subscribe to the Patreon. But we see all the great merchandise on that set. Coronavirus may have killed the nightlife, especially for someone like Marty. But, but, our acclaimed eBay store is open 24-7 around the world. Wow. Check it out. At WrestleMania 37, she proved she is the EST, defeating Sasha Banks to become the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autograph print, personally signed by Bianca Belair, one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome Bianca Belair collectible for your wrestling collection now. All right, fans, welcome back. Marty was talking about uh, grooming a young Shawn Michaels in a Topeka Patty. Yeah, so, Take it from there, sir. So, so you know, uh, we, we took him out to uh, Sean, uh, come take a ride with us. He, and, and Sean goes, oh, it's that y'all are Marty and Dave. Because he knew that, you know, Terry told him we'd you know, look, out, look after him. Did Terry look after him? Uh, well, we, you know, <laughs> but, so I don't know nothing. If I didn't see it, I don't know it. Do you, do yeah, I mean, you, you can hear shit. Do you believe I'm saying it shit to be now. true? <laughs> do you believe but if you it to see be it, true? Do what? From reliable sources. I, man, that's my partner, man. <laughs> but do, do, from, do you believe it to be true Even from reliable sources? Even though LGBTQRS, yeah. whatever the hell it is, is a big thing right now, yeah. it still ain't cool for most people. Not, I ain't saying for me. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't need to watch it. I don't care if you suck a dick or take a dick in the ass. I don't care. I don't think it's an issue anymore. It, it might not be, but some when people, I was a kid, some it was certainly an odd thing it. for people. So, but now yeah. in 2021, I then, certainly they, think it's accepted by most people. Well, then don't why do you? they keep asking me to Sean suck dick or take dick? Well, I think it's uh, it's one of those things that the fans question us about. If you when read the, the fan chats, ask you that. <laughs> no, if you read the chats during the premieres, no, they're pretty the sure on it. Get, I mean, what's that? Look, here's what I know. What do you we know? were on the road 300 days a year for seven years. Never did he ever suck a dick in front of me. We never came back to the room without. First of all, we never came back without some girls. I mean, even if it was one, he they, was a they, womanizer they, as well. Yeah, and 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 I hate saying it because he was actually with somebody, but that's way gone now. And he's very, as far as I know. <laughs> Very faithful to He's Rebecca. He's a religious changed man. Yeah. And that's a good we're, thing, I we're, think. We're, and Rebecca, he loves her to death and loves his kids. That's the coolest thing to me. But there was a different Shawn Michaels back in the 80s. Yeah, he was young. You know? but we it, all, man, we none of us are what we used to be. If you keep carrying that baggage with you, that's on you. Do you think The that, past is back there, and you can't change that. You can only change what's in front of you. Do you think that Terry had an affinity for him? Yeah, I know he did. He did. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, now, did he Sean, asked me, so did Ronnie Gossett. You know, Ronnie Gossett sold the territory. I heard, you know, the, the tr th that just almost rang a bell in my head, that there was <laughs> some serious relations between the two of them back in the day. Oh, no, no. Well, I, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but it I came can from tell you, someone I within can only, the World Wrestling Federation, that Sean and Ronnie P 
We're very, very close. I can tell you what I know. All right, what do you know? When we were living together with the Nasty Boys, it was four of us. It was me and Sean and the Nasty Boys. A one-bedroom apartment, <laughs> and they, it was theirs. We came in and you know, we started splitting the rent like after. I'm sorry about, sorry about the hair. I ain't had a haircut in a year. Can we Why go to that place? Why don't you go to where you get they the down south. They, they won't. They don't. They still haven't opened up they, salons. They, they and will, shops? but they only do appointments and they do people they know. They won't like if I walk up. But what about like a supercuts? Yeah, you know, great clips and shit like that. Yeah. They they're only taking people they know, like customers they've already had. Hmm. Because they're not. They're getting limited time. Well, where too, the hell though. did you go for a haircut before the coronavirus? Right here. Look. You've cut your own hair. Oh my god. You've cut your own hair for years? Um, I, I actually have, but man, I really, <laughs> somebody cut my hair. It, I need, look, man, damn. It's been almost a year since I've been, damn. See all Do that shit? Do you want shit? me to see if they can get you a haircut? Yes. Tomorrow? What yeah. day is tomorrow? Saturday. Shit, they're gonna, that's probably the one day of the week they're so busy that it would probably be a problem. All right, well, this, uh, we don't need the DNA on the studio floor, Marty, please. I'm sorry, I'll sweep it. All right, so back to I'll Sean sweep it and up. Ronnie P. Uh, so we were all living together. And the Nassies, you should ask them. Oh, they uh, mentioned it here. in some of their interviews. They, uh, they, uh, we all lived together. When, oh, man, it was the best time, though, because, like, when AW, this was for Jerry Lawler's territory. Right. And, and um, Tennessee, mostly, you know, and... Um, and some of the AWA guys would come in once in a while, and they would stay with us. Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect, he called it the house of the wayward wrestler. <laughs> it would be like six or seven of us sleeping on the floor at any given time. And, um, yeah, but, uh, you, know, we, it, it, you know what? It was, we had to do that because you, you're making $40 a night. Oh, yeah. You that know, and you're spending 20 in gas That wasn't and a money territory. <laughs> no, you were just... You you just made it know. You know what we did to eat? We did, there was a buffet, a Chinese buffet, right down the street from us. Man, we'd go there and stuff, cause you wasn't gonna eat again till tomorrow. <laughs> you got to stuff up, man. And uh, it was five dollars. So you know, I mean, we were pinching pennies, bro. We were. I mean, we could have made a copper wire. How hard we were pulling pennies from each other. And um, you know, so Sean Ronnie Gossett. I love Ronnie. You know, he died. Yes. He um. He came into the territory. He was known to be a, an older gay man that liked, you know, liked guys, or, you know, liked the boys. Um, and he had in his wallet. This used to work. Ricky Morton, you know, of Rock and Roll Express, uh -huh. was always his number. He had like ten of his favorite guys. Uh, Sean would be second, sometimes third. And when Sean would piss him off, he'd move back to fourth or fifth, and, and, and show Sean like, yeah, you ain't gonna. I just gotta put you in fourth. I'm putting this guy. It was a quarterback that played for UTC. Um, he was he was up there for some reason. You know, uh, Ronnie must have liked blonde. Most of them were blonde. Uh, Buff Bagwell was the only one that wasn't blonde, and uh, and Buff was down there around eight or something. Uh, and I love him. I miss him, and I ain't seen him in forever. I think uh, he didn't. He turn into a male whore. He was a male whore for no. a minute. No, but uh, what's Ronnie wrong? P what's must have really liked him. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but he got a brand new Trans Am when he was working at that damn oh. territory. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie had money. That that was the whole thing. If he saw something like Sean, he would throw money. It was me and him, me and Sean. When the Nasty Boys moved, we couldn't afford that apartment by ourselves. There was a hotel. It was fourteen dollars a night. So you know, seven dollars each, you know, for that hotel, for the night. And and and, and then five dollars. I mean, man, we were scratching. And um, five dollars for the buffet, for the seven for the for the thing, and then you got to get gas to get to the damn building, you know. And that was it. We were broke after that. But um, so Ronnie, Ronnie comes up. Ronnie P. I love him, man. He was so fun. Um, but he comes up. He used to tell me, he goes, Marty, what should I do to get him? And I'm like, well, try this, try that. I mean, that's <laughs> all I could do. Try, you know, try this. And then he'd come to me, Marty, that didn't work. <laughs> so he tried to seduce Sean. Yeah, he was trying no. to get him. Did and, he ever succeed? Well, and so where I was going to say was, okay. you know, we're squeezing pennies. I need his $7 for that hotel room, <laughs> right? <laughs> and Ronnie comes in town and they go stay at the Hilton for like three days, a whole weekend. And, and, and I'm sitting there like, man, I mean, I, had, I was, and, and he didn't pitch in. Uh, Ronnie finally later, 
realized what he had done and gave me some money. Um, but while it was happening, I'm like squeezing to pay that fourteen dollars for that night. You know. What do you mean, Ronnie pitched in? Oh, uh, he gave me some money later. He gave for me for what? A, because he realized when he took Sean away, I had to pay for everything. He myself. went to Sean went to stay with him at the yes, Hilton. Yes, yes, they wouldn't stay at the Hilton. Oh. And the next day, Sean oh. shows up. You know, for for they come pick me up. You know, I, luckily I got to ride with you know with Ronnie, and he he had a big old Cadillac or some shit. But um, you know, so we didn't have to pay for gas, and he would usually pay for the food if we stopped. He'd buy the food, and um, but so I, 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 they'd come get me, and and, and but I, man, I was stressed out because I I spent everything on that damn room because you know, and it was only seven extra dollars. I had to pay the whole fourteen, <laughs> and it and it was like taxed me out. I was like Jerry. he got screwed because of Ronnie P. Well, and yeah, Sean. that's why he ended up doing that at the end. But so the first night, I think it was a Friday, he spent the night. And I'm sitting there thinking, why would you go downtown and spend the night with an old man? <laughs> why would you do that? Well, the next morning he showed up. He had a long, full-length leather jacket. Sean? Now, look, we couldn't even buy the damn two meals a day. You know Sean didn't buy it. <laughs> full-length leather jacket. And all the boys were like, gosh, that was nice. It was a nice one. We're all like, damn, damn, damn. And, and nobody else has said it. But I'm like, how'd you afford that, Sean? <laughs> how'd you get that? <laughs> you know? And he, and he just like, he got chuckled. Uh. <laughs> you know, he just waved, you know, waved it off. Next day, Saturday, next day, he shows up. Brand new uh, Possum Peter, some kind of skin, alligator skin, some kind of boots. Like $300, $400 pair of boots. How'd you get that, Sean? <laughs> and the third day, he had just a whole bunch of new clothes. And, and, you know, all the boys that saw that, they went straight for the jugular. You're fucking him. Are you the pitcher or are you the catcher? <laughs> and, 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 but then with me, I'm like, I, I didn't see nothing. I don't believe Sean. I don't, if he did, he did, but I don't think he did. <laughs> In your opinion, there was no fellatio. I, in my opinion, no. Nah. You think Sean just enjoyed the gifts from Ronnie P? I think Ronnie was trying hard. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't succeed, you don't think? I, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I know Kev, even his friend Kevin. Well, look, Buff Bagwell got a new Trans Am. Well, his, Kevin Nash even had some interesting uh, what he said. tales. And he said, well, sometimes... Sean would pull in something into their big hotel room potties. You know, sometimes it could even be a guy, I think was how he worded it. So, well, that's, see, he knows him better than I do then. Well, <laughs> but I'm telling you, in. seven years, 300 days, years. You so never what, saw anything. That's 2,100 days on the road. I never, he never, we never laid, you know, we always roomed together. You know, his bed over there. And sometimes we would talk about shit, like, ah, oh, that girl, she needs to shave down there because some girls were, they used to, back then. It was thick. Yeah. It was like, Those damn, 70s man. style. Yeah, it would scrape you up. Your yeah. belly would have all kind of little red marks from all that. Well, that, Dave said he had that problem at Walgreens, but that's all right. What did he do at Walgreens? Well, he had a few, some, some MILFs that came on to him. Did they look good? He said, but they haven't groomed probably since the 70s. Oh, they were older. Yeah, than, older women. The older ladies, y'all got to go ahead and groom too. <laughs> I will give you, I will find you something to cut that shit. <laughs> you got the perfect that girl, remember, for them right remember, there. Remember that girl I told you um, uh, from New Zealand that put the bunny yeah. thing on me? And she had got, a thick one? Oh, my God. It was thick. <laughs> it was like a forest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm sure it stuck out this far. <laughs> the, I reached down there to, you know, try to get her to moan, you know, before. Yeah, this is horrible. We yeah. can't be talking like this. <laughs> But, but I hit that damn Brussels. It's like a damn, you know, the <laughs> chore boys um, clean you clean the yeah. place with. It was like a chore boy. It started right there. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm not well endowed, but I got it a little bit. Um, and I, I, that night I needed it to get through all that <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What a tribute to Pat Patterson we have. Oh, yeah. Pat. That's, hey, uh, Pat. <laughs> Pat never had to worry about that. Pat, one time, the only time, he never, see, he never tried me. 
Terry Garvin actually tried me once or twice. Oh, did he? Yeah, but it was okay. I mean, we, we he wanted to fillet you. He probably and, and no. he, he one time he told me, uh, Chris, uh, his wife though. I love I love the family, the family. So if you, I, I know you're probably she's probably she like she watches, she likes her she likes her show. Oh um, really? But you know, yeah, oh, and, okay. and um, yeah, because she'll say something once this airs, I'll get, I'll get a message from her. <laughs> but well, you know how Terry was. He he told me a couple times we was on the road. I think we was over in uh, Spain. You know, it was a foreign tour, international tour. And um, he said he comes up and he goes, Marty, I'll pay for the porno. You know, like you can buy porno on the TV. I'll pay for the porno. You just lay there. I'll do the rest. <laughs> I just want to blow you. I'm like Terry, stop, man, because you know he's my buddy. <laughs> but I still don't know nah, now. Nah. You know, don't do all that. You didn't want to be filleted. No, nah, I didn't want no, no. play show. And, um, but he, but he, you know, he's like, just lay there. Just lay there. You ain't got to do nothing but lay there. I'm like, no, nah, stop it, Terry. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. He was, he was going to pay for a porno movie. Yeah, right. For me right. to watch a porno movie and him do that and pretend this girl. Just, I should have told him wear a wig. It, let me ask you this, though. <laughs> in all seriousness. That was would serious. You, no, no, no. I mean, in what, what percentage of... Maybe better. Had you heard of people that took them up on the offer to try I, and better their position in I the think, company? I think. Um, I actually, you asked my opinion earlier. I think Hogan might go both ways. Really? Yeah, I think so. Well, now he's gonna be mad at me. Sorry, Hogan. We ain't even talking. I've heard some interesting stories him. even about him over the years, but I better call him and apologize now. Sorry, Hulk. Um, well, and the reason I say that is because Beefcake has said some things. And I think Beefcake's probably gone that route too once or twice. I love you, Beefer. You know that. But hey, well, you know I'm just saying. I guess. And I hate to go by what hurt. I never saw none of y'all put a dick in your mouth. Well, so I shouldn't be saying that. Yeah, at least you're honest about it. But yeah. Along and how would you like to see Pat Patterson be remembered? He's probably kept that company floating over all the years because one thing, you know, made me cut you, bro. For no reason. Give me a reason. Um, he was able, and this is something the, the veterans can't do, mostly, my experience. Um, they can't adapt with the times. Things change every 10 years. Right now, I'm having a hard time keeping up. Um, but I have to because I do seminars and I love right. my kids. I consider everybody at the seminar my kid or anybody that comes to my wrestling school my kid and I look out for my kids. I need to be on top of the game. And I'm having a hard time figuring some shit out now. I mean, it's just so too fast. Way too fast. Yeah, you know. There's uh, no pacing and there's no patience. And it's, it's like come and go, you know. All right, you serve, let's go. Like, like she <laughs> did one time, I told you about that. Some, some girl, he woke up, we woke up in the morning and he told the girl, uh, you've served your purpose. Now leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was well, like, he was honest, on. I guess. Yeah, he was way honest. <laughs> well, before we go, I, there was one more pass. Where we going? Uh, to wrap up the show, we've, we've, we've gone long yet again. I didn't get and talk to Kara or Miranda. Uh, well, it, we had the passing of uh, Tom Cole. I don't know oh, if yeah. you get a chance to oh, know yeah, him. He was that. one of I, the I, Rain I Boys. Didn't know him. I didn't know him. You didn't weren't around him that much? No. Nah. You like, we were good, you know, hug up and, yeah. you know, how you doing? But Other than no that, you didn't know him yeah. well. Well, just fans you. may or may not know the name Tom Cole. Uh, he was, uh, I guess what you'd call part of the ring crew. Or the, uh, then, in that era, they oh, were Oh, did called, you do that interview? Yes. How'd it go? It, uh, Y'all got to see well, this let me, expl let me lead into it. Okay. Um, Tom Cole was one of the, if you were around for the 91, 92 scandals that came out that tried to rock the WWF. They just, were, just say it, the ring boys were getting blown. Well, there were a lot of there were a lot of con men that went out to try and destroy WWF. Right. And that, I think, and might some have, of them almost that, did. That made it harder for the people that actually had real issues. You know right. what I mean? Yes. Those people that went out with just, yes. they, wanted, they had an axe to grind because they didn't have a job with the World Wrestling Federation anymore. But a lot of the abuse that the ring boys went 
through, was true, was factual. But the only thing is, I, don't, I wonder, was it abuse if they agreed to it? If you're a 13 or a 14-year-old boy, especially being moved across state well, lines, I had to which kill is illegal. Myself when it, when it happened. Well, you know about that. There should have been a little Chattahoochee going on. <laughs> but Tom Cole was—he was one of the first to come out and speak about it. Mike, Mike and Toomey. And a couple of weeks ago, what's you, that? You know Mike Toomey? No. Great friend, man. I love him. Was he a hey, ring Mike. crew uh, he, guy? He, yeah, he was a ring boy, a ring guy. And was way he back a victim during, of during that time? Was um, he abused? I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know, Mike. Well, I don't know. I don't. I, I've not seen it. Uh, it was one time I saw a little something. You know, because sometimes they got traits that come out when they're just being herself. Yeah. You know, because they always catch themselves. They don't let you know that they're trying to grab that guy's ass in front of them. But, um, you know, sometimes traits slip you know, when you're being real, when you're, like, relaxed and you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. well, maybe even a couple of drinks. And you, you know, you want a drink? I already have one. But you already have one? Yeah. Um, but, they, yeah. They, but what did you see? Uh, he might have. He might have. Mike, I'm just saying you might have. I didn't say you did. But you were in that era. Everybody there, even Mike Chio Kyoto. Uh, hey, Mike, I miss you. Mike Chioda, he's fucking probably still there. He's been there the no, long No, they released him as part of. Oh, you know who I'm back talking in about? April. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, old Mike, man. I, oh, why'd they let him go, man? He's been there like 20 something years. Maybe he aged out of the system. That's true, too. Yeah, that's probably what it was. But, but what is it that you saw? As far as what? Oh, you, you said you saw us, you saw, you know. Mike to uh, to with Toomey? I don't know who you meant. You don't know Mike Toomey? No. Yeah, he was there. Well, what, during, did, you see, what did you see with Mike Toomey? Was he, he looked a, at my ass too long. He what? He looked at my ass too long one time. But was he part of the ring we, crew? We, we, or was uh, he part of the uh, cream he, team? He drove the truck, the ring crew. He drove the truck, you know. He take drove the ring, the ring boys? Yes. Um, yeah, I guess. 30. Where are we now? We're on oh my dear Damn, Lord. you talk too much. Well, anyway, Tom Cole, this the victim of this. Thank abuse, God I didn't have to finish that. <laughs> well, we're gonna get there. No, he, ain't. he hung himself, and the poor oh, man is, yes. at the age of fifty is dead. He was um, fifty. Fifty, the ring boy's Damn. aged. I see. I still see him as young. Um, you know, there's a long story that goes along with it. You know, I tried to play devil's advocate. With the Mc, on the McMahon side, it, to some extent. I have not included it in the Week in Review programs because it's a very deep, emotional interview. But the day after Tom hung himself, I had a long, long... Didn't his kids find him? Uh, I'll get there, yes. Oh, I, had, I had a long phone call with his brother Lee, who was with Tom during the negotiations that went on with Vince McMahon, Linda McMahon, and Jerry McDevitt. Um, yeah, bastard. Tom, when he hung himself, he tried to do it in his bedroom closet. So he figured his wife would find him. But for whatever the reason, the kids, his two teenage daughters found him. And a man that went through that kind of sexual abuse that he claimed was from Mel Phillips and Terry Garvin. Now, yeah, Mel. Now used, it has gone on to scar two teenage girls that will have that image of finding their yeah, dad that's, that's hung the rest rough, of their lives. Yeah, uh, so that abuse that went on in the 80s and the early 90s is going to carry you on. You think that's what it was? Well. All them years later? He... This is part of the, this was the theory. He went on to have kind of a nice life. Yeah. He married, he had the kids, as we just mentioned. Right. Uh, and when Linda McMahon ran for Senate, they figured that could be something the opponents could look at as trouble. Yeah. Oh, So okay. they reached out to him. I got you. All right. You know, they got quotes from him about what a great senator she would be and blah, 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 blah. And he just started to have, I, I, I don't know if I'd equate it to PS, PTSD from war. S S S but something like that, yeah. And then he started. I mean, it's, it's, it's traumatic on your brain. He started to have <laughs> tremendous flashbacks about what happened, and he needed mental help. And when he went to get it, his health insurance. I from wish you would have called me. His health insurance from work covered a part of it, but he reached out to WWE after giving the quotes to Linda for Senate to see if they would help with his copay, right. and they denied it. Really. So Come on, you know man. what? I love WWE. Damn, Vince. I love WWE. Better than that. There's a lot of great people there that have done a lot of great things over the years, but, you know, if that man got the proper mental health he needed, he very well could be alive right now. And should, man. If you spend time in a company and you made that company so much money, take care of the motherfucker. Shit. And was, uh, they admit, uh, you know, they, where they gave him so much back pay and they hired him back again, they, 
you right know, there. they admitted there that something right there. happened. If, to do that says, yes, you're part of us until you need money. He, I, that man deserved. Or help. No, he didn't need money. He just needed help. All he, he wasn't looking for money. He was just looking for right. help for the copay. Right. And the, 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 well, inter yeah. the interview with his brother, Lee Cole, it's available on our YouTube channel now. It is, it's not a fun show like we have with Marty. It's not a fun show like we have with Tony. <laughs> this, this ain't fun right now. <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's very deep and it's very intense, but it's very worth listening to. Well, Ooh. Eric from Cameo wants you to call him. All right, thank you, Eric. Are you on, I didn't know you was on Cameo. Huh? I didn't know, I'm on Cameo. I, I have on Cameo. You know how many I sold? Huh? Negative three. How you do negative? No, that, that's just me, I guess. But I, <laughs> yeah. in all seriousness. Let me stick this in the wall. I can, I can hit it from here. Right? The like, interview with you Lee, think I'm kidding? The, uh, you probably could. Oh, I know I could. <laughs> the interview with Lee Cole, like I said, it's intense, it's deep, it's not fun to listen to. When's that going to show? It's, it's available now. If I, you, if you want to hear a story about what went on, yeah, and again, a lot I of do. it is, it's allegations, but where WWF paid him money, they gave him his job back, they attempted to... Was that to, to keep him quiet? Well... They, here's the thing. I don't know if you've ever seen the infamous Donahue episode mm -hmm. where Vince got crucified by Bruno, Billy Graham, Bruno, Bruno, uh, Barry O. San Martino. Yeah. Bruno, man, stop. Oh, he died, though. He yeah. died. Well, you need to stop. He was an expert witness on my case yeah. against me. Really? Bruno, I love you. I know you're gone. But in heaven, you're hearing me right now. Why the fuck are you going to testify against me? And say that move, the rocker dropper, where I put my leg over and the guy broke his neck. He's the only one. Done it a hundred times. Only one dude did it wrong and broke his neck. And San Martino came up and said, in court, during the trial, well, that move can't be done safely. What about the 99 motherfuckers that just did it right? He had an axe to grind. Fuck, well, yeah, against me, though. I know he was well, going against them, you've never seen but that? it affected my ass. It cost me a half a million dollars. You've never 500 motherfucking thousand dollars. Bastard. You've never seen that Donahue episode? No. I'm going to send it to you. I think you'd really be interested in it. It was, it was in one of the periods when you got, you were in between tenure and WWF. It was March yeah, was of 1992. <laughs> uh, but I mean. Oh, I was in house arrest. Murray Hodginson was after. I don't know if you remember him. Murray Hodginson, the announcer that was there for a short period of time. Barry O. I'm not um, married. There was, Dave Meltzer was on the show. Um, John Arezzi, who did a radio show in New York City. But here's the thing. What? So the day before the Donahue show, yeah. they figured they were going to bring up the name Tom Cole because he was kind of the, the forefront in bringing up the allegations about the cream team and all the, you know, the about abuse. About the what? The cream team. <laughs> the allegations. <laughs> well, anyway... What they did was in the audience. They you know had, what you know what you know what Mel Gibson's favorite food was? No, or not Mel Gibson. What was his name? Mel Phillips. Phillips. His favorite food? No. Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> he used to suck the boys' feet. I know. <laughs> Horrible. But Kurt Hennig did come over there. With, Mel's favorite food is Fritos. <laughs> people like Bruno and um, Billy Graham. They were part of his deposition, but they had never met Tom Cole. They didn't know what he looked like. So it has. I still don't. So the day you didn't send me a picture. It's on, I know the it's name. on the video, but if if yeah, oh, that's in, where, in, where do we find the video? You, uh, uh, YouTube.com backslash Boston Wrestling Com. That's how you do it. Okay. Several million of you have enjoyed our videos. We hope millions more come to. And we're visit, international, aren't we? We're we're worldwide, baby. We're, so but people. listen, this is a very interesting thing. Okay. Now, so again, they these guys were deposed. But they had the never met Tom Cole. They wouldn't know him if he crossed the street. Yes. In the audience on Donahue was Linda McMahon, For Miss real? Elizabeth, no. and Tom Cole. Well, so I got to go see that. The, the, the Lee and everybody's working thought was they were waiting for, you know, as they were hammering Vince with the allegation, they were going to say, well, what about Tom Cole and the Ring Boys? And they thought Vince was going to say, well... Tom just happens to be here in the crowd with my wife, Linda, right yeah, now. Yeah, just, just <laughs> happens to be right here. <laughs> but Barry O was smart enough. He said, you know what? We haven't heard from this kid in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Something could be going on. So they never mentioned Tom Cole's name. 
and they never showed anything with him and Linda in the crowd. So oh. it's just such a sad story. A 50-year-old man with kids hung himself. 50, but he's like a kid, like 30 years and he, old. And the abuse that he went through. All he wanted to do was be part of wrestling. You know, he probably could have cashed in a lot more than the money he got in 1992, he just wanted to be back in wrestling, and he didn't well, want to be sexually and, abused. And all, all the kids, all of every, that's the only reason you do it, because you want to be there. And, you know, so you're vulnerable to that kind of the thing. The cream team. What do you got to say about it? Well, and then, you know what I think? Look, man, when you throw a knife long distance, I'm going to teach you today, because I'm going to show you how to stick it. Well, we have a dartboard in the other room. When you throw it, you let it slide out like this. When you yeah. throw, and it'll turn, and it sticks. All right. You know, some people like flip it, you get lucky maybe. Well, no, nah, what you would do is you do like this, let it slide out. Yeah. And it'll turn and stick. That's long distance. If they're up well, close, you just do this. <laughs> I just think it's horrible or that those kids like went through. Mm -hmm. As someone that was around the company in that period of time, was it well known that that's what these people would try and do? Yeah, back then, yeah. Well, especially with male, man. What I don't understand is why didn't people ever report it, even I, confidentially I to the police? Well, You're talking about. You remember no, Kevin Kelly? We told we talked. I just saw that episode last week. Yeah. Or a couple weeks ago. But Kevin Kelly reported. It. Remember he choked. Well, his, that's that's. He went right that's out to the paper. That's a different story. Phone. I think me and that's Jimmy a Powers. Grown man. Me and, Jimmy, me and Jimmy Powers were just talking. Remember Young Stallions? Yeah. You need to get him on here too. Jim Powers. Yeah, because his health is going down, man. Where is he out of? Uh, Orlando. Orlando? Yeah, his health, man. He's, Why? What's wrong with him? Well, I don't know, man. He took, he had a hip replacement. And um, ever since then, I, I think pain pills might have taken his life. Oh. And it happens, man. I mean, I'm doing, I'm fighting it now because I, I do like them. Because they, I have they to take They take the a, pain away. Yeah. And I you're in take, a lot I, of pain. You know, and I try to show people this sometimes. I'll take the arm, twist it to where it hurts. Just where it hurts, not where it's killing them. Just let it hurt. And then if you just back off a little bit, that little bit, if that's a pain pill that did that, you will be happy to take that whole twist off. And, and, and you know, you, you get addicted to it. They haven't made a pain pill that kills pain without you wanting more. When they do that, I'll be the first in line. I might with, even push somebody many. aside to get, get up front and get your ass. You know? But um, yeah, man, Jimmy, I think Jimmy, I think he might have got it. He can't even talk when I talk to him now. It's so he can't slurred. even talk? It was so slurred, I don't oh, know what he he's saying. Oh, he needs help then. He needs help. I'm trying. Help Jimmy Powers. I wonder if... Uh, WWE, he made y'all money. That's the know, one thing. I love WWE, WWF, whatever. I love everybody. I, Linda McMahon is the only one hard to love. Why is she hard to love? Because uh, she's like, she just, she might as well be a man. <laughs> <laughs> Why should Linda McMahon be a, a, a McMahon? Because <laughs> <laughs> she's a Mc, damn hard head. Uh, she, she's just real, bo I think where I lost respect for her was one time, Shane, when he was young, Shane, uh, he would hang out with, you know, with Sean and I, because we're always the girls and, you know, the party and the, everything. Uh, you know, everything that comes with that, you know, the, the, and I don't think he ever did blow. I don't think he ever snorted. Shane O'Mac? Yeah, Shane. I remember he smoked some weed, you know, a couple of times. We, we used to make that Godzilla looking big blunts, uh, big ones. Like, you put two or three papers in a row. If you couldn't get black and, black and mild at the store, you know, you go to the store, get black yeah. and mild, cut it and take the tobacco out and you replace it with the weed. Um, but so we would get two or three pieces of paper, like them, put them together. Our joints would be like, like I said, King Kong's fingers would look small, and um, roll it up, smoke it up, and see where it goes. <laughs> see what happens after that. But uh, Shane, you know, Shane would partake in that. I don't think he ever. I don't know. I never saw him take pills or do the cocaine. Um, but he would smoke a little bit. He drink a little bit. And um, he, one time, me and him were so hungover, so hungover. Um, and it was TV. <laughs> we had to come up on TV. That's the worst. And uh, we found the spot. I always found, you know, quiet, dark spots. But it was behind the green room, you know, where they go in and do the interviews. You know, mm -hmm. they had to 
green room and blue room, according to what you were wearing. You'd go in one or the other. Um, you, you, know, you know how that works. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have yeah. one of those. You got one? In these, uh, somewhere behind the little curtains. Why? Why, you, why don't you use it? No, we really don't need the chroma key. You're going to need it with Coco. Why is that? Because you're going to have a bird. All right, well, we'll see, maybe. But anyway, we'll continue so, on with um, this as we wrap up the show. Okay, so anyway, uh, me, and, me and Shane, Shane's, I was like back here behind the blue room. Because they, and they, you, y'all got some of that shit they make it with. The sound, the sound little yep. foam shit. They, you know, they make a box. They, they make them right there on, on set. And um, they are right behind it. I mean, you might hear somebody go, oh, you know, somebody doing an interview. At most, if you're out the other place, anywhere else, you're hearing the pyros go off, pow, 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 all that shit. You know, all, we found a quiet spot. Shane was like on one side, I was on the other side, laying there on one of them foam, sound foam things. That, what does it do? It, it, it sort of makes sound, it soundproof. Soundproof. And um, you know, lay, th those things are comfortable to lay on, <laughs> you know, laying on it, sleeping. And Linda's looking, she comes in looking for Shane, and she sees him laying there. And she goes, my God, you was out with the rockers again, wasn't you? <laughs> and I'm laying there, now I'm hearing this, right? <laughs> and, and he was so hungover, he goes, yes, Mom, stop yelling at me. What did I tell you about hanging out with the help? And I, I almost wanted to pop up and say, what the fuck did you just say? Oh, goddamn scaggy ass lady. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. But um, yeah, it pissed me off. We don't hang out with help. Like you were a maid or something. Yeah. You know? And so I lost respect for her there. But even beyond that, like when she was in court when I got sued for that broken neck, dude, mm -hmm. uh, half a million dollars, 500 damn thousand. Y'all wonder why I ain't living like a king? 500 damn thousand it cost me for a guy that did a move wrong. Chuck, I love you, but fuck you. Give me that money back. But, um, yeah, so, so uh, she was in court. She was representing, and she's a lawyer, I guess. You know, she's pretty good, supposedly. She worked for Trump. She was in yeah. the Small Business yeah. Administration or something. But um, she, that whole time, she wasn't like, you know, she said hey to me. Hey, she shook my hand like a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she, yeah, yeah she was just, Kind of cold. Yes, very, very ice. And um, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd already heard what she said. With the, you know, we don't hang out with the help, and putting us second class. You know, you know, or third maybe. You know, I don't know how it works with the rich people. I know this. I was I started messing around with this girl that um, I I shouldn't say this because they might even actually be married right now. But Shane, they lived. When you go to Vince's house back then, I don't know if they still live the same place, but I had to go there one day. And you go through a guard gate. You know, you've got to get it. There's three houses. There's Vince's here in the middle. There's a house over here. There's a house over there. All three of them, that guard gate's for, for them. And, um, you know, we went through. And, and the girl that lived over here, I can't remember her name or nothing, so, and I hope this is not offensive. Um, if it is, I didn't mean it to be. I'm just, I'm just speaking truth. Um, maybe that's the truth, because this was 30, 20 something years ago, you know? Uh, but I was, me and her started kind of cutting up a little bit. And then I found out that rich people, they groomed their kids to be with other rich people's kids. Because the people who lived over there, they were grooming Shane to be with her and her to be with Shane. That actually happened with Sean, too, with Teresa. Sorry about that. I shouldn't have brought that up. Um, but it, that's a rich people thing. I, I, don't, I don't get it. How are you going to go? What, was it Marissa? I, oh, well, that's the one he married. <laughs> Damn it. No, Why did, did you have to say How did you name? meet her? Huh? How did you meet her? I don't remember. Probably at the show. Oh, she would come to the shows? No, I, know where, I, know she's, <laughs> I know where she went afterwards. Oh, where <laughs> did she go afterwards? No, stop, man. You just said her name. You can't say nothing now. That well, was 20, 30 years. She was like 90. I know I was they lived like across 20. the street from the McMahons. No, or next door. Yeah. yeah. Who were in that little But you had to go through that complex. guard gate. Yeah. You ever been there? 
No, no, they never invited me over, believe it or not. They didn't invite Could me. You they imagine had no me, choice. <laughs> me, Vince, and Linda sitting around watching some of these talk shows. <laughs> I'm going to get in all kinds of trouble. Shane, I love you. You know that. And Everyone speaks uh, highly, so say, highly of him. What's that? Shane? Yeah. Shane's a good one, man. Yeah. Shane's a good one. Um, but Pat and Marissa, is, she's a sweetheart. Well, you probably know better than I do. What well, I didn't mean like that. Yeah. <laughs> No, she, they're, 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 they're like you're happy they're together. But well, just good. don't understand that. Grooming your kids to be together because y'all are both rich and you want to keep, I don't know how Triple H did it. <laughs> he, pen, <laughs> he penetrated that damn family circle well, he, thing. He penetrated, all right. But <laughs> Stop it. Um, you, know, you know I got in trouble once. Why? I was probably drinking. And, That's a uh, surprise. <laughs> And, and I saw, um, I better not say No, 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 I, I got him. The daughter. Stephanie? Fuck, you keep saying names. With who? I said one time on the internet, because I got mad because she said something about the Marty Gennetti team. I got right on the internet. I said, that bitch, you need to ask Triple H, is all them kids his? Are you sure? <laughs> You know why right? I could say that, right? You can say it. You know what was funny, too, when she was 15. 15. Vince came up to me and Sean and said, my daughter's going to be at TV tapings, and uh, if I catch either one of you messing with her, oh, 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 I'll fire you. We're still like, she's fucking 15. What do you think? We're, gonna, we're not going to mess with your daughter? We waited until she was 18. <laughs> Both of you? <laughs> No, I'm just play. I'm just playing nah, on that. No, no, no. Come on. There's more to this story that meets the eye. Get, you ain't getting that out of me. <laughs> uh, maybe she did. <laughs> yeah, that's why all the kids might not be triples. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, they are. I'm just playing. Yeah, I, time. The, as far as the timeline goes, I don't think it would work. No, but, it does. No, it does. Time out. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. Yeah, I mean, two to How months. recently was this? Long time ago. All right, well, you know, there's the famous match. It wasn't recent. But you know what, Stephanie, thank you for being so nice to me. Um, I brought uh, uh, this girl, Mache, a black girl. Um, I brought her to TV tapings when we did the Rocker reunion. And then the next day, the Kurt Angle match. Um, and, and I had to tell everybody she was my wife. Yeah. So she could she get, get back in the stage. Back, right. Yeah. And oh my God, Stephanie! And, and you know, some of them were looking at me sideways because you know I'm, I'm there with I got a black wife. Um, and some of the guys were. And so we, all right. Our point. Our, yeah, oh, dear, see we're over. Body. We gotta we, we gotta, gotta take wrap this it. home, baby. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you for that. She really. Thank you for what? 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 Oh, uh, she made. For what? Well, you you thinking wrong. Well, what gift are you talking about? No, she looked out for her me. Her kindness. Michelle, Shay, we towards Michelle or towards you? Both of us. She said anything yeah. they need. She told everybody, anything. You know, and it, like I said, some of the guys were looking sideways because I got a black wife. Yeah. Uh, but she wasn't really a wife. I had to, you know, say she was. You think? Which Steph I didn't mind. You think I mean, Stephanie we, was we jealous at all? So, I don't. She didn't act like it. No. No, she no. She was really cool, man. Um, well, that's good that you remain friends after your stop, man. friendship. Why do you keep lasting a hold of things? I'm talking about a nice friendship that that's you had Fremont with Stephanie. Street, right, but that's it, not Fremont Street. Past the, uh, her, no, uh, not even close. Yeah, I, that's I'll the Bellagio live there. Did you, right when, there. That's the Paris Hotel right there. The Fremont Street You want me to hit Fremont? You'd have to take a bus from there to get to Fremont Street. Why did you take buses? It's just down the street. You didn't have a car? The Fremont Street experience? You got a park. From that part of the Vegas Strip? That's a couple of miles. Three. About three. Oh, all right, fair enough, but still. Yeah, that's but a shuttle you, bus to you, me, baby. Didn't you get a, I didn't even know they had a shuttle bus that did that. Yeah, it's called the Deuce. Oh, really? Two okay. bucks, yeah. I didn't know that. All right, well, fans, we're running out of time here. I Fremont Street. And remember, uh, if you go and cut somebody, hide it. All Put right, it right well, here. Uh, and then when you, how you do it, Dan? You swing, you're gonna have to teach you me. swing like this. And uh, go for the face. They never see you coming. Give them the Joker treatment. What's that? You know, the or heel and Batman, yeah. Did you ever do, I had to, I've when never I stabbed didn't, anyone, a no. friend of mine did. Um, some guy ripped me off a lot of money uh, and, and I Some, know that feeling. I mean, 150000 Not that much. Oh, you told us that For the story. gym, yep, yeah, for yep, the gym. Yep, yep, yep. But somebody took a knife and 
uh, hooked it in there and, and cut him, in, you know, from the inside. The guy that, took, the, the guy that took your money? So you're talking about, yeah, you're talking about the uh, Joker thing. I from don't Batman, know if that's what yeah. you meant. But yeah, he took the knife, somebody did, and pulled it and cut him oh just so God. he couldn't lie no more. Well, I mean, he'd, every time he wanted to lie, he'd have to remember. He's got two big-ass scars up there. And, uh, Do you think he learned his lesson after having his mouth cut He disappeared cut after that. I, oh. think, well, I, I think a friend of mine had something to do with that, too. Chattahoochee. <laughs> I called. <coughs> I, it was a, a Braves game was on. Send him to the Chattahoochee. And it, and it, it, well, it was right near there. But, it was, <laughs> you know, I think it was Washington. I can't remember his first name. But he swung and the bat went up to, like, third base up, up and hit some old lady. I didn't mean to call her old. Um, and then, you know, everybody, the camera's on. It's standing there. And, and I was like, that's Sonny. He was right there, and I called my brother. I mean, I called a friend. I called a friend and said, hey, Sonny, he's at the fucking show. He's at the damn Atlanta, Fulton County. He's, he's on there. He's right there. He's right behind third base. And my bro and this friend was like, I said, turn it on. Turn it on the game. Turn it on. You'll see him. Because they kept the camera, you know, because that lady yeah, got yeah. And And he, uh, he, whoever it was, was so quiet and peaceful. And I'm like, you see it, you see it? He goes, no, I'm watching the movie. I said, no, you got, he, he goes, Marty, it's not Sonny. I said, it is Sonny, if you'll look. He goes, it's not Sonny. It took me a minute for it to sink in. Like, how did he know Sonny it Sonny got the Chattahoochee <laughs> How do you know it? Ain't? Oh, oh, okay. And nobody's ever seen him since. Well, we hope he's doing well. Yes. In heaven or hell. All right, wrestling fans, this has been quite the episode, certainly an extended episode. Uh, if you How long enjoyed, did we go this time? He, uh, our good friend Dave said we're about an hour, just approaching an hour and a half at this point, which no is way. way too long, but I'm sure you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget the Super Chat button is open. If you help us keep the lights on, we can bring Marty back more often. We can help Marty rehab his ankle more. We can send Marty to find physical therapy places. We can help Marty pay his bills. Yeah. We can do the same for Tony. Hey, come, we can come. do the same for all the great legends. You can join us on Patreon at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling for all that great content. And of course, unlike coronavirus, which has killed the nightlife for a potty man like Marty. It, it didn't eBay, last night. <laughs> our, eBay, well, our eBay store is open 24-7 for my Future Hall of Fame friend, Marty Gennetti, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next Thursday night, 10 p.m. Wrestling Inside is Potty with Marty. Be see well. Me, see Fans, another marathon that hopefully brought you memories, smiles, and a history lesson from a superstar that lived the life and provided you action and excitement while giving up so much time uh, with his own friends, his own family, abusing his body in the process. We noted that Marty was in the ER recently. We continue to await the return of Just Incredible after paying him money up front to join us in studio to continue wrestling inside his extreme. That's growing extremely frustrating and annoying. Uh, as we've noted, please, like you would a bartender or waitress, we'd sincerely appreciate a tip of any size using the Super Chat button so we can afford to bring Marty back. Uh, to Boston on a more regular basis for season two of Party with Marty. Also, again, folks, as we've noted, whether you have a, a dollar, a thousand, a million, like, share, and subscribe. Doesn't cost a penny, and we can continue to get the word out to the millions of fans that don't know we exist yet. Once they find us, I know they're going to love us. We're inching closer and closer to season two of Wrestling Inside is Party with Marty. The Indiegogo campaign is at 94%. Use the link in the premiere chat in the description box below or find it on our social media to bring Marty back to Boston to continue his no-holds-barred sex, drugs, and rock and roll look at the 80s, 90s, and current events. We've missed Marty a lot since we've seen him uh, for the most recent episode back in December. Uh, let's get him back to Beantown. If you missed the Berserker live Sunday and Monday, as we noted, we do have a few 8x10s and 11x14s. Uh, now at bostonwrestling.com, including that exclusive print you can't get anywhere else. That helps us bring the Berserker back to Boston. Berserker is one of seven announced uh, 80s VIP legends that will be at Boston Wrestling MWF's 
back to the 80s live wrestling event in Legends Fan Fest Extravaganza, a little more than seven weeks away, Saturday night, April the 16th, at Memorial Hall here in Melrose. The Berserker joins WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Axe and Smash Demolition, WWE Hall of Famers Tito Santana, and the freshly announced Cowboy Bob Orton, Dangerous Danny Davis, and another superstar to be announced this Monday night during Raw. If the VIP packages keep moving, we're going to bring you even more superstars for VIP exclusive Q&A, a VIP exclusive 80s group photo, an autograph photo session open to every fan in attendance before the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow blow the roof off of Memorial Hall with the hot action inside the squared circle. VIP packages and tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com. Lock in the best seats in the house now and save some money before the week of the event and at the door. If you love shoot interviews like this, and I know you do if you're still watching, you'll have the time of your life by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling, knowing that you, yes, you, are helping keep wrestling legends working. Get early, full-screen, ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows each and every week. Our archives of over 300 full-length episodes, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library is seen by millions online and millions more on The Howard Stern Show, superstar watch-alongs, Patreon exclusives, my new Inside the MWF Patreon exclusive podcast, looking at how these shoot interviews and live events come together, and so much more, all for the cost of a cup of coffee over at Starbucks. Keep the legends working and the lights on. At patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Finally, finally, folks, if your loved one maybe didn't give you what you were looking for on Valentine's Day, if you're looking to add something to your man cave uh, as the road to WrestleMania heats up, hit up the Boston Wrestling Sports eBay store with merchandise of superstars from every era. You can find the link to the eBay store in the description box below or head on over to bostonwrestling.com and click the store button. Had a great time today, folks. Hope you did too. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's keep growing the family so we can bring more superstars to this studio and more live events for you to enjoy. A super chat tip would be graciously appreciated for all of the hard work. Every dollar counts. We'll be back tomorrow night at 10 p.m. after Impact Wrestling with Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. With that said, be well, be healthy. Good night from Boston. Phil, take it away. Hi, this is Phil DeCesare. Thank you for enjoying tonight's Wrestling Insiders. Get early full screen ad free access to all our weeknight Wrestling Insider episodes while helping keep wrestling legends working by joining the Boston Wrestling Patreon family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You can directly help us bring you more great historical wrestling content seven days a week to enjoy for years to come.